welcome to Newberry, Florida's Gatorback Cycle Park. It's day number six of the 52nd annual Thor Mini O's presented by Pro Circuit with live coverage being presented to you by your friends at Dunlop Motorcycle Tires. Accelerate your soul. I'm Rodney Tom along with Mikey Waynes. Also joining us today, Megawatt Matt Watson. Wes Kane, and of course, the voice of Florida Motocross, Dean Diaz, as we'll be giving you the race call of the uh, 52nd Thorpe Minios here from Gatorback Cycle Park and Mikey Waynes. We've already got one race uh, set to wrap up here this uh, morning. Jaden Smart, uh, Patrick C uh, C Cyrillus moving into the number two spot. Uh, Carter Gray in third, Evan Frost in fourth. Anderson Waddell will be your fifth place finish. Easton Kirby in sixth, Aiden McKitty in seventh. Then it's Thor Thrasher holding steady in that top 10 back in the number eight spot at the checkers. Then it's Logan Lustig. He is your number t uh, 10, no, nine spot. Then Jake Willer in 10th, uh, Enrique Rodriguez, and Rayson Kyler rounds out your top 12, your final transfer spots there in that first race of the day, 65 CC, 7 to 11-year-olds. We have three divisions of these, and uh, we are off and rolling. If you're looking and you're saying on the monitor, it looks a little hazier there today. Well, yes, it does. We've got uh, cloud cover. We've had some rain showers move through this morning, and we do have more rain showers that could possibly be moving throughout the morning as well. Weatherman says two-tenths of an inch of rain, but we'll see what happens. We're going racing no matter what. It is motocross, and as Buddy Antonez says uh, from the Brett Downey Safety Foundation, this is dirt bike racing. Unless it's lightning, let's race them. <laughs> hey, man, let's do it. Rain or shine. We're, and we take it one step further than the United States Postal Service. I can tell you that right now. Absolutely. It don't, it don't so. matter. It don't matter. So maybe not Amazon. They're hardcore. <laughs> yes, a, a, no kidding, a 4 a.m. delivery from Amazon. Now, that's dedication right there and uh, probably aggravation to the person, that the people that get them that early. But uh, nonetheless, Division Two getting ready to take off the uh, line here in just a moment. Mikey Waynes, as we run down this uh, starting order, uh, another a host of 39 riders narrowed down to the top 12. Yes, sir. So, again, taking top 12, as Rodney mentioned. Uh, who is out there? How about at the number two, two of Stephen Green, Jr.? Seen some great things out of him this week. Uh, Chance Olberg, the number 11. Landon Lee, the number 14. The number 16 of Connor Feather. The 24 of Eden Steinbrecher. The number 30 of Brody Bersher. The 69 out of Atwood, Tennessee of Tate Brush. The 74 of Bill Cassidy. Number 81 of Bryson DeJong. The 83 of Race Madison Matson. The number 84 of Tyler Stancic, the number 91 of Trinity Simono, number 94 of Jackson Wright, the number 99 of Jax Keller out of Orlando, Florida, uh, the number 113 of Thomas Vergara, the number 120 of Matthias Gomez, uh, the 121 of Benjamin Bonnick, the 132 of Gavin Wellsen, the 177 of Zion Birchtold, the 199 of Jax Baker, the 212 of Huxley Nolan, 218 of Batista. Larizetti, the 221 of Jao Ferre, Ferria Jr. I butchered it. I know I did. The 222 of Maxim, Maximiliano Ramirez. I'm getting tested here. Uh, the 228 of Braxton O'Brien. Carter Hildebrand, as well as Jackson LeBeau. Uh, the 300 of Heater Matos. The 301 of Graydon Junk. The 314 of Austin Lodi. 318. Lenac Latori, the 319 of Bruno Rossani, the 399 of Jackson Strabolopoulos. There's no way that was right. <laughs> Not in a million I years. I don't know, but it sounded fun to say. <laughs> Stavropoulos. Uh, it might be. I don't know. All right. 541, Max Erickson. 711. He's open 24-7. That's the rough and rowdy Rob Jones. The 721 of Weston Auto. The 728, Jace Wolf. The 928 of Jax Donato and the 999 of Leopoldo, Gonzalez, Aiden, San, and it goes away. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that long. There's not even enough room on the uh, paperwork for his name. It, <laughs> just trails, the back of his <laughs> it trails off into the sunset. <laughs> Again, some of the longest names I've seen in motorcycle racing history uh, coming across our paperwork today. But uh, I have to say, I don't 
I don't envy you so much uh, and anymore with all those names. Uh, whenever I go to reading those, and I'm like, you know, this is part of the part, part of the job that uh, I don't miss so much anymore. It, it, it's tough until, or it's not bad until you know the last name includes all of the letters in the English <laughs> and Russian alphabet. <laughs> uh, then it gets a little tricky. All righty, Mikey. We got uh, riders getting it sorted out here in this uh, second division as they make their way now here. Uh, past the announcer's tower, that uh, 24 machine opening up with the early lead. That's Eden uh, Steinbrecher there out of uh, Fair Oaks, California on the Gas Gas, back by Gas Gas, of course. Fox, Fox Dunlop, Elite, and 100%, along with uh, Pro Taper, Asterix, T-Rex, and Thrill Seekers. Epica also a big part of that program for him as well. Connor Feather running into number two, Spock. Uh, it is uh, Gavin Welzine, the 132 in third. Tyler Stancer in the number fourth place. Brody Bircher in fifth. Race Matson in sixth. Landon Lee in seventh. Stephen Green in eighth place. Zion Berktold in ninth. Tate Brush in tenth. Bryson DeChong in eleventh. And Chance Ulberg rounds out your top 12. Jax Baker, Weston Otto, Peter Matos, and Heo Ferrara in the number 16 place. But again, it's the top 12 that are transferring straight to moto number two. Eden Steinbrecher putting on a heater right now, Rodney, when he checked in about three and a half seconds over Connor Feather just after one lap and still charging forward out there. Connor Feather in that two spot. Gavin Welzine, uh, Welzine is uh, not too far behind him, but it's Tyler Stancic that does not look content for fourth place right now. He was on the move in a good battle. All right, I believe that maybe Stancic we're watching on Racer TV right now as they head, uh, well, that's the top three, four riders there heading off the uh, tail of the gator right now and that yeah that right there I believe is that battle for third places we're watching right there online Stancic trying to close that gap up on well seen and feather just ahead of that there at last check coming around a few moments ago so the race is on at least for the top three Bert you're back in the number five spot Matson in six Lee then it's Green Jr. in eighth place. Berktold in ninth. Brush rounds out the top ten. DeJong and Olberg again, your top 12 after that first lap of racing. We'll see how it sorts out after two as these leaders are now in the front section. Steinbrecher, I believe, may, is he going Oh, by? yeah, he is going to be checking into the finish About right, right now. there. <laughs> uh, checking out right now. Just been sensational through two laps of racing. Man. Turns a 159.327. Wow. Connor Feather also got a good right run going 2013. He's about five seconds back of Steinbrecher and Welzine still in that number three spot, another four seconds back. Actually, it's Brody, Brody, uh, Brody Bircher that has moved up in the fourth, is challenging for the number three spot. Danzig back in the number five position. Steve Green Jr. is sixth. Landon Lee seventh. Race Martin dropping to eighth. Zion Burke told in ninth. Uh, Bryce, uh, the, Bryson DeJong in the number 10 spot. Chance Olberg up to 11. Jax Baker now in the number 12 position. Position. We see, I believe it was Heater Matos uh, actually dropping out of a top 12 spot. Ooh, yeah, he is back into number 15 spot, Rodney. So he has got his work cut out for him. Got to pick up a few positions. Only a couple of seconds between him and a 12th place ride. And plenty of time left in this one. Just two laps into it. We've got one more division here for 65, 7 to 11. Well, I was really expecting to see this position for third place get a little tighter. Rain, as you can see, falling off the uh, front face of the camera. It's not real heavy rain, just a light sprinkle. So no more than probably visually uh, deterring, you know, aggravating, I guess you could say at this point, especially if you get behind someone and the roots get sticking on on your uh, on your lenses. But right now, course conditions are, are, are primo as far as uh, even with the light rain that is falling. Eden Steinbrecher certainly having no issues out in front. Well, as he's got less, like you like to say, Mikey, clean air. Up clean front. air, baby. <laughs> clean air. Not taking roots from anybody. Not yet. He get into the back of some of those lap riders. We might see a little different uh, appearance of that, though. Wow. Ooh, good send right there. Yeah, it was. Man, he made up a little uh, real estate with yes, that jump, too. 
as they drop down here into the Gator Pit now. It is, uh, it's starting to uh, heat up for that third place position. Steinbrecher is through, Connor Feather making his way through. He just popped off a 159.7 himself going sub two. He's still about four seconds behind Steinbrecher. At the stripe, it's uh, Wellzine and Bircher. Now the gap one second is uh, what it's telling us. And I expect that we can see that maybe tighten up if this uh, last lap, uh, late last push was any indication of what we're about to see. Take uh -oh. oh, down goes third place. Was that uh, Wellzine going down there? I believe it was. I think Bircher's going to move into that number three spot. We'll see. He gets the bike oh, was trying to get it fired back one? up. That might have been a battle for fifth and sixth. I don't well, know. Let's see. One goes down anyway. Is that Bircher maybe we're watching That on? might be the number 30, Rodney. I'm having a tough time. How, how are your eyes this morning? A little fuzzy. I had a lot of turkey last night. I'm not going to lie. I believe that is the number 30, though. I... Yeah, it is. I just saw it come through crystal clear for just a moment. Yep. So Brody Bircher still rolling out there. Yeah, so he's gotten around Wellzine, I, I believe, unless he's dropped back. There's Eden Steinbrecher back in that uh, up in that number one spot as he continues to master his craft out here. Now the lead, you know, he's riding very comfortably. Only four seconds. He's only putting down what he needs to put down. Connor Feather, pretty much the same thing. Uh, Steinbrecher came through at the end of two with a 159 lap time, and that was 159.3, a 159.7 for Connor Feather. So those guys are pretty equally matched on speed as we make our way around for lap uh, four complete now. Steinbrecher, I think he's opened it up even more now. I, have you seen second come through yet? No, we have not. And there we go, white flag coming they're, out. They're second now. So they, and there's the 30 of Brody Bircher. He's reeled him in. So maybe uh, Feather having an issue because that gap has opened up well more than four seconds. And we know that Connor Feather was on a solid ride. And whenever you take into consideration Steinbrecher even dropped to a 201 that time and the gap opened up. So uh, Connor Feather at 211. He's now 13 seconds back. One second behind him is Brody Bircher. Stephen Green up to fourth and Landon Lee now rounding out the top five. That answers it, Rodney. It was Gavin Welzine uh, that was our rider that went down there. As we uh, figured out earlier, Brody Bircher, though, on the move, takes advantage, moved into that three spot. Uh, after Gavin goes down, and he is all over Connor Feather here, white flag lap. White flag lap. Breck Steinbrecher out front, and a battle going on for the number two position. Watching Eden Steinbrecher on racertv.com. Good morning to everybody watching on racertv.com this morning. Maybe you got a little, uh, well, you got a full belly this morning, but hopefully you're having some turkey breakfast burritos or something. I bet you I know somebody that's watching up in Huntington, West Virginia this morning. Dave Ozoski. Oh, Uncle yeah. Da Uncle Dave. Yeah, he's, uh, he's been watching, I think, every moment of coverage all week long. Works up at the VA hospital in Huntington, West Virginia oh, I didn't now. I know that. That's yeah. good. Yes. And uh, he's got a lot of people into motocross, too. Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> Also wanted to give a shout out, our buddy, I posted the, the picture of us announcers and uh, our, our good buddy, Corey Benton, Benton House Pickles commented and said, man, I miss you guys. I wish I was there with you. And I don't know if you're listening this morning, Corey, but we think about you every single day and we've talked about you a lot this week, man. We miss you too. Yeah, absolutely. I could use the Benton House Pickles. For right sure. <laughs> Those are my, that's my wife and I's go-to for uh, Bloody Mary's are and the there, horseradish pickles. And there's nothing illegal Ooh. about them. They're just so good. They're delicious. They're yeah. so good. They, they should, should be, be illegal. They should be. <laughs> Another man sh who should get a ticket for speeding is Eden Steinbrecher. My. Mercy sakes alive. Had several sub two-minute lap times. Closes it out with a 204. Obviously wanted to go out there, hit his marks, and get the job done. That's just what he did. Connor Feather checks in in the two spot. Hanging on, keeping Brody Bircher at bay, who just checked in for a third-place finish. There's, oh, go ahead, Rodney. Oh, I was going to say Stephen Green there in the number four spot. Then Landon Lee will check in in fifth. Gavin Welzine back to sixth place after that little get off. Bounce back up pretty good. That's a strong finish considering um, where he went down at and getting back up quickly. Tyler Stansick in seventh place position. Zion Berktold checking in in eighth. Bryson DeChong followed by Chance Olberg in tenth. Weston Otto in eleventh. 
And I believe it is, uh, yes, Race Madsen makes the pass into the 12th place position on the final lap out of Graham, Washington to take that 12th and final transfer spot. Again, check the posting board, make sure uh, official results are what get posted there as we go next to our Division Three of the 65cc 7 to 11 year old riders. That's uh, race number 79. I'll do it. All right. You can make fun it. of me this time. All right. Yeah, let's see how you do. <laughs> Hopefully I don't get some of the mile long line right. names. I see one there already. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Drysdale, Engel David Arai Artavia, Braden Vandergriff, also Aiden Held, Gage Chevarani, uh, Chandler Powell, Luke Roach, George or Jorge Herrera, Jace Owen, Cash Riley, Nico Verhoeven, David uh, Calto, also Christian Tursky, John Everett Passero, Parker LeBeau, Tucker Coyette, Carter Holmes, Braxton Roth, Trim, Tim Lopes, also Micah Lastovica, still Leonard, Martin o, uh, Martino Spina, Cheyenne Hines, also Jeff Overstreet, Beckham Smith, uh, Noah Gillis, Brim Brockmuller, Colt Whitaker, Parker Beckington, Brantley Shad, also Revan Thompson, Steele Henderson, Kenan Zab Zabonik, also Zabonik, I should say, it is uh, Cooper Zink, Ross Anderson, Martins uh, Cyrillus, uh, Logan Albright, also we're looking at Joey Caracopa and Raylan Seagraves. 39 riders once again, times that times three. That's the number of 65, seven to 11 entries. We had top 12 once again, transferring from this one, Mikey Waynes. The secret is to just go really fast and fake it, by the way. <laughs> fake it till you make it. Act if, like you know what you're saying. I think I got well, most of those names right. If you say anything with enough conviction, people tend to believe Oh, absolutely. It. I mean, look at literally me, you, Mega, Wes. Uh, I've, convinced, I've convinced Dean Diaz a couple of times. He knows how to say it. He thinks that yeah. maybe he's get set, he go. starts second-guessing himself. <laughs> anything with enough conviction, people will believe you. All righty. Still some light sprinkles still uh, falling here. Uh, enough to be a nuisance, but not enough to be a deterrent on the racetrack yet. So that is still good things. Five. Scott goggles protecting what matters. No shortcuts for sure. So make sure you got plenty of those tear offs oh. on those Scott goggles. Cannon Zabajic in that number one spot or was as he gets past just before the Gator pit. And there we go. Battle for the lead out in front. One, two, three, and four all in. Great battle for the third place spot. That is Martins Cerilius out in front. Cannon Zavagin in the number two spot. Tim Lopes in third. Colt Whitaker fourth. Luke Roche in fifth place. Outside of that, it's Jeffrey Drysdale second. Engel David Araria Artavia in seventh place. Cash Riley, Nico Beerhoven ninth. And Carter Holmes rounding out the top ten with Parker Beckington eleventh. And John Everett Pastro, that last and final transfer spot at 12th. On the outside looking in right now, Jet Overstreet Jr. Hey, man, we got a at least three, four, maybe a five-bike breakaway right now as Cyrillus has gotten around Zabinick, and he is, uh, Zabinick not wanting to give that up, but all of a sudden he's got Tim Lopes right behind him, Colt Whitaker, and Luke Roach. As I said, those top five seem to be uh, maybe starting to step away from the rest of the field right now. This will be interesting to see what happens at the end of lap number two. Those front four riders were riding a half second between first and second, eight tenths of a second between second and third, and another five tenths of a second between third and fourth place position. It was about a second back to the fifth place ride, but Luke Roach is right there in the hunt and thick of things, or at least was, as we headed through about the halfway point. Zabinek with his hands full right now as Lopes and Whitaker track him down. It looks like Whitaker, I believe that is a rider in the back there, trying to make a pass around Lopes, goes to the outside, Woo, foot off the peg right there. Looking beautiful. They're coming at us, Rodney, gonna buzz, buzz past the Gizmo Mods Tower. And we're gonna get a live look. I don't know, it looks like rain might be picking up a little bit. Track still not seeming to uh, suffer from uh, the inclement conditions that we're seeing here right now as Martin Cirillis oh. checks it. Wow. That's Lopes up into the yeah. two spot. Lopes, so Lopes was around Cannon. Yep. Zabinick is got his hands pulled back there. Like I said, these guys are all pushing very hard up front. 
Cirillus with a half second lead last time around just made the passes. Now stretched it out to 1.9, so basically a second and a half over the rest of the field. But Timmy Lopes checking in not far off the pace of what Cirillus was turning. So maybe with a little clean air up front, we might see Lopes trying to reel in that number 751 machine. Zabinick in third, Whitaker in fourth, and uh, LaRoach, uh, Luke Roach in the number five spot. They head over the uh, Yesterday's dinner table, the head of the Gators, what I like to call it, that first step up there. Over the st second step up and to the back of the Gator, onto that, into that bottleneck as they make that hard left-hand turn, 180 degrees back this way. And drop down into the heart of this Gatorback Cycle Park. Oh, great racing here, Rodney, for our third and final division for the 65, 7 to 11. 751 Husqvarna doing a good job out in front. Tim Lopes charging, though, the number 85. Similar line choice right there. Tucker Coyette, Chet Overstreet, Martin Ospina, Jace Owen. These are all names outside the top 12 That's in wild. the 65 CC 7 to 11 class. And if memory serves me correct, we were talking about them battling for yeah. top 10, top 5 in Supercross just a few days ago. Yeah, some heavy hitters out there, some big names. I told you, they're, they're too young, they're, they're tired. They're still <laughs> sleeping. I don't think they're sleeping now, not after two laps on this track. That depends on how much turkey they got last night. They may be seeing some lingering effects. <laughs> Trip the fan, is that what that yeah. is? Yeah. Man, I'm telling you, that was, I, I don't know, but last night's Thanksgiving feast to me, it was the best I've had in, in a long, long time. Uh, a Waffle House hit just right. I saw the pictures. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks again for the invite. Well, we didn't invite the other guys either. They just showed it's, it's a free-for-all. Yeah, we I can't have, control who no, goes No, I, I knew that, and but I, 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 I almost went ahead and went, but you guys went a little too early. I was going <laughs> to eat here and then go over there and hang out with you guys, but it didn't work out that way. Martin Cirillus now in for three laps complete with Timmy Lopes back there in the number two spot, 1.8 seconds back. They're matching lap times. Too, well, actually, just a smidge faster was Lopes that time, only a few tenths of a second. Do we see a pass taking place going down the Gator pit? It looks like something's going on. I had to tune in right there as Lopes really started to put the pressure on. Martin's out here, and I want to tell you guys, Martin's is the uh, rider out of Latvia over there in Romania. Yeah, there's two of them. There's the twin brothers out yep. there, Martin's and Patrick's. We've seen Patrick's earlier right. in one of the other divisions. And, uh, Cernix gave these guys a call because he's seen him over there in Romania. Patrick is the one that won the uh, 65 race over there, and he brought him here. And look at him now. They're getting better and better every motor they're out that there. That is awesome, man. That is great. And Tim Lopes, he's a Frenchie out here. He's, he did really good here last year. He's trying to get in his groove here this year, and it looks like he's starting to get it going on there in the second place position. So we got a little Frenchie now? Oh, yeah. A little, a little Frenchie, Frenchie and Frenchie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lopes doing real well out there. Didn't have the best start. It's toward the front. He's had to work his way into that two spot. And given Martin's right now, the business. Yeah, definitely give the trying. business for sure. <laughs> like you said right now, trying to, doing everything he can to match what Martin's has to offer out here. And he is doing a good job at it. And these guys are uh, obviously best friends, you know, because they're international riders. They ride, each other, ride with each other, the GPs, often. So it's good to see him out here battling in the USA. I was, I was a little upset I missed the Waffle House. How was the Waffle House last night? Oh, it hits. It hits right. It's just, it's beautiful. Smothered and covered. <laughs> Jalapenos. Has the Waffle House never hit right? I've well, never had a bad experience. I mean, it, it, you know, the poorer the quality, the I've more I like it. <laughs> the more I like it, exactly. You can't screw up breakfast foods. We're going to come in here to True. check in for lap number four. White flag out. One more to go for these boys. Look at them now as they are both on the same finish line, jump at the same time, nearly in the air at the same time. It is your leader, Martin Surulis, and then behind him, Tim Lopes. Cam Zabinek, watch out for him out there. He'll slip up in the number three position. Your fourth place rider, it is going to be Colt Whitaker. So Whitaker doing a great job on the number 234 machine. We got Luke Roach out there doing a good job. And the fifth spot, he'll run a top five. Jeffrey Drysdale in the sixth place position. Seventh place position looks like Nico Verhoeven. Verhoeven, also one of our international riders out there doing some work in the seventh place position. And eighth place, he should make his way up the finish line right now. And eighth, it looks like it's going to be John Everett Pastro. So Pastro put in a good ride as well. Lopes inching closer now toward Martins. Ooh, is he a little slip up there for Martins? Feeling a little pressure, maybe a little weather Ooh. playing a factor. Still rain coming down. 
It's pouring sprinkles. How about that? <laughs> That's a better way to put it's it. Not sure. really yeah, it's like gotten a little heavier, so nasty, I, I expect the track's probably going to start seeing some effects from it here soon. A little lap traffic there through the gator tail. They go. I'm sure all these boys are excited to see those ruts cleared out of that thing. Right. Did you see the Instagram post last night, Winkern, the kids laying, laying down. down. It was, Couldn't even see the kid. You could, uh, he was buried in the rut. That's beautiful. And what's beautiful right now is this little bit of a lead that the 751 machine has been able to keep over the 85. Again, that is Martin Sturlis and Tim Lopes running one and two right now in the 65cc 7 through 11 class. Yeah, Martins has done a real good job. I feel like every time he either hears or maybe catches Lopes out of his peripheral, he finds another gear, wicks it up a bit, pushes, gets that gap back, and then begins to maintain. Little little miniature Jet Lawrence maneuvers going on out there. And you know, you can definitely tell the difference in the international ride style, the American ride style. For sure. And he's going to come up to take the checker flag here for us. And this division number three race, it's Martin Sturlis taking the win. Tim Lopes with a respectful second place position right there. As we await the rest of the pack to come through, of course, and third, I believe it is still Cannon Zabinick. Is it Zabinick or Zaboynik? I've heard it called a couple different ways. I always thought it was Zabinick. I don't know. Yeah, I'll go with Zabinick. He's going to finish up in the number three position. Four or spots Zabonic. to be Colt Whitaker. Yeah, yeah. Zabinick. <laughs> it's, yeah. Luke Roach, he's going to get the fifth spot running at your top five on the number 20 machine. So good ride for Roach right there. Drysdale hanging in there. He's going to finish up your sixth place position. Seventh, Nico Verhoeven. So Verhoeven doing a good job out there on the number 26 machine. Looking for our eighth place rider to check in with us. It should be John Everett Pastro. Pastro, he's been turning a lot of heads this week. Had a lot of good rides out there, so awesome job for him. Engel David Araya Achidatavia going to finish up into that uh, eighth pl in ninth place position. Carter Holmes going to round out your top ten. Jet Overstreet's going to go to eleventh. And our last transfer position going to the number eight machine of Braden Vandergriff. And unfortunately, finding the Celsius LCQ, we'll see Cash Riley in the 13th spot, 14 Tucker Coet, and Martin Ospina, one of our heavy hitters from overseas. He's going to finish up in the 15th, and he'll round out your top 15 out there right now in the 65cc 7 through 11 division number three race. What do we got going on the track, Mikey? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked. How about it? Super Mini 2. We got the all right. Let's go. So we're getting close here. Super Mini 2, Division 1 of 2. And then, hey, folks, we will be rolling in to LCQs. Uh, so make sure you know if you are in one of those. If you're like, ah, I think I'm good, go double check all of the things. Make sure you know when you go in those LCQs. So again, race number 80, Super Mini 2, Division 1, Boris Flores, uh, Caden Wellsier, Hannah Cole, Caden West, Talon Staggs, Deglin Carmody. We're off and rolling, gates down, riders battling for that VP Racing Fuels hole shot. McCaden Fitch, Cannon Hargrove, the 42 of Nicholas Seagale, Matthew Williams, Jaden Riley, Lincoln Bartholomew, Inaki Aberzua, as well as Ryder Skodras, Aiden Vassy, Brady Rodecker, Christian Nyman, Cooper Craig, the 157, Tom Laurent, Colton Waits, Matthew Cole on the 164, Carson Adams, the 191 of Austin Camden, 209, Preston Ross, Max Welziak, Grant McDonald, the 314 of Kane Bolasina, the 360 of Ryan Amancio, number 414 of CW Caleb Wood, Ethan Abels, the 555, the 626 of Carter Dreschel, Macy Fillman and a Maverick Gold is your starting gate for Super Mini 2, 13 to 16, Division number one. Yeah, out there with the early lead right now. I see the 29 get out in front. That is the number 29 machine of McCaden Fitch, who's off to a great start out there. The 37 was behind him. That's Cannon Hargrove. So Hargrove is making a push right there. And we got a Kawasaki rider out there. I don't want to make any guesses. Look at who we got on the Kawasaki machine out there. I believe it's going to be. No. No, I don't think that's the one right there. I'll try to get a number on screen. But while I'm trying to get a number on screen, I want to tell you guys right now, what I see is MX Tire down there. Down there at Dunlop, Black Friday special deals going on, plus MX Tire. MX Tire Black Friday sale. Buy a pair of goggles. Get a pair of tear-offs for free. Can't beat that one, especially on a day like this. Troy Lee pants and jersey sets for $89.99. At the Cats, underwear, towels, T-shirts, socks. Buy one, get one free. Mix and match. All kinds of deals going down at MX Tires. we got to check them out. Black Friday deals going on. Deals going on in the pits. Deals shaking down on the track. 
McCaden Fitch leading the way. Cannon Hargrove in the two spot, and it is the 414 of Caleb Wood, CW, the GNCC kid out there doing his thing in the rain. He's probably salivating on the starting line when this one started. Kane Bolasina in fourth, Matthew Williams in fifth, Lincoln Bartholomew sixth, seventh place, Grant McDonald, Anaki Arbazua, eighth place, Talon Staggs in the number nine spot, Caden Wills winds here in tenth place. Rounding out the top 10, we take what the top 18, I believe, right? Yeah, top 18. Who do we got after 10? After 10 out there, we got an 11th rider. Scott just doing a good job. Brady Rodecker in the 11th spot. Sorry, Brady Rodecker in the 12th spot. I'll, I'll get it together here. That, you know, Thanksgiving it's early, dinner. Baby. It's the early. number nine machine of Boris Flores. He's in the 13th spot. 14th spot, we see the 160 of Colton Waits. And behind Waits, Austin Camden in 15th. Christian Nyman in the 16th place position. 17th to Jaden Riley. 18th, Max Wilsack. And behind him, Carson Adams and Caden West, they're the riders that are outside that transfer position. So look for West and Adams to move up. Caleb Wood moves into the number two spot now on that 4-1-4 Kawasaki. Putting that uh, work together for the Shoals MX out there, Caleb Wood is. That's yeah, awesome still, to see. Still rocking his mullet. He's one of the first kids I knew that had a mullet and it is glorious. You know what I would like to see? I'd like to see a Wood battle, because I thought it was Carson Wood at first, but he, he said it's Caleb Wood, so I was really confused out there. So both these Team Green Kawasaki riders Heck doing a yeah. great job in the Super Mini Classes. Yeah, Caleb no slouch. I don't want it to go to his head, but I keep telling him he's he's the second coming of AP, so. <laughs> love to hear it. So mom and dad, don't back home, don't tell him I said that. Don't show him the audio clip. I don't want it going to his head, but he's doing well so far. So is McCaden Fitch. Caleb Wood in the two spot trying to track him down. Fitch, a sub two minute lap time, a 157, 279. Cannon Hargrove. So Hargrove in the two spot. Okay, Caleb Wood, little battle back and forth. Hargrove in the two spot with a 157, five. Caleb Wood third. Kane Bolasina hanging with the boys. Back and forth. Matthew Williams rounding out the top five. Watch this battle start to unfold. We see Bolasina trying to go to the outside. Wood right here looks like he's made it happen. That outside around the hump in the pit was a fast line. That line, has, we've seen so many passes yeah. there, and it's honestly shocked me. We've not seen more guys taking it. That's what I'm saying, man. I was telling my kids, I was, they probably even take it after I told them just because that inside is, looks so enticing, but that yeah. outside line down there is hot. It, it is. I mean, and we have got the perfect view from up here in the tower. We've seen so many passes happen right there. Bolasina is obviously tuning in to Racer TV. But watch Wood now as he's making his way. They're about to go up to the Gator Tail right here. Let's see if he switches his line up and try to make a move back on Bolasina because you know this kid well. He wants top three right now. Oh, for sure. Hey, go out there and get him. Oh, a little mistake by him, actually. And who's that rider behind him out there? Is that uh, maybe Matthew, Matthew Williams? Matthew Williams, out there? Matthew Williams wants in the fight. I'm so torn. Those are my two buddies. <laughs> Wood and Kane Bolasina out there toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So it's pretty cool for you to get to watch them out there yeah. doing the battle. You know, you got to cheer them both on. It makes it easy on the fence side. Hey, go, go, That's go. right. Go, go, go. <laughs> I saw Mikey cheering for me. All right. I got you, buddy. <laughs> All kinds of traffic starting oh, to get behind man. Wood right there. Again, it is Williams, but Williams about to be passed up by another one of our riders right behind him. That might be Bartholomew. Lincoln, Lincoln Bartholomew right. back there. If it is, he's doing a good job changing lines and looking for opportunity, not playing follow the leader. As Wood stretches it out just a little bit for the moment, but I got a feeling if that is a uh, uh, Bolasina or a uh, Williams and Bartholomew pushing. Yeah, it looks like that's Williams on the 46 machine right there behind Wood making a push right now. He's trying to make some moves as we talk. There goes McCaden Fitch, three laps in now. Cannon Hargrove still in the two spot. Bolasina, we saw the pass on Wood. He's up into third, so Wood drops to fourth. Matthew Williams, a little bit of a faster pace than uh, Caleb Wood, a 158.8. Lincoln Bartholomew is that sixth place rider. Grant McDonald, seventh. Anaki Arbazua, eighth. Ryder Scottgrass making uh, a pass on Talon Staggs for ninth. Staggs, tenth. And that is your top ten through three. Yeah, then we see Caden Wenzier in the 11th place position. Colton Waits making some moves out there. He's in 12th. Look for Austin Cam to make some moves before this one's over. He's in the 13th spot right now. And Jaden Riley in 14th. 15th is Carson Adams, 16th Brian, Brian Flores, Boris Flores, Brady Rodacker in the 17th spot, Christian Nyman in the 18th spot, and Caden West, I thought he was going to make some moves out there, but he's not making them happen as fast as he wants to. This thing is coming to a close here really fast. These guys are running some great lap times. Megawatt. 
I'll post that one. I got you, buddy. <laughs> McCaden Fitch. Uh, you know, we've had battles all over the place, Dean, but McCaden Fitch has been that one guy out there that's I'm going to get out front, and then I don't have to worry about you guys. I'll worry about some lap traffic, but I don't have to worry about making sure I pass the guy in front of me. Yeah. Doing the work. Let's take a look at the lap times here. 155 for McCaden Fitch. Definitely running the fastest time out there right now. 156 for Hargroves. Bola Cena got to run 156 as well, but just a little bit faster than hard. I mean, I don't know if I say a little bit faster. Two tenths of a second. Hey, every <laughs> little bit counts, though, right? It's true, I yeah, because it adds up. Five corners later, he's one second. That's it. <laughs> We're watching him now drop back into the pit, into the Gators' mouth, deep into the Gators' mouth right now. <laughs> and they're going to come out, jump out of this little cavity right here. Oh, I see uh -huh. what you, did there. Yeah, you like that? I like that. If you had enough pumpkin pie and desserts, you might have a cavity this morning. Oh, yeah, that's true. Or if you're like me, you drank too much energy, and that's another whole other conversation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Speaking of conversations, there's no conversation about it. McCaden Fitch, he is turning heads out there right now, leading this thing out. Cannon Hardgrove's in second. He's the second faster that time through, so something to watch there. Two seconds to buy them. No white flag coming out, so we might see a little battle here before this one's over by Hardgrove and Fitch. Yeah, if you're Hardgrove right now, if you can keep him in your sights, if you can see him, you can pass him, right? Yep, so, exactly. uh, and white flag not out, so if he can inch away or chip away at it a little bit, maybe cut that two and a half second lead down to about a second and a half. Maybe make something happen next lap around. And I want to tell you, keep your eyes on Anaki Abarzua, man. He's running a 157 Scoot. in traffic. We're going to see him on screen here shortly, I'm sure. Yeah, he has Matthew Williams, the rider. He actually lost a position. He was up in fifth. Lincoln Bartholomew got around him. So Matthew Williams back there trying to regroup and stop the bleeding. As through the gator tail now, I believe we're watching our leaders on screen. They're going to make their way into the rollers. And I'll tell you what, Hargroves is coming. He wants this moto win. He's not settling. No, yeah, you're right. I mean, he's pushing. I believe we'll see white flag next time they come through. Yes, we'll see the white flag next time through. So Hargrove getting it set up. What do you think? What do you think, Dean? Is he going to take our outside line over there as he's getting ready to go up the gator back? It looks like he's going to follow him right there, you know? I mean, it's a safe, oh, I'm not saying in the future. Uh -huh, so come in white flag. I want to see him on that outside line right over there. We keep preaching. And we keep preaching. I'll tell you what, if he is close enough, he pulls the trigger. I, and honestly, he doesn't even have to be that close. We've seen passes. Yeah. Made, we didn't think they were going to make a pass. And all of a sudden, they have that momentum going up the hill. Yes. And you got to think about that. You go you over the inside hump. You're wasting your time. You're going over more track. I mean, you can grab a good angle going up the hill. Yeah. But think how much momentum you're going to lose as you go down sure. and come back up that hill. Yeah, in, in that outside line, it's allowed guys to keep that power on the ground, mm -hmm. get a good drive. And you know, I remember growing up, sorry to interrupt. I no, remember, you're good. I remember growing up here, like, I don't think the inside hump was there, or maybe it wasn't as big, but my line was always to come up the outside, square it up, just so I had a good drive up to what we used to call the dinner table. Yeah. And it's just all about angles, because when you go around the hump, what you do, you set yourself up to jump to the outside. Right. So the people on the inside hump, they might have gotten past, but they're going to try to carve back underneath you as you go up the step up strategy yeah a lot of strategy a lot of racecraft and we didn't see any passes made the 29 machine still holding on to it right now leading it out as he makes his way back down just out of that camera shot is hard grove yeah i'd say that's deep in the gators back right there <laughs> speaking of gator i feel like it should be a tradition we should maybe start this next year mm -hmm. on thanksgiving we have gator tail i'm in that's a good tradition I am in. I'm just going to rely on you for that, though. We don't have any <laughs> gators in Indiana. That's true. So. You, have you ever had gator tail? Oh, I have. Oh, I have. Good yeah. Stuff. yeah. It looks like Fitch, man, he is definitely picking it up. He felt the pressure by Hargroves, and he knew what he had to do, and it's wicked up a little bit, and he sure has done so right now. But yeah. you look at time to score, and it's a second again, man, and he's a second. 1.8 seconds. It's almost two seconds. I can't really say that, but definitely cut it down a little bit. Yeah, he's chipped away at it. He's going to have enough time to catch him, though. Ooh. Ooh it's going to be close. It is going to be close. Fitch's got to be just about flawless. He's looking oh, good. Man. There's the 37 Hargrove. They're going to dip down into the Gator pit. Hargrove goes wide around the turn, tries to get a good drive. Let's see. Will Fitch keep it on two wheels? Up the face of the finish line. Jump. There it is. Checkered flag flies. Bang. McCabe Fitch hangs on. 
great ride from Caden Fitch. Also great ride for Cannon Hargroves. He's got to keep his head held high because M2 is just as good as a one in that first moto for sure, especially when you know you were one of the faster guys out there on the track. Give you some confidence moving forward. I'm sure these guys are going to go to the fence lines and watch division number two as our third place rider going to check in with us. It is Kane Bull seeing around like your top three. Caleb Wood, he's your boy holding him in there. He's going to finish up in fourth. Good ride for him. Lincoln Bartholomew, he's going to finish up in fifth. Sixth place. Anaki Arbazua, I told you, watch Abarzua, yeah, man. He's going to make some moves out there, and he does. He's going to slide up into the sixth place position. Matthew Williams going to follow to the seventh. Grant McGonnell hold on to eighth. Ninth spot. Ryder Scott, just talent stags in the tenth spot. Eleventh spot. Caden Winsier. Austin Camden is going to make his way up to the twelfth. Jaden Riley is going to finish up thirteenth. Fourteenth, we see Colton Waits. Our fifteenth place position looks like Carson Adams. Sixteenth, Boris Flores. And then we got Brady Rodecker and Caden West. Caden West just slips in there on that last lap. What do we got taken off the gate right now? We'll update you guys. We got uh, LCQs coming up after our uh, division number two, Super Mini 2. Uh, and all those LCQs, from what we understand, will be three laps. Again, LCQs will be three laps. So, guys, they're going to go quick. Uh, so if you are in one of those LCQs, make sure you know when and where you're supposed to be. Super Mini 2, 13 to 16, division number two here on a... Uh, Black Friday. Deals all over the place. We'll give you a rundown of riders here. Colton Legg, uh, Preston Crakey, Tristan Pruitt. Seen some sensational riding out of him this week. Colby Lesser, as well as Christopher Harris, Fernando Garcia, Jackson McCarty, Vincent Way, Trevor Dunn, Tyler Tolos, Jack Smith, Tommy Doble, John Duel Corriano, Austin Meads, 94, Tanner Dorman, Rossi Shoemate, Madison Casimir, Kylie Inman, Tristan Lucas, Gage, Patrick Collins, Kane Markham, and Cash Bullinger, as well as the 199 of Jacob Hawk, Leon Gomez Cortade, Cade Martin, Carson Williams, Benjamin Moya, as well as the 377 of Joel Newcomb, the 444 of Wyatt Duff, Christopher Henshaw, as well as Sebastian Gabriel, and then it cuts off, and he's out of St. Cloud, Florida. Oliver Camp, as well as the 9-3-0, a dangerous, dangerous man, Seth Dennis. And that is your starting gate for Super Mini 2, 13-16, Division number 2. Wow. And I heard you talk about the Concies again. Conci racing coming up just after this. Mini E48, Conci number one. We need you up into the staging area. Going into the shoot right now, 85cc 911 Limited, Conci 1, Conci 2, you need to be up there in first call, 3DC Limited. Like you said, we got to rack and we got to stack them. We're going to gate drop here with our Constellation races. It's yep. going to be intense. Whoa, intense as Seth Dennis tossing it yes. over the finish line right there on the opening lap. Feeling really good and comfortable out there. I'm just guessing that's Seth Dennis. Yeah, yeah nailed it. Good no, guess. 9, 9.30. Yeah, uh, 9.30. KTM Orange Brigade ride. Making Daniel Blair happy out there, Seth Dennis is. Happy or nervous? Well, maybe <laughs> a little both. <laughs> maybe yeah. a little both. Hang on. See, there you go. Seth Dennis likes that outside line. So does Vincent Way. Right, they're listening. They're tuning in. Carson Wood said, no, nah, I'm going to kick it old school. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nope. I mean, he's up in third, so, you know, he's, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, he grand. knows where he's comfortable. Around for lap number one, we've seen Seth Dennis, Vincent Way, Carson Wood, Wyatt Duff, Ryan Montasio, Jackson McCarty, Rossi Shoemate, Austin Meads, Tanner Dorman, and Gage Patrick Collins as your top ten right now. What's it going to take to transfer out there? It's going to take a top 18, right? It's going to take a top 18. We'll take a look outside of that top 10. Preston Crakey in the 11th spot. Colby Lesser in 12th. Christopher Harris 13th. 14th is a 250 of Leon Gomez Cortade. The 15th place ride right now is Kane Markham. Oliver Camp 16th. Jack Smith 17th. And Tristan Lucas in that final transfer position of 18th. On the outside looking in right now, Jacob Hawk, the 199. They're looking good as they're making their way through. That Gators tail, it is your leader, Seth Dennis. Put, trying to put on a show out here right now, you know. Rain's coming down. He's a Florida boy. He's kind of used to it, so he wants to show you guys what he has. Yeah, Seth Dennis looking good. He's chilly. He kept the jacket on. Not mad at him. I don't think we're looking at Dennis on screen right now. That oh, that's a Montio. Montio. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. All right, KTM jacket still. I was close. <laughs> I had the right jacket, wrong rider. Ryan Amancio, the 360. Uh, battling back there with Wyatt Duff. There he is, 360. Now I recognize that machine. Speaking of battles, man, look at the second and third place battle right now that we're seeing up as they go up the finish line right now. Seth Dennis checking in, but here comes it. Oh, wheeling! That Monster Energy Kawasaki cool. rider of Carson Wood shows you how much power he has in the rear wheel by Kawasaki. That was gnarly. 
That there we was go. gnarly. We got them on screen now. They're getting to see this race live on Racer TV. It is Vincent Way and Carson Ooh. Wood going at it right now. <laughs> you got swap. nervous for Way. I got nervous for Wood. <laughs> These uh, little doppelganger uh, carbon copies of each other. Both riders taking that outside line we've been preaching. So Carson Wood says, I just wanted to show you, Dean. I wanted to show you, Mikey. I can take both lines. Yeah, he can make them both work, and he's making them both work right now as he puts the press on Vincent Way. Yeah, he is charging hard toward Vincent Way. Look out, rain begins to pick up a little bit. As Carson Wood goes to work on the number 260, Kawasaki. Mr. Mike Burkeen tuning into the action here, jumping right in front of us. <laughs> this is a good one out here, Mike. I know you're watching it. As Vincent Way is in second, he's trying to stay in front of Carson Wood. Looks like he actually pulled out a little bit. I'll have to see what time the scoring shows us. Yeah, Vincent Way doing a good job. Don't know if he hears the machine or what, but picks it up a little bit, stretches it out. But here comes Carson Wood firing back. His roller speed is great. Look at that magnificent through the rollers. But he's going to take that way outside line. You know, the last year, I remember that way outside line. I stepped in, I paced it out. It's way over more than half or twice as much distance to go to that outside as it is the inside so that's something you gotta watch out for long way around is it worth it Carson Wood continues to work the track he's not playing follow the leader no and I'm, I really respect the way he's riding right now you see how he's so making off the berm smooth. riding the outside yeah super smooth all the Kawasaki boys I feel like that's yeah. the go-to is being super smooth out there on the track Carson Wood begins to reel in Vincent Way again now into the Gator pit they go Seth Dennis checks in three laps complete for the 9-3-0 a 156-2 for him. Vincent Way and Carson Wood check in in second and third. Ooh, Vincent Way a little faster than Seth Dennis, as is Carson Wood. And that might have something to do with the fact that Vincent Way's getting no breaks. Yeah, he's getting no Wood breaks. Behind he's, put, him. he's putting the push on. He's definitely turned up the intensity, as I like to call it. As he felt Wood there right behind him. And you're right, man. Vincent Way is starting to reel in our leader just a little bit. I'm not sure if we'll have enough time to see anything happen, but, man, what, is, what kind of confidence does that bring to the table going into mode number two? Uh, it's got to be huge as, as those guys turn in faster lap times. And, again, I think a lot of that is the push just between him and Wood pushing each other toward the front. Yeah, but I also feel like Seth Dennis is that guy that goes, okay, you guys are you're, you're getting close? Yeah. All right. Let me turn on I'm the get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. Watching Wood again, taking a lot of those outside lines. I think his main goal and focus right now is momentum and traction. Look, tra go ahead. No, after you, I swear. Uh, after that top three, give some love to the rest of these guys. Wyatt Duff in fourth. Amancio still back in the number five spot. Jackson McCarty, sixth, seventh place. Rossi Shoemate. Austin Meads in the number eight spot with Oliver Camp in ninth. Colby Lesser rounding out the top ten, taking the top 18 out of this one. He goes on the outside again. And man, I, I respect it, trying to take different lines and stuff, but he gets li literally right on the rear wheel away going into that corner. I think if you just tuck in right behind him and be right behind him and not lose a little bit of distance, I think that would help him. But watch now as they take a different split lane right here. Woods really been making that left side come to life right there, right on the outside. You see him right now as he hits, almost hits the rear wheel of our second place. Oh, almost slips up right there, but that Dunlop hooking up and getting that traction to make that car up that hill. Pick it up, Mikey. Oh, we're going down into the Gator pit. Vincent Way down first, the number 27 Husk Varna as Wood now showing him that front wheel. It's going to get good this lap. This is where Carson Wood's going to make his move right here. Mikey, feeling pretty confident about it. Oh, as I'm feeling launch, good. Man. Wood definitely riding, I think, a little bit on the edge right there, and it shows that he's doing a great job of controlling that monster energy Kawasaki and keeping it underneath them. But look at him now as they drop in. Check out time and scoring. Was Vincent Way again faster than Seth Dennis? Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, Way, Wood, both. And now it's just under four seconds up to Seth Dennis. White flag's not out yet. Still some time to maybe catch up to him. And they're going to get into a little bit of the lap traffic this time around. Let's talk about situation. Vincent Way, you know, he was trying to fight back Carson Wood, but now he sees himself catch Seth Dennis. It's almost like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, it is. Like, let's do this. Let's go. Let's go. Three-way battle. We're fine with it. Wood still opting to work the track and look for some opportunity. And there goes Way again, putting a little bit of distance between them. And you see them now, they're all three on the same screen, all through the same section. I know it's a long section, that 20 miles of bad road down there, that big gator tail, but they're all in the picture. There you go. Just got a quick glimpse of Seth Dennis on the next turn. 
And that's got to let Dennis know, too. You know he can see just out of the peripheral. Hey, those guys are closing oh. in a little bit. Oh, that's, not, oh, that's, that's him. Dennis. That's Seth Dennis. What happened there, Dennis man? Dennis goes down. That happened off screen. Tough break for Seth Dennis. I don't know if he was starting to see these guys coming or what, but that is not what you want to do. All right, maybe he shouldn't look out of his peripheral. Yeah, now, so Vincent Way can get himself a win right here, and Carson Wood knows he can get himself a win as well. Oh, look at the sense of urgency out of both of those guys. They said, hey, suddenly I was battling for a two. Now I'm battling for a one. Both guys wick it up, and you know Carson Wood, did, or excuse me, Seth Dennis did a fantastic job getting back on that machine, getting back in the fight. White flag comes out. Oh. Is there going to be a side-by-side -side battle for the white flag? No, it's way out in front. Small gap back to Wood. Wood. White flag out, man. It's go time, show time out here at Gatorback Cycle Park. And Seth Dennis, he's trying to join this party as well. We watch Vince away, Carson Wood, and Seth Dennis. One, two, and three right now in the Super Mini Division number two. Here we go. We're closing out the last of these first motos in style. Vincent Way. He had his hands full with Carson Wood. He still has his hands full. But the scenario changes now. It's for a first place finish. And Mikey, I want you to interrupt me at any time when I do this, but I'm going to go ahead and give these guys a rundown because there's more guys out there in the track. we got to sure. show them some love. For sure. I'll so, keep my eyes on it. <laughs> Vincent Way, our leader. Carson Wood in second. Seth Dennis in the third spot. Wyatt Duff in the fourth place position. Ryan Amancio, he's in fifth. Sixth spot is Oliver Camp. Jackson McCarty in seventh. Eighth spot, Rossi Shoemate. Colby Lester in ninth. Tenth spot, running at your top ten is Austin Needs. Christopher Harris in eleventh. Tanner Dorman in the twelfth spot. Thirteenth, Leon Gomez Cortada. Behind Cortada, we got the number... Oh, 50 of Jack Smith. He's going to be in 14th, 15th is Colton Lake. He's going to move on up out there. Gage Patrick Collins, he's in the 16th place position. Looking for our 17th place rider. He's going to check in. It should be Kane Markham and Tristan Lucas going to take that final transfer position as they go on this last lap right here. And you know, last lap, anything could change. Ooh, Vincent Way started to stretch it out. There was a little bobble by Carson Wood down 20 miles of bad road, but he's able to recover. Wicks it up a bit. Now all over the rear wheel again of Vincent Way. And let's see. All right, Wood, loving that outside line. Gets a good drive right there, inching up a little closer now to Vincent Way as they'll buzz past the Yamaha announcing tower. And here they go, down into the Gator Pit. Way out in front, Wood in the two spot. One more turn to go. Vincent trying to hang on for a first place finish. Keeps it on two wheels. Bang! Checkered flag flies, and it's going to be Vincent Way taking first place. Carson Wood, heck of a ride. We'll take second, and Seth Dennis, after a little get off, able to maintain that third place position. And that is your top three. I got to go ahead and make a shout out real quick. If anybody out there has seen a cat, found Ooh. a cat, cat's gotten in there, we have a lost cat that happened last night. And this cat's name is Bagheera, like the Jumbo Book. A very friendly, no teeth, can't bite. And there is a big reward out oh. there for that one. So hey. just going to show you how important that cat is to the family. Yeah, find that cat. Find that cat, big reward again. Lost cat named Bagheera. Please get it back to its owner. I was actually down there with the owner of the cat. He's a little boy. He was, he was almost oh. in tears. You know, he's I missing this cat it. right now. Take a look at the rest of these guys. We talked a lot about those top three with those battles, but outside of that, Wyatt Duff finishes fourth. Ryan Amancio fifth. Oliver Camp sixth place, seventh place. Yeah, they stay charged all the way through that one. Seventh place, Jackson McCarty, Rossi Shoemate. Eighth, ninth going to be Austin Meads. With Christopher Harris finishing in the number 10 spot. Tanner Dorman, 11th. 12th place, Leon Gomez Cortade. Colby Lesser, 13th. 14th going to go to Jack Smith. Colton Lake, the number two KTM, will finish in the 15 pop spot with Gage Patrick Collins finishing in 16th. And we expect to see, is it going to be Cade Martin and Kane Markham? Yes, Cade Mar Markham checks in in the 17th position. And there is Kane Markham. Moving on. The rest of the class will have to move to the LCQ. And that's where we're at. Yep. Consolation Concies. race number one out there on the track right now. In the race order, that is race number 82. So race number 83, 85, 9, 11, limited. Conti number one, you're on the starting line. In the staging area, we do race number 84. That is 85, CC, 9, 11, limited. Constellation race number two. Also up there in the staging area, we need the 85, race number 85. 250C limited, Conti number one. You guys are needed down there into the staging area at this time. I'm going to go ahead and shout out 85, photo 13, limited, race number 86. We need you guys in the staging area now. Remember, we are in the Constellation racing now. If you have to ride a Consi race, 
you guys better be paying attention and paying attention to what cons you're in. If you had three divisions in your heat race, you have two consies. And if you had just two divisions, you'll have one constellation race out there. On screen, we'll watch these guys go through the cut track. We got a Cobra Mini E-Rider out there in the lead. I'll let you know who that is when they make their way back through here and the timing and scoring. Whoa, a 320 machine make a little sideways mistake right there. A little crafting maneuver to keep on that steed. Oh, our leader looking back. That's not something you want to do as you're leading this race out right now. You don't want to look back. You don't want to see what's behind you. All you want to do is see what's in front of you, and that's some great racetrack. So as you mentioned, Dean, these will go quick, man. Three laps. We'll keep you guys posted on our LCQ order. And what transfers depends on how many divisions they had. So I know if we had three divisions, what we're taking the top four. Dean's looking it up. All right, we're turned in right here in this consolation race. This is the Mini E4-8 to eight on the track right now. Looks like top six we're going to take here in this consolation race. And we will have just one Conti of these Mini E riders. So again, top six going to make it out of this one. And if it was one of those three divisions, we have two consolation races. So if there's two consies out there, like it's 85, 9, 11 limited, we're going to take the top three out of those. We got to sort it out. Yeah, we had to get the abacus out and do a little bit of math, which is very difficult for us, yeah. I, I believe me. Got it going on, though, that's for sure. Right now, out there on the track is our mini E-rider, Jer Jerry Urbanowski. He was your ride on 857 Cobra, leading it out. Brian Garrison, second, down next deal. He is in the third spot, fourth spot, Lorenzo Alves, Amadio Gonzalez, Adami. He's in the fifth spot, running the top five, and Knox Johnson. He's the man on the bubble. And that's not where you want to be in this one, but hey, I guess that is where you want to be, but you don't want that pressure behind you. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, a lot of pressure and just, it's no good. You got to move. You got to move. move. Keep want to be a little forward. safe, safer, especially conditions like this. I mean, they're not gnarly, gnarly conditions, but uh, any, this is one of those races with, with the added weather element. Anything can happen. We welcome, or do we? Are you just you just want to hear us closer? No, no, he wants, he wants to talk a, pow -wow. a little bit. You know? Heck yeah! Welcome to the booth, Mike Burkeen. How are you, buddy? I'm great. I haven't had a chance to talk to you yet. This I know. Week. I've talked to the rest of these guys. We chit chat a little bit. I'm not sure. I, I thought you were working here, but I haven't heard you up here on the mic at all. <laughs> no, no, oh. no, no, no. Just chilling. Wow, Mike Burkeen <laughs> taking shots. My goodness. Hey, I'm, I'm like right down in. there like a bullseye, a target with a bullseye on it all day. So yeah. yeah. Everybody takes a shot you, at you. So, yeah, that's it. I get it. How's the week been going for you, Mike? You know, honestly, I, it's been as about as good as it could have been. Yeah. I mean, we've... Uh, wait, wait, wait. No. That's past tense. Good as it could be. Don't say bad. We're, we're, we're not there yet. Well, yeah. the week so far has been as good as it could have been, and it's... You know, at the end of the day, this is going to blow out of here in about an hour, and it's not raining hard enough. It's... It's actually going to leave us with a great racetrack this afternoon, just like it did the last time it rained in the morning. So, Yeah, I agree with you on that, man. I think it's going to be a great racetrack. Like you said, this stuff's going to blow over. They'll probably get the tractors back out there a little bit, mix this water in with the dirt, and make it a great racetrack. Yep. And, it, you know, the other day when it rained, I, I was, one of the things that really impressed me, I looked out on the racetrack, there were seven pieces of equipment working on the racetrack. Yeah, three, three of them in one section. Yeah. So, I mean, you're... The fact that they've got their their ducks in a row and everything's you know they're prepared for anything you know it's Florida it does rain every now and then and I you know we were all here when that when it rained in the parking lot the water was three feet deep. I remember down that there. you got a lot better attention down there now. <laughs> yeah, there's a uh, some drains and stuff down there now, but you know, there were a lot of Florida motorhomes that year. But again, that, that just goes back to what I said before. Every year things get better. They find a problem. Next year it's fixed. It's yeah. like. Have you ever seen Wind Kern's notes? Uh, I haven't, but I can only imagine. Oh, it's a stack. I can only imagine. And the reason I say that is because when we talk about the event, you know, in August, September, October, like anything that I've thought of from the year before, he's already taken care of. 
Yeah, absolutely. There's no doubt. Well, already done, so. Speaking of doing it right now, that's Lorenzo Alves leading out. He's got around Dre Urbanowski. Urbanowski in the second spot. Amadio Gonzalez Hadami in third. Bryson Garris in the fourth spot. Colton Harper in the fifth spot. And Ella Crisp, I was hoping she made some moves. She's going to move up into that, that final transfer position. She's in sixth place out there right now. Yeah, it's cool to see the mini mini E46 spots, to see the little guys out there. <laughs> I see the one legger out of them at 31 machine. He is pumped up about this little win right here. Like I always tell everybody, I, the consolation race isn't where you want to be, but if you get in the consolation race, get more track time, and you get a win out there, it's a good feeling. Oh, no doubt. No oh, doubt. we got the stack. There it is. That's what we were waiting for. So top six advancing out of this one. Checkered flag out, Lorenzo Owls moving on. Amadio Gonzalez, Adami. It may be longer than that, but that's where it cuts off. <laughs> Advances, and we wait on the rest of the pack. Or late, wait on scoring to catch up. There it goes, Colton Harper finishes in the three spot. Ella Crisp. How about that, fourth, oh. Waylon Dunn. Urbanowski. Who's up into fifth, where you at? Urbanowski, Knox Johnson sixth, and that's it. Those riders advance. Yeah, poor Urbanowski. Like we were talking, he was leading this thing out at one time. And the second man, tough break for Urbanowski. And he's our rider that's down before the finish line down there. Let's see some caution flags out there. Mini E, Mini E wrapping up. And coming up next is going to be the 85 CC 9 to 11 limited. And believe we're taking the top three, three. Yep, out three of this, this one. one. And what a, what a tough break there for Urbanowski. Take it, making that final corner. He had he had the checkered flag right there. He had a qualifying mm. spot. That hurts. Yeah, it does hurt. You know, over the years that corner's bit a few people though. It's nice, you know, deep ruts there, tight, tight ruts. That's a great place for passing. It's a, it's a really a fantastic last corner of a racetrack because a lot of stuff can happen there. There's opportunities to go. I've seen guys go wide and slingshot past people. I've seen people come to the inside and go around people, and I've seen a lot of people go inside or go outside. I've actually seen one guy go straight and <laughs> jump into the pond. So it's uh, it's a good last turn for sure. Definitely gives a lot of action, adds a lot of thrill out there. Speaking of thrill, coming off the gate right now, 85 CC 911. Conti number one. we got two of them in this one. Looks like Austin Keller out there at the whole shot. He had some issues in his... Uh, qualifying race yesterday so he's good to get out there to take this lead way right now he's on number 218 ktm doesn't look like it's slowing these guys down any so no. track's pretty good i think it's sort of hyping them up you know they think they got some good traction out here they're looking ahead they're making some moves out there switch his line up a little bit is our 218 machine our leader out there I mean, we got the racer TV right here. We got the live on screen. But, man, I'll tell you what, this track, like he's talking about, it's looking great right now. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I kind of expected worse just from looking at the radar. Um, but, it, you know, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's actually in a pretty good shape. It's definitely in good shape right now. I think maybe the 630 machine of Murdy. He is in the third place ride right now. He rounds like the top three. Again, that is your final transfer result position. If we have two constellation races, we're only taking the top three out there. Yeah, I'm sure those guys sealed it up last night. It looks, you know, you can see it's pretty pretty um, hard out there. So um, they were ready for the rain. I think we all knew it was coming, so. Yeah, pre that. preparation's key. You always got to be yeah. ready. Yeah, it's one of those things where it, it's kind of a crapshoot. You know, if it might rain or it might not rain and you leave it hard, then you have a disaster because you can't mm -hmm. fix that. And if you plow it up and then it does rain then you have a disaster and you can't <laughs> fix disaster. it so you really just got to guess right and and on this one they definitely guess right and here they go down into the gator's mouth screen watching hannah jameson she's going to come up the finish line right now as our leader makes his way through it is austin keller the candy man out there leading the way Looking good out in front. He's got a little bit of gap now over our second place ride, which is Eli Herrick. About a five second back to Eli Herrick. Luke Roach there in the third place position. Bryce Danehauer in fourth. And Mason Murdy, he was up there in the top three ride. He's going to find himself in fifth on the opening lap. 
So we got to make some moves out there. Gage Miller in the sixth spot. Riker K in the seventh. A spot. Jeffrey Rope in the ninth spot. Bryson Howell. And your 10th spot around your top 10 is Hudson Byrne. But what really matters is the top three out there right now. Those are the riders that are going to qualify. Well, as, this, as the LCQs continue to develop, how about this? We'll have a special guest out here at the Gatorback Cycle Park. Ricky Stenhouse, Daytona 500 winner, going to be out here with us at 10 a.m. this morning. He'll be over at the uh, Camper House over by the front gate uh, signing some autographs. So, hey, want to get a, a photo op? Yep. Get you an autograph? Go see a Daytona 500 winner, man. That's as good as it gets. Maybe even buy a camper down there way down there. But that's not a bad idea, too. <laughs> By a camper. Exactly. That's, man, that's awesome. I, uh, about 10.05, I think I might just have to go take a break and I run down there. I might have to <laughs> take a break. Yeah. I'm just right, going to get a water. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of Coming the NASCAR guys are big motocross fans. Yeah, yeah some of them ride. Some of ride. Was at um, Loretta's. Loretta's yeah. for a couple days. Hung out with us. A couple years ago, they had a, um, a, a four or five NASCAR guys did a drag race. At one of the Supercross, I, I don't remember that. who I remember, it was at one. I remember that. But he blew through the finish line and hit the wall. It at happens. The end. That Kyle was, Bush. was it Kyle Busch? Bush? Yeah. I think it was. <laughs> no, su no surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Full send, man. Full uh, send. Yeah, right through the right through it's, the turn and into the, the tough block. It's always funny to hear those guys talk. If you get you know some Supercross bros talking with some NASCAR guys or IndyCar F1, doesn't matter. They all they think the other guy is crazy. Oh, you dirt bike guys are nuts. You take it off these jumps, and then they're like, well, no, you're nuts. <laughs> yeah, In 200 miles an hour, 200 miles an hour. Yeah. For two and a half hours. I guess it's just whatever, you know, whatever kind of adrenaline you want. White flag coming out. There it is. They're going quick. 85cc, 9 to 11 limited, taking the top three out of this one. Austin Keller trying to move on. Eli Herrick, is it going to be you, my guy? It is. Eli Herrick and Luke Roche rounding out the top three that would advance. Bryce Dannenhauer on the outside looking in right now, a second back, trying to move in and move on. All right, look in there and time to scoring again like you're talking about the top three. That's what matters right now We see Austin Keller. He comes to run a 213 lap time about four seconds faster than the rest of the pack About a nine second lead now on Eli Herrick in the number two position on number 66 And Luke Roach on the number two Tim machine. He is in your third final transfer position So Bryce Danehauer like you said he's on the outside looking in right now And I'm sure he's fully aware of that he's trying to make a push right now as we're watching him as we see Austin Keller looking ahead, doing a good job there of navigating through the track, looking ahead so he could think about it and then focus on it as he makes his way through the outside of the Gator Tail right now. And I'll tell you what, handguards, man. This is probably one of those places I know I was one of them. I always ran handguards here. The rain, the rocks, the, the coldness. Yep. Those handguards definitely help, and we're seeing our leader right now rocking them. Keep those knuckles oh. clean. Ooh, a little mistake. A little yeah. mistake. That's okay. <laughs> outside foot. Wheels. Outside foot. Definitely want to lose that one. That's your power foot through a corner. You know, that's what holds you in there. Making his way through the Thor Parts Unlimited Spectator Stretch. Put a name on that one, finally. And into the Scott Defend Your Vision Split Lane. There you go. And up to the Gizmo Tower. And then you know where they're going to go. They're going to come right in front of us, in front of the Yamaha, Yamaha Announcers Announce Tower. And gonna step down into the Gators' mouth. The SLR Rifle Works bull turn making his way through there. Gonna bring it in and get our checkered flag here. He's got it out. <laughs> Austin Keller, good job, buddy. Moving on. Getting the win right there. Take a little bit of stress away from him as he takes the win right there. Coming through with the 219. So slowing down a little bit, you know, taking it easy. Which, Probably a good thing out there on the track right now. Luke Roach, he was the man on the move. Look at him. He's going to drop yeah. down to 216 that time through. So about six Ooh. seconds. Bryce Danehauer making the move. What happened wow. our boy Eli? I know Eli. Eli was up here helping us out a little bit with his West Kane impressions and stuff. <laughs> He's going to find himself at the fourth spot and unfortunately not going to transfer on for the next moto. Man, tough break. That is. That's what it's all about. Tell you what else it's all about. If it's it all about Conti number two on the line right now. Again, this is race 84. Race 84. 
getting ready to take off the starting line. So race 85 going to go to the starting gate. Race number 85. QBDC Limited, Conti 1. Race number 86, 85, 12 to 13 Limited, Conti 1. You're going to be in the staging area and pre-staging. We got women 12 plus. QBDB Limited, Conti, race 88. First call for you guys to get on down there. Like we've been saying, we'll keep on saying it over and over and over again. You have to be ready. These things are green, white, checker. They're dropping. Dropping fast. I was going to try to find a catchphrase, but I'm not as big as Les Kane. <laughs> They're dropping like turkeys out of the sky on Thanksgiving Day, <laughs> WKRP. I see them. Look at them. They're coming now. That was, uh, we, we thought about that as our riders roll out, battling for that VP Racing Fuels whole shot. We actually thought about hooking up some turkeys to the drone and dropping them out of the sky yesterday for Thanksgiving. And that'd be cool. Turns out they're a flightless bird, and after the first few we dropped, it was just pandemonium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rain dampen things a little bit, you know. I'll tell you what, we, we might be able to make a turkey shoot. You know, we got the uh, the T-shirt cannons. How about a turkey cannon? <laughs> yeah, they don't. They can't fly, but we could shoot them. We could. Yeah, I saw, be I saw a rifle works could hook us up with that. I'm sure. I, absolutely. <laughs> Sign me up. I'll take seven. A lot at stake here. Uh, two Contis in this one for the 85 CC 9 to 11. So we will take. We took the top three. That was Keller Roche and Dannenhauer. Roche and Dannenhauer making some moves to get in there on the last lap, certainly for Bryce. And we'll take the top three out of this one. So a lot at stake for the youngsters. Do I get to go race again on the 85? Do I not? You know, and I've always sort of said this, too. You know, you go to this Constellation races, it's almost better to make it out of the heat race. I know it's a little tougher because you get all the riders in there, but some of the faster riders make some mistakes. They have some bike issues, yeah. and they show up in the LCQ, and here we are, we're taking the top three. That, yeah, that's it's a it. tall order. Yeah, it's a very good point. You've always seems like you got one or two guys maybe that you expect to move on that go down. Don't. You got to make up for it. Hey, you know, on a day like this, bikes are probably getting pretty dirty, right? Yeah, what should they do about that? They should go to somebody that cares for your passion. Dirt care, bike cleaner. You don't have to scrub it. You don't have to do anything. Just spray it or rinse it down, spray it, then spray it back down. Dirt will fall right off. Their pit looked good this morning. They had the LEDs on. The sun was just coming out. Looked like Club Mecca back in the 90s. <laughs> it was beautiful. Speaking of beautiful, what the beautiful lead right Ooh. now is our lead. Oh, our second place driver looking over his shoulder. That's not something you want to do. You don't want to play defense during number two position. You want to look ahead and try to catch that leader. Try to keep pace with them as we're coming up the line right here to take the the green flag. Green flag. <laughs> <laughs> now wait a moment. They're going to come through. They're going to check in. That's Braxton Becker, that rider with the lead out there. Trent Lloyd was the man looking over his shoulder on the race 16 machine. Owen Pomeroy, he's in the third spot. He's in that final transfer position, but he better get going because just a second behind him is Brayton Wills. Easton Edgar there in the fifth spot. He's a player. Dylan Bott in sixth. Seventh spot, Gavin Reynolds. Carter Cook in eighth. Ninth spot, Adam Graham and Benjamin Bannock in your tenth place position. So if you're Bannock right now, you're in a panic. you got a lot of moves to make up. Bannock and panic. Got a pass for the lead. That's going to be Trent Lloyd. Trent Lloyd, excuse me, buddy, moving out in front of Braxton Becker. So Lloyd says, hey, I want a little bit of breathing room here. Lloyd with a little checkup from the neck up. Owen Pomro and Brayton Willis back there duking it out for that final transfer position, position number three. Yeah, we got to keep our eyes on this one because, like you said, Lloyd making some moves out there, trying to take this one away from a uh, what was our leader, Braxton Becker? So Braxton Becker now going back to the drawing board because he knows this is important. You don't want to feel pressure from the third place rider because that might put you on the bubble. And next thing you know, you're feeling pressure from the fourth place rider. Then you get nervous. Speaking of getting nervous, I'm not nervous. Well, I am a little nervous. I'm nervous that everybody that has these deals out there on Vintage Road, they're going to run out of product because there's been some great deals and steals down there. Braxton Becker, well, Trent Lloyd, Braxton Becker, Owen Pomro taking the top three. So, again, if you've got two Consies for your class, you got to get a top three. If you got one Consie, you got to get a top six. A lot at stake for these guys. This is our second Consie. Uh, what do we got after this one? Be race, call it race 85. Uh, we're on what, 85 CC, 9 to 11 limited. 250C limited. Right? Yeah, there we go. Yes, race 85. 
coming up after this one. They're locked and loaded down on the gate, ready to roll. White flag out. Here for the 85cc 9 to 11, that's Trent Lloyd leading the way. And Braxton Becker back into the number two spot as Lloyd now with a two second, two and a half second gap. Owen Pomroy up into the number three position. So Look great the gap Willis. there though. Yeah, Brayton Willis less than a second back from Pomroy. And one lap if he wants to move on. Will's got to go to work. And he is going to work right now. Watch him as they're making their way out of the gate pit up to the step ups. We're going to get this final chance. Pause. This might be one of those things. It might be like a uh, last chance qualifier at the Supercross. Green to cross is not where you want to be, but hey, you're going to put it in there. LCQ is always some of, some of the gnarliest, <laughs> gnarliest races as well. On screen now, we're watching the A16. Trent Lloyd is doing a great job in navigating through this track right now. Oh, Lloyd, little slip up right there. He's got to hold on to it and make it happen right here. Here he comes, making his way through the gator tail, doing a great job right now out in front. Just got to navigate through these tough rollers right here, just on the back side of the gator's tail. Lloyd looking good, looking good. Becker looking good. Yeah, Lloyd looked really good through those dumb up rollers. Pomroy. Ooh, on the bubble. Wills trying to make it happen. 837 Yamaha wanting to move on. And like we said, man, make sure you're ready for your constellation race before it comes out because these guys are firing off quick. They had him fired up, Revan ready to go. The two-minute board came up when the white flag came out. That's what you call timing out there. You want to be ready. You want to be prepared in the staging area, just like our employees are out here on the track right now. The staff has been doing a great job keeping these motors rolling today. Yeah, shout out to them. I saw them all out there locked and loaded in the rain here. Checkered flag flies. 85cc 9 to 11 limited. The 816 gas gas of Trent Lloyd moving on. Braxton Becker hangs on for second on that number 65 Husqvarna. He is moving on. And it is the 68 of Owen Pomroy rounding out the top three. They're moving on. You ready, West King? All right, buddy. We'll saddle up, partner. Here we go. Race number 85 taking off onto the track right now. 250C limited consolation race number one. These 250C riders. West Kane coming in for the show. He knows what time it is. It's a too many bonsai class. Getting ready to take off the gate right now here in this consolation race. Again, too many C limited. And I believe there is only one consolation race in this one. So we will take top six, top it, six in this one, Wes. It'll be really bonsai out there with uh, a little bit of slick surface on the top. I mean, you can still see some of the, you know, in those higher bank turns just past the announce tower. It's really not that bad. It would be just like if you just doused a little bit of, of water on it. Um, I don't think it's sticking to the bikes too much. It wasn't, it was a misting downpour. It wasn't, I mean. Just enough, it wasn't yeah, a downpour, it was a misting. Nothing. It wasn't even really a downpour. A passing little misting nothing. I think it was just enough to keep the moisture in the ground for the day. Race 85, it's 250C limited Concy. Uh, we've got one Concy, or is there two? There's one Concy in this one, so we're going to take top six out of this one here. All right, top six, let's pick up sticks. Here we go. The gate is down. The sound of the gate hitting the ground, the thumber, thunder rolls, and here they come, slip sliding away through the first turn. And it looks like one of these guys, is that an EBR bike? No, I don't, I don't know if EBR supports the C class. Those guys are. Okay, no, that's, what's that, that's what's that factory support the C Hang class. On to that thing. I believe it was a 133 machine. A Sawyer Sumner coming away with them right now as he's making his way over the step ups. Is Lynch Mob out there? Lynch Mob? I don't know. Did is you he see the one, two, three? No, no, he's not out there. He made it. He made it. He's, he's still in a food coma. As many of us are out here today, man. Great Thanksgiving again last night. The Thanksgiving dinner was something else. Big thanks again to Part Thor, Parts Unlimited, for making that all possible. Lynch Mob went had a uh, turkey dinner with Pop Ferry. Hey, that's a, that's a tall order right there. You said at the dinner table with Pop Ferry, what are you thinking about? When you go over to, to eat with Pop Ferry, think about some good food and some cold brewskis. Oh, yeah. 
I think it was last year, the year before, I went to uh, my hotel at the Best Western. They had a grand piano there. Guess who's playing the piano? Pop Ferry. He's, he's got piano man. hands. Hey, he's a piano man. He missed his calling. <laughs> man, it must be slippy there through the gator tail because our riders really checking up as they're making it through the rollers. And a lot of these guys, they might not have went out there for the side lap. They're like, hey, you know, I'm not to my constellation race. I don't really go there, get my bike dirty, but they're figuring the track out now. Looks like it passed me and made there to the top of the screen. So we'll get an update as they're making their way through. Defending their vision through the split lane right here with Scott. And it's still the 133 machine that I'm seeing on my screen out there leading the way, having a good time on this. Uh, oh, he's, having a, he's having a really good time out there. He's got bogeys all over the place. So 133. <laughs> hey, that's your old number. That is my old number. That's your, old, that's your dad's old number. That's my, exactly. That's my dad's old number. I Big took it over D. a little bit. Big D. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he's listening down there. And here we go across the line to get the green flag. Your leader again is the 133 of Sumner. So Sawyer Sumner doing an awesome job. Already starting to open up a little lead as we see the yellow flag come out in the bottom of the pit. So what's going to happen as they make their way up? Who's now going to be number two positions? It's going to be Mitchell Giverson, Alana Hodge, and the third spot, fourth spot, Charles Brown, Everett Shiel. He's in the fifth spot, and here's where we see the cutoff in our sixth spot, Jack Dawson. So anybody past Jack Dawson, they are pushing right now. And 0.3 seconds behind Dawson, we see Cab Gavin over. So Kerbin now trying to make some moves out there. All right, here they go. I've got Summer Giverson. Hey, thank you very kindly. Whoa. Wow. Thank Ooh. you, sir. Thank you. A little Black Friday breakfast going on out there. <laughs> make sure you see the food vendors. They'll hook you up. You got it on. There's Summer Gip Giverson. It's Mitchell Giverson. Not Landon Giberson, it's Landon <laughs> Gibson. But I like that. I might just start calling old man Gibson Giberson. Giberson, I'll, I'll go with that. Gib hey, Giberson. Giberson. Chris Giberson. Hey, I'll tell you what, Giberson oh, better pick it and up. And Landon Hodge is in third. <laughs> so Landon, Landon is in front of Giberson, or behind Giberson out there. You're going you're gonna to confuse yourself, Wes. What about this guy, number four? Who is it? You know who that is. Wait, number four? <laughs> Oh, in fourth. Hey, hey, it's Charlie Brown. Charles Brown out Downtown, there, man. Charles Brown. We got an all-star studded cast <laughs> out there. Everett Shield, Jack Dawson, Gavrick, Gavin Cobert, Donald Adams, Austin Shields, and Ryder Vitero. Hey, there's Brett Ferry out there. Tony Davis. I love this. These names are, are great. Yeah, one of them earlier was Crakey. That would be a cool last name to have. Hey, it's Crakey. Hey. That could be me every morning. <laughs> Cranky. <laughs> Here comes so our Sumner. leader. We got six, right? Yep, six. Take the top guys. six out of this one. I'm glad to see Charles Brown back out there. Yeah. Oh, Charlie Brown. It's been a while, but he's getting her done. Hey, he's looking for Snoopy. <laughs> and Giberson. Landon Hodge. Oh, having a good round. Hey, guys, Concies are moving. We're doing it. And we're doing it well. Eat them pancakes, little bean. Getting that white flag out there. Going to be Sawyer Sumner looking really good out in front of this one. Starting to in a little bit. It looks like our second place rider It's going to be Charles Brown. So downtown Charles Brown. Make us some moves out there like you're talking about West Kane. Mitchell Giberson going to be in that third spot. Landon Hoog, he's in the fourth spot. Fifth spot. We're making him, him make through the finish line area. It's going to be Gavin Cobra. So Cobra making some moves. Shields making some moves. Wow, big little change up right there in that lap. Hey, so we got a Coelho Bear move. Did Charles Brown do a Snoopy move? Charles Brown, you know he's bringing it home. Hey. Thanksgiving Day is over. We're tuning into Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, a lot of good deals going on out there right now in Vendors Row. If you guys want some Black Friday specials, you're head on down there. Of course, MX Tire got some of the best deals down there over there by Dunlop. Black Friday special. Why supplies last? Okay. That MX Tire Black Friday sale includes specials like buy a pair of goggles, get a free pair of tear-offs. So, man, a pair of tear-offs for free with buying a pair of goggles. Sign me up. Troy Lee pants and jersey set, $89.99. So you got a little muddy out there, go get yourself a Troy Lee set for $89.99. Ethica hats, underwear, towels, T-shirts, socks, buy one, get one free. That's all the Ethica merchandise down there. Buy one, get one free. Mix and match. So if you want, hey, if you want a T-shirt and socks, you can buy one of those and get another one free. All Fast House Apparel, buy one, get the second half price, mismatch on that one as well, and you get a free 
MX Tire t-shirt with purchase over $100. So I can't do it. That's huge right there. 100 bucks, that goes easy. You get yourself a free MX Tire t-shirt. I know I need to go down there and spend 100 bucks to get myself a t-shirt. Steady as she goes now for Sawyer Sumner. Sumner still out front. Brown, Giberson, Ho, Culver, Shields looking to be in the top six. Checker's going to fall from the 133 machine. And he's going to bring it on in. Rodney. Rodney, we got some hot takes for you coming up here, bud. Sumner, Brown, Giberson, Hogue, Covert, Shields, Adams. Take a break, Dean. You've done your tour of duty this morning. Been on postcard. Got the next group, Rodney, about to fire out of there. It looks like Sumner Brown, Giberson, Ho, Culver, and Shields are all going to that second moto in the QBDC limited class. And we got more guys firing out there, Rodney. We got many bike guys right there. All righty, 85, 12 to 13 limited, I believe, is uh, what we've got coming up next and on the track right now. Consolation uh, number one of one. So uh, once again, top six will be transferring from here. Uh, again, real quick, uh, riders will be looking at Hunter Carlisle, Grayson McClung, Colton Menard, Gabe Morales, also Giovanni Fontaine, uh, Levi Hogston, Colt St. Clair, Dylan Richards, Jacob Nobin, Vincent uh, Chezak, uh, Mattias Lara, also Caden Pedigo, Gian Bonini, Antonio Antillon, Bryson Snellgrove, Levi Gower, Miguel Bower, uh, Levi James, Aiden Foist, Benjamin Harris, Tanner Cornley, also Jackson Pierce, Cameron Nichols, Diesel Watts, and uh, Caleb Likens. 25 riders to be sorted out to the top six as they traverse the race course on the far back side. We pick up what the action up front looks like. We got battles. Oh, oh, and front two riders going to go down. Riding in the same line, unfortunately, for that third, second, third place rider there as he finds himself now. Might be a little further back than that as we get these riders back up. We'll sort them all out when they get uh, around a little bit closer. But uh, again, folks, Black Friday special going on uh, all around the uh, pits. And uh, don't forget to check out online for a lot of these uh, great deals that you'll hear us talking about throughout the course of the morning as well as our leaders now making it into the uh, front stretch. Light drizzles uh, finally starting to subside for the most part. Not a lot of damage on the racetrack, but it's not a beautiful sunshiny day. 225, I believe, is what we're looking at there. That would be Antonio Antillon out of San Jose on a Passion MX back KTM. Had a little trouble in his... Yeah, First moto, 24th place, but Manny's turning it around out here this time around. Antillo looks good. Aiden Frost voiced out there. F-O-I-S-T looks good. Levi Hawks. Taking the top six, Rodney? Yes. Top six, all right. Miguel Boer, Matias Lara, Benji Harris out there. There's Menard, Nichols, Gower. Gower looking good. There you go. See how much different it is? <laughs> wow, Rodney. <laughs> don't sound like you're standing 15 feet away now. Hey, don't you? Well, as loud as I can get, maybe they're going to let me stand back there a little bit. My head is just so big. <laughs> My head is so big. Well, if you wasn't so full of yourself, Wes Kane. Well, <laughs> trying no, to you are a big guy, though. Yeah, I mean. I'm trying to keep up with Mike Burkeen. That's the problem. <laughs> I mean, we measured it. And, and yeah, he has the biggest head in this sport. There you go. All right. So, so, so Mike has a bigger head than you. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, he is. Yeah, I can't <laughs> even wear his hat. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio and Tillon, Aiden Foist, Levi Hogston, Miguel Boer, Mattias Lara, and Benji Harris were your top six competitors since they checked in with the first lap complete. About 1.3 seconds out of a qualifying position was Colton Menard in seventh. Cameron Nichols was eighth. Levi Gower was ninth. And Diesel Watts was rounding out your top ten. Working on lap number two now is our 
leaders now making their way from the back section. Oh, one rider off the course back there, but these uh, front five all seem to still be pretty tightly knit together as they continue to jockey for position out here. And again, though uh, conditions aren't horrible, uh, they aren't as sticky as they could be. Still a little slickness out there with that rain that we saw falling here in the early part of motos today. Yeah. Hey, yo, man, that's right. Uh, the Bargain Pit open with sponsor merchandise, hoodies, $35, uh, hats, 20 bucks, tees, 15, long and short sleeve from youth, all sizes to adult, 2 and 3X. Again, the Moto Tees Bargain Pit is open. Stop on down and check it out and uh, agree and get great selection of some past event shirts available for you there at Moto Tees. Hey, we got somebody up here. Very important. Very I don't think I know doctor. who this guy is. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh wait a minute. This, Baylor Heavy. Aren't you that guy from the off-road they call Stu Baylor? Something like that. Let's turn you on right there. That, oh, there we go. Yeah. I, I was looking at the wrong one here. Yeah. yeah. No, it's uh, I heard you up here, and obviously I grew up on Rodney Tomlin. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it, it, I, I heard you out here, and I can't believe you came back to do a little more announcing, so I knew I had to make my way over to the tower and, and call some racing with you. That's awesome, man. I'm glad you make it. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Stu Baylor, who is one of our top XC1 GNCC pros, also yeah. National Enduro Champion. How many times did you win the name? Uh, five times now. Five-time yep. National Enduro Champion. Yep. I mean, this guy right here is the master of off-road as far as I'm concerned here. <laughs> Glad to have you. And, and you're here in support of a team. You got the Shoals up here too, right? Your Shoals team? Yeah, definitely. So we have the semi that we chase the GNCCs with and with uh, with us on the training facility. When these kids come to these bigger races and, and we have it available, we want to set it up here. It's great for the sponsors, but yeah. also for the kids. And, and it gives them that extra experience. So, um, you know, it's it's fun and, and I enjoy it. It's it's different. I grew up obviously off road and the moto scene is is a lot of similar like minded people, but slightly different. And, you know, it's it's fun. It's uh, it's something we started doing with Loretta's a couple years ago, putting the group out here and, and we're just having a good time with it. You know, one thing, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are probably surprised at how well a lot of the off road guys ride moto these days but there's a lot of cross training that you guys do both riding woods and moto track racing now huh yeah most definitely i mean the majority of our group that's here is is <coughs> kind of split gncc and and moto kids and and we have them training for both on both and we've had a lot of good results um we had we had some uh, two of the top five uh last moto i believe and getting the top five of the moto before that getting the i think caleb wood obviously you saw him up there and uh, yeah, we spend a lot of time training moto. There's, there, for me personally as a trainer, as, as a professional racer, I can see a lot more out here. Right. So I can critique their style much more on the motocross track, and it's, uh, it's, it's been good. It's just the aggression, the speed. All righty, we're working on our final lap. I believe I see a checker flag. We're about ready to uh, fly on this 85, 12 to 13 limited class. Antonio Antillen was leading eight in foist. Uh, Levi Hogson, Michael, or Miguel Boyer. In the number four spot, Benji Harris was fifth, and Mattias Lara in the number six spot. As we fly the checkers, and Tillen will take the win, and then Benji Harris moves up to the number two spot. Foist will drop back to third, holds on to a uh, qualifying position, so he will have a place on the gate. Levi uh, Hogston and Miguel Boer. Uh, Diesel Watts uh, drops to the number six spot, but still well within qualifying positions there and he will be going to moto number two. Women 12 plus coming up next. We got uh, uh, 35 riders in this one. And once again, uh, top six riders will transfer from this one. Uh, we got riders like Sean Burton, or Shauna Burton, Sage uh, Tangler, Madison Casimir, Sele Tompkins, uh, Madison De Dedek, Ginger Osgood, Piper Carver Coons, Reagan De La Rue, uh, Daniel, Danielle Ellerman, Michael uh, Michelle Thomas, uh, Mike, Michaela, Michaela Thomas, I believe that is it, Alicia Goggle, Reagan Davis, Tyler Eben, uh, Kyle, uh, Kylie Inman, uh, Kale Kopik, Julian Bowmeister, Ennis Tabella, Sophia Hulery, uh, Emerson Judge, also Juan Acosta, We've got Jordan Curtin, Lena O'Brien, Mackenzie Hayes. Uh, we've also got Alicia Meyer, Heath, uh, Heather Moore, Maya, Maya Kramer, Harley Wood, Emma Phelps, Melody, Melanie Picard, Jennifer Latour, Lainey Sheehan, Trinity uh, Langlingness, and also uh, Kylie McGraw and Sutton Scottgrass. So uh, that's 35 riders that's got to be narrowed down to the top six. And they're off and rolling, looks like. 
Absolutely, and uh, see see a couple of these girls rolling those stuff ups right now. Uh, definitely, definitely, you can see the drains coming down a little bit more. It's getting a little bit slick. I mm -hmm. think they're a little bit nervous of how it's going to be, but you know we've got a good sandy base here and mm -hmm. makes the track actually really good even in these conditions. Absolutely, and uh, I, I think we're starting to see some more rain start to come down. So, you know, uh, again, you know, course conditions haven't been all that bad. I think it's it's more of a visual thing as much as it is anything and i'm sure that the track is is not as tacky and probably a little slicker in places so it's causing uh room for obvious a little more caution for these riders out there and like you said you know you, you don't know what you, to expect out there especially on this first lap till you get out there and feel what the soil is going to do and, and and make that first lap uh you're really not going to going to know but i think lap two we'll see some uh, throttles opened up and maybe this uh, start to tighten up or oh down goes our leader looks like same case scenario as we saw in that 85 cc class there a few moments ago a couple front runners going down and everyone gets to uh, move around now and here we go heading towards the uh, front section now yeah definitely it's it's uh <laughs> it's fun fun to watch but um obviously on the tv you can't see quite as much the lines especially in that back section are, are long deep ruts and you get stuck in that one line somebody makes a mistake and it's easy easy to go right into them and make a mistake of your, uh, of your own Looks Mel like we've got some battles going on up front for that lead. Yeah, Melanie Picard has the early lead of, I believe, that saying Sage Tangler out of Gun Barrel City, Texas, uh, in that number two spot as we wrap up number uh, lap number one here. Actually, it's Ginger Osco going to get that, uh, that uh, position now out of Rhode Island. Uh, Sage Tangler out of Gun Barrel City is running in third. Reagan Davis in fourth aboard the number 61 from Statesville, North Carolina. Then Juana Costa out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And Sutton Scodgrass out of Sussex, Wisconsin in the sixth place position aboard the 954. Spent some time down in Gun Barrel City, by the way, in Texas uh, a few years ago. I've been there a few times, actually, but I, I was there one time. And you know how they say everything's bigger in Texas? I've seen some of the biggest raindrops I've ever seen in my life. I swear the raindrops are as big around as softballs whenever they were coming down there one time, man. Crazy. Yeah, we, we've actually, it, it's funny, Texas, you think, you automatically think dry and national enduros multiple times. We plan to go to Texas, and it's been an absolute monsoon race canceled, which doesn't usually happen at all roads. So <laughs> well, it takes to, a lot. And when you go to Texas, they say everything's bigger in Texas. They ain't kidding, man. Everything <laughs> is bigger in Texas. The way, yeah. way it appears you can't prove that by me but anyway uh, uh we got a three-way shootout going on i think this is for the number two spot right now oscar tangler davis and maybe even costa and Scodress moving up there this is oh this is for the final transfer position that's carver coons back there on the 25 trying to get around Scodgrass. So that's what we've got going on right now and we may get a gimme for a couple of riders into that position as one of our front runners now finding uh, herself laying it down there, heading into the uh, Scott uh, Freeway over there the, on the Gator's tail. Yeah, definitely. And, and this section, <coughs> that kind of seems to be the softer, more rutted section there. So luckily nobody stuck it back in, in the back of that rider and made a made a mistake like we saw in the last couple of races. But yeah, the uh, the track is holding up really well. I I I went out there early, just just put an eye on it for the kids before their motos and. Yeah, as, as far as this rain, it's just a, it's it's more nagging and in your goggles the entire time. So stacking on those tear offs is really important. Go ahead and throw 14 and make sure you got clear vision. There you go. So uh, uh, keeping uh, keeping the clear vision and uh, keeping the wheels on the ground. I, I mean, we're seeing some air out there now. What what are you thinking about traction? Are you seeing? I mean, traction seems to be pretty good right now. Yeah, the traction's actually really really good um no issues as far as traction go enough enough sand in the soil and i think a lot of the riders see the the shiny spots which normally indicate slippery in most conditions but with the sand it's not um there there obviously has been a couple spots where we've seen riders push the front but overall the track with the sandy base you've got good traction the track is actually very rideable right now and you can ride just about anywhere on the track um as far as as far as that goes i I think I think these these guys these guys are figuring everything out and got everybody up in the air going up this step up and there's our leaders on scene uh, on screen and got a little bit bigger of a gap this time. Well, some changes in that top six. Sutton Scodras uh, dropping back a couple of positions now into the eighth spot. Ginger Osgood out front. Melanie Picard still in second. Reagan Davis is third. Sage Tangler in fourth. Piper Carver Coons uh, making the pass. 
And not only that, but uh, moving up not only into sixth, but now to fifth, I think that was um, Sutton Skygrass we saw uh, go down out on the Gators' tail there a few moments ago, which gave uh, Carver Coons the opportunity to move up uh, along with Laney Sheehan as that is our final transfer spot. That is uh, Osgood, the number 22, Ginger Osgood from Saunderstown, Rhode Island on the KTM in that number one spot. This young lady brought to us by FXR, Factory Connection, Suspension, Milo Designs, and Wareham MX, as well as 100%. And dear old dad, uh, putting a lot of the bill as well. Ginger Osgood, a name that uh, is recognizable, and, and I will go out on a limb and say one that I wouldn't necessarily expect to see in the LCQ, but again, here at the Mini O's, uh, this is one of those events, Stu, that uh, a lot of surprises take place out here in <laughs> situations like this. Yeah, definitely. It's it's and and man, what an event! I just have to say, like, <clears throat> just being here a few days, the time schedule is impressive. <laughs> I mean, I'm not knocking Loretta's at all. I was very impressed with the weather that that they were able to continue racing with this year. I mean, the cards were obvious. They were dealt, they were dealt a bad hand, but yes. man, uh, just paying attention here and. And obviously not not having quite the weather conditions here it's been very impressive to uh, for me to watch as as a track owner as a as a racer to see the time schedule man they are they're on point they've got this thing working and and just slicing through the day you know i mean we've gotten behind i think at one point we were actually about two hours behind we ended up finishing two minutes later than we did last year and there were no shortcuts taken. That was just the efficiency of the staff and, and making sure that we had everything uh, dialed in and, and pushing just a little bit harder than under normal circumstances. But we were able to make up that, that two hour time frame. Yeah, it's been, uh, like I say, with, with running races, with, with, with racing, it's, it's been impressive, uh, impressive to say the least. And, and watching, watching the way that they have attacked this as, as, as promoters, <laughs> not as racers, they've, they've really attacked the track, I guess you could say. It's um, been fun to watch. I mean, it, it, as, as, a, as a racer, a, a lot of respect to these guys and, and the show that they put on. So Ginger Osgood takes the checkers. Melanie Picard will take the number two spot. Reagan Davis in the number three position. Piper Carver Coons up to fourth place. She had a, a great ride out here. Again, one of those riders that we don't necessarily expect to see in an LCQ. But again, the competition is deep here. Uh, Laney Sheehan in the number five spot. Sage Tangler will be your final transfer position as we go next to our 250B Limited. This is uh, our first uh, F1 Concy, I believe, in this one as well. And uh, we're burning through the concies today. By the way, I know uh, Wes came over and said, do you think we'll get to some uh, some mains today and some second motos and crowning some champions? And I think that we uh, will at this rate. Yeah. yeah, we need to get a jump on that for sure. Probably knock out five, six. Who knows? We might get 10 deep in there. And then uh, it'll make it for a better tomorrow because I know everybody wants to get to that award ceremony. Tomorrow's mm -hmm. Saturday. As much as you love coming here, <laughs> you're, you're ready, ready to, go. to go, you know. So Michael Nosbaum, also Bentley Good, Cale Thorpe, Lance Guys, uh, Seth Eubanks, Octavia Paz, Harrison Bates, Justin Parrish, Alicia Goggle, uh, Talon Stanley, Jonathan George, Christian McCauley, Will Campbell, Mason Call, Deegan Bloomfield, J Jose Miguel Nevada, Kyla Rome, Connor Rosiak, Kai Chentry, Brody Bowmeister, Chase Lawton, Kate Ferry, Logan Hale, Clayton Stockseal, Gavin Thurgood, Jacob Solomon, Bradley Bullis, also Lucas Seelman, Nolan Riley, Carson Cahill, Brent Unzer, Braden Sampy, Ryan Hattie, also uh, Alan Adkins, Jay Cornwell, Jaden Palmer, and Braden Carpenter as we're off and rolling with 37 from the 250B Limited. Once again, top six to transfer to the second moto. Well, that rider out of the gate with a whole shot had a pretty good plan out there. As you can see, he's already got about 10 links on the rest of the field out there. And that's about where you want to be, Rodney. You want to get out there, especially in a comp C track conditions like they are you need every advantage and getting a good gate out of the gate is going to help you well as uh riders trying to get this one sorted out again you know you think starts are critical i think uh, as much as anything you find yourself in a consolation race they may be even more critical then uh, only because number one you want to secure your position on that gate but these races are a lot quicker so you don't have near the time to work with whenever it comes to trying to sort things out uh, toward the finish. Yes, that is. She goes now. We're going to work this out. You know, three laps. It's it's all or nothing for some of these guys. You know, it could be uh, the last time they're going to be able to be on the track. 
So uh, they are out there giving everything they can. Our leaders got the master plan out front, got a good gap. And letting everybody else deal with it. Stu, are you ever going to race one of these, man? You're ever going to, I mean, you, you train motocross. Why? I mean, you don't have anything going on. I, I had every intention to this year. We just had, uh, <laughs> we, I was dealt different cards. Um, we got the invite to go race in Japan, um, which took some took some time out of the schedule, and then backed it up with a with a house sale. So I'm moving a little bit closer to the track, and just makes things easier with with the wife and kid, and um, just wasn't able to to get prepared for this event this year. And uh, we've got some big changes for next season as well. So this is kind of a shaky time to uh, for me to yeah, go and race, building the team and everything yeah, yeah, else yeah. like that. So, yeah, I get so. it. Yeah, it just made made it a little more difficult, but um, you know, Ryan Sykes and I have a have a deal. Hopefully, hopefully he's he's he gets his hip all fixed up. <laughs> you know, right now I I, I can't talk crap and, unless he's healthy. So, uh, but yeah, for, for Loretta's next year, I, I'm hoping hoping that hoping that he's healthy and we can stick to that plan and go run plus 25 out there. Really. That's the plan. If, Dude, if that, would be, well. that would be great. I'd love to see you get to go out, and he both get to go back out there as well, and maybe even here next year for a plus 25 class. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, the the this place looks extremely fun. Loretta's Loretta's probably a little bit more of my style. The the longer, deeper ruts, a little uh, a little more technical track um, would probably suit my style a little bit better than here, but uh, nonetheless, it's it, it's something that's definitely definitely on the agenda if we can make it happen. Brody Bowmeister leading this one out after one, and boy, does he have company behind him. Guys and Perry and Bloomfield got a heated battle going on for the number two spot. Kyler Rome back there as well in fifth, and uh, McCauley aboard the number 65 would round out your final transfer position, but he's got Ryder as well. Look out, Logan Hale. I think Hale's into a top six position. Justin Parrish back there as well. So we got a, a lot of key players that are vying for one of these top six spots right now, so it's not going to be an easy task to score a spot on the gate in this 250B limited class. Yeah, definitely. And, and in these B classes, these kids are fast, even even towards the towards the LCQs. And yeah, good racing all the way around. And like you said, it's the last time on the chance, the, the or last time on the track. These these kids, this is their last chance to make it. Guys out front, I believe he's gotten around Bo Meester. If I saw them go by properly there, so we've got a change up front and some changes back behind as well. We got like six riders vying for that third place position right now as they make their way in front of the Yamaha announcing tower, dropping down into the Gator Pit, headed toward the Pro Circuit. Uh, finish line region and guys in Bowmeister running one and two as we told you Kate Berry holding on to that number three spot but Kyla Rome now up into the number four spot Deegan Bloomfield drops to the number five position and up into a transfer spot now will be Jonathan George Krista McCauley drops down one into a seventh place position and uh, the field is stacked still behind him eighth place Justin Parrish uh, Braden Carpenter is ninth and Kai Gentry back in the number 10 spot uh, that is two laps complete, one lap to go. So if you're going to make the show, you got to get things going right now. Yeah. You got to get out there and make it happen out there. Dad's ready to go. Hey, a lot of these guys, this might be it. Pack it up and get out of here, you know. Hey, we don't need to be around here any longer. You didn't make it. You gotta go. <laughs> hey, don't worry. If you can't get out, if you need to leave here, Wynn's got that big old tractor back there. He, they just love hooking in the big diesel pushers and <laughs> pulling, ripping them apart. Pulling. Yeah, because there's nowhere to actually hook to those I things. I know. You would think that motorhome companies and, and, and manufacturers would design one that would have that. Now, I know you had, what, a four-wheel drive or a six-wheel drive one at one point. Did it have tow hooks on it? I did, and it was on the Ford <laughs> chassis. So, so I'm a Ford guy. I mean, the best RV hey, I've ever had. Right. Um, then, then my wife said that she wanted a big A-class tag axle. A big one. And we've got a big A-class tag axle that it has has a trashed-up front bumper from getting stuck. <laughs> um, Jeff Russell hooking it up, to it, pulling it right out. <laughs> yeah. So so there's uh, the last A-class I had. We actually we we mounted a hitch receiver underneath. Had had a fab shop, and that was a great idea. Why I forgot it on this one? I I don't know. It just completely slipped my mind. So that's yeah. not a bad idea. Think about West Kane. Next time you get ready to park that thing and go, <laughs> man, I should have had it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I mean, now when you get that rig, that big A-class pusher like that, you got to think about how do I get out of here in case something jumps off that. Absolutely. Yeah. 
And they were towing them out of Loretta's. Place. <laughs> they were just yanking them right out of there. Lance Guys, Bodie Bowmeister, one and two. Kate Ferry will finish up in the number three spot. Kyler Rome in the number four position. Jonathan George into the number five position is Braden Carpenter. Uh, caps off the final transfer spot with a pass there on that final lap into position. And that's your final transfer spot. Again, the guys, Bo Meester, Kate Ferry, Kyla Rome, uh, Jonathan George, and Braden Carpenter. Again, unofficial results there. Check the posting board for the official results. It's super many. One are off and rolling. This is your 12 to 15 year old class riders. Again, top six transferring from this one. Riders like Boris Flores, Fernando Garcia, Bentley Murphy, Jeremy Strider, Maddox Perkew, Ryden Ramos, Aiden Bassey, Tommy Doble. You've got uh, Josie Shop, also Lillian Pettis, Joshua Carino, Christian Nyman, Parker Shalosky, Cooper Craig, Austin Gore, Tristan Lucas, Tom Laurent, uh, Vincent uh, Shazek. Cash Bollinger, Jaden Crumblin, also Ethan Pegrini, Jonathan Bergeron, Gabe Clark, Cade Martin, Carson Wood, Benjamin Moya, Ryan Amancio, Joel Newcomb, Cruz Martin, also Colt St. Clair, Aiden Foyce, Max Gilberson, Ethan Abels, Carter Drashel, Ma Maverick Gold, Rocco Barone, uh, Blake Rieski, and Caleb Likens. 38 riders once again, narrowed down to only six. Wow, full gate. Yeah. Trying to get in there. And uh, again, names that you don't necessarily expect Rocco, to see here. Rocco Barone. <laughs> yeah. And, and no surprise, as, as I, I'm not seeing on, scr on screen checking out who is checked out. Obviously, Carson Wood has, yeah. uh, has <laughs> quite a gap on that one. I couldn't do it, but Carson would. would. And he is. <laughs> Carson did and is uh, exactly doing that. Uh, I, I, that's And that's another one of those names that one of the names that you wouldn't necessarily expect to see out here. He's a Monster Energy Team Green Kawasaki rider. And he, even uh, even those guys have their, their issues and trouble sometimes. Well, the situation he's in, he's trying to collect, still get points for the overall, the Olympic. Get those points for the Olympiad and, and so forth like that for the end of the week. And also, he gets a, a mediocre date pick. Still can have presence go out there and win that second photo out there for his team, for his sponsors. For guys like Rob Fox that says, that's my guy out front. Even though he didn't have well in the qualifier, he'll win his Conci and possibly win the second moto. So, right, a feather in your cap. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and, and man, the kid, the kid is on rails. Just, just yeah, him out you, here. You want to showcase your talent each and every time you get out on that track. You know, definitely. I and you know one one that uh, I'm familiar with. I think he said there was we had a GNCC kid in here. Yep. Uh, Ryan Amasi. I don't see his name coming up. Yeah, nope. but uh, he expected has... to see him up towards the front. Yeah, I know. I, I kind of did too, but you know, I, this may be at, the, at least the first major event like this I've ever seen him at. So obviously, he's probably had a, a few butterflies and things like oh, that. Yeah. But I think Amancio, he's got the skill to do some moto. You, you, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, most of most of the kids do, uh, especially the top GNCC kids. They, they're definitely definitely good riders, and he won the the YXC one class of Super Mini one class for for GNCC this year. Definitely a good rider. I believe he'll we'll see him on big bikes next year. But yeah, seeing him down here, I I, I definitely would not expect to see him in the LCQ at all. Now you got to get acclimated to this. It's it could be overwhelming for a first time. I I can see that. You know, K Caleb Wood. So uh, he won a moto at Loretta's. Obviously, kind of played into his favor with a little little weather conditions <laughs> in here. But um, you know, fourth his last time out on the track, running third for a little while. Right. Last year here, he didn't make it through. Yeah. Um, and so, so in, in in 12 months, I mean, completely 180. Wow, that is true. You know, I, I talk to a lot of sea riders. They come up from Costa Rica and so forth. They find their way into Florida, and they're like, I want to go win Loretta Lens. I'm like, then you better get on the train and, and find your competition. Hit those spring races. You better go to Daytona. Go to Texas. Get in line because you're not going to just show up from there, and then you're going to try to qualify and go up there. It's not going to happen. There's a certain acclimation to your class and, and competition that you need to get into hey big shout out dunlop tires twenty dollars off for big bikes ten dollars off for minis it's black friday over at dunlop mx tire carson wood tristan lucas checking in steady in second place position now i believe up yep, we sure do boris porter as i thought we had some changes there the number nine of florida is now up to the number three spot cast bollinger now up into the number four position jeremy strider is fifth uh, maverick gold in the number six spot looks like uh, cooper craig having some issues there dropping out of the uh, 
top uh, six positions there after that second lap of racing. So headed into the final lap and looks like uh, Gold has about a three second, almost four second uh, uh, gap over the seventh place position and was running about a three second faster lap time. So just hold her steady as she goes through this final lap. And we will likely see these top six riders we're looking at right now in race 89. The Super Mini won 12 to 15, uh, making their way to the second motos here today. 5178 Limited Concy coming up next. That's race number 90. So here we go. Final closing moments in this one. And uh, I'm not sure, you know, I know, don't know what nighttime activities are going to be like with today's weather, but we'll keep you posted on that. I know looking at the, uh, the schedule, if you will, we've got, uh, uh, well, Camp Gatorback coming up this morning for ages four and up under the pavilion. Thanks to the CMA for uh, doing a wonderful job with that. Thor pictures with Santa at the Thor truck today, tonight at 5 o'clock and at 7.30, the Moto Playground Pit Bike Championship. And I believe you get to win a lifetime supply of Jovan Musk. Is that still the uh, oh, yeah. the, the, the big uh, prize there? Keeps those mini riders, keeps coming to 50cc riders every year. There's a couple <laughs> more to show up. All right, once again, once again, Dunlop Tires over there. Go see Rob Fox and the boys. $20 off big bike tires. That's a deal right there. $10 off mini tires. Black Friday at Dunlop. Get over there. If you're slipping, get gripping. <laughs> Go get those Dunlop tires. And don't forget, it's time to shine. The road to the pros runs through Gatorback. The best of luck to all the competitors in the 2023 Thor Mini Olympics. From our good friends at Thor and Parts Unlimited, as Carson Wood takes the uh, win here, Tristan Lucas will finish up in the number two spot. Boris Flores in the number three position. Cass Bollinger holds on for fourth. Jeremy Strider, I believe, will be that number five ride. And unless Maverick Gold made some mistakes out there, he should be able to... Uh, Settle in and check in, and oh, he did. It uh, looks like Parker Shalosky makes the pass and gets the round, and uh, Maverick Gold having issues on his gas gas on the final lap has dropped completely out of the top ten even. So it's Wood, Lucas, Flores, Bollinger, Strider, and Shalosky, your top six. Hey, guys, I want to thank our guys over at Alpine Stars up on Vendor Rose. 60 years of motocross history and protection stop by and see our good friends over there at alpine stars also cobra stop by and see cobra they've got all your parts and service needs defiance the lifestyle the leader in custom trackside apparel dirt care dirt care is with us all week they specialize in motocross maintenance and products ebr go see those guys at ebr performance they take care of all your engine and suspension needs emt racing come down to emt Authorized Cobra deal, and they have all kinds of trackside support. Factory Connection, go see Fonzie and the boys. Ziggy, they have anything you need over there, whether you're a Factory Connection rider or not, stop by and see those guys. FMF, the leader in racing, the grassroots of motorcycle racing with pipe silencers. Also, they are a sponsor of the 2024 Mini Olympics as well. Future MX, a Florida Blaze motocross team with a mention to help all riders stop by and see us all over there. They got a podcast. They got all kinds of good things happening. Georgia practice facility. Got a great race every year just before this, the cash for class, and they call it the clash. ENT, happy living on the now, HLTN Co. Ride hydropower. This guy couldn't even back his motorhome up in here. We got him parked. He's a good guy right across from me. Stop by, get hydroed up. Rodney, if you had a rough night last night, go over there and get some hydropower. Lynx Racing, those guys are in the house. Thank you for being a part of this whole mini O's experience out here. Minton Cycle, Cobra Elite Dealer, Legal Minton Motors. Stop by and say hello. MKS Moto Kicks. Megawatt's been talking about them all week. Stop by and see those guys. They got all kinds of stuff over there. Moto Gravity Combined, Moto Gravity Combined. They're all in there for a nonprofit. Come by and see them at Moto Hose. Out the door you go. You're out. They're out. They're out. Moto Tags. Go by and see them. Get some jewelry. Get some good stuff. Moto VIP Pure Outlaw. Stop by and check us out at the rig. Moto. XFI alert track and recover 
Stop by and see those good people. Flat rate sailor, GPS tracking service. Mud Racing, Chip Mud in the house, guys. Mud Racing is here to help all KTMs, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas Riders. OGI Optics, they're over on Vendors Row. Stop by, they got apparel, goggles, anything you need. Ola Suspension, sweetest gold is simply clever. On track school, Andrea Lee, they gave away the big bike last night. Stop by and see them. They're ready to sign you up, Megawatt, and get that extra education that you need. Absolutely going to send you on your way as smart as possible. Our friends at On Track had a great program last night, did a good job with our giveaway. PR2 in the house. Stop by and see the Pine Heart Boys and all the uh, Dur Durham brothers. PR2 Racing is trackside. Pro Action. If you need action, if you need satisfaction, go see Pro Action for all your suspension needs, wants and needs race tech. Those guys, we love them. We've had so many race tech moments all weekend long. Right now, Power Sports is in your MX headquarters. They got a blowout right now, 80% off all brands. Lee at Fox and O'Neill. RockyMountainATV.com. The leader, they got over 100% employee-owned operation, largest selection of dirt bike parts and apparel that you can get online. Row 1 Off-Road, you're familiar with them. Row 1 has you covered with All-Star Gear 60 helmets. They're right next to... What about these guys here? You know about them. You want to read yeah, that? Yeah, I, I think I could tell you a little tell bit about, about the Shoals, the Shoals and Max. And Max. Yeah. Where, where, we, where we build champions, <laughs> plain and simple. There's the facts. All Let's right. Go with it. There you have it. Hit them up at Shoals, see them, or believe them. South of the Border MX, big Ryan in the house over there. You want to head down south, go to South of the Border. Also, SRS Suspension is based out of Ohio. They have top level riders. We service everything, Kayaba, Shoa, WP, anything you need 24 seven with those guys. Sure foot, get up to the right foot and a sure foot with all your feet and the athletes, motocross riders, NBA, they're all in a the mix. They service a million athletes, ride better, ride faster, ride stronger with sure foot. TCD Racing, suspension is everything. Customized suspension will transform your riding experience. Let TCD Racing put science back in your suspension. Also, the Goggle Zone. Make sure you check out the Goggle Zone and pick up some tear-offs at half price. They're on Vendor's Row. T-Rex Moto, T-Rex Throttles, they're the best thing going. Gold, blue, purple, red, anything you need, go see our boys on Vendor's Row at T-Rex Moto X. Tucker Freight. Go see Tucker Freight Lines and Club MX and wish everyone a safe and successful Minios. And if you're leaving here, be safe going home. World Moto, attention riders, get ready. They're all in a mix. Vendors us today on Vendor Row. 7S Racing, they're number one in trackside support. 110 Racing, they got a great little chateau over there. Go check them out. Levi Myers wearing that 110 Racing in the house. All right, Little Dean, you're back. We got all kinds of action going on. And don't forget those Dunlop tires, guys. Dunlop tires, 20 off big bikes, $10 off minis. And see us on Black Friday. I'm going to kick it off right now. We've rolled down the sponsors. Little Dean, you're back in the house. Thank you, boys, for getting us covered up. I was just regrouping, getting down there, getting some sheets. We're all figured out out here right now. We're watching a 51cc 78 Limited Constellation race number one out there on the track right now. Your leader, John Ferreira Jr., Tucker Chase in number two position. Jesus Gabriel Ferrius Pimento. I haven't seen that one yet, man. That's a good name right there in the third spot. Fourth spot is K Dupas. So Dupas now trying to make some moves out there to get a qualifying position as there is two Constellation races in this one. So what that means is we are going to take the top three here of race number 90. Race 90 out on the track right now. Race number 91 down there on the starting line. That is our consolation race number two for the 51cc 7A Limited in staging. 51cc 4 to 6 Limited. Race number 92 in pre-staging. Race number 93, 85cc 9 to 13. 
moving right along with these things right now and all of our riders doing a great job on this track i was just out there looking at it a little bit it's, it's a little slick a little sloppy but i think the rain has gone away i think we're going to be in for a great racetrack come second motos speaking of second motos riders are looking to make it into the second motos right now they're making their way through and up to take the checkered flag here in just a second our leader going to check in with us again this is the 51 cc 78 limited conti number one and across the line, taking the checker flag and checking his ticket into the second moto is Joe Ferreira. So Ferreira with a good ride out there. Tucker Chase going to finish up number two. And Gabriel is going to finish up in that third place position, running the top three. So awesome ride there for Jesus Gabriel getting the job done. Getting ready to take off the track right now. Race number 91. Race number 91 is our 51cc 78 limited Conti number two. They're going to go out on the track. This is race number 91 again going on the track race number 92 going to be going to the starting line 51 cc 46 limited going to staging 85 and 13 and schoolboy 2 12 to 17 you guys are in pre-staging also 65 cc 10 11 limited riders need you guys start getting ready and making your way up there and i'll tell you what as this uh track starts to dry out the gates are drying out as well you can go on down there and see Tamer, the most innovative starting device on the market. They got the rear starting device, the double button device. If you want it high or low, you can get it down there, or the single button device as well. That rear hole starting device, 180 bucks installed. That's installing everything, labor and all parts and labor for 180. Or you can get the double hole shot device for 140. Why not? It's only $10 more than our single hole shot device. Our single button is $130. And again, you could run what Jer Garrett Marchbanks, Jeremy Martin, Justin Hill, Josh Hill, the whole Club of the Next team, EBR, Rides Unlimited, and many more others run. Go to Tamer. And every one of their uh, whole shot devices are 100% legal in the AMA stock classes. So, I mean, that's huge alone. You could check them out at Tamer MX on Facebook or at Tamer Whole Shot on Instagram. We're getting to go ahead here to gate drop with our next consolation race in this 50cc 78 limited class. Going to see who's going to grab the whole shot right here. Looking at the starting line, got a few heavy hitters out there. There's 30 riders in total on the lineup right now. Going on the track, we're going to see riders like the number two of Owen Taylor, Galo Zemberide. He is going to be the 007 machine. Emiliano Munoz, he is at the AT machine. Lucas Bush on the 32, Riley Golden High. He's on the number 33 machine, the 36 machine, Alangi Abercrombie behind Abercrombie on the list. We're going to have the 44 of Cruz, Shexnadre. Indigo Spina Culp on the 49, the 59 of Michael Andre Garcia Rodriguez. 77 of Carter Holmes is going to be out there. He's a heavy hitter, so make sure you keep your eyes on the number 77 machine, the 79 machine, Sophia Monasteros. She's on the 78, the 79 of Owen Seeley, the 99 of Easton Ruffing, the 101 of Steel Leonard. The 119 machine of Diego Rojas Humoran. Behind Humoran on the list, we got the 123, a junior Gionette. Alejandro Gonzalez going to be out there with us. Flynn Johnson, Gunnar Brown, Mason Howard, Lenick Latour, Chase Gleason, Tanner Tolan, Cooper Zink, Braxton Simpson, Todd Tolan, Hank Tix, Rome Dill, Jacob Bush, Weston Bauer. Also out here. And our riders now out on the track right now as they're making their way up and into that sweeper. That sweeper we call the gator tail, the infamous gator tail out there. A lot of passes being made, a lot of things happening. These guys taking a little mini tail right here. I forgot about they're doing the cut track. My apologies on that one. They're making their way through this little cut. It is number 77 of Carter Holmes. I told you to look out for him, and he is your leader. As you can see, not a lot of bikes going through that cut track, so it is a little slime here out there for these little 50cc riders. Again, we're taking the top three out of this one. So that is the move you want to make right there. You want to get up into the top three position before this one's over. There's the 77 of Carter Holmes taking the right side of that Scott Defend Your Vision split lane. Interesting to see what happens. They got one of riders trying to the left right there. That's a KTM rider. That's the battle for the transfer spot, I believe, is a KTM rider grabs a handful of throttle. That is the number 44 machine, I believe, on screen. It might have been the 88 of Ryder Donaldson. I'll have to check him out as it makes it look like the Yamaha's announcer tower. One of our riders going down to the inside. 
Tough break for that young man. Watch him as they're both going really high into this bull berm, that SLR Rifle Works bull berm. Checking out, they're charging down into the inside of this corner right here. Carter Holmes gonna come through, he is your leader. And we're watching this battle start to unfold. A little mistake there in those ruts, those ruts getting a little deep for these little guys, those little tires, man, it's eating them up. Coming through in the second place position is Alejandro Gonzalez. So Gonzalez making some moves out there, the 181 machine. And it's Cruz Section Adre there in the third spot. I was right on that. In the number three position, it is number 44. So awesome ride for Section Adre to put it up into that position. And that position being your final transfer position here in the 51cc78 Limited Concert number two. Here we are at Thor Parts Unlimited Pro Circuit Mini O's in Newberry, Florida. Watching our riders drop down into the Gator Pit. We're watching a battle right now for our our second and third place position, the 181 Alejandro Gonzalez and Cruz Sex Nadre battling out right now. Watch them as they hit the step up. Both riders choosing not to jump the step up. Sex Nadre charging a little bit harder. And you know these little 50cc machines, it's all about not jumping. It's about how far you jump as they make their way up top of the hill right here through this little 180 degree turn. Both our riders navigate through there very smoothly. Middle line for uh, Sex Nadre. See what Shex Nadry's got as they get ready to make the way to the cut track. He's got the inside line on right here, taking a shorter distance. Is he gonna make the move? We gotta wait and see. I think he might. No, he doesn't. Rail around the outside, Alejandro. So Alejandro Gonzalez doing a great job. Rail around that outside, man. I thought Shex Nadry had him. He's on the inside, had to check up a little bit there. The exit of the corner. Oh, we almost tossed it right there through the split lane. Watch them now as they're making their way, man. I'll tell you what, traction is at a premium right now. You want to get traction? You need to go on over to Dunlop. Dunlop GMX Tire. They dominate the American Pro and Amateur Racing, winning more than 178 AMA Pro Supercross and Motocross Championships, more than all other tire companies combined. That's Dunlop. You want some grip? You want to rip? Call Dunlop or go over there and see Jeff and the boys in the next tire. They'll get you hooked up and on your way. Got a lot of uh, a lot of deals and steals down there as we're watching Sex and Adrian House still making a push here. He wants this thing. Carter Holmes, though, he's going to make his way through there by the starting line area to make that drag race into the pit. Going on the white flag lap here, so one more to go for these competitors. And I'll tell you what, white flag, you know, it's a good sign, but, man, this track, as, as intimidating as it is right now, it's important that you stay on two wheels on that white flag lap. Don't cost it. Don't cost yourself anything. Don't give it up. I'll tell you who's not going to give it up right now. It's Alejandro Gonzalez. Gonzalez doing a good job in second. The 44 Cruz checks Nadre. He is still in that third spot. You know, he, we've seen him make a push, try to get another two position, but a third is just as good in the second right here. You just want to make it into that second moto. That's a huge accomplishment for all these little boys out here. And talking about accomplishments, in addition to dominating every pro motocross and supercross championship over the 14 years in a row, Dunlop riders at last year's Minios, they won 87 out of 88 championships total. Let me say that again. Dunlop riders, last year's Minios, won 87 of the 88 titles that were available out there. And now we're watching the number 77 of Carter Holmes getting in some lap traffic, having to take his feet off the pegs right there. We had one down to the outside. One of our riders creeping through the inside. But here we go, Thor Parts Unlimited. Spectator section, your leader. It is still Carter Holmes out there doing a great job out in front. Looking for our second place rider to make his way through. We should see Alejandro Gonzalez has been holding it all day long. come across to take the checker flag. Your winner and winner gonna be Carter Holmes. Running a solid 215 out there on that short trek. A great ride for that young man. He's out of Middleburg, Florida on that 77 Cobra. Look to see him in the front of motor number two as I'm sure he had some issues out there in his heat race. 
looking for our second place rider to make his way through and he uh just outside 20 seconds behind we should see alejandro gonzalez making his way through looking at the screen right now alejandro is going to pit check in number two stop oh no what happened to Shex nadre he must have had some issues out there the milano munos he's going to take that final transfer position so a huge break there for Liliano. All right, guys, just a little update on the Dunlop tires. It's $10 off big tires, $10 off big tires, and $5 off mini. Stop by Dunlop. Go see the boys over there. Talk to Jeff Cernick. It's $10 off big bike and $5 off mini tires, guys. Get them while you can. They're going out the door quick. Go see our good friends over at Dunlop. Jeff Cernick, MX Tire. Go see him, please. Yeah, thank you for that, Wes. I appreciate that. And the all-new Geomax MX-34 is the latest result of Dunlop's ongoing development of their Geomax family of tires. Developed with help of top pro motocross riders, and the all-new Geomax MX-34 is the new industry standard for soft to intermediate terrain. Experience the advantage. You know what to do. Ride Dunlop. Dunlop Tires hooking up Jeff Cernix, telling you about all those deals out there. Actually, Wes Kane telling you about all the deals that Jeff Cernix is offering. And don't forget, if you haven't checked them out already, those uh, Lawrence Rose J Donut Goggles down there, Jet Lawrence Donut Goggles, were available at MX Tires. I'm not sure there's anything left, but I'll tell you what, as a kid, I would love to have opened up those for Christmas. Christmas gifts at a premium now on Black Friday. Make sure you go down Vendor's Row. And see what you can bring home with you. As Wes Kane likes to call them, some stocking stuffers. Find some stocking stuffers. Or the big prizes, big presents out there as well. That one board up for our 4-6 riders. Again, this is the 51cc 4-6 Limited Conti number one. This 4-6 Limited Conti will take top six in this one. This is race number 92 going to the track. Race number 93 going to the starting line, 85, 9 to 13. Going to staging, schoolboy 2, 12 to 17. Pre-staging, 65, 10 to 11. And first call for mini senior one, 12 to 14, Conti. Our four to six riders out there on the track right now. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, Rodney. All right, perfect. I'm just uh, checking everything here. Going with uh, another set of uh, headphones here. This is one of those uh, two consies, uh huh? So only top three. This is this, this is one. This is one of the four to six class now. We just passed this seven eight class. Four oh, to okay. six riders out there now. All right. So we will be taking top six in this one. Perfect. A track really starting to shape up well, man. It's definitely still difficult for these little four to six riders. These guys having some issues in their heat races and they're off to the races again. You know, the track's probably a little more different than it was for them in their first moto. So they're uh, just taking the time, you know, getting used to it, getting comfortable, navigating the way through. And we're watching our leaders now make their way through the track, trying to pick up on our leader. Out on the track right now in this video with CC four to six limited class. This consolation race number one for them. It is Alexander Robinson of the number one machine. Wyatt Berthothi, he's on the 13. The 22, a Hudson Hinnich. The 27, the East, East Esteban Erdinola. Camden Finala, he's on the number 74. Cole Colwell, he's on the number 80 machine. The 101, a Carter Rineker. The 118, a Jax Anderson. The 171 machine, a Asia Lenihan. Behind Lenihan, we have the 412 of Wade Lloyd, Preston Durbin, and Colton Phillips. That is all 12 entries out there right now. And again, we're taking six, top six transfer. Tough break for a couple riders having some problems down there in the pit, trying to get back up on the two wheels. As we await our leader, he's making his way through the Scott. Defend your vision, split lane. If you guys need to defend your vision, go see Triple J down there at Scott. And here they come, trying to get a read on those little bitty numbers on them bikes. It looks like little Riddicker out there doing it. I didn't get a read of the number. I got a read in the back, and I can just tell by the way he rides out there. Little Riddicker not scared to hang it out. Making the way deep inside the Gators' mouth. Now they're going to be jumping out to the finish line. Ha, ha, ha. 
Hey, Rodney, you know what I just seen? We got 10 minutes. 10 minutes, you'll be able to see Ricky Stenhouse. Go see Stenhouse at 10 o'clock at the camper house by the front gate. Get some autographs, get some pictures, shake his hand. He's the Daytona 500 winner, and you can meet and greet down there at the camper house at 10 o'clock. So about 10 minutes away from that one as we watch our leaders come through, making their way through. Carter Rinnaker, as I said, he is our leader out there, doing a great job out in front. He had some issues out there, but he's making it. Still making it happen out here in the Constellation Race, like we talked about, and we talk about it over and over again. It's probably a, one of those things where he had a little problem there in his heat race, but he's going to make it happen. It looks like in the number two position, it might be Cole, Cole Colwell out there getting the job done. And Jackson Anderson, he is in the third spot. Again, we're taking six out of this one. Six are going to transfer into that second moto. And coming through again, it is Carter Rennick on the 101 machine leading out. He has a big lead over our second place rider. Second place rider number 80, Cole Kill Colwell. Jackson Anderson in number three position. He'll round out the top three. Looking for our fourth place rider. It's number 74, a Camden Finala. So Finala, man, making some good moves out there, making some strides. All right, with Mike Duke close with us up here, Rock River man. Mike, what are you seeing out there right now? Track looks great given the circumstances. Uh, the guys here did a great job of getting it prepped. These little guys are actually making it around uh, pretty decent, so looks good. Yeah, they definitely had it sealed off and ready to go. They're expecting this rain. They're ready for the rain. Like I said, it's looking good. And I think as more bikes get out there, the better it's going to get out there today. Yeah, for sure. They did a good job plowing through these uh, races, too. I mean, they're going to be done, uh, uh, you know, ahead of time, I think, on Saturday. It's, uh, it's, it's been a great event. And, uh, weather's been fantastic. So it's always awesome to come down here to the videos and get to hang out uh, before we go back to Wisconsin to the <laughs> negative 147 degrees. Yeah, Mike, I got to ask you, man, how is, um, how's your success been out so far this week? Good. It's been great. You know, uh, Danny Lewis said Torrance, Jake, those guys are uh, uh, just killing it uh, under the NSA tent, so that's been awesome. We got a, a lot of trackside riders here uh, that are that having a great event. Quite honestly, it hasn't been terribly busy, which is uh, kudos to the Yamahas that have been holding together. So that's great. Uh, b being busy here isn't necessarily a good thing, <laughs> right? So, uh, but you know, we want to wish all the Blue Crew riders good luck and and uh, make it happen the rest of the week here in these in these closing motos. Um, as we're kind of closing out here, Rusty and I got a. a it, Bike sales were great here for whatever reason. Rusty's got a 65 down there from Loretta's that he doesn't want to take home. I got a, a brand new 24 450 
that I'll wow. take 10K for. Just want to get a, it. That's a steal yeah, right there. Yeah, I just, Black Friday action, that's right? That's right. Black Friday <laughs> action on the bikes. And then I got a couple, uh, two specialized bikes left. I got a $8,000 uh, Levo down there that I'll sell for four grand, and uh, one of the little transport bikes that's like 1500 bucks. So if anybody wants some smoking deals uh, today, Black Friday sale on a, on a YZ or on some specialized bikes, come on down by the Yamaha tent. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Mike. I do appreciate it. I know it's a little early to talk about it, but... Um, Let's talk about what Rock River's got going in the Supercross scene. Yeah, so we've got uh, all, well, four of the six guys signed. We've got a big team for this year. Um, we had some great success last year moving up. You know, when we lost our title sponsor, uh, Cycle Trader, in 20, was that 2019, I guess, and then COVID hit. Jameson was riding, Hartran, Hayes, and uh, Yusaki came over from Japan. Uh, it was a great year. Uh, did a lot of development with Yamaha and Motors, and we really had a solid package. And then when it kind of all fell apart, um, it, it's been difficult to rebuild, but last year was great. Um, we signed Harlan again, so he'll be back. He's hurt. He got hurt overseas, so yeah. Simonson's going to fill in with him until for him until he comes back. Devin might stay on board. We haven't decided that yet. Um, uh, TJ's going to ride uh, 250 for us. Um, uh, Colton Eigenman's going to be on the team. Uh, Kilroy's going to be on the team, and uh, Marshall Welt is going to be on wow. the team. We got nice. one more. Yeah, we got one more that we haven't signed yet, so we're not announcing that yet, but. <laughs> solid team um you know gizmo mods is, is stepped up uh, this year and um conrad's going to help us do some more development stuff get some motors dialed in but more importantly he's going to be there just to straighten the program back out christina did an amazing job she yeah, was so she organized sure. so neat all that stuff and and then you know when everything kind of shut down we, we moved past that but i think uh, uh conrad's going to help us get that dialed back in so we're super excited uh trailer's actually down here getting a bunch of work we bought a new uh, semi the other day um, so it's going to be an exciting season. Yeah, I'm excited to see it, man. See it all unfold. Like I said, you got a lot of great riders on the team this year. I hope you guys have a lot of success. Yeah, thank I, you. I know Conrad, he's been down there with AMA, man, keeping everybody in line, so he'll definitely keep everybody in line for you. He's a stickler. <laughs> That's what we need, right? We need the straight and narrow. So. Yeah, absolutely. And we're checking in with the 51cc46 Limited now. Carter Rinnaker going to take the win right there. Cole Colwell going to finish up second. Jackson Anderson, I believe, going to take up third spot. Camden Finale, if he holds on to it, will be fourth. This spot, Hudson Hinch. And sixth spot, we should see Wyatt Bertotti. And these guys, they didn't get a lap down, so literally all they have to do is take the checker flag, and they qualify. <laughs> As our seventh place rider, we see him get the checker flag, get a lap down right there. But uh, Mike Duclos getting ready to come out on the track right now as our 51cc 4-6. Do you keep your eye on this 85cc 9-13 at all? Yeah, you know, we're always looking for the 65-85 riders. As you groom those guys and they come up, come up through, we saw that happen in the era of Sexton, Charbonneau, my son Jameson. There was like 20 of those kids that went Pelinis and then 65s and up through. And as you work with those groups all the way up through the ranks, you always got to be looking back down because eventually, you know, they're all in 250s and 450s. So you got no 65-85 <laughs> riders. So, yeah, we're always looking to uh, for that. We need, really need to rebuild that stable to bring the next group through. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you heard it first there, Mike. Too close. He's got your eye on you. Eye on the sky here in the tower, the Yamaha announcement tower, actually. So big thanks to the guy over there at Rock River and Yamaha. Mike Duclos, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All righty. Thanks a lot, guys. As uh, we got 85, 9 to 13, Consi getting ready to roll next. And live coverage of Racer TV's broadcast being brought to you by your friends at uh, Dunlop Tires. And remember, designed for soft terrain applications, the Geomax MX-14 truly excels in extreme sand and mud conditions. This new tire is offered in a complete range of rear sizes from minis to big bikes. Big of minis, minis off and rolling right now, 85, 9 to 13. 42 riders to be narrowed down to the top six in this one, if memory. Yep, it does. Uh, crew car, Hunter Carlisle, William Fisher, Gabe Morales, also uh, uh, Grady O'Connor, Braden Dorval, uh, Mac McCauley, Bentley Murphy, Emmett Johnson, Levi James, Dylan Richard, Braxton Becker, Owen Pomeroy, Gabriel Hunnick, uh, Jace Sapiri, Jace Sessionetti. It is uh, also Anthony Pacella, Daniel Lane, Trip Glasgow, Brantley Fridell, Jaden Crum Crumbine, Antonio Antillon, Bryson Snellgrove, Brayton Craiglow, Emmett Baker, Steele Kelly, Miguel Boer, Brock Lamb, Owen Stoddard, Colt St. Clair, Riker K, Adam Graham, Colden Olenberger, also uh, Parker Noelli. Uh, Rocco Barone, Weston Chris, Blake Rayeski, Andrew Johnson, Ray Riley Davis, Sam Swaffer, Reed Cohn, and also Caleb Likens. That's 42 riders, a full gate, narrowed down to the top six in this one as we get it all sorted out and jockey for position on this first lap. Our leaders on the far back side actually making their way off the uh, Gators' tail now. 
And then back into the heart of this racetrack, it looks like Dean. It looked like them 309 machine at Emmett Baker. He was off to a good start, but I'm watching on the screen right now to try to catch eyes on that 309 machine. It looks like we're looking for a battle of second and third right now. These guys are dicing it out. And man, I'll tell you what, you don't want to throw it away here. You want to make it to the main event, or sorry, not the main event, but make it to the second moto, should I say, as this moto counts as your first moto. Through that split lane, we're looking for our leader to make his way here by the Yamaha announcement tower. It is not the 309. It looks like it's the, maybe the number 555 machine. We have a rider with the number 555 out there. 551, we have Adam Graham, but I don't believe that is the rider. We'll check them as they we make their way up the hill. 955 out there, too. All right, we'll check them as they get here. There's a 225. We'll watch him go by. That's Antonio and Tillon out of San Jose. It is the 955 leading this thing out, though. Andrew Johnson, he has got out of the gate with quickness and starting yeah. to pull away now already. He launched outside the... The finish line tabletop like I've never seen an 85 do. Andrew Johnson out of Logan, Ohio, up out of my neck of the woods, actually. Uh, um, so uh, Antonio Antillon in second. Emmett Baker is third. Jace uh, Sithbury in the number four spot. Weston Crisp is fifth. And Colt St. Clair rounds out the uh, top six final transfer spots. Again, this is after one of three laps. Parker Noel, Bentley Murphy, Grady O'Connor, Braden Dorval in the number 10 spot so they're just outside the bubble there so we've still got a little time and little time is just exactly that uh, by comparison to what they've seen in their first moto and what they'll see in their second moto this is uh time to get things done quick yeah absolutely quick we always talk about getting out there and sprinting but now you're getting out there and you're sprinting and the moto's over you know what i'm saying you don't have time yeah. to settle in green white checkers basically what it boils down to <laughs> yep. It's like uh, coming off caution in a NASCAR race, green, white, checkered. Yep. And uh, speaking of that, it's that time. Go on down now to the camper house by the front gate. You've seen the campers all organized down there. The camper house, we have Ricky Stenhouse. Go see the Daytona 500 winner, Ricky Stenhouse, right now at the camper house. Hopefully get Stenhouse up here with us in the tower so he can uh, help us call some racing action. No, nah, I'm just kidding. We'll see how he's doing, having a good time out here. No, I want him to call some racing action. All right, I You're like right. that. Yeah, let's get it. <laughs> I wonder if he ever motored. There's a good chance, I'd imagine. He's you at know, least been on dirt bike at one point in his life. I'm surprised at how many that we have seen do that before. Okay, absolutely. All right, stand by. We're going to be uh, we're going to be going to the phone lines to talk to a very All important right, individual this. here in just a few moments. So go ahead and keep this covered for us, Dean, and I'll get everything set up. All right, while well, you get everything set up, we're watching our leader now. The 955 machine of Andrew Johnson doing a great job out there leading this one out. Antonio Antillon, he is still in your second spot. But man, he has lost a lot of time on our leader. Look at Johnson out there. Pops got the video camera rolling as he makes me up the finish line, doing a great job out in front right now. And it looks like possibly might have a position change in the number two position, as it might be Emma Baker now in second. The 225 Anthony Antillon looks like he's falling back into the third place position. Here they go right now. It is Emmett Baker making some moves. He's going to slide up and actually run a second faster this time around than Andrew Johnson. So Emmett Baker, man, he's the man on the move right now. you got to keep eyes on him. But he is about 13 seconds. So I believe it will be a little too little too late for him to actually catch our leader, only running a second faster. But falling back is Antonio Antillon. He's going to run a 2.16, so he's about 10 seconds off our first and second place rider. Weston Chris going to check in in fourth. This spot on the top five, Cole St. Clair. And sixth spot, the final transfer spot right now is... Bentley Murphy, tough breaker. Jay Seepry slip it up. He's going to find himself in the 10th now. Grady O'Connor, he's your 7th place rider, and he is trying to make a push at this qualifying position. Making some moves out there on the white flag lap. We're looking at our timing, or sorry, looking at our racer TV screen. We're watching Emmett Baker now trying to run down our leader, of course, Baker on that number 309 KTM. He's had a lot of success out here this week. That was the leader that was down. I thought so. I was watching Race TV. I see him right down, and we kept eyes on the 309 machine. That is the 309, and the Baker making a pass in the lead right there. And hopefully, Andrew Johnson can get back up and get going to stay in a qualifying position. And the Baker trying to keep it on to as well. He is out there on the last lap, making his way through these rollers. Those Dunlop rollers, not sure what kind of tire he's running, whether he's on the paddle or he's on the NX34, but I guarantee you that man is running a Dunlop. It's 
Speaking of Dunlop, we're talking about them. They're designed for soft terrain application. The Geomax MX-14 truly excels in extreme sand and mud condition. The new tire is offered in a complete range of rear, rear sizes from minis to big bikes. So if you're not familiar with MX-14, go on over to Dunlop MX Tire and check them out. That is an X tire that's good for sand and mud-like conditions, which is what we are in right now as we watch our leader make his way down to the bottom and back up to take the finish line and the checker flag. Your winner is going to be Anna Baker. Finish it up in second, wrapping it up the number 955 machine. Andrew Johnson is going to lose only one spot after going down out there. And that, that, you go down out there and it's super slimy. You got to try to get up with uh, some good emotions here. You can't panic, you can't freak out. Antonio Antillian gonna finish up third round at your top three. And Rodney, you queued up over there? Uh, he's making some final adjustments here before we uh, give you guys a little surprise. Rodney, you ready for us over there? So uh, we're gonna go ahead and go to the phone lines here as we say hello, good morning. Mike Buckley on the line here from Dunlop Tires. How you doing? I'm doing great, Rodney. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Can you hear that over there? All right, Mike. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, missing you over here this year. I know we got the chance to spend uh, a few uh, Thanksgivings together over the course of uh, history here at uh, Minio's. But uh, I know uh, this year uh, you're spending it at home with your family. So how's things going there? Uh, it's going good. I'm, uh, it's a little harder for me these days when we moved our headquarters from Buffalo to out here to California. It's a little bit, a little bit more of a trek to get to Minio's, but. Man, I miss it. It's, uh, I've been watching it. Uh, the race, the broadcast, the race TV broadcast is absolutely amazing. It's, it's like I stopped going to Supercrosses a long time ago when they started doing them live, and they're fun to watch on your couch uh, <laughs> rather than get on an airplane to get there. But uh, so the coverage has been great, and I've been watching it. That's awesome, man. We really appreciate it, and uh, we really appreciate the fact that Dunlop Tires is, uh, you know, a big supporter of that particular, well, this particular stream that the folks are watching back home. And, uh, you know, it's it's folks like you and uh, Dunlop Tires that, that makes this all possible to bring it to people's living rooms all across the globe. Yeah, it's uh, something I, I've just enjoyed working with Wynn and the crew down there and all of you guys, quite honestly, that, uh, that put in the hard work. And from the beginning, we and I started coming down there and racing with my son, and just immediately realized what type of an event that was, and and how uh, much of a family-oriented thing and a commitment it is. And when and I've been talking about ways to make it better for years, and this is this is definitely one of the best things we ever did is to make this investment to support put it on the on the stream. Absolutely, and I know there's a thousands of people out there, tens of thousands of people that truly appreciate that on a daily basis, if not more. And uh, Mike, I know uh, you know you, you mentioned commitment, family commitments, and things like that, and and that's the beauty of it. Dunlop, uh, you know, is a part of the racing family, the motocross racing family, and uh, you guys are committed to motocross. And I know that uh, you you guys have, have have got a lot of things to look forward to as far as the future is concerned as well. Yeah, for sure, Rodney. I mean, since I've been, I've been here, it's, it's my 31st year with the company. And I, le I learned really early on, there's, there's three really important things about this business. It's, it's you know, you've got to live it and you've got to breathe it. You've got to have really good products and you got to have good people. And along the way, you have to support the industry and you have to do things like this and work with people like Winfarin to put on events that keep people coming back, keep people enthused. But the, that, that third element about the people is probably one of the most important things to me. I, I surrounded myself in this company with enthusiasts. We got some guys like Rob Fox is there that live it, and breathe it every day. He rides, he races. We got a guy by the name of Brock Glover. I think everybody knows who he is. He kind of runs that side of it. Ryan Flex, the next race uh, racer, flat tracker. He gets it. Uh, but you can you can you can look at our entire organization. You see that across whether it's road racers or enduro guys. We've got it all. They're all enthusiasts. You look around our office during this week. The computer screens are full of. Uh, Racer, racer TV threads because they live it and breathe it. 
that's what makes a difference in this business because it's it's, it's all about heart and passion. It's not what we have to do to ride to, to work every day. We, we, we do it because we love it. And uh, it's just, you got if you don't have people that have that sort of passion, then you're just not going to be successful. Absolutely not. And, and you're right. You know, uh, you guys do have that. Uh, and, and you mentioned, again, throwing that family uh, name back out there. I mean, they are a part of the Dunlop family. And, you know, whenever you see them, you think Dunlop. When you see Dunlop, you think Rob Fox. You think uh, uh, Brock Glover. You think all these guys. You think Mike Buckley. I mean, these are the people that make that product so special. And the product, you know, uh, kind of speaks for itself, I think, you know, in, in what you guys do. Uh, always, always working on the cutting edge technology, and uh, and like you said, always out here to support the sport and the riders at the uh, at the ground and grassroots level. Yeah, and uh, when you have good people that understand it and can communicate with the people that are using the product, then again, it just translates right back to the R&D group. And and in this particular product, we work with folks in Japan. So we have a little bit of a communication barrier to come, overcome sometimes, but but we get great support, and, and our guys just don't settle. They push that, especially at the pro side. They push until we get the performance where we need it, and then we trickle it right down to the people that are on that track there today. Awesome. And uh, so uh, with the future, I know uh, you guys uh, have said uh, cutting edge technology are you guys still working on new stuff or have you just pretty much mastered dirt or you're still trying to master it even more uh, it's, it's it's a constant moving machine we have a five-year product plan horizon that we're dealing with constantly so we just introduced our new intermediate mx34 and that thing has been probably the most successful dirt launch that i've been involved with since i've been with the company and we're already moving on to our intermediate, the hard uh, successor to our uh, our very popular MX-53. So that'll be next. Wow. Guys, always busy. Anything else that you might want to pass along to the families here at uh, Minio's this year? I just wish everybody a, a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving week and a blessed holiday and uh, get home safely. Hope everybody has a great uh, week. It looks like you guys, have, for the most part, had the rain held pulled off so that's great yep but uh just hope everybody has a great holiday season all right brother thank you very much and uh, we'll see you at a racetrack real soon okay all right robin take care buddy all right mike buckley from uh, team dunlop here with us and uh on the phone of course and we really appreciate uh all the uh, great things that he brings to uh, the table as far as uh you know being the head of dunlop and believing in what we're doing here at the uh, grassroots level and the amateur level of motocross racing speaking of which right now schoolboy 2 12 to 17 bc on the racetrack and uh, we've got clark robbins juan felipe garcia martin in the number two spot carson mainquist is third that's the way uh, clark robbins finishes up front another name you don't expect to see in an lcq but he wins this one Gar uh, garcia martin uh, finishing in the number two spot mainquist will hold on for third another one you wouldn't expect to see out here Brandon Eade, another one, and Dagan Strickland in fifth place. And then Mitch Pierce actually make that Nolan Riley now rounding out the sixth and final transfer spot as Pierce drops back one to the number seven outside the bubble. So your transfer spots belonging to Robbins, Martin, Manquist, Eade, Strickland, and Riley. Again, check the posting board to make sure that uh, you get uh, in the right places at the right time and that everything is... Uh, as said and uh, right now that is uh, race 94 wrapping up race 95 getting ready to make its way onto the track uh, great opportunity to talk with mike buckley there just a moment ago and uh again uh, thank him for taking a, a little time out of his uh out of his uh his schedule ricky stenhouse daytona 500 winner 10 o'clock this morning at uh, actually this that's you that's you. I look over and I see that Kroger Racing shirt, and I'm like, who in the world's here from Kroger Racing? <laughs> uh, I look back up and I see Ricky Stenhouse, man. Welcome to the thank you, brother. Glad to have you out here. Yeah, thank you. We uh, we're right inside the the uh, the main gate there with Campers NRV, who has got an awesome display down here and trying to sell some campers to these uh, these riders and families. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of campers down here. But uh, first time being here at Minio's is uh, is really cool. I grew up riding dirt bikes, and um, it's, uh, it's awesome to see this event. 
Absolutely. And that was one of the questions I was going to ask you. Are you are you familiar at all with uh, with uh, uh, motocross racing? So uh, did you race or just ride dirt bikes? <laughs> I, I attempted to race a couple times. I, uh, I've, I ran some arena cross races when they would come through kind of the Memphis area. Um, but like my dad, when I was, I got my first dirt bike. I got a PW50 when I was four. And my dad took me to the go-kart track for a half a day. And then he took me to the dirt bike track for a half a day. And basically said hey which one do you want to race and i picked a go-kart and so here we are so I, I did a lot of woods riding and trail riding um you know when i was growing up uh till i was about 18 and then uh really after that i was just mainly focused on on racing cars that, that's amazing and you know a lot of people probably don't realize that they, they watch nascar and you know generally i mean maybe our family does here in the motocross racing scene recognizes that you got to start at a young age to get in something like that but i mean you know, traditionally, you look at NASCAR and you see the old the old guys and you think about old moonshine runners and oh, stuff yeah. like that. You know, at least the older generation does. But this, uh, the new generation, it's kind of, it's turned into a science like it has in all sports. I mean, each one of you athletes behind the wheel is exactly that now, an athlete. It is. Uh, you know, we're putting a lot of training in. Obviously, these kids are, are training uh, from, from day one uh, that want to be a, a supercross champion, a motocross champion. And uh, same in our sport. You know, we're, we're, uh, we're putting the time in the gym. We're putting the time in on simulators and, and you know, taking notes and, um, you know, reading everything that we can, watching old races and, and film and uh, just trying to be, you know, the best we can every day. And, uh, you know, for me, it's, uh, it's really cool to come out here and, and see this uh, event. It's, um, you know, kind of makes me jealous a little bit being out here, uh, you know, kind of wish I'd go back and, and do things a little different because this, know, man. this looks like a lot of fun. It is, but I'm telling you, winning the Daytona 500 has to be a lot of fun, too. Yeah, winning the Daytona 500 was really cool. Looking forward to getting back there in February to, to defend that title. Uh, you know, we're two weeks out of, um, of racing, and I'm already, you know, ready to get back behind the wheel. So uh, looking forward to getting back to Daytona for sure. Absolutely. And uh, uh, with that, I mean, and that's one of the big ones. I mean, uh, there, there's certain races. I mean, you obviously want to win every time you get behind the wheel but i mean there's certain races that you probably want to win a little bit more that that puts you up a little higher on the pedestal as far as wins go yeah basically you either want to win the championship or, or the daytona 500 so um you know there's other races i want to you know win on my bucket list uh, in our cup series but you know the the 500 is you know by far the the biggest race that we can win and um you know it was a, a huge start to our season last year and we had a good season last year but um you know looking for more always absolutely and you're here today you're with campers in right here on site right oh yeah uh campers in rv they got uh, a spot right inside the the entrance of the uh the complex here and um they had a little, little square set up of all different types of uh, you know, trailers or, or motorhomes that, that you want to buy and uh, and go dirt bike racing with your kids. So, um, no, it's, uh, we're, we're there. We're going to sign some autographs. Hopefully uh, this weather keeps getting a little bit nicer and, uh, you know, the, the kids will come over and, and check us out. Absolutely. So uh, uh, really glad to have you out here, and uh, hopefully we can see you at a few more of these. Hey, you never know, man. You can do du du dual duty here. You I know. I, I got my KTM 350, but I don't think my team owners would be super thrilled <laughs> if I uh, if I came here to ride. February to worry about, right? Yeah, yeah I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think my my uh, my team would be too pumped about that. <laughs> so let me ask you. Like I said, there is a science to it, and, and drivers are now considered more of an athlete than anything. Do you have a, a regular training program that you have to go through? Some something similar, maybe endurance-wise. For I don't have riders? to, but but I do because I feel like you know I feel like it puts me in the. the best opportunity to to win races and win championships and so i got a trainer that you know is is at my house and um you know we we train a bunch of people uh in our gym and uh yeah so it's uh it's really special and you know talking to you know other riders that you know uh have been doing this a long time i'll, I'll watch you know kind of their off-season programs with you know adam and uh chase and and all those guys um you know it's it's just wild how much you know effort they got to put in to, to being good on a dirt bike and you know i want to do the same they have a thing that's uh called falling out of the seat <laughs> yeah so it looks easy from being on this side of the fence until you get in there and get to use your experience they have they are athletes because you could take anybody in there that says oh i could do that 
Well, when you're going 200 miles an hour and you're inches from the wall, or like Rowdy says, hey, let me get your car and see how you do in traffic. <laughs> These guys are athletes. Yeah. Because there's guys like, you know, when I do my, my racing, 25 laps, you start reeling people in because they're out of shape. They fall out of the seat. So these guys, you know what that. Ricky yeah, our races are just really hot, and so yeah. uh, being hydrated is is one you know big key thing. I mean, yeah, there, we had some races this year that it was 150 degrees in our yeah. car for wow. for four hours. So uh, it it gets it gets pretty intense. But uh, how yeah, many systems do you have? In do what? Do you have any cooling system? I have a, a hose that goes to my helmet, and uh, and then I use a drink system that I have. So I drink about 100 ounces of water. Uh, throughout, throughout the race. No, interesting. Nah, she's helped a guy that does sprint cars. Uh, believe it. Sheldon. It's, yes. He and came Sheldon, down here and raced. Sheldon was following me on Instagram forever, and he's like, Wes, don't you remember me? And I'm following him. I'm like, yeah, you are the you ride sprint cars, and you're with Ricky and all this. He goes, no, Wes, you interviewed me on a podium, and this and that and the other. I'm like, Yeah, he me? used to race yeah. the bikes. Uh, he yeah. showed me some old entry blanks of him, and I think he was racing like Cooper Webb was there yes, and he was. Uh, a bunch of these guys. So I thought that was really cool. But, um, yeah, make sure everybody comes out and sees us. Uh, if anybody's back in the pit area, you know, listening or watching, we're, we'll be over at Camper's Inn for, for a yeah. little while. And, uh, I mean, these kids, all the other, all the big guys are, are getting their motorhomes from Camper's Inn. Justin Barsha just got one. Chase Sexton got one. So uh, I'm waiting on my new one to come in. And uh, so say, come, come and see us. Yes. <laughs> Ricky, thanks for talking. Thanks for having me. Good luck with you this season. Thank you. Good luck at that Daytona this year, man. I'll be watching for sure. And uh, really nice guy. So Ricky's going to be over signing autographs at uh, Camper House uh, by the front gate uh, here real soon. And uh, at the same time, a really good guy. Uh, So uh, thanks for stopping in and and speaking with us as well as uh, we are uh, gearing up here. uh, Actually wrapping up, I guess I should say. Race 95, Austin Keller, Grayson Dempsey, Austin Bolts, uh, Dante Feliciano is fourth place, looking for James Gleason and Gage Chiaverini in the number six plot. And that would be your final transfer position. Let's see if Tucker Don- Donato was able to make up some time there. He was only three seconds behind, about 11 seconds faster. Let's see what happens here at the finish line. Was Tucker able? Nope. Gage gets it. Uh, he does. Uh, Come to within just a, a few seconds there, but uh, Gage is able to hang on to it. So that will be your uh, top six there in the 65cc 10 and 11 limited. Uh, race number 95, which means we move now to race number 96, getting ready to take to the track. This will be a mini senior 1, 12 to 14 consolation race. Alberto Antillen, Nicholas Siegel, uh, Jackson McCarty, Levi Hoggs, and Blake Frost, Steele Kelly, Bentley Murphy, Jeremy Strider, Jack Davila. Logan Ford, Gabe Ahanek, uh, Caleb Kaminsky, Austin Gore, Anthony Pacella, Jaden Crumbine, also Ethan Pagnini, Gabe Clark, Francesco Perez, Carlos Borra, and Miguel Boer, uh, Max Gilberson, Braden Lake, Coden, Colden Olenberger, Christopher Hanshaw, Cameron Nichols, also Wiley Rives, Diesel Watts, Rocco Baroni, uh, Andrew Johnson, and Sam Swaffer. All uh, heading into that first turn now as the gate drops on race number 96. 30 riders again narrowed down to the top six in this one. Well, if you were watching on Racer TV, you saw we had a little pile up there on the BP hole shot there, and uh, definitely not the place that you want to be off the start as uh, we are trying to get this sorted out. And there's a uh, number 24 machine of Nicole, uh, Nicholas Seagal out of uh, Quito. He's a car tech back rider. He's buried back uh, a little far, so we'll keep an eye on him, see if he's able to make it into a top six position as we turn our attention hopefully here to the front of the pack here pretty soon. See what we got uh, shaping up there. Oh, more carnage down. All righty, so we'll pick up on our leaders coming through here in just a few moments. Let you know who the who's is, and there they go. 
Again, track conditions still holding up very nicely. Um, not seeing it actually, really not seeing it get deep at all. So uh, by comparison to what we would have seen, I think, yesterday at this uh, level, but wasn't dug deep like it normally is either because uh, the rain showers coming in and the anticipation of that, it was kind of packed down a little bit to try to fend off some of the rain coming in or at least slow it down to keep it from getting so deep so quickly. And thankfully, we're blessed with the fact that we don't have a lot of moisture coming down, some, but not a lot. Uh, Two-tenths of an inch, I think, is what the whole system's supposed to be bringing as the 53 machine of Jack Davila from San Jose. Dean Afton, moto number one, and out here in the LCQ is leading the way. So I'm sure he's one of those riders that expected to actually be in through the first moto of racing in his qualifier. So anyway, Jack Davila leading Logan Ford in second. Wiley Rives is running in the number three spot. Nick Siegel is moved now into the number four spot. Jeremy Strider in fifth and Gabe Clark back in the number six spot. Blake Frost, Anthony Pacella, Caleb Kaminsky and Ethan uh, Pagnini round out the top 10. But again, it's the top six that will be transferring into moto number two. So just a little bit of time to get it sorted out again. Green, white, checker is basically what we're looking at out here for most, if not all, of our classes in these LCQs. To get it done quick is the name of the game. Watching our leaders now as they traverse this track and Things starting to stretch out quite a bit. It looks like first to second, second to third, third to fourth, a little bit tighter, and fourth to fifth, about the same thing as we look out there. Uh, Seagal, Strider, Gabe Clark, four, five, and six right now. Blake Frost might be one to keep an eye on. Uh, he was running in the seventh place position aboard the 29 with a head full of steam there at the end of lap number one, trying to make things uh, happen out there. We'll see if he's able to pull some rabbits out of some hats or some cards out of that sleeve. Here with about a lap and a half left to go in the mini senior 12 to 14 class. Again, mini senior one. Race 96 on the track. Race 97 rolling to the gate. 65 CC seven and nine limited concy. We'll have a couple of those concies. And then we'll have uh, 450B limited concy race 99 so 90 97 on the gate 98 in staging and 99 you need to start making your way over as well 450B limited and uh, you know, if you aren't on your way or thinking about coming race number 100 as well the 85 12 to 13 consolation race there's going to be room for you in staging very very soon the middle after two now and Ford, 4.8 seconds separating the two, so no real challenges there in the front of the pack. Rives in third, Segal is still fourth, but Blake Frost, uh, remember, he was outside the top six. Told you that he would be one to keep an eye on, and he's already busted the barrier and into a number five spot as Strider now drops to the number six position. Gabe Clark is back in the number seven spot, so looks like Blake Frost, man on a mission to try to work his way to the front of the pack. Should be up into that number three spot now. Yep, I believe he just made the pass on Scow as we head over the head of the Gator now and onto the uh, Gator's back itself. And that is the uh, 771. Wiley Rives now feeling that pressure. So uh, maybe uh, Seagal not relinquishing the spot as Blake Frost trying to still knock on the door there. He's right there. And that right there might be it. Frost trying to come on the inside there. Side by side, the drag race goes. You see the 24 machine looking over at the 29 as they motor their way toward the back section, dropping down onto the Gators tail now and headed down the Scott Highway where there's no shortcuts there, my friend. Well, maybe there is. If you get to that very inside line and can find that smoothness there, you might feel like you found yourself a, whole, uh, a shortcut. But that just comes from being prepared and having wonderful vision through uh, Scott Goggles. Davila, Ford, Rives, Seagal, Frost, Strider, 
Here comes your leaders now into the front section. The Villa actually, I believe, right here in front of the Yamaha announcer's tower as he drops down into the gator pit now. The 80 of Logan Ford still solid there. Man, Wiley Rives under all kinds of pressure. Blake Frost is right there knocking on the doors. He has gotten around Seagal. The Villa checking in with Checkers Ford Will as well. What's going to happen between Rives, Seagal, and Frost? And at the Checkers as they cross that finish line stripe, it looks like Wiley Rives will hold on to it. Frost will move into the number four spot. Nick Seagal will hold on for a top five position finish, and Jeremy Strider as well. Rounding out the top six, your final transfer spot there here. Mini Senior 1, 12 to 14. Race number 96. Race 97, 65 CC, 7 to 9 limited coming up next. Andreas Williams, Owen Taylor, Bentley Mara, Tanner Parkman, Zachary Gordon, Braxton Gaithier, Ryder Palmer, Jace Owen, Jarrett Tensner, Parker LeBeau, Jacob Riley, Ryan Cicerati, Jack Sipes, Tate Brush, Billy Cassidy, Braxton Roth, Easton Ruffing, Levi Brace, Addison Likens, Jojo Caliendo, Cheyenne Hines, Will Silver, Braden Paxton, Emilio Munoz, Gunnar Lusk, Hudson Nolan, Bryce Jalowski, Cameron Berry, Braxton O'Brien, Cade Dupius, Easton Morgan, Jason Wees, Wise, uh, Steel Henderson, and also Joseph Lacapra, uh, Lacapra, Chance Jackson, Joey Carcopa, Ryan Seagraves, Lexi Gower, Trip Lloyd, and Easton Luttrell. That is 40 riders, 65 CC, 7 and 9 limited. Consi one of two, so only the top three will be transferring out of these 40 riders. So 70, uh, or excuse me, uh, a big percentage there. So if we've got 40 riders, six going, 34 riders going to be watching just from this one Consi. Back that up. And then you got another. So nearly 70 riders will be watching from the LCQs, not able to make it. So uh, two 40-man gates in the 65cc seven to nine limited consolation races today. And our leader uh, down on this one, our early leader going down, had a uh, monstrous lead starting to open up out here. So it looks like all of a sudden one becomes three that may be battling for the lead. And now already some change has taken place. What is that, a 7-14 maybe? And we'll wait till we get a better eye on that. There's the 23 machine we see trying to make some uh, hay out there. Jace Owen out of New Waverly, Texas, TTMX, B's Moto Lab, and 7MX back rider. And he's, I think, your third place, right? Here comes first and second now over the gizmo tabletop into the, uh, well, just below the Yamaha announcer's tower now. There is, that is the 170. Braden Paxton out of Wilmington, North Carolina on a PR Motorsports back ride. Looks like in that early lead. But he's still got company back there. Well, he was an early lead. Early leader went down, but anyway, He's the leader at the end of lap one, Brax Braden Paxton, Tate Brush, the 69 machine, running in second. And get this, Jace Owen saw him, what was it, Paris Supercross. I think he got fourth place at the Paris Supercross, and here he is out here racing in the number three spot. Now, that a different one, obviously, but uh, and spelled differently as well, but 23 of Owen he is in that number three position. Those are your final transfer positions, and those are the ones that we're keeping sort of a close eye on here on Racer TV as they go up out of the Gator Pit now. This looks like a big alligator head sitting there, doesn't it? <laughs> 170, Paxton, Brush, Cohen, no changes in those three. We got a fourth place ride. Braxton Roth back out of Richland, Indiana. He was about a second and a half behind whenever they checked through at the finish line, but he almost looks to be coming with a vengeance right now. Kind of in attack mode. Saw that uh, green flag after that first lap, knowing that a white flag is coming up. 
And a white flag is like the brightest green flag you're going to see for these guys out here because you know he's one to go way out on the far section of the course. Scott Highway. Again, it was nice talking with Mike Buckley there from Dunlop Tires and big special thanks to them as Mike was talking about the dedication they have and seeing this event be successful and of course being a, a part of it personally uh, down here for several years. Uh, Mike Buckley's and Dunlop, Team Dunlop are definitely on board for this one and, and 52 years strong so far and I can only expect to think that the next uh, 50 some years are going to only get better as time goes on. Paxton See, there is uh, Tate Brush going by. Did I miss Paxton? He should be down in the... Yep, we may have a change in the lead now. Let's see here. There's the 23 machine of Chase Owen. White flag is out now. And that might be... Was that the 170 drop in the third? See, that's what I get for not watching the monitor, I guess. So Tate Brush does take over the lead. Uh, Braden Paxton in second. Or excuse me, Chase Owen now in second. And I believe that drops Braden Paxton back uh, uh, back to the number three spot. No, that's Braxton Roth. So we got a whole different rider. I seen a seven, thought it was the 170, but it's the 077. Braxton Roth from Richland, Indiana moving up. Steve H Steel Henderson is up to fourth. Parker LeBeau in fifth. Now Braxton, we saw him uh, picking up some steam there, uh, as we said, heading into that second lap. Steel Henderson, he's dragging him right along with him now in the number four spot. LeBeau in fifth, Braxton Gaither in sixth, Jojo Caliendo in seventh, Palmer Ruffing and Billy Cassidy rounding out the top ten. But again, it's only the top three that will be going to the second moto. Everyone else will be sitting here trackside with the rest of us watching what's, what unfolds in moto number two. One track official looked like he had his hat off, scratching his head, trying to figure out what was going on with that machine off to the side. I feel his pain right now. <laughs> What's going on here? Now, we got great things going on here. Uh, again, uh, track is holding up amazing. As that rain moved through early this morning, I think it may be out of the system now. I've got a few puddles in the, put in the pits, but the track itself is absolutely ideal only going to get better i think as this day progresses we'll get into those second motos here shortly it's going to be a, a pretty spectacular sight checkers will be flying this time around and watching our leaders now making their way into the uh, stretch here for the final time in front of the announcer's tower Dunlop tires hooking these kids up for sure and there, is our leader. there he is in amongst some lap traffic right now Tate Brush working through checkers are out Atwood Tennessee's Tate Brush taking the win there Brush on the number 69 Cobra, backed by Cobra, as well as Roost, PR2, Fastway, Arai, 7, and of course, hooking up with those Dunlop tires out there, as so many of our top champions and fast riders do. Baroff into the number two spot around Owen there on that uh, final lap, and looks like Owen will finish up in that number three position. So it goes Brush, Roth, and Owen, one, two, and three in this uh, 65cc, seven to nine class. Division two, once again, we're going to take the only the top three from this one as well. Race 98 on the gate. Now off the gate, Ben Henson, Galo Zem Zemaride, uh, Jesse Ray Jones, Sebastian Sherris, also Mason Giles, Harrison Vigeli, Dominic Steele, Cade Scott, Hudson Cohen, Lucas Bush, Easton Grant, Bryce Williams, Jet Ra, Ryder Hill, Jax Keller, Steele Leonard, Lorenzo Ricken, Tate Bono, Ryder Anderson, Noah Gillis, Hunter Clayton, Graydon Junke, Donald Harper, Bruno Rossani, also uh, Trayson Walters, Franco Fazio, 
Caden Wheaton, Reese Max, Ryder Davis, Jace Wolf, Brooks Linehan, Waylon Barothi, Hank Tex, Chandler Perry, Logan Albright, also Cade Rock, Jacob Fisher, uh, Fisher Matthew Semino, Ryder Likens, and Leopoldo Gonzalez Adams from San Juan del Rio, wherever that is, South America, I'm sure. So wrapping up uh, lap one here in just a moment for our leaders, still wrapping up our third lap for race 97 in the uh, Consi one of the 65 CCs. Still a few more to go before we get all those guys on the far back side of the track though. Is our uh, second division working their way around and that's what we're watching here on Racer TV. Through the roller section now, past the uh, Gators' tail. Again, sorting out our final transfer positions. If you're just tuning in to racertv.com, last chance consies, LCQs, and uh, what's going on here is um, green, white checkers. Basically, what it boils down to a three lap shootout to see who our top finishers will be. Uh, most consolation races taking the top six. However, if we've got two consies, uh, we will uh, take only the top three, and that is the case in this particular battle we're watching on the racetrack here today. Lap one about to be wrapped up here now. This one's been seeming a, a long lap, but uh, probably even longer for some of these guys out here trying to make things happen out there or going way too fast for guys that are trying to make things happen out there. Cade Rock, Graydon Junkie, and Bruno Rossini. Matthew Simino is fourth, Jax Keller in fifth, Lorenzo Rickett in sixth. So Jet Ross, he back there in ninth place position. So we got some riders that can afford to make up a little time, but it seems to be a little more than a little bit of time out there for riders like Ra. He's looking at about probably a 15 second gap to a top, maybe at least 10 seconds to a top three qualifying position not counting him out just yet but uh, knowing he's got a long way to go gonna have his work cut out for him but rock junky and rosani one two and three matt simino 1.2 seconds back in the number four position he may be one to keep an eye on he and Jax keller the number 99 as i have a feeling it will be hard to deny either one of those young guys a shot at the starting line for moto number two from this LCQ. Three oh one, Graydon Junki is what we're watching on screen right now. Looks like just ahead of him is still Kate Rock, the eight eighteen. First and second now starting to stretch out around uh, ahead of the rest of the field out here. Oh, is that our leader down or is that the second place? Is that 301? Second place down there. So uh, that is the 301 of Junkie down. Gives Rock a little bit of breathing room, but nobody uh, making the uh, pass on him so far. So Rosani, the 319 coming around now. What about Simino and Keller? Are we able to see them make any gains out there? Again, those are two riders that I expect to see to uh, position themselves before the checker flag flies in this one. But like we know, talent pulls deep in the 65cc class this year once again, and it makes for a uh, rough and ragged way to go. Cade Rock, I believe they're checking in. He's a hometown boy, Newberry, Florida. Yeah, he lives right here in Newberry. He lives, I wouldn't say at the track, but I imagine that he probably takes every opportunity in it to come over to Gatorback Cycle Park on race days and check this place out. Right out your back door, you can't beat that. Can you imagine going to a major event like this and being able to sleep in your own bed, eat at your own dinner table, have Thanksgiving at your own house with your own family? That'd be pretty cool. 
almost makes me want to move to Newberry. Uh, Great Juki in second. Matthew Simino has made the pass into the number three spot. Keller is around for fourth. And Leopoldo Gonzalez is now in the number five spot. 233 lap time. Two seconds back is Keller Simino in the number three spot. We may see still another push for that uh, final transfer position before we make our way to the checkers as the white flag is out on this one. By the way, Cade Rock turning a two minute 30 second lap time, which is even about four and a half seconds faster than Matthew Simino, your fourth place rider, third place rider, I should say, trying to work his way up through the pack. White will turn to checkers soon, but our leader is still a little further back on this course, working their way off the back section now. Cade Rock, the Rock. That's the 818 leading this one. A hometown boy for sure from right here in Newberry. He probably still camps at the racetrack. Got to keep that atmosphere alive, I would say. And do the switchbacks and toward the gizmo mods. Tabletop and headed for home on a checker flag here real soon. Was looking at a near 10 second lead over the rest of the field at the end of that uh, second lap. And I'd say we're probably near that or maybe even double as we go. Well, maybe not as far as what I thought. Is that the 301 with his goggles off on his wrist there? No, that's the number 30. Sorry about that. It may be the 30, 301. Maybe I just read that wrong. Here we go, driving up out of the uh, Gator Pit to the Pro Circuit uh, finish line. Great and Junky is, yep, going to be your second place position. That was him from Farmington, Minnesota. And the 991 in third place, Matthew Simino from Zachary, Louisiana. Jax Keller right there, but not enough. So Jax is going to be watching from the fence with the rest of us. So Cade Rock, Graydon, uh, yes, Graydon Junky and Matthew Simino, one, two, and three here in uh, division number two of the 65cc seven to nine limited class. 450 B limited coming up next 37 riders in this one. Again uh, we go back to our six man transfer with one Conti, Logan Renegar, Michael Nussbaum, Wyatt Bass, Kyle, Kyle Thorpe, Drayton Smith, Seth Eubanks, Juan Ignacio Salgado, Matthew Kopp, Harrison Bates, Jacob Lesko, Andres Sanchez, Justin Parrish, Talon Stanley, Tommy Callow, Jack Dunas, Nathan Mock, Mason Call, Deegan Bloomfield, Kyler Rome, also Marcelo Galeato, Gavin Templeton, Cade Ferry, Logan Hale, Evan Schroeder, Kai Simmons, Tyler Tiffany, Kai Burge, Ethan Phelan, Robert Bethauer, Braden Sampy, Ryder Gwynn, Ryan Hadley, A Alan Adkins, Jai Cornwall, also Troy Smith, Christopher Schroeder, and Mason Nettleton. Mikey Waynes joins the uh, joins us here in the booth. I, I kept thinking, I think Rodney's by his lonesome. And you are, and I'm so Absolutely. sorry. No, that, no, that's fine. Uh, gives me a chance. I to, don't think you're, by any means, my you're certainly not incapable. Uh, I believe in you. I, I didn't miss anybody. No, actually, actually, I did miss you. Mike. I, <laughs> I miss appreciate you it. I, I keep turning around and there'd be nobody thinking there. where the heck are they? Somebody watching me may make sure I'm not making mistakes out here uh, again. You know, uh, you came for a good one, too, Mikey. This is a 450 B limited constant race 99 on the track 100 and now rolling to the gate 101 in staging and 102. Now make your way to staging race 102. Uh, riders like Renegar, Nussbaum, Wyatt Bass, Kale Thorpe, Drayton Smith, Seth Eubanks. That's just tip of the iceberg. I mean, these again, deep, deep uh, seated uh, classes, uh, deep fields, uh, tough to work your way into, even for some of these uh, notable riders that we mentioned. Yeah, riders uh, getting in the nitty gritty about halfway through this. Are we halfway through our? Uh well, let's see. LCQs, you think? I don't know. I may have spoke too soon. We're get, we got to be getting. Well, we're close. We're uh, 119 is what I got as far as paperwork goes, Wait, and uh, that should get us through most, if not all, of our consies. Super Mini Two. What would be the last consolation race? Here? Let's look real quick. Oh, you got your paper. I got me a screenshot somewhere. Let's look. Now we're going to 119. 
So uh, after, yeah, we got all the paperwork here. Super Mini 2, 13 to 16, be our final Concy. So we're on 99 on the track right now, going so 20 more basically gate drops to go today before we get into moto number Ooh. two and start crowning champions. And then Wes Kane's down, gets psyched up and ready oh, to go for that. Oh, he's chomping at the bit. He is. He is. Uh, he's stretching. Oh, rightly, rightfully and, uh, so. You know, we talk about athletes and so forth. We were talking with uh, Ricky there just a few moments ago, Stenhouse, the Daytona 500 winner who's over at Camper House. I know he's, he's an awesome guy, man. Really, really, really is. But, uh, yeah, man, uh, these guys uh, certainly... Uh, want to make the grade that's for sure so here we go megawatt matt watson also joining us here in the what did you just eat because that looked good whatever it was Is slice it of pizza Rogers. oh There's i have a couple that's, back that's there. right i looked back there about 30 minutes ago that's why he's he's been <laughs> hot. Is that hot rods the uh the oven fire pizza down there? yeah 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 good stuff down there one bite, everybody knows the rules. What is the, uh, well, Christopher Schroeder, first of all, for Christopher Schroeder leading out front, Andre Sanchez in the two spot, uh, Mason Nettleton uh, taking six from this one, right, Rodney? Uh, yes, the absolutely. One for these guys. Yep. Uh, fourth place, Gavin Templin, Kyler Rome in fifth, sixth place is Drake Smith outside looking in right now, but all over him is Deacon Bloomfield, the number 94 Husqvarna in seven. And look back there, Seth Eubanks and Kai Birch also just outside the, uh, top transfer spots there this could get interesting again before uh checkers finally fly on this one man that stanhouse interview was awesome mikey and i were standing there listening to it and uh first of all we had we had a great uh, uh information session with uh Stu baylor found out a lot about what's going on at the shoals and that kind of thing had a blast with him uh then we run into kevin windham kevin windham out here really enjoying uh, the weekend loves many of uh, track is great. Uh, so you got him and Wes and Ali Seymour down there. I believe Bud Man's down there right now. So there's some stuff going around that circle, yeah, I, I could tell you I for seen, sure. I seen Kevin yesterday. And last time I seen him, he had a big bushy beard. So I almost didn't even recognize him. <laughs> exactly, I, I did man. Like, Dude, I didn't even re realize that was you. I was expecting guy, that Grizzly Adams-looking guy coming back at it. Our guy under the radar out there. I love it. Uh, but uh, that Stenhouse interview, man, was so cool. Let me tell you what I loved about uh, the whole thing. Man said, we got to sell some campers. Yep. Okay, they kept his eye on the prize, man, was focused on the objective. Yep. Down here, he loved motocross. He loved it. He said, look, man, my people brought me down here. They put me in the middle of Camper Central. You guys are the biggest camper market there is. Okay? And uh, he's having a great time and looking to defend that Daytona 500 win in February. Yep. So uh, looking forward to that. But Kepi's eye on the prize, man. If you guys are thinking about a new RV, looking for a new camper, now's the time to do it. And guess what? You get to go home and say, I bought my camper off of Ricky Stenhouse. Yeah, there you go. And if you exaggerate, say, hey, uh, this is where the living quarters were. This was Ricky's, you know, you, you know get in the wall, whatever. Yeah, so, but. Sit down on your couch. This is where Ricky laid down. Yeah, here's your <laughs> opportunity right now to work it to the hill. You laid down during the races. Don't have sick yeah, NASCAR races. Yeah, exactly. Radio races, anyway. Exactly. I love it. But uh, <laughs> all joking aside, great dude, uh, great champion. And uh, go over and see him. They're going to get you fixed up with a great deal on a fantastic RV. And, and you know, I think just just as we, I, I just want to say one more thing about that. I think we can take as an example of what Ricky does there with his sponsors and for his sponsors. And mm -hmm. if yeah. everyone would approach their sponsors like that at this level, uh, once they get to and if they get to the level that Ricky's at, it'll be a natural thing, and sponsors will flock to you in the process. Yeah, Rodney, that was 100% my point. No question about it. Great job, and that's what we are supposed to do as uh, representatives of not only our sport but our sponsors. A man doing it for his sponsors out there right now, and I'm sure the family as well. Why not? Uh, Christopher Schroeder uh, leading the way at the 809 KTM out in front. Mason Nettleton in the number two spot on the 928 Gas Gas Ride. Andre Sanchez. In third place, the 113, Gavin Templin in fourth, Kyler Rome fifth. And Kai Burge rounding out the top six to transfer just a bit outside. Looking in, it's going to be Drayton Smith. Well, thank you, Bob. <laughs> Appreciate that. Well, Mikey, we take a look out there today, and much like every day this week, different conditions. Okay, yes, yeah. did it rain the other day? Well, yeah, but it rained a good bit harder. Uh, we right. did a different uh, bit of maintenance to it. Uh, right now, the moisture content early this morning, well, yeah, there was one or two little uh, soft spots and that type of thing. You're getting some extra roost. But as we move into these uh, LCQs, I'm telling you, Mikey, these are perfect racing conditions. We always talk about the overcast. Uh, air temp today, 
unbelievable. Let me tell you how good your bike good runs. For, uh, yeah, <laughs> how you good go. your bike runs on a day like today. Yep. Uh, do a little protection on the radiators. Don't let them get clogged up, that type of thing. But this is not a mud race by any means. Man, these are ideal conditions. Yeah, it's and it, interesting to your point. It seems like every day the conditions a little bit different, but it has been fun to watch throughout. Checkered flag out. Mason Nettleton moving on, able to make a last lap pass around Christopher Schroeder, but Schroeder hangs on to the two spot. Andre Sanchez finishes third, Kai Burge fourth, Kyler Rome fifth, and Gavin Templin. Hey, Mikey, I, it's going to sound corny and cheesy, uh, but it, it's, right. it's the day after Thanksgiving, and uh, you've been hanging out with me uh, for years now. And yeah. uh, we're, we're roomies here. We're yep. roomies uh, anywhere we go because it's sure, in it's your contract. contract. I think <laughs> it might be at this point. <laughs> it's yes. in your contract. <laughs> I think it might be. But uh, you, you know what I'm thankful for? What? Dudes like Kevin Windham and Stu Baylor. Yeah, heck yeah. Hanging All right, out with uh, us. Man, th those guys. Laid back. Um, uh, e e everything is, is, is for the betterment. You know what yeah. I mean? Everything is all about development and that kind of thing. And, man, I just love listening to these guys and, and, and tell us what, what can be done better, what we can do better, what, what the sport needs to do better, uh, you know. And sometimes some of the best conversations are the ones that we can't share. Oh, no, no, yeah. Never yeah. will share. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah. That's, that's one of those things. I tell my guys at GNCC, especially the XC1 Pro class. matter of fact, I did an interview with Stu this week uh, for a Tuesday Toolbox feature and. I know what's going on in the background. Sure. Uh, but that's not my story to tell. That's right. Stu's story to tell. Exactly. So I give him that liberty of, hey, can you talk about it yet? And if you can't, that's okay. Um, I'm a terrible journalist, basically, <laughs> because there are some things I think the writer should be able to share. Yeah. And I don't mm -hmm. want to ever lose that, that connection with our writers of, well, I'm not telling Megawatt. I'm not telling Mikey, because then I know the whole compound's going to know. And I'm not yeah. that business to be Yeah. Asking. It, and my point with that is uh, the concern that those guys have with the next sure. generation. That, that was my point. Was I'm thankful for those guys. Yes, we need. You em. know, they they want guys. They want guys going the right direction, doing the right thing. Whether it's promoters, writers, uh, you know, uh, us <laughs> as commentators, yes. you know, they they, they help and, and guide us too as well. But uh, I'm thankful those guys contribute and give the input that they do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one lap into it, 85 CC, 12 to 13. It's a 214 Jason LaBeouf in uh, first place, the 099 of Parker Shalosky in second place, and Benji Harris in third. Uh, have we got one of these concies or, or two, Megawatt? Uh, be race number 100 there, 85 CC, 12 to 13. Uh, let's see. Race number Looks one. like one. Just the one. Okay. Yep. So six will advance. Maddox Perquet in fourth. Gabriel Clark fifth. Outside of that, Ryder Bloomquist rounding out your top six for a transfer. And Miguel Boer, the 357 gas gas, a guy who's got to make something happen. A little bit of a gap after one, about two and a half seconds. Mike, I don't know if you know Allie. Uh, Allie, legendary, legendary speed builder. Uh, the guy's been in the game as long as any of us and uh, has been involved with many, many championships. And to me, when I look over and I see him standing here underneath the tower and he's looking out at the youth classes and stuff, it tells me he's got his eye on something. You know, it tells That's me good. he's looking at something. And, man, that is so cool because that, that guy's done his thing. He's been there, done that. He's been to the top. <laughs> yes. Okay, all right. He's been to the pinnacle. And he's still here, you know, say, hey, well, you know, what's going on? How's it happening? And uh, he's never lost touch with us. That's, that's very, very good. cool, dude. Very, very cool. So Jason LaBeouf, Parker Shalosky, Benji, Benji Harris, Maddox Perky, Gabriel Clark, and Ryder Bloomquist trying to seal the deal and move on. Approaching the white flag lap here. Almost done with lap number two, 214. Jason still out in front. I think Maddox Perke is up into the number two spot. So he said, I am not real comfortable in fourth. I'm going to pick up a couple more for a little reassurance. Mikey, it does change the game just a little bit, that rain that came down this morning. Uh, you see the roost back there in the back section. Things a little deeper, a little damper, it seems like, back there. No drainage. You don't, it's flat. That's just so, true. No, er, er, everything's going to go down there. So uh, guys definitely using some different lines. You see the roost on the number plates going through some tear-offs here this morning. So yet another day at Gatorback. 
Love it. We're here for it. The day after Thanksgiving. Hopefully you guys had some leftovers. A little back and forth out front, Megawatt. I like it. I like it, too, as long as they do it safely, right? I mean. Oh, yeah, for sure. And Robin's racing. You know, sure. uh, you know, one line, two bikes. That happens. Uh, but I can promise you no ill intent out there with no. these guys, man. They're going to get together here in just a minute. And both of them are going to want that inside line in just Absolutely. a second. Here we go. Slingshot around the outside. Not sure if that's uh, per cue or not. Yes, I think it is. There we go. Trying to get up on that rear wheel. 250C Junior Concy number one coming up next. That has got two. So we'll have a 250C Junior Concy number two. So we'll be taking the top three out of those coming up here shortly. This is 85CC 12 to 13. We're rolling, Megawatt. We are getting yeah, down absolutely. through these, and it's not even noon yet, so we're in we're in a good spot here. Heck yeah, we're going to be handing out hardware, and uh, looking forward to that. West came down on the podiums, of yeah. course, going to get him set up down I, there, ready I heard to roll. Him conversing with Judd, he's uh, you know working on the vocals. We're checking boxes, baby. We're checking boxes. Heck yeah, pizza's good, isn't it, Wes? Here we go. Leader, leader. Maddox out in front. Had a little back and forth with Jason LeBeau, and Jason said, okay, that's fine. Go go get go get first place here. Just want to make sure I'm in. Parker Shalowski third. As Maddox checks in and brings out the checkered flag, and that'll wrap that one up. They had me confused there for a second. I, I scare you? <laughs> yeah, by calling him Maddox. I was like, whoa, where'd this guy come from? Oh. I didn't even see him in the roster. <laughs> but, yeah, was able to make that move. I thought so back there in the back, trying to close it up and seal the deal. So, good call, Mikey Waynes. Parker Shalosky finishes third, Benji Harris fourth. How about it for Alexander Patterson? Moves up into the five spot after passing Ryder Bloomquist. But Bloomquist hangs on for a sixth-place finish. And we'll move on. Here we go, race number... 101. 250C Junior. Uh, Concy number one. There are two of these. So we'll take the top three out of this one. A lot at stake for these guys. Oh, yeah. And limited time, Mikey, to make it happen. So uh, going to be critical. Who's it going to be as they come around? Can't really see on our monitor. Jared. Just a bit dark this morning. Up going to be the number 24, Mikey. That's going to be Caden Mitchell, rider out of Carrollton, Ohio, on that Driven MX and Huebner Chevrolet back ride. Caden, I'm going to guess, looking for some redemption, had a DNF his first time around. So maybe a skilled rider that maybe had a gnarly get off. I can't remember. There's been a lot in between uh, <laughs> the last time we saw our 250C Junior and, and didn't. So, well, right now I can tell you he put that out of his mind by the way he hit that gate. Yeah. Uh, DNF behind him right now. He's racing forward. Got a great drive, and like uh, he should have done, he played great defense, Mike, all the way through the first half of this track. Right now, he's got control of the race line, free to move around, do what he wants to do. Good battle for the number two spot in a very small gap. Back into fourth again, taking the top three out of this one with there being two concies for the class. So not a lot of room for error. We talk about, I'm going to bring it up. I know you're not going to want me to, Megawatt, but I'm going to bring up the good start. It's pretty uh, key here, especially even on this side. Yeah, with, man. With it being three laps, it, it's like you got to be pretty much perfect. Well, uh, absolutely. And, and there's, you know what, there's times, Mikey, that it, absolutely certain tracks, certain places, certain times, and this is one of them where the start is critical. Uh, all honestly, no disrespect to these guys. But your day's almost over. If you're rolling 13th right now, yeah, uh, you know, no disrespect to any of those guys, but it was oh. a bad drop on the gate. You got uh, 30 other guys as fast as you. Yeah. So it's it's very important and and to start critical in this LCQ. Going to be critical today, period, because what's going to happen now? Mike, you're going to bring all the winners together. That's right. I can't okay. Wait. But 
But since you brought it up, let's do it. Getting a good start is important, but what's more important, Mikey? A good finish. Getting a good finish. Yes. Okay? Aha, Don't yes. give up. Don't give up. If you didn't get that start, if you can taste it, if it's in there and you want this thing, let me tell you something. Show us, and we're going to talk about you. We're going to see it in your eyes. We'll see it through those tear-offs. We're going to know what's happening. But don't give it up, Mikey. That's that's for me. Get a good start and fade tonight. <laughs> Get a good start and fade like an old pair of jeans. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Get a good finish. Kevin Bond trying to work on a good finish. Lap into it, leading the way. Got a half-second lead over the 24, Caden Mitchell. Where's the battle? Well, why not? The last transfer spot for third. Eli Basse checked in in the three spot, but Ryan Sampson, last time I looked, was all over him, and the 76, I believe, just made the pass right there on the number seven, or the 07 for the three spot. Dean, what are you seeing? I'm watching this battle right now, a little Yamaha KTM actually like you're talking about. Sampson looks like he's got it around Bazette. But Bazette now, and look at him making a move right oh. there. He's got the inside as they're making the way into the gate until he's gonna get it. Or, or is he gonna get shut down? He almost got shut down right there on the inside, but look at there. That KTM mounted Bazette. He is making some moves. He's on the inside of the sweeper trying to get around Sampson. Not gonna happen. Sampson showing that strength. Defending that line. Not just yet, young man. Not just yet. Watch this rider as he makes his way around that Dunlop hay bale over there. He's got that tight inside thread. They need a little mistake there. Both feet off the pegs. Ooh. It's a couple times, uh, Dean, we've seen the dog paddle. Oh, yeah. It makes Eli hungry. He's seen that mistake. He's like, hey, I might be able to make some pressure on this guy to make him make another mistake. I might be able to make him move and slither up in there. And slow they're not in there, just what he's got to do, because we are taking three out of this 2BDC Junior Concy number one. And what that means, we have another Concy down there on the line. Well, he's eyeing him up right now, just like Mikey eyeing that pizza. Go ahead and take a break there, Mikey. No, I Grab had, your I pizza had a that pizza, I'm but good. didn't. I, I had one. I'm, I'm awesome. Funny. Okay, good. Deal. Good, wasn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. Those guys over there, Rat Rod, you, you were in on it. And uh, Dino, he's got his uh, seal of approval. For Rob sure. Fire pizza down there, making it happen. Speaking of making it happen, watch this Yamaha riders. He's going to move up. That's Ryan Sampson on the number 76 in the number three position. Caden Mitchell, he is in second. And Kevin Vaughn is our leader. I'll tell you what, Vaughn, he's bottom of the track right now. He's got a 7.6 second lead over our second place rider. Nice. What are those lap times looking like? Well, for a lot of times, it looks like Kevin Bond run a 202, a 208 for Cade Mitchell, so definitely off the pace a little bit, but he's still in there, so you want to keep it in there for Cade Mitchell. Ryan Sampson going to run a 209, and uh, falling off that lap, we see Eli Bazzi, he's going to come through at a 211. White flag is out, so limited time to make it happen. If you're not in it, you need to get in it. I mean, really, you got to be all over it, like you're all over all 50 states. <laughs> All over the world. What are you talking about? All We're over the, the world. world here at this international race. <laughs> As we're That's watching right. on screen, the number 220 machine put in a good ride of Kevin Bond. He's out of Lesby, Maryland. A lot of good riders come out of Maryland. One that really stands out to me is one out of Annapolis, Maryland. Yeah, you know, he, he was able to do a couple things in his <laughs> career. Uh, he has one or two highlight reels. Uh, his number, uh, it's hard to remember his number. What was it, 199? Yeah, yeah, one, <laughs> I think that was it, 199. Uh, he made a movie about the number 199. Listen, that guy could be from Sioux Falls, and you'd know where he was from. <laughs> hey, I actually, okay. oddly enough, work that market. You, have, I'm sure show. you do. <laughs> so I know exactly where Sioux Falls is at. Uh, Kevin Bond trying to bring it home. White flag is out. But not much longer. 220 down into the Gator Pit he goes. U.S. Safety Bond bringing it home. Heck yeah. There he is. Checkered flag flies. Moving right through our LCQs here. Kevin Bond. You're moving on, dude. Good job. Awesome job. I'll tell you what, though. I'm watching here the 07 of Mazette. He is not done yet. He is all over the rear wheel of Samson. Looking for second place to come through. Take a checkered flag. That's going to be Caden Mitchell. But what's going to happen here into the pit one last time? It is going to be our Yamaha rider. So good ride there for Samson, keeping Bazette out of the second moto. And I love that, Dean, because listen, how many times have you and I seen a bike stuck on that tough block? Yes. Or right three feet from that finish line, Mikey. How many times have we seen a bike laying there? So you race all the way to the finish, just like we were saying, you know, so important. Exactly. Look at this on check. the rear fender. Who was that checking in right there? Is that Hartle? Is that what that says? I was making some moves there at the end. 
you know, just, I mean, ripping full throttle all the way through, back in ninth place, knowing what's up. But yeah. man, well, let's still keep it down and put in a good show for us. The fans put in a good uh, lap time for themselves and uh, much respect. Speaking of much respect, I got much respect for our riders taking off here and consolation number two of this 2BDC Junior class. This 2BDC Junior 12 to 17, couple of riders ripping up out of there. Woo. I see a 32, a 53, and a 27. So that's a 32 machine of Ashton Adams with a good start out there. Also Cody Bryce in there as well. And a 27 of Caleb Finnis, and we've been calling out here all week. He's out there in this constellation race trying to make some moves happen. Yeah, Adams had a real good jump on the gate right now he, look at him man he is going right down to that inside laid that thing over and he's got a hungry pack right behind him dean but really cool calm and composed right now protecting those inside lines normally you want to go inside out in these kind of conditions but man he's making it work inside inside yeah i'll tell you what that ktm rider that is finished right there watching on screen he's gonna make a move on the 53 of bryce so cody bryce now going back to work but he's got to be careful there like we always say he's in that third spot you don't want to throw it away trying to make a move in the second absolutely we're there right now you're not feeling that pressure you don't see a wheel from behind dean no definitely not these guys are starting to make a little breakaway as bryce makes a move right there he's taking this way outside line and making it happen that outside line was good Oh no! Oh. Like you're talking about, and he's gonna take another rider with him. Oh my gosh, Connor Jermayham! He actually looks like he's gonna try to get back in that third spot, all in the fourth spot. So I mean, think about that. You're in third, you move to the lead, but now you're in fourth. You get a much, you know? the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't add up. That's bad math, Dean. <laughs> That's definitely bad math, right bad there. Bad math. Yeah. We're gonna watch this young man try to get it figured out. His finish now out there in the lead, making it happen on the number 27 KTM. And you know what? He's solid. Yeah, he's, yeah. Proven, he's proven that for years, and uh, I, I got to tell you, I just can't believe we watched that unfold like it did. It we were just talking about risk-taking and that, but it was such a good line out there, Dean. Yeah, it was. Okay, he, he had to take it. It was smooth. He was quicker, but, and, but when he made the transition back to that other line, it was just slick. He overrode the bike. Well, that's what happens on a 20-mile road down yes. there. He found himself on the edge of the track there. Absolutely. Absolutely. I do want to tell you as well, I'm watching the screen right now. We've got a lot of riders there trying to make a push into this, but as we say, top three, only top three going to go. This is like a Supercross LCQ or outdoor motocross LCQ race it. out here. You know they're going you know for it. it right now. Checking in with us again, Caleb Finnis, which is your leader, taking the lead. Ashton Adams in second. Now Adrian Hodge moved up to the third spot. Gavin Pettit in the fourth spot. But that's where we see Cody Bryce, so he's lost another position. He's in the fifth spot. But we've got some other riders I'm trying to move up through the pack right now as we speak. Who's that on the bubble? On the bowl right now is Adrian Hodge. He's in the number 190 machine, but it looks like he might have gotten past just there by one of our gas gas riders. That might be Pettit now, who is the man on the move. It would look to be Pettit in the third position. Yep, he's trying Absolutely. to right now. But like we talked about, you've got to be careful. But look at his pace, though. I mean, the momentum's carrying him there, so you kind of have to go with that, Dean. A lot of times it's harder when you try to slow down. Yeah, it is, and he's going to find himself in the number two position and start to put some pressure on our leader right now. So Finnis has a little bit of pressure. What's he going to do now that he has the pressure behind him? Well, you know what? I think Finnis just simply responds. He turns it up just a bit. Uh, the pressure isn't heavy yet, and I, I think he just judges his response by the pressure. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Judging response by the pressure, like we talk about Jet Lawrence all the time. He gets out there. He makes the lead happen. As soon as he sees somebody catch him, he turns it up a little bit. Listen, you want to be real careful about uh, going full rabbit. Yeah. When, when you when you click that thing to the lock because you heard that bike behind you and this and that, or you're worried about that, you're going to miss your marks. Yes. I was saying a little cat and mouse game. We do still have a missing cat there, and there's a big reward. I don't want to give a number what this reward is, but there's a big reward if we get this cat turned in. It is a personal pet, and uh, that thing needs to be turned in as soon as possible. What are you watching on the screen there? You know what? Uh... <laughs> When I uh, take a look at the line choices right here, I'm like, whoa, oh, now, now we do have a battle. Look at that. Venice coming under attack. Like you said, carrying that momentum, that was that gas gas rider. I believe that came around in the fourth place position that first time through. So, man, Pat had making some moves out there, showing you guys he shouldn't even be here. <laughs> That's right. That right line was so crazy, though. Uh, you, you could just see how slow it was. You could see the good riders getting bucked around. I understand not following these conditions, but boy, that was bad line choice. <laughs> yes. Here they come, getting the white flag. One more to go. This one has already been pretty dramatic. We'll see how it unfolds now as we see Gavin Pettit check in in the league. Caleb Dennis, he's in the second spot. Adrian Hodge able to move back up into the third place position. Ashton Adams back to the fourth spot. Matthew Carrera, we haven't been talking about him. He's going to make some moves. He's going to lead on Cody Bryce. And Bryce falls back to the sixth place position after nearly taking the lead out there. So a tough break for Bryce. 
Look at this. Who's this in the Woo! fifth place? Who's on the Yamaha? That is the Yamaha rider behind Bryce. So that is going to be, I believe, honestly, I don't know. I'm checking way down here. Man, that guy's carrying speed. It might be Matthew Pereira. Let's take Race. a look up here, see if he comes into the picture as they work their way back down into the middle of the track. Man, he was carrying some speed. I, I, it had to be Korea. Yeah, had that's to be. first Yamaha on the track. Yep. So it had to be. Man. He understands that white flag. He does understand. He gets it. He might not be out there. I might have fell somewhere. I'm not checking on the track. I do see a yellow flag flying, so I believe that might have been a yellow oh, flag. Man. Yamaha right if he lost out there as he wasn't appearing on the screen. And as we watch the number 45 machine, Gavin Pettit doing a great job of staying in front of Caleb Pettis. But Pettis is right there, you know. Pettis yeah. makes a mistake. Like we said, he's been riding hard. Oh, <laughs> not something happened there, but it's just a screen. That's our <laughs> screen. Yeah, it looked like Pettis had a big bobble. Yeah. And you know what? He's not going to eat any roost. He's not going to get up there and force the issue. Uh, what good is it if Pettit falls over and you run into him? Yeah. You know, so he knows exactly what's happening. Oh, hey, we need to get you guys off the fence down there, please. No sitting on top of the fence, please. Thank you. No sitting on the fence. If you're wearing an orange jersey, sitting on the fence, you need to get off the fence, please. Somebody help us out down there. If you would get off the fence, please. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Got to be saying thank you after this one. This Gavin Pettit, man, he came through the pack on that gas gas machine, made it happen, put himself in a position to take this win right here. Awesome win for Gavin Pettit. Second spot going to be Caleb Finnis and taking it on the bubble. Just barely scraping through there. It's going to be Adrian Hodge. So good job for Hodge putting him in there out of Forest Lake, Minnesota. Well, that was a good one. Yeah, that was definitely a good one. Well, I, I love a good LCQ race. Uh, you know, Dean, when, when we're outdoors, <laughs> when that white flag comes out, keep your eye on sixth place because he's going to do something. Yeah, make it's it. his opportunity. You know what I mean? You've been there. Yep. I, I know you're normally out front you know, <laughs> when, when, when it goes down, when the white flag comes out, but, you know. I was You've had to make a push once or twice on the white flag. Absolutely. Whether it be a heat race or an LCQ, you're right. always out there pushing it, you know. And every pass counts. That's something these guys got to remember. Yeah, you take that qualifying position, whatever it was in the heat race, maybe top 16, but then you take the LCQ. Where are you finishing your LCQ? It matters. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh certainly. But as a kid there, Dean, you know, I think it is, is, is with most of us and anybody that's a competitor, <laughs> 11th was better than 12th. Absolutely. Okay, that pass, that pass matters. Out of the track right now, we see oh. 85 CC 9 to 11, con team number one. Yes. Yep. All right, back to action right now. Back on the track. A little miscommunication there. Got things in order. Working our way through the rollers now. Here come our leaders. About four wide as they come up over the top of the jump. Back down 20 miles of that road. Here we go, Luke Roche checking in right there. The 2-1-0 KTM out of this 85 CC 9-11. Mason Murdy in second. Jace Cicinetti in the number three spot. 
Gavin Reynolds in fourth, Carter Cook in fifth, Hudson Byrne in the number six spot, Grayson Dempsey seventh, eighth is Zion Birchfold, ninth is Alex Hood, and Dylan Bott rounding out your top ten. 85cc, 9 to 11. We've got uh, two Concies in this one, so we'll take the top three out of this one. So Roche, Murdy, and Cicinetti, Cicitini in the number three spot. Gavin Reynolds on the outside looking in right now about two seconds back as they continue here through lap number two. Griff. That's all right. I was about to shoot you a text, Griff. All good, buddy. <laughs> all good. I was enjoying hearing the call. Griff in there calling the camera shots. I enjoy hearing the shots. Like, <laughs> it gives an idea. It kind of it knows what's coming next. Yeah, it makes <laughs> you watch the TV sense. monitor. Speaking of tense, I mean, the top three Camping. right now, Luke oh. Roach, Mason Murdy, and Jace Cecchini, man, they're making some pushes, making it hard. Delta PA rider Gavin Reynolds, though, he finds himself outside the top three, so look for Reynolds now to push hard to make a make a push here towards the end of this one. Speaking of tents, camping, the circus, I can go on and on, baby. On and on and on we go. Moving right through our LCQs. Uh, they're going quick, guys, as you know. We don't have to tell you, but we're going to. That's the job. Uh, but they are going quick, so know what you're, know where you're at, know when you're supposed to be in there, and uh, surely you know by now. But if you've not double checked and you were that rider that was sort of on that bubble, and you're like, I think I'm good, go know you're good. Uh, you don't want to make a mistake. Here we go. White flag flies. One more lap to go. Taking the top three. Woo! Getting some air. Two one zero. Oh, that's Luke Roche leading the way out in front. Yeah, 2 one I'm going to run a 2 one eight lap time that time around. So it's a strong lap there for Luke Roach, our leader. But watch out. Here comes Mason Murdy and Jace Kekchini. Carter Cook going to make some moves out there. He finds himself only three seconds back. So he is about, uh, I believe, yeah, I'm not going to say this. 5,000 <laughs> yeah. of a second difference right there in those right. times. <laughs> no one's catching anybody at 5,000 of a second. Yeah, and, and, and you can kind of see that on the track team. You take a look at it. There's no real battle. I mean, that, that's the bottom line, not for contention, not for the bubble. Exactly. You know, there's there no real battles. These guys have got very similar lap times. The gap was the gap after the first lap. <laughs> and then they just held on to it, you know, riding like their seasoned vets out there right now in the 85 cc 911 class. As our leader makes his way back down the hill, it is the number two Tim machine out of Rhinebeck, New York. So it makes the trip down here all the way out of New York. That's Luke Roche doing a good job out there leading the way on the 210 machine. As you said, a couple of these uh, divisions here that coming up next will be uh, content number two for our 85cc 9 to 11. So looking forward to getting in these second motos, Dean. I can't wait, man. I, I want to line everybody up. I am ready. Yeah, we thought Supercross was intense. Wait till we get a big big moto out here for motocross. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have big gates, full gates. And, uh, again, some of these classes, some of these 65 classes, three divisions, Dean. Yeah, it's impressive. Three divisions and whittled, uh, whittled our way down to one main event. So, yeah. Or one second moto zone. I was down there with one of my little guys. and He was in the uh, the 7 to 9 Constellation race. There's two Concies, and the gates were full. 39 wow. rounds in each one of the Concies. And that's so awesome, dude. That's our 65 class. That's, uh, that's our kids that, you know what, they've been there on that 50. They've got that down. They understand starting, stopping, corner. Now we're using manual clutches. We're starting to put some strategy together. And, uh, you know, basically veterans on those 65s and those are our biggest classes that's awesome yeah. okay that that's great news huge things for this for you know when you're growing up in the youth up we're, we're gonna stay alive here <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly so we're gonna stay in alive our leader staying alive right now as he comes through to take the checker flag second biggest growth market you know what it is what is it the vet senior classes <laughs> it's so true Grandpa buying those bikes. Yep. Okay, I'm going riding with, with my son or my grandson. Uh, I'm going to get the nephew a bike. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've put my kids through college. I've taken care of their career. It's okay if I break an arm right now. So <laughs> these guys are riding again. Guys that have ridden in 20 years. So uh, good to see the seniors back out there in force. Yeah, absolutely. There's not about it. Or the guy's like, hey, you're not doing good. I'm going to get my own bike. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, right. But uh, we had a change out there, a big change. Mason Murdy's going to find himself outside the top three. So a tough break for Murdy. 
He's out of cannon out there, but uh, Luke Roach going to take the win right there. Jay Cicchini, he's going to finish up in the number two position and third spot now, taking that final transfer spot. It's going to go to Carter Cook. Awesome, good Run ride. The, running the fast lap that last lap, running the 216, that was impressive. Yeah, and there was some action, you know, it, it, it had some gaps in it there for a moment, but these guys buckled down on that white flag, which uh, they always do when it's on the line. Yeah, exactly. Hammer down or buckle down, one or the other, get it done. And these 85 CC 911 riders get it done right now. This is Constellation race number two on the track. Race number 104 on your program. Yes, I said that right, 104. And uh, registration down there, they had to manually put in these numbers because the races only went up to 99 in the program. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. Yeah, a little, little check up from registration there. You bet. On the starting line, though, we need 2BDB, Conti number one, race number 105. In the staging area, 2BDC. Get a little battle on our hands here. Wow, three-way battle for the lead. All right, here we go across the line. We got some battling going on. <laughs> like Megawatt was saying, but our leader's starting to make a break for it right now as they're about to make their way down the Thor Parts Unlimited spectator stretch. Dean, I know that you covered with your students the sprint. You know the importance of the sprint. I don't care how long the moto is. Uh, you, you know your pace, you know how fast you can run. Uh, get out there, put those hard laps in, okay? Establish position. So if the wheels do come off of it, you got further back to go, yeah. okay? Uh, somebody has to work harder to come and get you and go around you. Because uh, I can guarantee you, the guy in the, in the lead's in sprint mode, mm -hmm. and you need to do the same thing. Now, listen, we, we talk about long motors. We talk about 20 plus two Loretta's, this and that. Uh, there's always a time for it, and right now's the time. Get out there, yeah. get this thing under control, put yourself in that spot. Don't have to do that work when the white flag comes out. You're totally right, and I'm a huge believer in the sprints. Like a lot of these guys that do 30 minute motos, even they do FTR races or they run mm -hmm. an hour and a half and stuff. And it's great, but what you do, you get kind of stagnant, you get comfortable there in that pace, you know, sort of pacing yourself. It's just the, the norm for you. And even when you do go to the rest, you have those long motos, those first three laps are so important to get out there, make a break for it, pass as many people as you can, open that lead up, and then start to get into that comfort mode. You know, sometimes I think it's a lost art, the sprint. I mean, I really do, you know. Uh, everybody's, well, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Get out there, pound it uh, really hard, uh, put in put in two, three good ones, and then we'll see where the race brings us. Yeah. You know, then we'll see what comes to us. And a lot of times I'll go to the MXGP race. It's totally different for them. Those guys in practice, since it's qualifying practice, they are turning lap times. They're sprinting out there, going as hard as they can to get in. And once they're in, that's when they kind of settle it, you know, relax exactly. and yep. pace themselves. For sure. No settling here today, though. No settling at all. We're watching the number 213 machine of Hayden Dupas, the 007 of Max Daniels, and the 111 of Martin Ospina. That's your top three right there. They're going to make it through, but they got to fight off Reed Cohn, Heders Matos, and Kelsey Harris. So Harris making some moves out there. Bryson Howell, Riker K, Park Knoll, and Lenny O'Toole. What are you looking at, Mikey? Hey, just observing, watching our <laughs> LCQs unfold and... Uh, sympathizing for a little bit of these guys that have uh, a couple of concies per class and hey, got to be perfect like we were saying a top three and it's made for some good racing though how often do we see that outdoor side as well or oh, supercross man. side yeah uh, you know the, the 250 LCQ is historically one of the stand back I stand back when that white ever. flag comes out man if you're lining the fences you might want to take a step back <laughs> it's all about I mean there's so many factors that go into it sure you want to make the sponsors happy etc but there's that sense of pride as well of like sure hey, I got in I'm Hey, baby. Absolutely. Uh, we saw earlier uh, in contention back to fourth place and then had to get started over again. So easy to throw it away, Mikey, but so hard to resist. Yes. So hard to resist making that pass in and progressing forward is what we do. And coming across the line right now is going to be your leader, Hayden Dupas, and he has gone out there and not looked back. One of our Canadian riders out there doing a good job on his Husqvarna. He is going to lead out Reed Cohn, who's making some moves out there. Max Daniels, he's going to lose, lose a spot, but he is still in that top three. Well, Dean, he did not do this. He delivered, no <laughs> doubt about <laughs> it. That's good. That was definitely good. Oh, well, like thank that. you, guys. I appreciate you. Yeah. I kept thinking, they call me do this Walker. Oh, <laughs> we I go. Yeah. Right. I don't uh -huh. think I'm saying it right. Yep. Looks so, like so we got a battle start to shape up here for our transfer position. 
So we got to keep our eyes on that as both our riders make their way over the step up. We've got a gas gas rider Daniels and I believe Ospina on a KTM machine. There goes the Husqvarna rider. We got a nice size lead as we wave our second place rider to make his way through on Racer TV. There he is. It is the gas gas rider of Reed Cohn leading out the double seven to Max Daniels, but Daniels feeling the pressure, feeling the wrath. Yeah, Daniels feeling some heat right now, no question. Uh, Got to race forward, though. Yeah, and I believe that's one of our 65, 7, and 9 riders out there trying to get into the big boys on that number 111, Martin Ospina. Nice. Oh, a little baller there in the sweeper. That's going to allow the rider behind him, which I believe is Matos, put a little pressure on uh, Ospina out there. These guys obviously outside the transfer position, but, hey, a battle is a battle. It's crazy, Dean. These, these little guys handling these ruts, just amazing. We, we, we saw... 250C and a couple of these other classes. I mean, a little bit of uh, challenge back there. Some of our schoolboy classes doing some dog paddling. Man, these guys just ripping right through those ruts. Yeah, there's no doubt they're looking good out there right now as we're still watching this battle. And it's the 007. That is the 007 machine. No, it is not James Bond. It is Max Daniels on the 007 machine. But just behind him, watch out. Was that Mission Impossible or, or so 007? It was a good chime. I like it. I don't know. Don't Let's okay. watch the number 111 of Martin Ospina trying to shut that chime down. Here they come. They're by us in front of the Yamaha announcing tower. It's 911 oh Recode. There we go. Play a little defense. It's Max Daniels. Pull a little James Bond move out there. Martin, got to go for it right here if you want it, buddy. Hayden DePuse checked in with the checkered flag. Wow, good finish right there for your 85cc 9 to 11. So again, Hayden DePue will take first. Reed Cohn hangs on to second. Max Daniels hanging on for third place. Daniels laid down perfect corner right there going down into the gator pit. And he, man. Under he fire. He Absolutely, under fire. man. He laid that thing in there. Steer with the rear. Drop the hammer on it. Nice form. Did you guys see this? 42 entries right here in this 2DB consolation race. <laughs> it's going to be a barn right. burner. <laughs> exactly, to say the least. We got uh, the number two at Logan Renninger out there. Bentley Good, Tyler Fisher, Ian Kelleher, Drayton Smith, Seth Eubanks, Kylie Stallings. Surprised to see in there. Octavia Paz, Harrison Bates, Ethan McMahon, Evan Snowden, Reese Clayson, Logan Ford, Michael Lambert, Christian McCauley, Axel Neff, Gabe Schmidt, Dylan Sullivan, Aiden Bailey, Sean Kelleher, Gavin Templin. Jackson Driscoll, Cade Miller, Gavin Thurgood, Nico Holmes, Hayden Crimes, Jacob Solomon, Ryan Adler, Ty Ellie, Lot Van Drunen, another surprise one out there. We're going to see this women's battle right up in front of us. William McCure, Matthew Stetcher, Evan Pate, Carson Walter, Joseph Shipley, Carson Cahill, Ryan Hadley, Allen, Atkins, Nathan Mock, Tyler Watson, Mason Nettleton, and Evan Stewart all out there on the track right now. <laughs> Whoa. Good breath. How many of those names do you know and recognize, yeah, Dean? Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you a ton of them. I'm, I'm amazed. Looks like a KTM rider with the whole shot out there with the early lead. Putting right to read on the number. Look around the outside. A Yamaha rider. That's a lot of Van Druden putting it up in there. Trying to make that line come to life. She was not able to get it in front of the, side of the two riders, but she definitely gained some time on them and feels a little bit of pressure from the outside. As the 44, it looks like he's going to be the lead right now. That is the 44 machine of Evan Snowden. So Snowden making some moves out there, making it happen. Yeah, Snowden came down to the inside. Just tried to keep that momentum up as much as possible. And Dean, when he set the wheels back down in the pit, was able to get a good drive. And that's what separated him, made his way up over the Gators back. Yeah, and a rider who had the whole shot looks like he's going to shuffle back to that third place position. So this is something we got to keep our eyes on. I think top six, right? Yep, top yeah. six. So that, <laughs> that's a good feeling for these guys out there with 42 of them. And how incredible is that? I mean, the gate is stacked for the LCQ. Yeah. I mean, just absolutely packed. Ooh, rider down. Oh, and he was in about, what, the three or four spot, right, I believe. He was, he was I there. didn't quite see the number. Oh, Kelleher. Go to the inside of the track, and the loser right there is going to fall down. He was also one of those drivers inside the top six, man. Tough break. Dean, did he misjudge those rollers? Did he drop that front end off to the side? I think he came in, you know, was like thought he was going to overshoot it, so got caught up on the brakes, and the brakes sort of made okay. that, that front All end right. in and just lost, lost his balance, and down he went. Wow. I just saw the front wheel disappear. <laughs> Next <laughs> thing I know, he was trying to balance it. There goes the 44 Snowden dropping in. 
just behind him, maybe the 156 machine, I believe it was Cade Miller making some moves out there. We'll get to confirm that as they make their way up for one. They get the green flag. That always means everything is good to go out there. Always a good flag to see on the opening lap is that green flag. It is Evan Snowden. It is Cade Miller in the second place position. We can confirm that now out of Kendale, Texas. Third spot, Evan Pate. Fourth spot, Lonnie Van Drunen. Logan Forward is in the fifth spot. Looking forward to that fifth place position. William Mercu, he's in the sixth spot. On the outside looking in. This right we've seen going down out there. Ian Kelleher. So Kelleher trying to make some moves. Kylie Stalling trying to get up in there. Mason Nettleton. He is another heavy hitter we're seeing out there on the track right now. A lot of using that outside line again. Look at this. I mean, chewing up some real estate right there, closing the gap, sitting in that number four ride right now. Very impressive. That's how those top six starting to stretch it out a little bit. Ian Keller got to get on it. And Mikey, that's the urgency. And Kyle um, Stalling, yeah. Those guys in that position, they, they, they see what the pace is right away. And naturally, all of them progressing quicker together. A lot of times in that pack, Dean, you're going to slow each other down. Yeah. Not in a last chance qualifier. Because no, no, no. uh, uh, I can tell you the guy in sixth place right now is going, okay, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm not happy. Yeah. I'm, I'm nervous. Hey, and he. He's going to ride as fast as possible to stay there. That's you it. guys know as well as I do, you're a 250 B rider out there in this right. compilation race. You don't want to get beat by a girl. Oh, <laughs> that's true. No, no doubt you, about but it. But these are the best of the best in the girls' class. A lot of Andrew coming over, like we said. She is a tough competitor. A young girl, but, man, she has a lot of a lot of height, a lot of uh, body to work with over these bumps. Absolutely, man. Good form, good technique. The bike is super fast. You can see it's dialed. So they've done their homework before they made their way down here at Gatorback. Yeah, absolutely. She's a thick of it right now as we just see a little battle on screen right there. A Yamaha rider trying to make some moves up as we watch our leader, Lewis still Snowden, leading out of the number 44 machine. So awesome ride for Snowden, man. He's got out front and he has not looked back. Yeah, <laughs> he, he doesn't want to. He, he's, he's riding that central line. Uh, yeah, everybody can see the main race line. There's no doubt about that. But he knows any mistakes. So he's got to take take care to get that smooth line. Yep. It looks like Van Drunen is actually going to lose a position out there. So hopefully she can uh, mount another charge and make her way forward and not slip up outside that top six. You see one of Ryder makes a mistake going up the hill. He's going to lose a spot. Let's see what's going on here on timing and scoring. Evan Snowden, your leader, Cade Miller in second. Mercure in the third spot now. It's incredible how much action takes place on that climb out of the bit. It, it's a simple uphill, Mikey. Uh, uh, yes, sure, no big double sure. jump in it, no big kicker in it. But it's just such an important part of the race that so many mistakes are made right there. Yes, yeah, you were right about that. Mercure making some moves out there, trying to have position. And Lonnie keeps on hitting that line, but the way she's hitting that outside line, I'm not really I'm not really fond of the way she's hitting it. She comes out, she banks off and push off the wall, and I'll tell you what, that's a Euro way of doing things. I've seen it yes. out there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And th th that's a good call, Dean, because that's exactly what that is. That's that influence. That's that experience from there. Mm -hmm. He's watching that battle between Logan Ford oh. and Mason Nettle. Back here for that final transfer position. He checked in. The Nettle was up in the top six, and he fell back to seventh. So he's trying to go back to work, see if we can catch it here. We got a battle right there, three-way battle. Van Drunen caught up in the middle of it. Is that the number 57 just went up to the inside? That's, nice. That's Logan Ford. Moving forward. Moving right forward. Right now. A lot of Van Drunen threading the needle to the outside there in that sweep, or that outside a good line for it. She's going to make a move. And it looks like Nettleton, he's going to try to make a move on that KTM rider as well. Wow, that was pretty sweet. That's pretty calculated right there, Dean. That was a nice move. Yeah, I believe that might have been forward going backwards. So okay. It's up for forward. Uh, yep. <laughs> Wrong direction. Looks like he's going in the right direction, though. It's our leader, the number 44, Machina Evan Snowden. Trying to come away with a victory here. Like we were talking about, a victory is a victory. I mean, it feels good. You know, you get a win. Win's a win. So right now, actually, forward's back off of the bubble, I'm going to believe. I believe so too. He is. Snowden makes his way by the Yamaha announcer tower. Cade Miller in the 156. And a third spot, the 411 on Mercure. Then we see Lonnie Van Drunen. and she's back up into that fourth place position. I think we're going to have a, a position, a bubble battle, as you call it. I know that's Mikey's favorite. Love it. That's <laughs> what we're here for, baby. Checkers is wow. out. Snowden oh, seals the deal. What's for battle? It's over. It's over. Cade Miller and William McCure in the third spot. Lodi Van Drunen, how about that? A fourth place finish, be able to get back around Evan Pape in the fifth place spot. Mason Nettleton making it happen after falling back to seventh the previous lap, moves up into the sixth spot. He'll be your last rider out of those boys and ladies and to advance. Tough break for forward, like we said, going back. Yeah, right, just outside the top six right there. So, man, what a tough break for him, but a great ride to say the least. As we watch a Suzuki rider out there in front right now, the RM Army, I can only guess who that is.
It might be the number 83. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one rider down here early into this one. Okay, getting that thing picked back yeah, up. Yeah, mountain back up. That's a bummer right there. Uh, you know, right, making things go through his mind. Anxiety's up right now. Heart rate is up. Uh, bummer. So back on two wheels. That's the good news. Back and rolling. Good news that hill's much easier to get up these days. I remember being on a KX60 down there at the bottom, oh. trying to get up that big steep hill. <laughs> Bad idea. We're going. We're going back down. And, and you know, up. everybody's like, oh, I was walking uphill uh, to school both ways. Blah blah blah. That hill was way steeper back in the day too. Oh yeah, there's no doubt. Way no steeper. Doubt. Or were you just smaller? Listen, Mikey, <laughs> when I say the hill was steeper, All right. it was steeper. Fair enough. Cater Falls used to be straight down. Yes. I mean, it was, I've heard listen, the, I could it, jump to the bottom. If, if you jumped out three feet, were you going to flat landing? Oh, yeah. Absolutely no question about um, it. it. It was incredible. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of people did it, but Davey Mills sat at one time. Oh, we got a banner. I'll tell Lynn, but we got a banner off the fence. You know, we, we sat on <laughs> thing like a magic carpet. By the way, don't do that, folks. We, we went right down that hill. I don't know if you can do that anymore. Well, I can imagine, yeah. Time. Yeah, I can imagine. I think uh, Mills Saps even had like a big wheel wagon. It would hop in that thing go that down. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> it was me. good times. Yep. Doesn't but surprise me. Here we go around for another lap. Trevor Albert there in the lead. Adrian Hodge is your rider and second making the push. He wants an LCQ win. Looks like the 171 behind him. So the 171 making some moves out there right now. Miss too many C Conti. Of course, I say 171, but I don't see it on my sheet. So we'll get an update of who that is right there in that third place position. Trevor Albrecht leading the way. It's the 190 of Aiden Huge in second place. Third place is Chaz Quinto. Fourth place, 256. See, yeah, we're taking top three. Just outside looking in, Dominic Farland, McFarland, uh, Ethan Kaufman in fifth place, sixth place, Carter Griffin, seventh, Max Devaney, Nathan Atkins, eighth, ninth is Alexander Anderson, and Charles Brown is in tenth place. Hey, got a couple kids down there on the fence. Please get off the fence. They got black coats on and hoods, moms or dads down there, help us out. Let's get the little ones off the fence. Got to get off the fence. Maybe our flagger could help us out. I bet he can't hear you. Yep. There we go. That dad, No, that dad's not going to help. This mom's going to help. She's got the flannel on. She's got the puppy in her arms, and she is our hero. Yeah, you got to have the kids off the fence. Off the fence, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Appreciate you. <laughs> She's got the dachshund out there. If you guys have a badger problem, if you didn't know, uh, those are badger hunting They dogs. will eradicate the badger. They will. They do. That's cool. Here's your fun fact for you. Didn't know it was going to be the AKC Dog Show. It's not. It's Mini O's. And Trevor Albrecht is out front leading the way. Adrian Hugin in the number two spot. And Chaz, the 771. Chaz Quinto is in third. Donna McFar McFarland trying to go to work. You know, Albrecht's a, uh, he's a product of the program right now. He has shown so much uh, improvement over about a year and a half's time, Mike. I've really been watching him, following him a little bit. And, um, from his growth and strength and physical abilities to his technique on the bike, uh, his uh, raw speed, that type of thing. They've really hung in there. They've followed the process. They've gone step by step, and he's making great strides and great improvement. It, it's been fun to watch for sure. Right now, back into the number two spot is Albrecht, but he's uh, really dedicated himself to doing it the right way and putting in the time and the work. That's what it's about. Uh, I, I hate the, the sound of the cliche, but the trust the process, there is certainly some truth to that. I know it's probably overused, but it is what it is. There we go. White flag out now. We had a rider go down. Adrian Haig checks in in first. Trevor Albrecht second. Chaz Quinto third. Charles Brown up into fourth. That might have been Dominic. Mc, Dominic McFarland and it was and look at Albrecht coming back on the attack Dean I mean he really closed the gap after the finish line there number 87 machine look at this got both wheels back on the ground grabbing some traction and breaking the fight yeah he went through that Suzuki on top of this uh, consolation race but he's got a lot of work to do because Adrian Hodge he's on a brown right now leading this thing out his nitro nitro lubricants machine oh <laughs> he's not going to make it easy on him I can tell you Albrecht wow. really turned up the heat Looks like he's got the hook set right now. He's got to make his way right through Adrian Hodge. But he's going to try and offside line right here. It's going to be better. It's going to be worse. going to wait and see how it unfolds. I'm going to have to tune in to race for TV so I can see him out here on the back stretch. Well, great coverage. Sent it up right there in the picture. Whoa, now you can see uh, Hogue able to pull just a bit. Albrecht settles down into the main rut. Can he close the gap on his last half a lap? 
you know, he's venturing out there, he's trying different lines, and man, I gotta give it up to him for doing that, but it, yeah. it looks like it's cost him a little bit out there. It, it, it absolutely did, but, you know, he was searching, it looked smoother, he had to go take a risk, Dean, you know as well as I do. Sometimes you roll the dice, comes up craps, man. That's just the way it is. Yeah, and he's a smart, mature rider. Trevor is out there, so he knows the second I'm in, let's go. Yes. Oh, yeah, and that's why he was searching a little bit. He had the opportunity after the baseline, so he was going to go for it, but it hasn't come back to him, and it doesn't look like he's going to push the envelope. Speaking of pushing envelope right now, the right pushing an envelope is Chaz Pinto. Pinto making some moves out there. He's got about a two-second lead over Charles Brown. Charles Brown's back out there again with Charlie Brown. Absolutely. Doing a good job. It's a great pumpkin. He's unfortunately in that fourth place position, so he's on the outside looking in, looking for a mistake for our leaders. But, man, these leaders have been flawless out there today. And who was Charlie Brown's friend that uh, raced dirt bikes? Joe Motocross. Joe Motocross. Moto Joe. That was a good addition or a good episode right there. Absolutely. So great job by Hogue. Let me tell you, he was very patient, uh, did not have to get up there in the lead. Had the speed, had the opportunity, did that. Albrecht tried to re, uh, retaliate, not able to do so. Settled back into that number two ride. Very smart, very mature. Puts himself in great position. And uh, looks like that's Charles Brown himself. Going to make, make his way in uh, into that number three ride. So great effort by all of those guys. Charles Brown going to go back, have a little peanut, a little peanuts, and uh, get ready for the second moto. Absolutely. We got another consolation these too many sea riders, man. These sea riders are stacked. Man, that's going to be a good second moto team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> telling you. What? Out of the track right now, the number four, Tyler Blackburn. The 007, Will Judd, Dylan Morris on the number eight, 09, Drake Hayes, Dominic Allen, Brendan Rodecker, Ashton Adams, Holland Bercher, Michael Longwood, Ethan Rook, Mason Mims, Bobby Martinkovich. Also out there, uh, David Canfield, Briley Roth, Noah Smoots. Lyle Lentowski, mm -hmm. Logan Deans, Eli Griffin, Chance White, Bryce Ballinger, Stanley Smith, Ryder Saffron, Danielle McDonald, Juan Acosta, Gavin Stavropoulos, Aiden Rothfuss, Colton Selby, Benjamin Bowen, Aiden Storovich, Gavin Covert, Ethan Brown, Valentino Santagati, Brock Dorissette, Mason Sint, Adam Sabub, Quinn O'Hara, Bo Noel, Scott Lindham, Lindholm, Kane Jennison, Jonathan Yelton, and Lakin Haley all out of the track right now in this 280C Conti. Two. Two. -a. Two. -a. A lot of stake. Two Contis for 250C. So, what's that mean, folks out there? That's right. Three advance. Three advance. And what's on the starting line down there? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's going to be the uh, race, well, Concy. Eh, we'll call it race 108. Why not? The Concy for the 51cc 4 to 8 Limited. And there are two in that one as well. So, little rippers. Got to get a top two out of the, the next two Concy races. After that, we got Schoolboy 112 to 17 BC. And race number 111. That's going to be your 65cc 10 to 11 Concy. So, really, if we called your class out, start. If you're not already, down in stage in the process. Start, start thinking about getting geared up and ready to roll. Speaking of ready to roll, it is time. 11.45. You're ready to roll to the vendor's row and get to the concession stand, the food vendors, get yourself something to eat, something to drink down there. And then do some Black Friday shopping. Yeah. Plenty of deals. That's what, the only thing I don't like about work is I don't get a chance to go That's shopping. That's true. <laughs> We're missing out on all the deals. One lap in for the leader, leader, leader. That is Ethan Ruck. Kane Jennison in the number two spot. Adam Swub in third place. Dylan Morris in fourth. Holland Purser fifth. Brennan Rodecker checks in in sixth. Here's Riley Roth in seventh. Eighth place, Chance White. Ethan Brown ninth. And Nolan Smooth rounds out your top ten. But only take a top three. So it's Ruck, Jennison, and Adam. How do you think we say that? Swub? Swub. Swub? Swub. Swub. Let's do it. Word. Six six nine one two three. Yeah, they got a little bit of a gap back to fourth, and a good battle for fourth. That's between Dylan Morris and Holland Purser, and so they're charging. Battle, battle for the lead right here. As our second place rider, Jennison, trying to make some moves. He wants to show you guys that he is the number one man here in the consolation race. Be safe, safest place right now. Out in front, Ethan Ruck knows it. Kane Jennison knows it. They both want it. Only one can have it, and it makes for some good racing for us to watch. So we'll take it. 
I want to thank you guys for tuning in with us today on Racer TV. We've got a great show for you guys in store here. Speaking of tuning in, also, thank you. We had Thanksgiving last night, but I want to thank everybody for coming out and joining us this week for a great mini O's. Yeah, been a solid week. Fun, memories made. Hearts broken by the end of the week, but that's okay. You're probably still going to have some great memories from this weekend. Whatever your scenario is. <laughs> Ethan Ruck, Kane Jennison, Adam Fubb, Dylan Morris, Holland Purser. One, two, three, four, and five. Things changing up. Ethan Ruck now back to the two spot. King Jennison takes over that lead. That might be Swub, actually. That might be Adam, the six, six, nine. Ooh, tightening up. One, two, and three. Here they come up the finish line jump. White flags out. And it is Adam Fubb, the 669 out in front. Ethan Ruck falls back to the two spot. Dylan Morris is the number eight up into the three spot. So Kane Jennison, ooh, I side looking in. I told you. So, but man, he's coming. He made the pass on Rook right there and made it stick. But the 47 machine coming back at him. Let's see what happens now as they're in the pit, making way up to the step up. It's funny to see that, you guys. You gotta make your way up, then you step up. It's terrifying. And then you step up again. They're at the top, they're at the peak. It is our leader of Adam Sabub. Hey, Bub. It's Adam Sabub. Hey, Bub. 895 Honda. King Jennison trying to get back into it. Was doing well after one, just outside after two. And these guys better be careful. This is a close three way battle for first, second, and third, and they it, slip it up, is. you know what I'm saying? Jennison could very easily, well, not, not easily, he very well could go from a fourth place position right now to a lead. If these guys get too close in there, tight together, and come together. He's taking different lines, so I gotta, I gotta compliment him on that. You know, he's not taking the same line as we've seen our third place rider. I believe that was Morris following Rook through a line, man. You gotta be careful. Yeah, there's a lot of lines out there. Certainly be costly. There's plenty of choices. No shortage. 250C Consi number one, Consi number two coming up for these guys after this. I don't think this one's over. Look at your fourth place rider right now. He knows what he needs to do to make it to the next level. He is pushing it right now. I'm sorry, this is Concy 2. Forgive me. It's okay. Concy 2 is out there. They go so quick. They do. They go quick. Green, white, checkered. I'm sure Stenhouse has done some green, white, checkers in his day. <laughs> right? And here we go, your leader, leader, leader is still the 669 machine, leads out Rook, Rook in the second spot. Now we got some pressure. We got pressure being applied by our fourth place riders. So can Dylan Morris hold on to her? Can Kane Jennison, Jenny on up there and make a move into third place position? Checker flag out. There goes Adam Fubb, the 669. Nope. For the checkers, Ethan Ruck checks in in the two spot. I think Dylan Morris hangs on to it, he does. Kane Jennison finishing just a bit outside in the number four spot. A little too little too late. We'll have like to, to We'll have to uh, now wonder what if. All right, 7.30 tonight, 7.30 p.m. sharp, because we got to get the kids to bed. We're going to have the World National Pit Bike Race. Yeah, you heard it first here, Mikey. World National Pit Bike Race, $25. You can get in that thing. You got Stacy Class, 50s. 65s, 85s, big bikes, moms, dad. And that 65, 85, big bike, mom and dad race, you ride your own bikes. And the 50, you bring your own 50. Be a little asterisk on that. Yeah, I, that's okay. That's really wrong. I, uh, I'm not going to say who wrote this, but somebody wrote this. <laughs> I misunderstood. The 65 class, the 85 class, the big bike class, the mom class, the dad class. You ride their bikes. You ride their bikes. Their pit bikes. We're going to have them ready for you, locked and loaded. If you ride the 50 class, you bring your own bike. That makes way more sense to me. 
as I see this blueprint and dial it in. 7.30 p.m. tonight, World National Pit Bike Race. $25 in, we got a Stacy class, we got a 50 class. That 50 class, you got to bring your own bike on the Pit Bike Race, the World National Pit Bike Race. Then our 65 class, our 85 class, our big bike class, our mom's class, our dad's class, you're going to ride their pit bikes. Mom, dad, I guess aunt and uncle could probably go. Yeah. Why not? And you got to keep a watch out because sometimes I know uh, those boys down there, they like to sell the pit bikes right after the race. Ooh. Might be able to pack yourself a deal down there. Go get it. 327 right there. I don't think. Yeah, he had some oh, issues on the first did. lap. Okay. 327 Ooh. of Aiden no, Finishing Rolfus, up. So tough break for Rolfus out there. Out on the track right now. 51 cc, 4 to 8 limited, two Concies in this one, so we'll take the top three out of each. And one of the riders getting caught up in the, one of the ruts down there, man. Tough break for this kid. He's got to go back to the drawing board and try to make some moves. And unfortunately, on the first lap, zoom, 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 That's zoom. it. <laughs> there you go quick for him. Can't make a mistake here in the Concies if you want to advance. 29, Levi Meyer leading the way out there. Second spot, number three machine of Deegan Mullen. So Mullen doing a good job there, pulling a second place position on the opening lap. Third place rider, it was hard to get a read on him, I believe. It might have been Lewis Hawk on number 17 machine in the third spot, running like your top three. And that, that's how many we're taking this one, right? We have two Concies, yep. Yes, sir. So you got to get in there, as Wes Kane likes to say. You're either in or you're out. Oh, we got a mistake going up the finish line hill right now. I'm not sure who's going to fall off right there, but there's one of our Cobra riders, so I believe that might have been, might have been Deegan Mullen. But as they cross the line, we've seen Levi Meyer, Deegan Mullen, Lewis Hawk, Jao Ferreira, Addison Likens, Brooks, Brooks Linehan, Dylan Roke, Cooper Zink, Cruz, Shechnadre. Shechnadre had a bad go in the first one. Hopefully, he can get it together here in this one. Ninth place position, 10th place is Declan Stewart, and that's top 10 rundown, all courtesy of Mitten Cycle. Levi Meyer stretching it out, Dean Diaz. Yeah, Levi Meyer, he is no joke. He has tons of style. Yep. One of West Kane's main boys down there. He'll be hanging out at the podium later. It is the 29 Levi Meyer leading this thing out. Deegan Mullen doing a good job in second. Lewis Hawk in the third spot. Trying to catch our rider out there in the back part of the track. Into the spot cut track he goes as a third place rider watching behind the number three machine that is lewis hawk so hawk looking to better his position out here as he starts to set his sights and put some pressure on the number three adiga mullen can he do it i believe he can what do you think mikey uh, i think he can he's got plenty of time to do so uh they're only eh, a little more than halfway through this lap but he can make it happen i believe Ooh, gotta yeah. believe in something we're gonna manifest look it. at that he's defending defending his vision in that scott split lane looks like he's gonna make the move right there so awesome ride right there taking the right side for Lewis Hawk, he's able to get around the number three of Deegan Mullen. So Mullen going to fall back into the third place position. But hey, don't panic. You're still in a qualified spot. Still in the spot. Hawk is good. He's got a little breathing room now. Stretch his legs out. Feel a little more comfortable. They got a pretty good gap, too, back to the fourth place ride. They really do. Uh, wasn't that case after the lap completed, but they have stretched this thing out. Levi Myers already checked in. Second lap completed for him. That young man just got to keep it on two wheels one more lap. And He's moving on. Whoa, whoa, what did we miss out there? Jeff Ferreira was the rider that was making smooth. It was not Lewis Hawk, so my apologies out there. I should know Ferreira, he'd be on fire. He's one of our 65 riders out there in this 50 class. He does good in the 65, and he's doing really well in the 50 right now. He's going to move into the second place position. And look at there, Mikey, 202 to Levi's 207. So we might see a, uh, a photo finish here at the end of this one. Let's do it. Bring it to us. We welcome back in the booth. Or, yeah, I don't want to I'm put here. you on the spot. Okay. All right. Welcome back. I mean, I don't know. I'm sitting yeah. right beside you. I guess I'm here, right? I just wanted to give you an intro. The <laughs> Rodney Tomlin. Voice of reason. Well, I didn't necessarily need that, but thank you very much. That's what we're here for. <laughs> Yeah, check it in for lap number two. These guys out there on the white black lap. One more to go for Levi Meyer, Jeff Ferreira, and Diga Mullen, who run one, two, and three. But watch out, Addison Lincoln's two ways back. But if any one of these guys make a mistake out there, she'll be there to capitalize. Speaking of capitalize, again, 7.30 p.m. tonight, the World National Pit Bike Race. They're going to have a Stasic class. They're going to have a 50 class, but you got to bring your own bike. So we, do we get a ride to Stasics? 
I, I don't know. <laughs> is it a big, big people uh, on little uh, stage? You thing? know what? If you can, eight. Rodney, yes. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out now. I want to see it. I'll do a 20 inch. I don't if care. If I jumped on, well, that one might actually work. Yeah. That would be a blast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's an age limit, though, on the uh, Stacy class out there. Of course, like I said, 50 class, bring your own bike. We've got 65, 85, big bike, mom and dad class. You guys will be riding their bikes, their pit bikes, and it is $25 to enter. So I'm not sure where sign-up is, but I have to say it's probably somewhere down near where Scott Ethica is. If I had to guess. We're going to get them racked up for tonight. It's going to be a good time, and that's what it's all about. Rodney, what do you see out there? Well, um, I see a lot of little motorcyclists <laughs> going very fast across this race course. <clears throat> now what we're seeing, checker flags flying down as Levi Meyer takes the win in this one. Uh, and uh, 203, uh, picked it back up picked on that up. last. Uh, J.O. Ferrara is in that uh, number two spot there. And uh, I believe the Deegan Mullen, let's see, should hold on for that third place position as our third place rider makes the way across the finish line stripe there. Mullen does get that uh, that nod ahead and Conti number one for two Contis in the 51 four to eight class are now uh, in the books. Coming up next is uh, Conti two. Riders trying to uh, settle it out between, uh, well, the final, the top three will be Andre Williams, Owen Taylor, Teague Barrasso, Jace Gaither Cole, also Elias Hammond, Riker Dingus, Wyatt Barathi, Tino Tucker Wall, Cade Scott, Lucas Bush, Lake. Lastova, uh, Ryder Donaldson, Carter Reneker, Mickey Fluhart, uh, Diego Rojas Humarin, also Bryson Smith, Esteban Urdola, uh, we've got Urdo, Urdanola, uh, Colton Harper, Zyler Otone, uh, Alejandre Gonzalez, Jace Smith, Jacob Heiler, Gunnar Lusk, Chase Gleason, Tucker Chase, Robert Fender, Keha Wheaton, Caden Wood, Maverick Manzer, Dakota Lee, Wade Morris, Sailor James Meadows, also Braxton Simpson, Connor Rodriguez, Hank Tix. Uh, we've got uh, Chandler Perry, James Knopp, Maximus Carr, Jerry Urbanowski, Jacob Bush, and Jerry Sadoff. <laughs> Rodney, man, that's a lot of riders. 41 entries here in the second constellation race of the 51cc48 Limited. So the future is bright here in the sport of motocross, that's for sure. Can we take off the line, race number 109. So going to the starting line, race number 110, schoolboy 1, 12 to 17. And staging, 65cc, 11. And pre-staging, 65cc, 79, Conti number one. One of our riders getting off to a great start out there. But he's going to go to the outside. He is going to hold on to it as they make their way down Gator Falls. And heading into the big battle about to wage on here. You know, it's got to be a heartbreaker for these little guys whenever that gate drops and if they don't make it in the safe front six or seven or so. Yeah. You know, everyone from that part back, man, has to, especially, you know, if you get stuck in the gate or you get hung up behind someone in that first turn. I'm, I'm sure it's it's got to be instant heartbreak for a lot of these little guys. It's funny you said that because looking down now and I see a rider, man. Right. He's passing people like they're going out of style. He's making some moves past about five people already through the pit. Absolutely, and uh, heading up over the Gators back now, and uh, he's trying to make as much gains as he possibly can. The question is, with a short race, we'll try to keep an eye on this little fellow, see how far he is able to make it up. But uh, again, you know, he's one of those guys, man, he's got that throttle gripped, and he's ripping just as hard as he can right now. Oh, yeah, gripping and ripping, as they like to say. Coming now through that Thor's parts and then the spectator area and up to the gizmo jump just after the Scott split lane. This is our leader. He'll be making his way here by the Yamaha announcer tower in just a second. And we'll get a read of the not bike and see who our leader is. I'm thinking it's a four something. Let's see here as they get a little closer and inside. Oh, actually 521 out front. Dakota Lee from Sanger, Texas on a Gibbs Moto. Cycle Center of Ditton PR2 Tamer and T-Rex Throttles back to ride. A good, good pack of sponsors right there. That's that man. Absolutely. Here he comes up the hill to get the green flag again. It is the number 521 machine. Doing a great job out in front of this 51 CC 48 limited constellation race number two. Dakota Lee out of Sanger, Texas, making his way over here in front of Gunnar Lusk. Gunnar Lusk is going to check in the number two position on the 211 machine out of Lincolnton, North Carolina. And Carter Rinnaker, he's out of my favorite place, Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> he's that final transfer spot. We got a can't count out. Jeffrey Satoff, Alejandro, Go Alejandro Gonzalez, 
Robert Scott, Lucas Bush, Mickey Fluhart, Owen Taylor, and James Knott. That's your top 10 right now. And they're making a push here. Lots of pushing going on right now. As you said, uh, Lee, Lusk, and Renneker are your top three. Save off back there in that number four spot. He wasn't real far off the pace, less than a second back in the fourth. And when we watch these riders over the top of the Gators back there, you can see that that battle's still pretty tight as they come through the uh, bottleneck now and make that heart right hand turn and head down off the back of the Gator now. That right there is the battle for the final transfer position. Yeah, we're keeping our eyes on that one. As you said, the number one on Carter Renneker doing a great job of fighting off Jeffy Santoff, but Santoff making a push right now. He knows what it takes. He wants to be in this second moto, and he is doing everything he can to do so. Here they go into the cut track. Seeing our leaders go by, they're still on screen. Oh, a little dab right there for the one-on-one machine. Is that going to be just enough? No, it's not. Really greasy in between the tracks there. You can see them trying to get traction, not able to. Even with their Dunlop tires, it's even hard to hook up in that stuff. Exactly. I mean, that's one of those things, you know, you, you debate. You run the 14 or 34. Well, you got <laughs> you got 30 feet of track there. That's a little a little bad. The rest of it's good. I think you you, you opt for the uh, big time, uh, the, the, the good time. Yeah, exactly. The 34 is the way to go. And here we go. There they go. Actually, over the gizmo jump right now, it is the one-on-one of Carter Renneker in third, but just behind him, Jeffrey Satoff. Look at Satoff taking that outside line, trying to thread the needle right there, shorting up the track a little bit as he gets to the inside right here. Not going to make a move. No, getting a little head shake. It almost looked like coming through their feet off the pegs, but look at this. He's diving down, trying to go on the inside, but it appears that uh, Renneker going to keep him at bay, at least at the moment, down in the oh, bottom of the gator pit. Oh, it's a big good break. Line. Big break there for Sathoff. A little bit of a miscue for Renneker, I think, in that inside line. So it looks like we got ourselves a new third-place ride. Dakota Lee, Gunnar Lusk, one and two. Jeffrey Sathoff now in the number three position. And good job by the little guy by not falling. You know, he took a different line. Had he been falling, he probably would have ran right up in the rear wheel of him. Absolutely. So smart. Uh, he was trying to make the pass, Dean. Can't pass him if you're behind him. Right. <laughs> So across the line again, we got Dakota Lee, Gunnar Lust, Jeffrey Satoff, able to get on Carter Renneker on that lap right there, Alejandro Gonzalez in the fifth spot, sixth spot, Mickey Fluhart, Robert Cade Scott. They can give him a skill by Cade, it's in parentheses on there. He's in the seventh spot, Luke Bush in the eighth spot, ninth spot, James Knopf, Owen Taylor. He rounds out your top ten this lap right here. This is the white flag lap, so one more to go. Well, less than a lap to go for your leader, Dakota Lee, as he's on point now in this uh, – on that 571 machine working his way back toward the finish line region. Here comes the worst part of the racetrack for the 50s. It's between the tracks and it's like I said, like 30 feet long there. That's the 521. We're keeping an eye on Dakota Lee seems to, and he's got this dialed in. And, and Dakota's another one of those riders. He and uh, as you watch Lusk and Sathoff, these are riders that you don't necessarily expect to see in these situations as far as being in an LCQ or consolation race, trying to get into the second moto. But uh, once more, I have to reiterate the point. That's how deep the talent pool is here at the uh, mini O's each and every year. Folks from all over the globe converging on these sands for just uh, a seven day racing period. And wow, what a seven days it's been. Not seven days of racing, eight days if you count the day of practice, I guess, technically. And many uh, show up before that too, Mikey Waynes. And uh, I was one of those. I've been yeah. here for a week now. I got here last Friday morning and Ooh. I was thinking about that this morning. Wow, how quickly a week can go whenever yeah, you're at the racetrack. It, Look at that excitement for the 521 of Dakota Lee as he feels that big sigh of relief. He makes it to the main gate there in Moto2. Gunnar Lusk will finish up in the number two spot. And looks like uh, Carter Renneker didn't even see that, but he got right back around. Jeffy Sadoff going down out there. And uh, Carter gets the gimme back into the number three spot there on that final lap, Mikey. Got to feel good about that. So much pressure, especially from four to eight. I, I would love to say, ah, they're, they're young enough. They don't really comprehend. They're going, no, they, they definitely know what's at stake. They, they have learned it uh, over the last few years since they've been racing. So you could tell by the emotion there, the, uh, the body language of Dakota Lee, what that meant to him to get in. I absolutely. did it, Dad. I did it. Yep, absolutely. It was, and he did it for his dad. He did it for himself. He did it for his, everyone, man. And, and as much as anything, man, I mean, he just wanted to win. That's what. Heck yeah. That's what these kids want. They all want to come out there and win. I mean, a participation trophy is nice, yeah. but not these kids want more than a participation trophy. That's they want right. to win. Back on right. 
Schoolboy Warren coming up next. One Concy, six riders traveling to the second moto from this one. Roman Jordan, Fisher O'Connor, Jack Dawson, Braden Lottie, Michael Quadra, Andrew Cabrera, Connor Rosiak, Christopher Harris, McClellan Fedellini, Caden Pedigo, Braden Barnett, Mason Burgoyne, Jack Poulin, Dayton Lowry, Louis Etzel, Luke Daniels, Michael Cole, Jack Smith, and Naki Abar Zua. Ryder Ramos, the, uh, Aiden Vassy, Rossi Shoemake, Corbin Taylor, uh, Colm Dwayne, Cody Samples, Jonas Alice, uh, looks like uh, Keps Piamo, then of course uh, Gage Burton, Tucker Gross, or Goss, uh, then it's Matthew Correa, Pedro Cock, uh, Paxson Zabidity, uh, Juliana Salinas, Jonathan Bergeron, Gregory Jordan, Deglin Car Carmody, uh, Colton Wise, uh, Gavin Strovopoulos, uh, Trey Pillins, Quinn O'Hara, uh, Corbin Durbin, and Braden Carpenter. Some tongue twisters to say <laughs> the least. And I know that, is it Kayok? K uh, Kawak? Maybe that's Kawak that uh, I'm, I'm butchering all the time there. I'm going with Kawak. Kawak. Yeah, Pedro Kawak out of Potomac, Maryland. I think we may have finally got that one right. I get there in a hurry, and then all of a sudden it all just runs together. But Cowick, MPD Calus USA, Andrus team, and Maxima. Very tight racing out front, Rodney. This one just the one Concy for the schoolboy, 112 to 17 BC. But look at that pack of riders. Now a little breakaway out in front, but outside of that, and Rodney, this is also this is also that age group we we kind of joked about as. Uh, you know, when you're in that, what, 12 to 17, mm -hmm. you just want to beat the guy next to you. It oh. doesn't matter, LCQ, bar banging, throw an elbow. Uh, <laughs> you are 10 feet tall and bulletproof at this age, and it's hard to reason with a young man to, <laughs> hey, maybe checking up a little bit, reeling it in a little bit. No, nah, man, not me. I'm going to yeah. go all the way, man. I got this. Said, you don't know the kind of trash we're talking to each other <laughs> in the pits, Dad. I cannot let this guy around me. So... Almost completed here with lap number one, just three laps and six riders. Jack Poulin out to the front. And that is Jack Poulin, the 31 from Orlando, Florida. He's getting traction, no, no slipping with his grip. And of course, it's Dunlop Tires that's uh, got him hooking up out there. OGO Matrix, also uh, ma uh, Matrix Concepts, I should say. Uh, it's Pro Taper and FMF, some of the fine sponsors of that young man. Poulin out front of uh, Mason. Burgoyne, then it's Luke Daniels, Jack Smith, Chris Harris, and Michael Quadra. That's your top six. Dayton Lowry, McClellan, Fedellini back in the number eight spot. Louis Etzel is ninth, and Paxton Zabitsky, Zabitsky in that uh, number 10 spot. Well, as a leader stretch it out, first, second, uh, they got a pretty good gap. The outside of that, though, Luke Daniels under fire. Jack Smith under fire. Christopher Harris under fire. Forget about it. Michael Kudra back in the sixth spot. Dayton Loudry trying to make something happen back there. Wants to get back up into a transfer position. Well, I'll tell you right now, a good start is not going to guarantee you anything in this particular class. The schoolboy 112 to 17. You get a good start, you think, maybe I can just hold this for three laps. That's not the case. There's folks that's coming from behind with a vengeance that is looking for every position they can get, looking for a, a spot on that gate. So completing our way through the 20 miles of rough road and headed home down the front stretch here in front of the uh, Gizmo Mods tabletop. Yamaha announcers tower now and into our SLR Rifle Works Gator Pit. The 31 machine of Jack Poulin continues to hold on to that lead. The 21 machine of Mason Borghese still in second, but behind him we may have some things that on the change there. I saw uh, the number 12 of Chris Harris, I believe, has moved up into the number three spot. We'll double check. From timing and scoring now as they check in, and he has. He's gotten around both uh, Luke Daniels and Jack Smith to take over the position. Mike Quadra hanging on to the sixth-place spot, but the next rider to watch out for is that hard-charging seventh-place ride, the 105 of Rossi Shoemate. He's at the Banks, Oregon, a 201.9, about five seconds faster than Quadra back there in that number six spot. 
likely already taken over the final chamfer position as we roll through this now third and final lap of racing. Things really starting to heat up right now, though. Jack Pullen's doing exactly oh. what he needs to do. Sorry, with a good this is six, up front. six transfers. I was thinking oh, we yes. battle for three again. I apologize. No. That's so he's still in transfer position. <laughs> yeah, he's, still, he's still okay for now. But, yeah, like you were saying, Rodney, he's under fire. Only man that's got to feel pretty good right now is that man on racertv.com, Jack Pullen. Yeah, he's he's feeling confident. I yeah, mean, he's, he's done well. Not, yeah, he that like you said on the first lap leaders starting to stretch it out and he hasn't really felt any pressure basically since they exited that first uh, turns uh, dropping down into the gator pit he said see ya and he's held on to uh, this position from that point on he opened up uh, well only about a three and a half second lead but that's been more than enough cushion over second place ride 31 or excuse me a 27 of Mason Bor Borghese They're going to buzz past us here. Right that Harris now time. challenging for second, possibly? Uh, yeah, number 12, Husk Varna. Now, Chris Harris challenging. He wants more. He wants that better. He wants that uh, the best score he can get going into the second moto. There's pulling. They're pulling up on him, actually, right now. Boy, he does have a good drive right there, right up the inside, Rodney, in that number three spot. Got to be careful here. Don't want to go down. No. Checkers are flying on this one, and Jack Pullen going to take the win. The drag race to the top of the hill for the second place position. Going to be won by Mason Burgoyne. Chris Harris, though, man, knocking on the door right there for sure. Uh, there's Jack Smith moving oh, up into the man. fourth. Rossi Shoemate did get the number five spot. Luke Daniels drops to the number six position, but Quadra drops out of the top uh, six altogether. Uh, he drops back to eighth, so our final transfer spot, Pullen, Burgoyce, Harris, Smith, Shoemate, and Luke Daniels, your top six in Schoolboy 1, 12 to 17 BC. Moving on, and the rest of the guys will have to sit and wonder what if. What if. What if. Coming up next, race 111, that's going to be our 65 CC 10 to 11, just the one concy for those guys. Hey, Mikey, have you checked out the goggle zone yet? Well, I have not, Rodney. Tell me more about well, it. Well, make sure to check them out. Uh, the goggle zone, they uh, have uh, some tear-offs at half price as well as a selection of roll-off systems and goggles to give you that perfectly clear vision whenever you're out on the track. They also have the 2024 range of Kenny Gear on display, a premium brand from Europe worn by many top GP teams and riders in both MX and Enduro. Thanks to the goggle zone for being on hand with us this week. 65 cc 10 and 11 Concy one coming up next we've got uh, Gage Chivarini Aiden Kurtzy Aiden Stefan David Kuto Christian Tursky Rodrigo Cabello Jake Wheeler Bryson DeJong Austin Fraley Jackson Wright Gavin abound Jaken Johnson Micah Lastovica Thomas Vergarna Benjamin Ballinger Blake Gothier Gage Miller Colin Vasquez Batista Lazaretti, Maximilio Maximiliano Ramirez, Carter Hildebrand, Brevin Latimer, also Brantley Shaw, Jackson Stropopoulos, Dante Feliciano, Adam Regina, Max Erickson, Sebastian Carrillo, Ross Anderson, Kenzie Watine, uh, Alana Fago. Uh, also, Fox uh, Donato, James Gleason, and Isabella Likens, uh, to say the least, again, some tongue twisters amongst these youngsters out there. Ahani, I think it's Ahani Fago, is out of Hamilton Parish. I think she's one of our uh, international riders here with us, or he. Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest with you, but on the 724 anyway. Isabella's out there, uh, 998 from Bell Fountain, Pennsylvania. We've got... Uh, one Conti of the 65 CC 10 and 11. Then we'll have uh, 65 7 and 9, where we'll have a couple of Concis. Race 111 on the racetrack right now. 112, 113 in stage. Well, on the gate and in staging. 114 rolling into staging now. And lap, wrapping up lap number one. Jake Wheeler out of Missouri, out of O'Fallon, Missouri. Out front, Gage Miller in second. Colin Vasquez is the third place position. It's Austin Fraley in fourth. Dante Feliciano is fifth. Ross Anderson rounds out the top six. 65 CC, 10 and 11 year old class. 
Well, it sounds like we're, we've got things dialed down on the podium. Uh, Rodney Tomlin been testing some things out. We're going to crown a few champions today. How many? I don't know. Every but, one of uh, them. Every one we can. <laughs> Every one we can, yep. for sure. Uh, but we are getting down to the nitty-gritty on these Concy races. Uh, we're on 65cc right now, 10 to 11. We've got, uh, call it race number 112 through 119. And you guys know with them being three laps, they're clicking off. So feels like still about 7.30 out here, though, right? It well. really doesn't <laughs> feel, uh, well, it certainly doesn't feel like. Uh, afternoon. <laughs> afternoon. I, I'm not a little shocked by that. It's, it's going quick. Absolutely. Some mighty fine uh, consolation races, actually. Uh, these have been uh, pretty exciting in having their moments. Uh, also having an opportunity earlier to talk with uh, uh, a couple of key players in the industry, of course, uh, uh, our good friends there from Dunlop Tires, and uh, that was great. And, uh, yeah, also yeah. Uh, Rick, uh, our, our, our Daytona 500 winner. That was cool talking with Rick, Ricky Stenhouse there a little bit ago. Uh, he's down. Uh, is he still? Is he signing autographs right now? Well, he, he was, uh, I believe, 10 a.m. this morning. So, yeah, I don't know. May, maybe. I mean, he, he might. Well, be anyway, two stop out by Camper House by the front minutes. gate. If he's anywhere nearby, I'm sure, sure he'd be more than happy to sign autographs. I'm sure Mike Buckley would sign autographs For if sure. he was here. But uh, he's enjoying uh, 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 family time there with, uh, at, well, away from the Dunlop headquarters, I guess, <laughs> out on the West Coast now. You know, they, they used to be in Buffalo, and it was a lot easier to make it down here <laughs> than it was you know, just a 12-hour drive or so from Buffalo, New York. Well, now it's a little different than that. Jake Wheeler about to check in for a second lap completed, and that'll bring out the white flag. The number 57 KTM. Uh, Gage Miller in the number two spot. Ooh, pretty good gap, pretty good gap. Uh, about four seconds, not bad. Gage Miller in a good position. Colin Vasquez checks in in the number three spot. We'll take the top six out of this one with just being one Conti. As Alston Fraley is checked in now in the number four position on the 91 gas gas ride. Dante Feliciano in the number five position. Ross Anderson in six, but it's Gavin, Gavin Abowd back in the seventh spot on the outside looking in, but he's charging. He's actually picked up a couple of spots. About five seconds faster lap time, too, than uh, the rider uh, Ross Anderson in the sixth place position. The gap uh, was only uh, 0.3, so we're going to say there's a good chance right now that uh, Bowd may have made that pass already and be working on Dante Feliciano. And as we check a racer TV screen, I'm sure we'll be able to see this uh, a little clearer for sure. There's your leader, Wheeler, on this fast uh, last lap of racing, a fast lap of racing also. Watching racertv.com, Wheeler doing his thing, Jake stretching it out, man. Just trying to bring it home for a checkered flag. Get the job done. Coming up next, gonna be race number 112, 65 CC, seven to nine. We've got two Concies in that one. So we'll take the top three out of each of those. Watching the number 57 of Jake Wheeler go to work. Staying smooth, smooth as fast. Throw out a couple more cliches. <laughs> Bring it home for a checkers. And there we go. Now we've got that fight unfolding, Rodney. Again, taking the top six out of this one. Look at that one, two, three, four riders. You could throw a baby blanket over in parts. Trying to seal the deal there. So yeah, Feliciano right there. Ooh. Yeah, fifth place there, sixth place, and seventh place. I mean, they're still going at it. This is far from being decided, Mikey. Yeah, the only thing that we know for sure, Checkers is coming out for Wheeler. And then I believe Gage Miller is not far behind. Well, four seconds back. Okay, different rider right there. So there's the Checkers for the number 57 of Jake Wheeler coming out. Boom, yeah. caught him catching <laughs> a little air right there. Congratulations to him. He's moving on. That, that, that screen froze up at a pretty cool time right there. Screenshot that. Gage Miller does hang on. He was about six, eh, I call it seven seconds back, but good enough. Moving on the 151 Yamaha. Colin Vasquez on the 194 Husqvarna will finish in the number three spot. There he is, Gavin Abowd. We called it. He was on the outside looking in. Goes to work, finishes fourth, and he's moving on. Dante Feliciano, fifth place, and Alston Fraley 
rounds out your top six, and he is moving on. What is next, Rodney? Well, what is next? More of the 65cc class. Uh, that was your 10 and 11 year old class. Up next is our seven to nine year old class. Uh, we've got two consolation races in this one, so only the top three will be going out of this one. So 39 and 39. Lots of uh, 50 and 60 kids here, 50cc and 65cc riders here again this year. So like uh, Dino was saying there a little while ago, uh, the sport seems like it's got some help in it at the younger ranks, especially right now. Right now in this younger rank coming up, 65, 7 to 9, Brentley, or Bentley Mara, Tanner Bruckman, Galo Zam Zamaride. Mason Giles, Chandler Powell, Easton Grant, Braxton Roth, Levi Brace, Lorenzo Ricken, Diego Rojas Humarin, Matias Gomez Arula, Benjamin Bainick, Tate Bono, Mason Wheeler, Noah Gills, Huxley Nolan, Cameron Berry, Hejo Ferrara, Jorge Herrera, Braxton O'Brien, James Wood, Rayson Kyler, Graydon Junkie, Austin Lottie, Donald Hopper, Frankie Fazio, Caden Whedon, uh, also, Revan Thompson, Steele Henderson, Reese Max, Joseph LaCapra, Rowdy Rab Jones, Brooks Linehan, Wyan Ber Bertothi, Jacob Fisher, Lexi Gower, Trip Lloyd, Ryder Likens, and Leopoldo Gonzalez. And it add a something, and as you say, <laughs> it just kind of fades away. Fades off, off into the sunset. You know, it's interesting, Rodney, you were talking about, you know, how many riders we have for 65, 7, and 9. If you think about 2020, we brought this up a couple of times. I mean, you go back to 2020, and uh, we were all kind of wondering, hey, will we ever get to race again? What the heck's going on? <laughs> well, these guys would have been four, five, and six back then. So mm -hmm. uh, some of them, I got to think, it was dad going, you know what? We got time. I'm going to get you a little peed up. Yep. You're going to start racing. And yep. now here we are three, almost four years later. And uh, they're still doing it. And they're still doing it. So uh, where we were kind of nervous, as all industries were back then, it's we've – come out smelling like roses there was some trouble getting some parts there for a few years and still some troubles in that area but uh overall yeah the future of motorcycling in general racing moto it is in good hands jo fiara on the gas gas there taking the uh lap number one by storm on the 221 machine. Racing Keller checking in in the number two spot aboard the 254. He's out of Brooksville, Florida. The 121 Benjamin Bainick out of Homer Glen, Illinois. That's your top three that we see transferring there. By the way, J.O. Ferrara, that uh, uh, 221 machine. Uh, Gas Gas, also Fontes, Promotora, and W2WI. He is from Florianopolis. But I'm not sure exactly what country that's from, so I'm going to assume it's probably a South American country, but uh, uh, he's here courtesy of Gas Gas and a factory ride for that youngster out there. That's good stuff. Rodney, before I forget, I got a buddy of mine that messaged me, uh, you know, all the, hey, happy Thanksgivings yesterday. It was wading through all of those, but he said, hey, I saw Rodney Tomlin at the Devil Staircase Pro Hill Climb this year. Uh, he said, ask him what he thought of it. Uh, I didn't, I had no idea you were there. Yeah, actually, I did a live radio broadcast from nice. there. Nice. And uh, it was cool, dude. I'd never had the chance to go do that. That was the 74th. Uh, we're actually planning on doing some cool stuff. They've got a couple of big things going on. If you're going to be in Oregonia, Ohio in next yeah. summer, I think June, they've got like a, a big national championship hill climb they're going to have, plus the AMA National Hill Climb right, right. that they have in October. So, uh, yeah, that, that place is cool, man. I mean, yeah, I want to get out horsepower there. like I've never seen before. Oh, I'll yeah, say that. it's nuts. Hill climb is wild. That's one you got to <laughs> see in person. A, a for totally sure. different crew of people. They had yes. moon, moonshine slushies. Was the uh, that concession stand? <laughs> you wanna, I will take it a step further. Last year, I got to do a pit bike hill climb race with my buddy DQ uh, for DKR, and uh, that was a group, dude. Those were some party. Pe I thought we partied in moto. I thought we partied in woods. Who hill climbs probably it's got a whole both of them beat. If we them. <laughs> and I loved it. It was a good time. All Having right. a good time out there right now. Ferrari Jr. out in front, the 221, and he's ripping right now. He's got a pretty good gap. He's going to dip down into the Gator Pit, as is, I believe that's still the 254, racing Kyler. Yeah. And the number two spot. So here we are, two laps completed. White flag will come out for our leader. So they made pretty quick work of this on lap number one. 
separated themselves from the rest of the field. No excitement in their life, they're thinking here today. Uh, Benjamin Bainick, Bonick in that number three spot. Gaining a little bit of time, about a second and a half or so on racing Kyler. But again, Kyler, he's he's pretty satisfied, I'm pretty sure, at this point. Like, just hold steady right here. Be nice to make that pass on Ferrara, but I'll take the second. And looks like, as I say that, he's getting closer and stretching things out back over Bonick now. Oh, making things happen on the last lap. That's got to give you some cold chills if you're out there. And then you just got to hang on. Hang on for dear life. Top three moving on out of 65 CC, seven and nine. This is our first to two. We're getting down to the nitty gritty here. We've got our 65 CC, seven and nine on track now. 450 C coming up after those guys conclude. And then 115, we've got the 450 B class. 116 is going to be the 125, 12 to 17 BC. We've got some more 65 CC, seven and 11. And then finally, we'll wrap it up with the Super Mini 2, 13, 16. Then we'll get into Moto 2. Bring back out the college boy class for race one. And we'll start crowning some champions. Absolutely. Let's do it. Get rid of some hardware. Start looking at uh, who is going to be Olympiads at this particular point and maybe who's starting to work towards some of the specialty awards like the bronze boot and the golden goggles yep. and the silver tire and those things. Some this prestigious where it gets names as well yeah. uh, over the years. Just, just kind of holding back the energy right now. Yeah. I'm bridled. I've got myself bridled back right now. Trying to keep at bay. And I'm ready to Hold charge out of the gate, man. I feel like, well, as we get closer to the 119, which will be our final race, you know, that's by that point, I'll be, uh, be ready for it. I think we all are ready for second motos. Except for these guys trying to make it in. It's yeah, true. They're ready for it too, but they just want to make it in right now. I said not so fast. Hey, enjoy it. I want to send out a special thanks to T-Rex Moto X, uh, T-Rex Billet Throttles. These things are bulletproof, Mikey. They're super smooth and available in any color to match your bike. Better throttle control, reduced lap times, and less arm pump, they say. These guys spend thousands of hours developing and testing their products. Make sure to check out their, their new triple clamps. T-Rex throttles and triple clamps are AMA legal in every class. Champions choose T-Rex. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what sound a T-Rex makes. I've got no idea. Right. I know what Steven Spielberg wanted us to think it sounds like, but I don't know if that's right. It could have tweeted could like be. a bird. We That's wouldn't. Right. Would it, could, it could have been like a songbird. <laughs> <laughs> Checkered flag flies. Our own, our very own Tweety Bird will go back into work today. Yeah, he will. <laughs> is that him or is that you? That was me. Okay, that was, <laughs> a, that, was that one got me, man. Uh, Racing Kyler finishes in the number two spot. Benjamin Bonick rounds out the top three. Moving on, Chandler Powell will have to wonder what if. And here we go, 65cc, 7 and 9, Concy number 2. This is going to be race number 113. Oh, come on, Mikey, do it right. Two. Wow. There you go. All right, pick it up with Concy 2 here. It's Andre Williams, Sebastian Cherez, Zachary Gordon, Braxton Gaither, Ryder Palmer, Hudson Cohen, Lucas Bush, EJ Dutton, Billy Cassidy, Carter Holmes, Ethan, Easton Ruffing, Ryder Hill, Jax Keller, Still Leonard, JoJo Caliendo. Cheyenne Hines, Will Silver, Mason Campbell, Ryder Anison, Calvin Smallridge, Gunnar Lusk, Hunter Clayton, Archer Dome, Tucker Tix, Trayson Walters, also Easton Morgan, Jason Wise, Zyler Atone, Bryson Williams, Ty Osceola, Ryder Davis, Shannon Tarno, Lewis Klimper, Hank Tix, James Knopp, Cade Rock, Chance Jackson, Easton Luttrell, and Matthew Simino. Can't believe it that we've seen Matthew Sumino in a couple of these LCQs today. Race 113 on the racetrack right now as they get it sorted out up front. And again, this is a uh, second Concy of two, so only the top three will be transferring here. Woo. A lot of pressure, Rodney Tomlin. A lot of pressure for a young man, young lady, age seven to nine. But they're up for the task. That's, that's what it's all about. Make some memories, do something amazing. Checkers out for a few more of our riders moving through our concies here this afternoon. That's right, afternoon. We have entered the afternoon hour 
Hopefully you guys have had some leftovers. If not, hey, do yourself a favor. Find a food vendor, get you a sweet tea, maybe some pizza, maybe some donuts, maybe a Cuban. There is no reason you should be running around hungry, for goodness sakes. Fill your belly. Go get it. Go get it. 65 CC, 7 to 9 on track. Second of two Concies taking the top three. And battles all over the place. One, two, three, four riders up front. Pushing. Through the switchback we go. Oh, and a couple riders go down and come together. Quick to get back on the machines, but that's how quick it can happen. Going from third and fourth, and now, whoo, seconds feel like minutes. Losing a lot of positions, and that is a heartbreaker because we're sitting here with a three-lap LCQ. Not a lot of time to make a mistake. And there we go, leaders down into the gator pit, up the face of the finish line, jump with the green flag waving. Green means go. Jax Keller, the number 99 KTM out in front. Braxton Gothry in second place, EJ Dutton. Rounding out your top three as far as the transfer is concerned. Coming up after him is the 991. Matthew Simono, got to get on the move. 2.7 seconds back in fourth. Bryce Williams in the number five spot. Joe, Joe Caliendo in sixth place. Ryder Hill in seventh. Carter Holmes in the number eight spot with Ryder Palmer in ninth. And Gunnar Lusk rounding out the top ten. Matthew Simino back there in that fourth place position. 2.7 seconds back on this uh, first lap of racing. Again, so many of these names that uh, I just don't expect to see in an LCQ like this. And whenever you have to narrow it down to three, man, the anxiety is already of not making it through the, uh, you know, through the qualifiers or through Moto One in this particular case. Add that to the anxiety of you know, racing that and then not getting the start you're looking for. I can only imagine what's going on in some of these little minds out here right now. Yeah, it's one of those things. You, you hope the only thing they got to worry about is, hey, just go race, buddy. Just go <laughs> race. Don't worry about the bike. Don't worry about the gear. Just go race. Go do your thing. Have some fun. Because as much as we talk about, hey, smooth is fast, I also believe fun is fast as well. Absolutely. Fun and is fast. And it is. That is exactly true. And, you know, maybe sometimes somebody might be a little faster than you, but as long as you're having fun, you're going as fast as you can go having fun. That, And it usually translates, like you said, even into more speed than that. So uh, as Keller, Gaither, and Ed Sutton, EJ Sutton, I say, uh, find their way onto the starting line, we'll sort out our... or look to find their way onto the uh, starting line. We'll sort this out here as we near the completion of lap number two here pretty soon for the 65, seven and nine riders. And they're making their way back into the homeland here as they make their way down in front of the Yamaha uh, announcing tower here. Jax Keller. 99 still out front, enjoying that lead. The 17 of Braxton Gaither and 991 Matthew Simino up to the number three and challenging for second place position. So Simino finding uh, the uh, grip that he needed to find out there and finding the lines that he was looking for as well. And uh, Simino now challenging for second place position after making the climb into third. Welcome back into the booth, West Kane. How the heck are you? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. I'm doing great. It's going to be good. Uh, I am down with the people, being man of the people, and uh, everybody's happy out there. Good. They're ready to get the concerts through. Everybody feels great. And uh, it looks like uh, the podium is going to be set. And hopefully we can get a bunch of these done. Now, okay. well, let's go over podium protocol right now so people know what we're, what we're looking for because I know there's always some confusion and stuff like this whenever we get into these things. So let's go ahead and let's try to explain to folks how this is going to work. Top three in All the right. overall. Top three in the overall. That's the best out of the two motos. Absolutely. Now, here, let's explain a little two bit moto more. Two-moto format, Rodney. Two-moto format. Obviously, you know your score going in, and you have a pretty good idea. So, basically, at the end of your moto, 
Uh, if you think you're close, you may you, you think you may or may not be close, or if you know for sure that you are, you're going to want to go right straight to the podium. And even if you're right under the tent. Well, there. there's an the impound there. Yeah. And then I've got a computer set up. So normally what I do is I already have the medals in my hand. I'll walk over here, your first, second, third. When you get released, you're going to roll around around the fence. You're going to okay. come over there. I want the winner's bike, the overall winner on top of the box. You're going to be on top of the on the podium, and I'll interview I'll uh, interview third, second, first. Pop the champagne, hand you the number one plate. Maybe Mark Burkina be down there, and then we'll roll on to the next one. It's going to be a lot, you know, smoother rotation uh, with Supercross. You had to come all the way around, and and you know we were pressed, we were pressed. But right there, you're coming off. You're going to be right there, and I'm going to be looking at you, and I'm already going to know on the computer who got it. There you go. So it's going to be really good. And if you don't know, just ask. Absolutely. Hey, Wes, what I get? Oh, you got fifth. Oh, man, that's great. Well, and, you got fifth. Yeah. So and if you finish well in the first moto, come prepared to be on the podium. Yeah, a lot of guys ask me for water down there. You know, it really helps if uh, you're a mechanic and all that. They're prepared. They got a little backpack. They got your water in there. Um, if we can uh, talk to the riders and then you guys can debrief them, that also helps. Um, you know, you got all day to talk to him back at the truck. You want to get the podium done because what's important, there's more racing on the track. There's more racing going on. So we want to get back to the race. We want to get Racer TV moving. So podiums are going to be, you know, I want you to thank your sponsors, put on a big smile, and let's move on with it. All right, Jax Keller, Braxton Gaither, and that was EJ Dutton challenging for that second place position. I apologize. I, I miscalled his name, but regardless, Dutton, at the checkers where it matters uh, is in the scoring there uh, he finishes up a point four two oh behind Gaither there in the number two spot those are the top three again Keller Gaither and EJ Dutton going to moto number two here from uh, the uh, 65 CC 79 Consi number two we go next to 450 C consolation race and we've got uh, one Consi in this one again as we've got uh, riders like James Kraft, also Mason Gopher, Maitland Tab, Joel Solomon, Dominic Allen, River, River Slavin, Tucker McCormick, Leandro Segovia, Ryder Whalen, Aaron Ruck, Bailey Long, Bo Reed, Jack Mabe, Dave, David Canfield, Briley Roth, Carter Roberts, Seth Morin, Trey Johnson, Carter Griffin, Logan Deans, Eli Griffin, Emerson Ross, Stanley Smith, Giovanni Gray, Janik Spears, Spears uh Cole Selby, also um, that's Colton Selby, uh, Benjamin Bowen, Peter Maynard, a Aiden Starovic, uh, Cody Cameron, Austin Garrison, uh, J.O. Martins, uh, Zachary Flanders, also looking at uh, Ethan Brown, Valentino Santagati, Ethan Smith, Brock Desero, uh, looks like a Mason Scent, Mark Hartz, uh, Kyle Krizat, Krizak, uh, Reagan Vaughn and Braden Locklear revs up and uh, races on in this one as the gate is down and these riders roll toward that first turn region. Here they come, Rodney. A couple of riders jousting for position now, but it looks like a Team Green, uh, a green Kawasaki mounted machine going to head down Gator back, falls in the lead. Yeah, you ask yourself, are there Team Green? Yes, we've seen Team Green riders out here in these LCQs. But uh, right now, a couple of KTM sorted out. Top six is what is going to transfer here as we catch our riders going over the Gators back now and second, third, and fourth place positions. Fourth rider now trying to challenge for third. We'll try to get some numbers on those. There's your second place ride. Is that uh, 82 Briley Roth, if I'm reading that correctly, uh, leading the way in the number two position as they come off the back of the Gator now down to the heart of this racetrack, Wes Kane. And here we go, your leader on that Kawasaki 450C rider now down through the Gator's back. Going to make the lefty and head out next to the road down to the Gator's tail. And you'll watch him pop out by the Acherby's banner. And there he is. He's got a pretty good jump around on the KTMs now. There's three, four, three KTMs. And here comes a couple of blue groove, blue crew mounted machines over there ah, blue crew media is listening to us but uh, the blue crew guys are going to try to get in they got to get in you got to get top six absolutely as we see them uh, that's our final transfer spots right there these uh, final couple of riders just jockeying to get in see some uh, action going on uh, was that 398 uh, Janik 
Janirik Spearsterbach out of Hamer, South Carolina, trying to jockey for a position up there. We'll see how far he's able to work up with. Little, little physicality going on out there, trying to work his way up the pack right now. As we check in with our leaders here at the Yamaha announcers tower, it is the 56 machine of Jake Mabe. And uh, Mabe. He has it made right now. Yeah. He's one, out front. He's on it. 110 Racing, Jimbo and Amy Howard sponsoring his efforts here this year at Gatorback and the 52nd Annual Pro Circuit. Many right. O's. <clears throat> Excuse me. And who keeps feeding us all this wonderful food? Andrea Lee from On Track School. She, she gets us some healthy stuff up here, doesn't she? She just brought some uh, nice stuff up here. Got to keep us energized. Uh, we do have the after show tonight, the Racer TV after show. And then Pit Bike. Go down there. What's the skinny on the Pit Bike? We got to get signed up? Yeah, uh, I think that uh, tonight, 7.30, World National Pit Bike Race, $25 sign-up, Stacy class, 50s, bring your own bike, 65s, 85s, bio bike, moms and dads, you ride our bikes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, except for the 50s, bring your own bike. Bring your own 50s, bring your own 50s. And bring your own Stasic. Yep. But if you're going to ride in the... 65, 85, big bike, mom, and oh, dad. Oh, big bike. I said bio bike. I was like, what's I, a bio bike? That's a biography bike. <laughs> it's like Biodome. You know, remember Biodome? Yeah, I do. They had bikes in there. Polly Shore and the rest of them. It was good. So here we go. Oh, We're Jack May, them. Briley Roth, Ethan Smith, Stanley Smith, the Smith boys going at it. Uh, they're both uh, ones from Indiana, ones from Tennessee. Going to say that, uh, or ones from Minnesota, and ones from Tennessee. I would say they're probably not related. Maybe distant cousins. Uh, J. O. Martin's in fifth, and Peter Maynard rounding out your top five. Spearsterbach, the number 398 in seventh place position back there, trying to jockey for spots. We were talking about him a few moments ago as well. We see uh, Cody Cameron. Uh, Kyle Krizak in the ninth place position. Braden Locklear. There's River Slavin back in the number uh, 11 spot. So time is nigh, but there is some time to move up if you can make some quick moves. It'll be tough in the 450C consolation race, though. I'm sure 560 now. Ethan Smith up to second. The 82 machine of Briley Roth dropping to the number three spot. There is the... 208 Stanley Smith still holding steady in fourth place. Uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh. This is where things are, I think, a little tighter. White flag is out. This final lap, Wes Kane. Uh, again, this is not the give up uh, flag. This is the no, you got a charge flag. right now. Yeah, that white flag means charge. If you're back in sixth, seventh, or eighth, you've got to try to make some real estate. But that rider out front, he had a good plan. He's like, hey, if I'm going to secure myself and solidify me a spot on that gate in motor number two. I need to get con con in. Win the con -see. The game plan's being executed well. Yep. And he'll find himself probably with about a 30-something gate pick, but able to take those scores. And, hey, he might win that con He might win that main. So you might have a, a yeah. three and a one. Might not put you in for the overall, but it sure feel good going on home. Oh, absolutely. Saying, yeah, I got in and I won a moto. So maybe. May, maybe might have an opportunity to say just exactly that. Ethan Smith in second, Brian Lee Roth in third, Stanley Smith fourth, J.O. Martin in the five spot, Peter Maynard in six. Now the gap about 1.2 seconds unless Maynard makes a mistake or Spearsterbach and or Cody Cameron pick up their pace a little bit. Uh, I see this probably finishing just exactly the way that we've seen it the first two laps, but again, Last lap, it means a whole different thing to these riders. And depending on what position you're in, it can mean something different. It could be nerves that, oh, my gosh, I got one more lap to go. Or it could be, oh, my gosh, I got one more lap to go. I got to get in. Uh, <laughs> the uh, element of that could be anything. Absolutely. You know. Hey, thanks to Tucker Freight Lines and Club MX, who would like to wish everyone a safe and successful Mini O's. Uh, they invite you to come down and check out the 57 on Vendor Row at uh, Mini O's, located in beautiful Jacksonville, Florida. They have a uh, new best-in-class Supercross training area with two Supercross tracks also. Club 57 MX and Tucker Freight. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Tucker Freight hauling it. Speaking of hauling it, Jack Mabe hauling it himself all the way across the finish line out of Palm City, Florida. 
taking the win in this one. Ethan Smith will hold on for second place position. Our third, fourth, fifth, and sixth place positions, I believe, will be the same. There's Briley Roth, Stanley Smith, J.O. Martins, and Peter Maynard. Let's see. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Maybe yes, maybe Ooh, no. Ooh, Peter Maynard moves up the fifth and J.O. Martins into sixth, but they both hold their top qualifying positions. And That's the only change in. we see, yep. All right, race six, uh, race uh, one. See, that was uh, 450 C. C, Concy, so we go next to, that was 114. Race 115, 450 B, Concy now on the track. Oh boy. Logan Downing, Evan Schroeder, Nico Holmes, Matthew Kopp, Hayden Kimes, uh, Tyler Tiffany, Brittany Gagney, Ty Ely, e Alex Luger, Bradley Bulls, Matthew Stecker, Carson Walter, Josh Clark, Ethan Phelan, Carson Cahill, Robert Brethauer, Sebastian Velez, Troy Smith, Evan Stewart, Carson Manquist. Let's see, um, that's it right there. And here they go, guys. Watch them now by the gator tail. Well, we also got Logan Renegar and uh, Louis Grena. Drayton Smith, Dawson Cobb. I, I, went, I did those guys. Flynn oh, Watts, yeah. uh, Dylan Dubois, uh, Braden Thompson, or Brandon Thompson, Andres uh, Sanchez, Logan Ford, uh, Brecken Poirier, Morgan Johnson, Alec Axel Neff, Stephen Johnson, Jake Dunas, Nathan Mock, Mason Call, Deacon Bloomfield, Blake Hauser, Peter Parenti, Jackson Driscoll, and Michael Lambert. Again, with the names in this LCQ right now, 450B huh. top six are going to be I mean, transferring. Dawson Cobb. Yeah. There's a few of the notables that we see there dropping in. But Dawson Cobb kind of sticks out a little bit. That guy's won. He won. Been a front runner up there in Supercross. Must have had a little something happen out there. Carson Manquist is another one of those names. And Evan Schroeder even there. They are one and two. Alex Luger out of uh, Orlando, Florida, running in the number three spot aboard the 303. Drayton Smith, Carson Hill, and Nico Holmes are your top six. Then it's Matthew Kopp. Uh, the number 221 in seventh, Logan Ford in eighth, Peter Parenti in ninth, and Andres Sanchez rounds out your top ten. Again, all ten of these guys I, I would have expected would have made it in in one of the top 18 or so positions. Uh -huh. in, in, but that's, again, just a testament to the talent here. Yeah, it's going to go deep even into the county. I mean, we've got 42. <laughs> that's nuts. That's of nuts. Constellation B riders out there in that 450B. So it just goes to show you there's, what was it, 18 and 18? Yeah. Waiting on you for these guys to join them. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. wow. 36 guys already waiting. Yeah, they're waiting for you. Come on in. Well, these guys likely probably won't see uh, racing till tomorrow again for the main e or for the second motos. But we are about to begin crowning those yeah. champions here in just a few minutes. Oh, in the set, man. Race 115 on the track. I think we go through race 119 and then we start all over back to race number one. I believe they they're probably going to do a little track prep. Oh, I think they might skin it back just a little bit. I'm not sure. I haven't got the official word, but I know when and his guys, he wants to give these guys the best. Yeah. Even if it's five minutes or ten minutes or something. Had a lot of good racing on here. I don't know what's going to happen, but we'll keep you posted on that. But when we start calling you down to staging, you need to get down there. All righty. All righty then. All righty then. All right, all right, all right. All right. Wonder if forward can move forward from a place position right now. I, I'm just... I'm at a loss right now. I mean, I, I just don't know who we're going to see advancing here. You know, oftentimes you can say this guy, that guy, but there's so many of these, this guy and that guy. This one would give us a little better tail, but white flag is out. We'll get a lap time to see what lap time, what they're looking like. Manquist turning a 2.039. Uh, Alex Luger up to second now with a 2.043. He gets around Schroeder. With a 205 and a half, Drayton, Drayton Smith in fourth, Carson Cahill in fifth, Nico Holmes in sixth, Logan Ford is seventh now, Peter Parenti moving up into the number A spot, Matthew Kopp now drops tonight, Brecken Poirier in tenth, uh, Nathan Mock 11, Deegan Bloomfield, Logan Renegar, Michael Lambert, and Seth Eubanks, that's your uh, top 15 right there. See Axel Neff all the way back in 20th place right now, so again, riders we expect in there, Having troubles out here. Manquist there on the 999 machine. Got this one nailed down on that Husk Barna all the way from Hazlett, Texas. Hazlett. Hazlett. Texas. And, well, I got to tell you, Carson is one of these kids, you know, I, I, I know it's only a consolation race right now, but this is 
one of the places I expect to see him up front battling for wins. And, Absolutely. And, and even though he may be struggling now, I have to tend to think when we roll around to March, early March, whenever we roll into Daytona for the uh, yep. Daytona Supercross, the Ricky yep. Carmichael Amateur Supercross, I think Manquist, he he's one of those riders, he, he's clicking some things right now, and I think we yeah. might be seeing bigger things out of him by that point. It's all a puzzle piece out there, guys, and you got sometimes you got to sit back and let the puzzle pieces fall where they need to. Be patient, encourage it, and there's Mama Manquist down there checking it, looking at it, making sure she's thriving right now. Ready to give her, <laughs> give her son to go ahead. <laughs> You go, Carson, you go. Putting the miles around the racetrack. Carson taking that hard right-hand turn. And, of course, the drive up to the Pro Circuit finish line where the checkers are waving. And he's got himself a seat he's on in. the gate. Moto 2. He's in. He's another rider that got kind of hurt a little bit in his early days of being in the C-Class. Mm -hmm. And uh, it set him back a little bit. But he went right through, got, got where he hit his marks, got to the ranch, and says, you know what, now I'm with the big boys. Yeah, absolutely. Nope, class. Now he's on. Now he's on track. Alex Luger in second. Great ride for him. Carson Cahill, Evan Schroeder, Nico Holmes, and Drayton Smith, rounding out the top six in that one. There you go. Another slew of competitors now, drop into the Gator Pit. Now head up over the dinner table. 125, 12 to 17 BC. Top six riders of 42 going into this one. Tyler Blackburn, Brad, Braden Lottie, William Judd, Michael Quadra, Andrew Cabrera, Colton Legg, Brody Bomeister, Tanner Johnson, Nico Serdin, Braden Braid Barnett, Regan Delarue, Louis Etzel, Alan Purser, Trey Johnson, Fisher O'Connor, Jack Smith, Ryder Ramo, Ryden Ramos, uh, Sloan Langston, also Garrett Reeves, Corbin Taylor, Jason Allo, Carter Griffin, Gage Furton, Chaz Quinto, Tucker Goss, Pedro uh, Kayok. Uh, then it's uh, Juliana Salinas, Jonathan Bergeron, Gregory Jordan, White, Wyatt Crisp, uh, Ryan Adler, Brighton Ricky, Lawrence Lashway, Gavin Starbopoulos. Uh, uh, we've got Austin Phelps, Joel Newcomb, Trey P uh, Pillins, Joseph Meyer, Jaden Williams, Bo Noelli, Gavin Shatley, and uh, Shatney, I should say, and Brock Whitaker. That's 42 riders. Jock in for position here. And here we go, guys. Uh, can I? No. All righty, so 12 to 17 BC. Or actually, yeah, that's it. Wrapping up that first lap. Nico Serdan, Brody Bowmeister, Ryan Adler, Gavin Shatney, Juliana Salinas, and Michael Quadra. All right, guys, very important. We got three more concies that we get that first race down in staging. We are going to get after it. So no hesitation, guys. Get those guys down there. If you're in those first, first motos, you need to be down there down to staging we got three more concies left mm -hmm. and then i need I'll, I'll need you down there like start saddling up because it's not going to be long guys saddle up you Motor got the race order right there I what do we do. need down there in we that staging area college boy 16 to 24 will be race number one mini e four to eight will be race number two Race three will be the 85, 9 to 11 limited. You guys need to start thinking about it, especially college boy right now, 16 to 24 and mini E. Like I said, just three races away. Again, these are a lot quicker than the races before. If many of you made it into the uh, main events and you go, well, we got a ways to go. Nope. No, 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 no. We are going to get this thing moving. Want to get as many as we can get done today. Yep. It is uh, It's early, it's almost 1 o'clock. So we should be get down in the part of these this race order here yeah you know it's time to roll up those sleeves and put put those gloves on rodney and, and make plans please uh, especially if you're part of the top 10 in the overall finishes please make plans to be there and if you're an olympiad especially or a specialty award winner and running for that please be 
uh, be there at the awards presentation. Be Rep tomorrow. Represent your sponsors, represent the classes, represent the uh, race itself, and represent yourself, man. I like that. I was thinking about that. Represent yourself. There you go. And uh, Nico Sardan still out front. Brody B. Bo Meester in the number two spot. Uh, Adler in a third. Let's see. Uh, maybe. Let's see. Gavin Shantley right there with him. And actually, Shanley gets passed as uh, Juliana Salinas moves into spot. Uh, Colton Legg moves into number five spot. And Quadra in sixth as uh, Gavin Shatney now drops the seventh. So Quadra still tied to top six, but uh, actually got the gimme back in the sixth after the problem there. He got passed, but uh, still holding on to it. Nah, you got to stay in the fight. Even if you get passed, you, you never know what's going to happen. So you got to throw that lasso out. Got to hook on that guy that passed you. Hey, one turn, shame on me. Next turn, shame on you. I want to be right up in the mix. And as far as the final transfer spots goes, how tight are we? Gavin Shantley, uh, a 210. Uh, he was 1.2 seconds back. Uh, he might be able to make that time back up. Obviously, uh, he got slowed down for whatever reason on that last lap, and he was running a, a qualifying position and qualifying time there at one point, so there's no reason to think that he might not be able to pick up that pace again and maybe challenge to regain that transfer spot. But time, again, as we say, tells the stories, and right now that's what we are waiting on is that story to be told as time passes by very quickly, I might add, here in the, these, uh, well, this third lap of racing. There's the 91, or is that the 41 that we're looking at there? Wake up. I'm about to wake up. We got podium to do. It's going to be carnage down there. It's going to be good, guys. Be ready. Be prepared. All right, this is a, this must be a battle for the lead. Yeah, that's the 19, Nico Certain. Hey, Rodney, we spoke earlier this morning. We talked about be three steps ahead. Be ready to go. Well, there's only three consies left. And if you were in the College Boys 1624 right now, I'd be headed to staging for Tra sure. Trey Johnson. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Trey Johnson, who slipped by me, I think, every time. He ends up with a 22-and-a-half second lead. I think wow. I was calling Serdan your leader. That maybe he was. Yeah, he was. Nico Serdan, I thought so. They timing and scoring plain jokes on my eyes here, it looks like. But Brody Bowmeister winning that one by three-quarters of a second over – or, excuse me, Serdan winning that over Bowmeister by three-quarters of a second. Uh, Giuliani, Giuliano Salinas in third, Colton Legg in fourth, Ryan Adler in the number five spot, Gavin Shatley, Chatney rounds out sixth place, Quadra not able to make it happen, he was pushing though, get this, three tenths of a second out of that transfer spot was the number zero nine machine, so 125, 12 to 17 BC, now off the uh, making their way off the course college boy 16 to 24 you need to be making your way to staging if you haven't already mini e four to eight race number two moto number two you guys will be following that be on standby and ready to go next up on the track race number 117 65 cc 7 to 11 concede one of two west came will have two where again we'll take only the top three 41 riders on each one of these gates coming up here and and uh, riders like uh, Tanner Bruckman, Zachary Gordon, Jace Owen, Cash Riley, David Kuto, Parker LeBeau, Grayson Dempsey, Eli Herrick, Billy Cassidy, Trinity Simino, Jackson Wright, Jax Keller, Michael Lastovic, Steele Leonard, Jojo Caliando, Martin Ospina, Cheyenne Hines, Maltius Gomez Arula, or Matias Gomez Arula, Nolan Cobb, Lionel Leon, Lionel, I believe that is, uh, Mantano, uh, Noah Gillis, Huxley Nolan, Cameron Berry, J.O. Ferrara, Carter Hildebrand, Jackson LaBeouf, Peter Matos, Graydon Junke, Linick Latour, Bruno Rossani, Parker Beckington, also Steele Henderson, Ajani Fago, Jace Wolf, Grady Mansfield, Waylon Bertothi, Logan Albright, Cade Rock, Jacob Fisher, and Eston, or Easton Luttrell. Kate Rock, uh, if memory serves me correct, had a pretty good run in one of these earlier 65 CCs and the limited, I believe, in the 7 to 11. I believe may have won the LCQ. We'll see if he's in that same position here uh, the second time out later in the day here. Track conditions, obviously, a little different. I believe they were actually in some rain at that time, too, if, I'm, if memory serves me correct. Yeah, absolutely. And track looks good, but 
It's going to be great for racing. It's it's perfect. Let's get it. Let's get after it. Oh, man, I, I've been watching this. The, the moisture content, I, I don't think we could have dialed it in physically man-made hardly any better than what we're looking at you're getting that you know you're seeing the roost come off the rear tire but it's not flying in the air and it's laying back down onto the ground almost instantly in, in a nice heavy pattern and that's that right there is that's perfect conditions and then you've got that tack as well that you've got going in there so you've got the grip and you've, you've got that little bit of loam that goes right along with it it's all came together well it started over at supercross there's a little battle going on green flag out these little guys out there trying to make it through and they just want to make that they want to make that next moto absolutely That's and uh, they're doing their best yeah. nolan cobb out front parker beck in second martin martino spina in third so we've got eli herrick outside the bottom bubble heater Matt Matos, uh jackson labouf grady mansfield jace owen back in eighth grayson dempsey in ninth and kate rock rounding out the top ten mercy sakes alive <laughs> <laughs> it's a convoy. It's a convoy. Yeah, These man. guys are on fire. Absolutely. So, Cobb, Beckington, and Ospina are your top three. Keeping an eye on Eli Harris. He was our little co-announcer the other day out of Thornton, Colorado. I'll tell you what, if... Uh, if he can't, if he, if he decides one day that he doesn't want to race, he seems to have a pretty good uh, line on announcing and being able to pick up things. That's right. And, big he, shout out. A, and he's got a great personality. He's pretty funny, too. Yep. Big shout out to my flaggers and track crew. These guys keep it moving. They do. The track crew really keeps it moving. Even when we have rain, they stayed on their position. They were ready. They were in raincoats. They're still in raincoats. So big, uh, big, uh, big hats off. Like you said, Ronnie. I'm not stealing your line, but a tip of the hat. Uh, let's say hey, I tip that hat now. I didn't. I didn't make that up. I heard that years ago someplace. Tip it works. The hat. It works. Yep. Tip those guys out there. That's good. Oh, the hubby, hubby in the house. Hello, you're listening to Racer TV. Thanks for checking in on us. Hey, steady as she goes now for these qualifiers. These consies getting guys down into the mix it's important get qualified in college boy race one in moto two you should be in staging mini e four to eight on your way to staging also getting geared up and ready to start uh, traveling that way 85 cc 9 to 11 limited race number three if you don't know what the race order is post it in your in your book also uh go mxconnect.com has it available for you so you can go on there and get your credits and uh, follow along in the race order uh here for the rest of the weekend and in moto number two concy one of 65 7 to 11 year olds white flag out on this one changes taking place Ospina now up to the number two spot. Eli Herrick, we were talking about him and being a great announcer. Well, look, he's moved up about four spots into the number three position. Maybe it was only three. We'll give him a little bit of extra credit. But regardless, that's what we announcers do. We talk big. Eli Herrick, though, into the number three spot, the final transfer position. Matos, Beckington, and Mansfield, four, five, and six. They're outside the bubble right now. And uh, several riders are. Well, as a matter of fact, 41 riders on this gate. 38 riders will not make it. There'll be another 38 that will not make it in the Concy number two of the 65cc seven nine year old class. And that's the way the old cookie crumbles. No uh, consolation prizes here. You perform or you go home. And we don't mean to put it quite that way, but we know in, in the world of competitors what exactly that means you, you you perform well you get rewarded for it you know what i'm saying and if you if you, if you fall a little short then you fall a little short oh we got company in the oh, house my goodness. who we got Look out well rodney you don't recognize him because you've been away from gncc for is a that while cole? that is cole forbes right yeah there. that's what i did i did all when you said g and it all of a sudden came back to me cole good to see you man hey man let's do this right here this right here makes these things work so much better when i do that <laughs> there you see, go. see, you can hear yourself. We can hear you. Cole, good job, man. Yes, sir. 
Pull that mic in. Yeah, a pull it just a little bit up right there. There you go. Hear me now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, Cole, you've had some success here this weekend, but it sounds like a little birdie told me you're going to be looking for some more success in the world of moto and maybe a little less, or are we done with Woods? What's the deal, dude? Yeah, so basically switching over 100% moto now. Um, yeah, all done with Woods. Um, turned down the contract from KTM over there. And, um, yeah, looking for something in moto now, basically. There you go. Uh, you know, uh, I know, you know, so you had a contract presented to you. That's the interesting thing here, Mikey. You get a contract presented to you. Yes, and, I mean, obviously you, you had the option. I mean, you, you had some place to go one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, how hard of a decision was made it, and, and what brought you to the decision you came to? Uh, real quick, Rodney, uh, three laps in, we'll check our flag out. Nolan Cobb moving on, Martin Ospina and Heater Matos moving on to the main. Go ahead, Cole. Yeah, so after I got my shoulder surgery, um, I've been out for five months in the woods, so I basically missed the whole season uh, in mm -hmm. the GNCC. And me and my dad, we were just talking about it for a while and just thinking about it, and it's always been my dream to do 100%, like, focus just on moto uh -huh. and just, like, put 100% effort into it and – try to make something happen and we basically just talked about it and we told ktm left with good terms with them and Absolutely. everything saying that we wanted to switch to moto which which sucks but it's all ktm off-road which they can't go over to moto so we kind of broke that off and then now basically just trying to find someone for moto so now. you're kind of rideless then i guess this basically point. yeah wow so that that's probably good news for a lot of people because if you've been off for five months and you're just getting basically back into it and yep. everything and and you're we're seeing the results that that you're posting up right now that's pretty spectacular man and yep. uh, i'm sure there's going to be a lot of people so hey up. i'll be the i'll be the mean bad guy yeah. right uh we, we always compare moto to, to wood right. woods to moto and we all know it's, at the end of the day it's apples and oranges it is different oh yeah uh and like rodney was saying those results and you've had some good results here this weekend yeah but those results are what's going to drive a factory team to 100%. look at you so uh sponsors to look at you so yeah. how do you feel you're doing this weekend and where do you go from here to improve to make sure you got yourself a ride yeah, definitely um, the Supercross is kind of tough for me just by scrubbing, you know, just trying to <laughs> stay on the ground and everything. But definitely for the MX out here, I've definitely been better. Um, I got 333 and 250B, Schoolboy 2 and 450B. So. Wow. All right. Well, I'm just telling you right now, Cole, you know you know when the, the Moto guy shows up to a GNCC, you guys are like, we're going to wax this kid. Yeah. You're not welcome here. <laughs> so you're like the guy on the outside. you got to break yes, in, sir. man. And, and I'm, I'm wishing you all the luck. And I know the – uh, competitor that you are and i know if nothing else you're going to give it 110 yeah, uh, percent they're always. going to get their best cole forbes out of you but, yeah. but you know we, we're always comparing you know we we talk about and we speculate from the tower a lot do you feel that your experience in the wood is it, woods is one of the things that helps you out on the moto track especially in the longer races toward the end yeah definitely for sure especially since gene sees three hours which definitely helps me towards the end of the laps i kind of feel like when some of the kids get a little tired and I keep pushing towards the end and just kind of finishing but yeah no I definitely think especially how rough it is out here and all the lines and everything it definitely like goes over to the GNCC and stuff. I sure. bet you this rough kid is, I bet you I bet you he ends up uh, cross training a little bit whenever sure. he, whenever he starts feeling that little that little slip away in the yeah. so I'm going to have to start training in the woods again. <laughs> Sure. Well, Cole, definitely good luck to you, man. Sure. Uh, I, I, well, I don't think you're going to need it. I, I know you're a hard worker. <laughs> yeah. You're a strong rider, and uh, uh, I hope that you get the support that you, that you need to, to move forward in, yes, in the direction that you need to move. And I think that there's probably people out there listening right now saying, hmm, yeah, perfect opportunity. Hey, right what here. you've done so far, go out and do it again in Moto2, if not, yes, maybe sir. even better. Yeah. You know it's in there, for dude. sure. Definitely want to get on that podium. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Hey, thanks for coming and hanging out with us, yes, Cole. Man. Appreciate sure. you. Thank you. All right, Cole Forbes there. He's the 550 KTM rider. Now former Woods racer. I know. Former <laughs> former national youth champion, former, uh, former, champ, uh, former GNCC racer now. But, you know, that's cool. Uh, Mason Murdy, Jax Baker, Tucky, Tucker Coyette uh, in the uh, number one, two, and three spots, if I read that right. Uh, Benjamin Bonick and Tate Brush back there in that number four and five spots. Again, we're seeing names. I'm a broken record here, I know. But one lap down, three seconds between first and second, two seconds between second and third, but a half second. Bonnick 
Tate Brush back there about three seconds. I look to see Brush maybe uh, pick it up here on this second lap as well. You know, I don't, I, it, sometimes it's a little heartbreaking whenever you, you hear that person say, I'm switching away from the woods <laughs> and I'm going to moto. You know, you right. yeah, No, but you know, I, I, I get it, you know. Yeah. I, I remember when Aaron Plessinger done that, and it was around the same age that we see Cole doing yeah. this. I mean, they get to that point where something's got to give one way or the other because there does have to be that certain focus. As a youth, it's a little easier to spread yourself thinner, I think. But once you start maturing into manhood, all of a sudden you do need to, to focus that a little bit more, and that's what Cole, Cole's right. done. That's what uh, Aaron Plessinger done as well, and uh, it, it paid off huge dividends for him. Maybe it'll pay off the same for yeah. Forbes there as well. I think it's one of those things when you're young like that, you got to pick one and really go with it. Uh, once you start getting to that age like Cole, is and then uh, then you get to be like the, the I'm use air quotes old retired guy to do something crazy like Ryan Sipes and say I'm just going to go race whatever I want whenever I want and I'm going to podium at all of them <laughs> just don't that's very selective yeah. they can do that one and, and just maybe one yeah, just don't become like some of those old some of those other old retired guys that think they can come back that's also true <laughs> <laughs> no one to hold them no one to fold them <laughs> right oh uh, Mason Murdy, Jax Baker, and Tucker Coyette. There goes uh, Murdy through for two. Jax Baker in the number two spot with two. And how's it going for Coyette now? Ooh, Benjamin Bonick. I saw him coming there on that first lap. I wondered if he was going to be able to make it happen. There was about a third of a tenth, a third of a second that was between those two riders at the uh, finish line. Forrest McPherson is up. Uh, Braxton Roth is up. Uh, Tate Brush drops back a spot. Tucker Quayette now dropping back to seventh place. So he's got a big row to hoe. About 15 seconds now, maybe 18 seconds to separate him in that final transfer spot now. Getting down to it, Rodney. Two into this one with only three laps. Little room for error. As, uh, boy, everybody kind of spread out right now. So one more to go after this. Let's see, this is Concy 2. That's what we're looking at. Yeah, Super Mini 2 Concy. And then we'll be ready for our uh, college boy, Mini E and 85, 9 to 11 Limited. You should be in staging. My goodness, we've reached the end of the LCQs. We have. Almost. Well, basically, yes, and we are, that we, we, yep, That's that one right there, so 119 is the final one. Then we start back over at race number one, College Boys 16 to 24, 119 races out of 43 different classes out here. That's, <laughs> that's the nutty part of that. Tonight at 7.30, it's the World National Pit Bike Race. Oh, yeah. Be there, be there, be there. With a light supply of Joe Von Musk. Musk, Musk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they're doing the Musk, the Joe Von Musk thing or not anymore, but uh, it is tonight at 7.30, World National Pit Bike Race. It's $25 to enter. Uh, they're right down here by the posting board. I think they'll be signing up for it there. Uh, Stacy Class 50s, bring your own bike. Uh, however, 65s, 85s. Uh, not bio bikes. Those are big bikes. I thought they had some kind of. I thought they had like some kind of biodiesel bikes. bikes or something. They were had oh like my. some kind of fossil fuels, uh, yeah, freaky fossil fuel they were using. Because they got mom and dads too, you know. I mean, hey, why not? But uh, anyway, bring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you ride their bikes. Moms and dads ride their bikes. The big bikes. Uh, we got uh, 65s and 80s will be supplying as well. But anyway. If you want to ride the Stacy class, want to ride the 50, you got to bring your own. $25. Sign up now. It all takes place at 7.30 tonight. Be there. Be there. Be there. Be there. Dean Diaz and the boys going to be throwing it down, I think, at that pit bike race this evening. So Florida's own. you got to say Florida. Florida. Once you're down here, it's Florida. Florida. To the other 49 states. But when you're in, when you're with Snowbird and you move down here, it becomes Florida. Florida. I don't know why. Three <laughs> laps completed. Checkers out. Mason Murdy getting it done. Jax Baker moving on, as is Benjamin Bonick. And Rodney, we have reached our last and final LCQ. And then we get into the Moto 2s. We're going to crown some champions. Wes Kane is over there staying loose. He's rocking his shoulders back and forth. He's 
He's ready to start. Uh, he's ready to start these things. Hey, by the way, 7S Racing number one at Trackside Support here with us this week. Be sure and stop over and see my buddy and yours. He's now a Floridian. Yeah, Floridian. Floridian. Oh, mercy! Big tumble over the falls. Gets a touchdown, he says. <laughs> yeah, he said, we good. Yeah, he's good. good. He said, I think he said, I'm all right. I'm yeah, good. He's double thumbs up. The guy's up at the top of the hill. He's going to grab his own bike. That's all good news right there. But, uh, again, thanks. Bike to facing the other direction. Yeah. Sorry. If, yeah, look for uh, 7S Cycle out near the front gate right now as we uh, get this one sorted out on uh, track here. Riders making their way into the heart of the race course and heading out back to the uh, Gators Tail. Going to jump back up there and dive down on and head out around Scott Highway, the Gators Tail, we call it. No shortcuts. World Moto Attention Riders get ready to ride with World Moto Explore their training, bike rentals, and their inclusive California Moto Experience. Visit them today on uh, Vendor Row for more information. That's World Moto right here, trackside at Gatorback Cycle Park this week. So a lot of riders down there, Rodney, going through their head right now. Who we're there. Okay, now it's time <laughs> to go perform. Let's Can we they got, make it happen? We got that last class out on the track right now. And we haven't ran down the riders yet, have we? We've got Preston Creaky, uh, Fernando Garcia, Hannah Cole, Deglin Carmody, uh, Trevor Dunn, Tyler Tulos, Nicholas Segal, Aiden Vassy, Tommy Doble, Judol Carino, Christian Nyman, Madison Casimir, Cooper Craig, Kylie Inman, Tristan Lucas, Tom Laurent, Matthew Cole, Cash Bollinger, Jacob Hulk, Preston Ross, Max Wiljak, Benjamin Moya, Joel Newcomb, Ethan Abels, Carter Dreschel, Christopher Hanshaw, Sebastian Valaquez, Macy Fieldman, and Maverick Gold. That is your 29 riders narrowed down to the top six with Christian Nyman out front, Cash Bollinger in second. Joel Newcomb in third. It is Deglin Carmody in fourth. And Tyler Tulas in the number five spot. Tristan Lucas rounds out the top six. Carter Driscoll, Christopher Hanshaw, and Cooper Craig. Seven, eight, and nine. And Nicholas Segal rounds out your top ten. Seen some uh, pushes uh, through the top ten by Segal over uh, earlier this uh, qualifying uh, LCQs. We'll see if he's able to make that happen. Of course, uh, this is a pretty stacked uh, LCQ as far as Super Mini 2s are concerned. 13 to 16 years old on the track right now. Once again, college boy, 16 to 24. Race number one loading the gate right now. Mini E, four to eight. Race number two is in staging. Race number three, the 85, nine to 11 limited. You should be in staging and also maybe thinking about heading that way here pretty soon. Uh, at least geared up and ready to throw that leg over the bike. The Bet 35 Plus Class race number four. I'm ready, Rodney. I am ready to crown some champions and watch Moto 2's LCQs. They get exciting. But we're here to crown some champions, and we're going to do that here momentarily. Oh, wow. Not just yet. One lap completed here for your Super Mini 2, 13 to 16. Crowd begin, you, begins to gather round. We're looking good. Christian Nyman, the 92 machine out of Connecticut. Real good lead right here. Bringing out the white flag and in second place, Cash Bollinger, Joel Newcomb. Deglin Kim, Cam Carmody, excuse me, Tyler Tulos, Tristan Lucas, Christian Nyman. Already around turn one. Gatorback falls, there he goes. Joel Newcomb's in at number two spot. Cash Bullinger actually dropping a position back to third. He's okay, he's still in transfer position. Tristan Lucas in the number four position, moves up a spot. Declan or uh, Deglin, excuse me, Carmody in the number five spot, and Tyler Tol Tolos rounds out that top six for the transfer. On the outside, looking in right now, Carter Dreschel, about three and a half seconds back. 
So a little bit of gap right there and not a lot of time to make up for them. Welcome back into the booth. Megawatt, <laughs> Matt Watson, how the heck are you? I got to tell you, Mikey, we have had a fantastic week. It's been I'm, great. I mean, it has been amazing. The racing, uh, the activities on and off of the track. Uh, when we talk about the Supercross, the transition over, uh, all our different weather conditions, uh, the amount of entries, just uh, so many things we can talk about. Bingo, uh, disco in the dirt. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just been an amazing week. A lot of fun with our families. That's what we expect. But it's all about the racing, and the racing has been stellar, bud. Yeah, have racing been second to none. We've seen some amazing stories We're making developing. A shift. Yes. You're making a shank well, out of a I mean, pretzel. If you're up here with this announcement, you're going to have to. You're going to. Yeah, he's making a shank rodney out of a out pretzel. Of a pretzel. <laughs> he's sharpening down a pretzel time. rod here. He it down. Needs protection in the tower. Protection in the tower. Where's Big John? Ah, like that is protection anywhere for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Big fella. So yeah, just a great week, Mikey. Uh, like I said, you and I have had the opportunity to meet new people. Mm -hmm. uh, we've hung out with some great people, old friends, uh, young friends, new friends. The whole deal, and it, it's just a great week, man. It's uh, kind of surreal right now. Almost deja vu starting these Moto Twos. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm ready for it, though. I'm ready to see uh, the level of competition wicking up here in these second motos. Christian Nyman will punch his ticket into moto number two for the Super Mini 2, 13 to 16, as he has seen the checkered flag and now has one less thing to worry about. You're in it, bud. Now go make something happen. And in the number two spot, going to be Joel Newcomb. Moving on, Cash Bullinger moving on with a third place finish. The 127 KTM of Tristan Lucas will move in, as well as uh, Deglin Carmody with a fifth place finish. And Tyler Tolos, there you go, sixth place. The stage is set. And now we're ready for moto number two. Still got some riders out on the track. I believe we're going to get a little bit of uh, – and just a little touch up on the track, so maybe 15 minutes or so, uh, give or take, we should be ready to roll for our second round of motos, those college boys 16 to 24. So not sure if we're going to take a commercial break here in a minute or not, but uh, we'll uh, we'll let you folks know. But in the meantime, hey, setting the stage, uh, Mega, it has been, we've, we've had some weather elements, mm -hmm. not to the degree, thankfully, nope. yep. <laughs> knock on wood, that we saw at Loretta Lynn's where it was a three-day deluge, and, and we actually saw Noah over the building an arc preparing <laughs> um, but we did have some rain and and i think kind of not not to the extreme like i said of loretta's where we saw that diversity in results where you thought oh this guy's a top five mm -hmm. ends up with a 10th 11th 12th but we did see a little bit of that here and there going to be very interesting uh, to see how that plays out with moto 2. Uh, really what we had more than anything mikey uh was vi visibility and preparation yes uh, is what it comes to it didn't come down to survival Yep. out here in these conditions by any means. Uh, if a guy was a, uh, a known mudder and that kind of thing, he might have had a little advantage. But anybody that's ever ridden in mud before, uh, it's, it. It, it's what we had. Equalized. You know, we, we weren't foot peg deep and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Wind's crew got out there and by what, noon, had this thing just super yeah, conditioned. Yeah, stellar job. And then today, uh, just a light drizzle uh, this morning and, wow, did us a real favor in my opinion. Yeah, it's been good, and it's going to get better. We're going to take a short commercial break and get a word in from our sponsors. Stick around. Moto number two will begin when we are back from commercial break. This is the Thor Minios presented by Pro Circuit.
something from nothing. That's what Nihilo Concepts is about. It starts with a spark, an idea, a concept, which leads to a design and finishes with engineered excellence with the highest quality products created with durability in mind. All our products are made in the USA at our state-of-the-art facility in Stewart, Florida. Whether you are a weekend warrior, ride for fun, or at the highest level of competition, Nihilo Concepts offers innovative titanium, aluminum, and carbon fiber parts for your dirt bike. We offer a wide variety of products that you can customize to your liking. Browse our site for foot pegs, brake tips, engine components, specialty tools, frame grip tape, lever grips, carbon fiber components, motor stands, our secondary on-switch plus much more. Head to NihiloConcepts.com and see for yourself why factory teams like Red Bull KTM, Rockstar Husqvarna, Troy Lee Designs Gas Gas, Orange Brigade, Club MX, KLM Gas Gas, and some of the fastest riders in the world choose Nihilo Concepts. kids, Hunter Lawrence here and Jet Lawrence here, sending you some high-flying holiday cheer this season and beyond. May your bikes always sparkle and your spirits always shine. May your celebrations be a blur of wheelies and roost, with wind in your hair and dirt in your teeth. Happy holidays and ride red. championship. Oh, and they both go down. Can you believe what you've just seen? Don't miss intense racing at Monster Energy Supercross. Catch the season opening action at Angel Stadium January 6th and returning January 27th. Get tickets at supercrosslive.com. Let's go racing. Welcome back to the 52nd annual Thor Minios presented by Pro Circuit. You are here on a Friday afternoon, about 1.30 in the afternoon, and you are just in time. If you're just tuning in, welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, warm up a, a plate of turkey, some stuffing, some gravy, all the trimmings, because we have got Moto 2s coming at you. And race number one for Moto2 on the gate right now, uh, wrapping up some, uh, a little bit of a touch up on the track. But the college boy, 16 to 24, is locked and loaded. And Megawatt Matt Watson right now, seconds feel like minutes to those guys down there on the gate. Oh, absolutely. Those guys down there just chomping at the bit. This is go time. This is where we hand out the hardware. This is where the proof rises. And uh, take a look out there, Mikey. One of my favorite parts, man. I love track prep. <laughs> I, I know love, you do. I'm just like a big you, kid, man. I, hey, Dean, it's funny. I still got all my Tonkas now. This is like 1969 through 72 or oh so. You know what I mean? And I've got every one of them. But uh, as you know, I grew up in a, a dozer shop, and I love watching this stuff. And we want to thank our friends at Ring Power Cat uh, for providing this fantastic equipment. This isn't rental equipment. This isn't demo stuff on right. the back lot or trade-in stuff. This is new equipment those guys have provided to make sure Wynn and his team provide the very best surface they can for all of our racers and competitors. And uh, nobody knows dirt better than Cat, and nobody knows Cat better than Ring Power. 
There's no there's no denying that at all for sure. I'm looking out there on the track. We've been talking about it all day long. We've got a little bit of rain. It's a little maybe a little slick out there, but these guys are turning this dirt over and we have a great racetrack, like we said, for our Sakamoto's. Yeah, and it's no accident. These guys know exactly what each section needs. Uh, we talk about sand, we talk about clay tops, so all this and that. This isn't an accident. This is what I call prescription dirt right here. We know exactly what's missing, where it needs to be, uh, where it's short, where it's shallow, where it's deep, whatever. Um, uh, where what areas need more moisture than other and that's what these guys are doing right now as we move into these ever critical second motos that's where it's all on the line dean and uh, we want to make it as even and as consistent as possible without jeopardizing the integrity of the track we're not going to take out the ruts guys okay we're not going to take out all the braking bumps and that kind of thing but just some safety areas some safety is naturally the start the finish that kind of thing dean but right now all those features that have developed over here on the hillside, some of the chatter, some of the braking bumps, some of those ruts, some of those ruts yesterday, Dean, they were 30 oh yards before the corner. They went clear through the corner and they were 30 yards out the other side. Man, you have got to pick one, get in it to win it, keep your feet up, look to the other side, Dean. So right now, just a little touch up on this track is all we're doing. Yeah, it's funny to say about those ruts we're talking about, you know, if you're in there, you're in there. You pick that rut, you follow that rut all the way around the corner. Even if it's 20 miles of bad road, you got one line to follow all the way around it. Yeah, most cases, normally with myself, I end up in about three of those ruts <laughs> before I get to the other side of the corner. Frame here, tire there, tire yeah, there. Yeah, you know, that ends up uh, with uh, <laughs> sore knees, sore wrists, you know, normally torn grips. So. Yeah. <laughs> It happens. It happens to the best of us for sure. But yeah, absolutely amazing conditions. It's fantastic right now. We look across the split lanes. Uh, everything has just again been touched up. Uh, nothing's really been knocked down and that kind of thing. Finishing up that uh, finish line area right now, and that's going to be it. Mikey, going to be ready to go back racing with these second motos. I yep. Know. I can feel it. It's building up, Mikey. Oh, yeah, we're, we're ready, baby. We're ready. Race one, we're ready for a gate drop. College boys 16 to 24. Uh, while we're wrapping this up, we'll highlight these riders again, but wanted to throw out a few names. Noah Smurden coming in with a first-place finish on the MX Locker and Dunlop and Factory Connection back to KTM. Looking for big things out of him. Jesse Wessel, the 108 out of East Falmouth, Massachusetts, aboard the Husqvarna. Uh, we've also got, uh, let's see, who had the third place finish? That was Daniel uh, Bortolin on the Gas Gas. Some other big names to watch for out there. Uh, Tommy Callow with a sixth place finish. Uh, Logan Lassar had a seventh place. Peyton Morningstar finished with a number with a fifth place. And then, of course, Evan Stewart, eighth place, or excuse me, fourth. Justin Peters or Jacob Glenn, excuse me, with an eighth, and Peyton Morningstar with a fifth. Some heavy hitters in this one. Got a lot of heavy hitters out there for sure, Mikey. And you said the first one, the Noah Smurden. This kid's been turning heads all week long, and I also Jesse Wessel, he's actually been turning my head. Wessel's been really riding well this week. Who you got over there helping out Jesse Wessel? Oh, some great folks. You've got uh, just one backing them up. You've got uh, ODI, KSR Wheels, FMF backed machine. So Jesse Wessel making them proud. If you can put it up on the box, he'll make them proud again. Yo, old Keith over at KSR Wheels, those guys are awesome. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, race wheels, pit bike wheels, vintage wheels. That guy's on it. I hope you're home listening right now, Keith. Uh, if you guys are over in that Maryland, D.C. area, uh, York, PA, anywhere over there, and naturally anywhere in the country he can ship, but you, you need to check that dude out, KSR Wheels. All right, boys, we're reaching that point where when is he's standing up and he's looking around and he's on the radio and he's finding out the status Voice of command of our track. We're just about there. And I'll tell you what, I'm looking out there in the track, seeing some of the sponsors we have here with us. Of course, Dirt Care. I know your bike probably got a little muddy cat doing a uh, consolation race, but Dirt Care, they're going to take care of you. They care for your passion. And that is the sport of motocross. So make sure you check out Dirt Care down on Vintage Row. Yeah, Black Friday. Everybody's got some deals going on. If you got some time before your second moto, swing by, take advantage. Wheeling and dealing out there for sure. So College Boy locked and loaded down on the gates. That's going to be race number one. Race number two is your Mini E four to eight. Little rippers are down there, ready to roll. 
Race number three, 85 CC, 9 to 11 limited. Race number four is going to be your vet 35 plus. And race number five, the 250 C limited. That was one we had a ton of riders in, multiple divisions. So a lot at stake for those guys. 250 Pro Sport, that'll be race number nine. How far will we get today? That's the big question. We don't have answers to those questions. We yet don't either, have so answers. So that is, <laughs> it will remain a question until the boss man says, all right, Speaking, we're going to this. Speaking about that, how about that call that Wynn made yesterday? We're going to be done at 4.53. Last uh, rider, yeah. check your flag. And he at, didn't say that at, you know, Five or excuse me, 4:30. He no. said that at, like in the morning. Hey, we'll be done by 4:53, and then kind of chuckled, and then we were done on the dot. It was like 4:53. Boom, checker flies. I, crazy. Th I thought he said we'll be done with 450B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll Come be here on, all week. Now. You're giving this guy too much credit. <laughs> yeah. I got credit for credit's due. You uh, know? No doubt, <laughs> we, we nailed it. He nailed it for sure. We were all kind of looking at what we were watching the countdown. As that moto was taken off when the white flag came out. I got to tell you guys, we're looking forward to our final edition of the Racer TV Mini O's After Show tonight. Uh, we're going to have some great guests. We're going to have Rob Fox from Dunlop on there. Going to have our friends from Pro Circuit. And then we're going to have the father and son duo of Nick and Vincent Way. So a great way to close out. Uh, the week for our mini O's after show on RacerTV.com. That'll be 6 o'clock over at the podium. I invite all of you to come over and check that out. We'll have a lot of fun together. It sounds like a lot of fun. I'm going to come check you guys out before I get that World National Pit Bike Race going on. Yeah, I was going to say. And then after that, holy cow, uh, tonight the World National Pit Bike Race. Sign up, 25 bucks. Uh, several classes there. If you want to take the run down to them. Yeah, like I said, Dean? located next to Scott. They got the pit bikes down there. They're set up. They're going to have a Stasic class and a 50 class. We're going to bring your own bike down there. We don't have bikes for those riders, but make sure you bring your own bike if you're in that 50 class or that Stasic class. And if you don't have a pit bike, that's okay. We have a class that is uh, for the 65 riders, for the 85 riders, the big bike riders, and the moms, and the dads. Oh now, actually, I was talking boy. to Triple J down there, Scott. <laughs> oh I was like, hey, uh, hey I think we need to add an industry class. Uh, well, I'll, I hope we don't because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so stupid, I'll cave to peer pressure. <laughs> and I, I really hope that we don't do that. Uh, what's left of my ACL and MCL on the left leg. So, oh, you have that. something left of it. There's just a bit in the left leg, yes. Yeah, nothing left in the right leg, yes. Yeah, so yeah, you're saying left. I should go take your name off the sheet? Oh, please, yes. <laughs> please do. Well, he's on there twice because I put him on too. <laughs> <laughs> my supporting cast. Multiple classes. I love it, yeah. Plus 55, older than dirt, fart stuff class, uh, you know. We're going to put you on. We so signed yeah. you up for the Stasic and the Dad class. Yep. Perfect. There you go. Perfect. All right. Just a few more minutes getting things prepped up here. I'm going to dip out with Rodney for just a second here. Let Dean and Mikey get things kicked off. Can't wait to hand out some hardware. Yeah. Wes Kane eagerly waiting down on the podium. It's, he that, is. it's that time, you know, and I'm sure people have been tallying up. They're ready. They're checking out these Olympiads. Oh, whoa, whoa, now with Wes oh. Kane down to the podium. No, just kidding. <laughs> I told these guys, is that Wes? Do we have a parakeet, <laughs> or do we have a parakeet stuck in the gate? <laughs> what is that? Oh, it was uh, Griff. I, I, Griff got it. It was oh. Griff. I thought Sylvester was chasing Tweety. <laughs> For you kids, Sylvester was a cartoon cat. <laughs> it was a cartoon Tweety. cat. Tweety was a cartoon and bird. It, it, I don't know. It probably <laughs> yeah. got offensive or something. Yeah. It didn't, but yeah. it did. Right, but <laughs> they made it that way, so there we go. Oh, we can't even have Sylvester anymore. Oh, my gosh. Goodness. And it's Jack. What is Scooby-Doo without Scooby-Doo? <laughs> right. <laughs> Makes no hurl. Makes no sense. Right, bro. All right, guys. All right, looking out there on the track right now, doing a nice little makeover out there on the track. You guys, make sure you're tuning in for Racer TV for the first one out there on the track. Again, it is going to be our College Boys 60 to 24 class. going to be the first one out there on the track. And if you're uh, outside the fifth motor or back, you need to be tuning in to Racer TV out there on your cell phones, your laptops, your TVs, whatever you got it on. Get it on there. Check out the track. We did a little makeover out there. You'll see the hot lines. you see the lines that aren't so hot, some slower lines out there for sure out on the track. And pay attention as this thing is getting ready to unfold. 
I'm looking down at this race order again. There's a lot of good motos coming up. I can't wait to see the two divisions come together in the uh, Mini E class. Of course, 85 9, 11 Limited going to be a good one out there. Bet 35, 450C, 85, 12 to 13. Women 12 plus. That's the one that we've all had our eyes on. Is that Women 12 plus class? Get to see all the girls, our American girls versus the international girl out there. And the Women 12 plus class. We've got the Masters plus 50. No one knows it like the plus 50 riders. 250 Pro Sport. Oh, I definitely, I'd say the most anticipated race out here on the racetrack, race number nine, and our 250B limited class, that'll be race number 10. So we got a big lineup for you guys, and uh, it's going to be some great racing out there. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how far we can get today. Got some daylight left. Weather's been pretty darn good today. We had some rain early, but the overcast, the cooler temp, not too hot, not drying out the track. Yeah, we pushed right through it too, which I like the most. You know, we didn't take yeah. any pauses or anything. We were able to keep on track on schedule. Rocking and rolling. Just waiting. What do you think what do you think feels longer, Dean? You and I up here waiting on the gate drop, call some racing. We're sitting down there waiting to race. Sitting down there waiting for sure. Come again, Griff. 10 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. We were confirming with wind just to make sure. So, okay, so uh, we're wrapping up some of that track uh, touch up here. So, we're going to take another commercial break. And when we come back, we should be ready and dialed. For Moto 2, the College Boys 16 to 24. This is the Thor Minios presented by Pro Circuit. Something from nothing. That's what Nihilo Concepts is about. It starts with a spark, an idea, a concept, which leads to a design and finishes with engineered excellence with the highest quality products created with durability in mind. All our products are made in the USA at our state-of-the-art facility in Stewart, Florida. Whether you are a weekend warrior, ride for fun, or at the highest level of competition, Nihilo Concepts offers innovative titanium, aluminum, and carbon fiber parts for your dirt bike. We offer a wide variety of products that you can customize to your liking. Browse our site for foot pegs, brake tips, engine components, specialty tools, frame grip tape, lever grips, carbon fiber components, motor stands, our secondary on-switch plus much more. Head to NihiloConcepts.com and see for yourself. All right, perfect timing for you guys on Racer TV. The gate has dropped here. Race number one, College Boys, 16 to 24 on the track right now. Ooh, 
few riders going wide right there going way wide way on the outside this is going to be uh, one of our race tech races as our riders we're watching on the SLR Rifle Works live drone moto number two in this one race tech the world's largest aftermarket motorcycle suspension modification company race tech gold valves provide a plush feel with drastically improved bottoming resistance and increased traction many factory teams in the motorcycle industry using race tech for their engine services be like them who's out in front Ding. It is the number 44 machine of Noah Smirton out to the whole shot. And that's just where you want to be, especially when you're coming in with the one. You want to double it up right here and get that whole shot and hopefully check out. Like we said, we've got a nice smooth racetrack out there right now. Got some grooming done. So it's really anybody's game right now on the track as they make their way through the gator tail. Looking for our rider there in the second place position and possibly behind him. Jacob Glenn in the number three spot. I caught him. And... That might be Logan Lazar there in the two spot, the number 21. Noah Smerton, though, already putting a little bit of a gap on these guys early. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. There's Logan Lazar there trailing in that second place position. Here they come through that Scott Goggle split lane right there. Going to make the road the Gizmo Tower. We'll get a view of him here from the tower. Noah Smerton passing, buzzing past the Yamaha announcing tower out in the lead. And that is the 21 Lesser. of Logan Lesser in the two spot under fire. Yeah. Boy, that is tight. It is battles tight. all over the place for, for uh, first lap. 831 of Jacob Glenn coming through with us. And also just behind him, I see Peyton Morningstar. So a lot of moves being made here in the opening laps of this one. I'm going to go ahead and sit over to Mikey so he gives a little top 10 rundown here on the opening lap. Noah Smirton doing his thing out in front, stretching it out now, loving that outside line as he goes up the gator back. Noah Lesser in the two spot, Jacob Glenn in third, Peyton Morningstar in the number four spot with Jesse Wessel rounding out the top five. Joey Arico in sixth place, seventh place is Daniel Bortol in eighth place, Liam Bennett, Peyton Jackson in the number nine spot, and Ronnie Oras rounding out your top ten as battles ensue. The 831, Glenn still going to work on the lesser. Boy, yeah. he's got company in Morningstar exactly. behind him. He's trying to make something happen in front of him, but he's got to watch out because behind him is Morningstar. Morningstar is a tough kid. You know, I think he might be a little bit a little bit taller, a little bit bigger, and he's using those legs to his advantage out here on this strong gated back racetrack. Morningstar not behind him in the number four position. Or, excuse me, Wessel in yeah, the number Wessel. five spot. Yeah, that's Wessel in the five spot, the 108. Again, this is uh, race number one, a moto number two. We're just about ready to crown some champions. Mini E following this one, Mini E four to eight. That'll be followed by race number three, 85 CC, nine to 11 limited. As Noah Smerdin continues to stretch things out, out in front. He had a 2.36 second lead. And yeah, he's looking to extend on that right now as I'm watching them make their way through the Yamaha announcer's tower is still the 44 and Noah Smerda getting the job done out in front right now. Lesser doing a great job. Logan Lesser in the number two position. He's able to pull it back out on Jacob Glenn. Glenn feel a little of the pressure from Peyton eight, eight Morningstar. And looking behind Morningstar, it is the 108 Jesse Wessel. Wessel's the one we're watching right now. Moto one winner. I believe uh, Wessel is our second place rider out there in the first moto. So he's looking to regroup, looking to bounce back. The 2 1 score here could give him something, but he has a lot of ground to make up in front of him. Yeah, Smurden, the man out in front, trying to go 1 1. Wessel, he needs, he, he needs to go 2 1 right now, right? Yeah. Hey, 1 or 2 1 better than a 1 2. You know, we're not all geniuses up here in the tower, but we know our, <laughs> we know our moto math. I know that much. <laughs> I can do that math. And people that have no clue, like they both total three. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> There's Morningstar and Wessel. They're going after it, but I'll tell you what, not too far behind Wessel, we see Daniel Bordelman. Bordelman making a push here. He wants inside the top five as he sits in that sixth place position this last lap through. Joey Rico in the seventh spot, eighth spot, Liam Bennett. Ronnie Ors, he is in the ninth and tenth spot. Running in the top ten is Peyton Jackson. And these guys run super consistent, almost making it boring for us announcers up here. <laughs> they have been consistent so far. We're turning 148 for Smurden. Let's see what he does after three. A 149 for Logan Lesser. And speaking of three, he's got about a three-second lead over Logan Lesser, our rider in second place position. And it looks like Lesser is about a second off of our leader, Noah Smurden, right now. So nothing will be changed right there. But then he got a half second back for Jacob Glenn on that lap. 
Everybody pretty much following in line right here as lap times really starting to separate our riders on the track. Here comes Smurden, making his way back down into the pit and up to the finish line area to check in for lap number three. And I'm not mistaken, I think Lester's starting to feel a little bit of pressure, feeling some pressure now from Jacob Glenn. So the 831 machine, Jacob Glenn, making some moves out there. We'll have to see how the lap times show as they make their way up the finish line hill and complete lap number three. A 149 for Smurden, Lester running a 150, and a 149.4 for Jacob Glenn. So I told you guys, Glenn's coming, and it shows right there. Peyton Morningstar going to check in with a 149.7. A 149 flat for Jesse Wessel. So Wessel, he's picking it up. He must feel the pressure from Daniel Bordelin. Bordelin is coming to a sixth place position. Seventh spot again is still Joey Arico, Liam Bennett, Ronnie Ors, and Peyton Jackson. Rounds like a top 10. And like I said, they're making it pretty boring for us up here at the announcer's tower. They're on the move. And good battle on screen. Lesser being challenged by Glenn now. Glenn has reeled him in over the last lap. Stretches it back out, feels the pressure. Says, all right, you're better back there. I got to be better up here. Little, little uh, cat and mouse, as we like to call it, you know, a little. Oh, oh, mistake right there for the rider that is in front of Wessel. So Morningstar getting a little sideways to the sweeper. Check him out now, pick him up just in front of Jacob Glenn. It looks like Lesser. Lesser was making some moves out there. Morningstar and Wessel having their own battles out there, fighting for position. Three laps into it. Noah Smurden still turning those 149, sub 150. Oh, yeah, different line choice right there through the switch pack. And here they come. Man, this is getting good. Like I've been telling everybody, Race TV, it looks good, looks close, but here in real life, it is a lot closer. As Wessel now making a move on Morningstar, he's right behind him. Yellow flag flying. Don't want to make a pass on yellow right here. You got to watch out for that down rider there. He's out to the outside of the track, so I don't think he's going to play a factor here as they make their way up for a lap at number four. Checking in with the 149 is Noah Smurden. Good job for him on the number 44, KTM Logan Lester in the second place position. Jacob Glenn in third, fourth spot is Peyton Morningstar. But here comes Jesse Wessel, less than a second behind him. Daniel Bordelin in sixth. Joey Rico, he's going to check in with us in that seventh place position. A little off the pace right there, the 152. And the rider making a move right now is Ronnie Ors. He's less than a second behind Rico, so Rico better get it going. Here comes Liam Bennett. He's in the ninth spot, and tenth spot is still Peyton Jackson. But I'll tell you what. Michael Corkin, he wants to show you guys he is a top 10 rider here in the college 1624 class. Here goes the 831 of Glenn. Now, a little checkup from the neck up right there from Lesser. Looks over the shoulder. Doesn't want to do that, but able to pull away from him. Feeling the sense of urgency, but Glenn is all over him right now. You could throw a blanket over him. Ooh, a little mistake right there by Glenn. Cost him a little time, and he's got to be careful because here comes Morningstar and Wessel. Yeah, Morningstar and Wessel now making a move right there as they go through that sweeper, man. You see those lines really starting to form there. I hope you guys are all watching on Razor TV out there in the pit area and getting ready for your motos that may be coming up today. Uh-oh, side by side through the rollers. Wessel got a move on him. He's trying to fight for the inside, take the same line. He's got the middle hooked up. Who's got the better drive? Still oh. side by side. On the inside he is now. Oh, love it. We're going to get a, a live view right here as they're going to buzz past this. Listen. Smurden trying to check out out in front. All the action behind him for the two and three spot, two, three, and four spot. There's crazy action out there. Noah Smurden wants no part of it, but I'll tell you what, I don't care if you know these guys or not. Cheer them on. They're out there. They're giving it their all. They deserve the support. Oh. As we watch Lester and Glenn right now. Oh, whoa. Who's joining the party there? Toland. He comes out of nowhere on the gas gas. Now he wants in the fight. Welcome to Moto 2, baby. White flag out. Noah Smurden out in front. This one's getting intense, as you said, the white flag coming out right now. Noah Smurden is putting on cruise control right now as he has about a five second lead of the rest of the pack. So he could take it easy, but you know him. He's not going to take it easy at all. He's going to push it all the way in. That's Noah Smurden in the lead. Second spot, Logan Lesser, Jacob Glenn. He is the man on the move right now. Watch this battle right here. We got five riders literally in the same picture frame right now as they make their way over the step ups behind Noah Smurden. Here they come. Watch him. Check him out. Boy, a good job by Noah Smurden. He's on his own level right now, but Lesser with his hands full. The 831 all over the rear fender. He resets, tucks in behind him, goes back to work. Morningstar, Morningstar Wessel, Bortolin all battling back there, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Oh, a little, little mistake there by Glenn. Yeah, he's had a couple of small mistakes. Every time he's gotten close, 
He's feeling that pressure. But he's been dropping back a little bit. Lesser stretches it out a little bit. Get some breathing room. No, he doesn't. Scratch that. <laughs> Maybe they just weren't quite in the same camera shot. Yeah, these guys are pushing it hard all the way in. Like um, Thor just said, Thor Powell up here with us in the booth. Top six all ran at 150 lap times. So these guys are all pushing each other. Definitely pushing the envelope. Blistering pace. White flag. The only thing we know is Noah Smurden has been sensational. He's been near perfect. Knock on wood. Keep it on two wheels. Got a couple more lappers. He may get around before he sees the checkered flag. Dips down into the gator pit, the 44, trying to go 1-1 one, one and have a conversation down on the bottom. Uh oh, see the yellow flag. Is that one of our lap riders going down on there? Smurda get caught oh, up. No, yeah. everything's good. That was a close one right there. Noah Smurda coming through to take the checkered flag to go 1-1 one, one of the day. It looks like Lesser and Glenn going to finish second and third. Well, how about it for Lesser? You know he wants the win. He wanted to go 2-1. Unable to make it happen, or not lesser, excuse me, that would have been Wessel. But nonetheless, you know Logan wanted the win. Unable to make it happen, but holding off the hard-charging Jacob Glenn, he never got a break. No, he def definitely never got a break at all. And, man, I'm looking at these unofficial results. I'm not even going to announce them because <laughs> I don't want to get a toss-up. But what a great ride by all of our riders. Put themselves in a position to land on the podium. So Smurden, Lesser, and Glenn on their way to see Wes Kane down on the podium to uh, we'll get rid of some hardware today. And how about that? That's cool. That's cool. Race to uh, Mini E coming up next. There they go. They're off. The gate is down. Highlights some of our heavy hitters. Ryan Ciceretti with a first place. In his first moto, Jet Wow with a first place. In Jet's first moto, Levi Letty out there, Cameron Buckman. This was a big division race. A couple divisions in this one. So Mini E off and rolling. I can tell you got a whole shot if you want me to. Let's do it. 29, Levi Meyer. I am shocked. <laughs> Are you really, though? No, Levi, he's, he's a solid rider. Rider out of Jupiter, Florida. Putting that Moto Bros 110 racing, GPF and FMF back to machine to work. Dunlop's hooking up well out there for Levi Meyer on the whole shot. Got to hang on to it, though. Levi Meyer, he had a fifth-place finish in Moto 1. And something tells him, by the way he's riding right now, he is well aware, hey, I can do better than that. Exactly. And this, these little guys, I don't know how good they are at math, but they're doing the numbers right now. As it looks like Cameron Buckman is your third-place rider. Doing a good job out there. What, what place did Buckman get in the first moto? Uh, let's see. Buckman. That's a great question. Where'd he go? There he is. 753 had a third place. Third place. And we got the 57. Ryan Cicerelli. He is your second place rider right now on that number 57. Yeah, he comes machine. in with the one. Comes in with the one. So he's got some confidence. He's the rider yeah. that needs to make some moves right now. He's in second right now. I believe overall he's in a great spot. But I'll uh, tell you what. You're never in a great style of motocross track here in lap number one, except for our leader, of course. Nothing guaranteed. Got to go out and make it happen watching on Racer TV, the SLR Rifle Works live drone as the battles ensue here in the Mini E. Didn't even hear him coming. There they go, down into the gator pit. I think Sis Reddy here is trying to make a statement as he's really making a push and putting some pressure on Levi Meyer. I don't think we've seen this much pressure on Levi Meyer in a little while. As Sis Reddy now charging up this finish line hill to take the green flag. They're going to check in with us. There goes Buckman. He's your third place rider. Looks like possibly Jet Rao. And that fourth place position is number 72, Cobra Rider. A Jet Rao in fourth. Fifth spot, Huxley Nolan. Sixth spot, Levi Letty. Riley Gall, our girl rider out there. She's in the seventh spot. Eighth spot, Mason Wheeler. Ninth spot, Tucker Chase. And rounding your top ten is Cheyenne Hens. There you go. A lot at stake for the little guys. Let's see. Levi Meyer right now. He'd be looking at a 5-1. We've got our overall on the screen now, don't we, Dean? Yes, we do. Actually. If it ended now, how would it look for that top three? It would look like Ryan Cicerelli taking it. Jet Rao going to finish second. And Levi Meyer taking third. But there like I've been saying, hey, it's, well, it's, it's early. It's way too early. Way too early. We're not setting it in stone. No way. Jose. You like that? You like that? You ever heard that one, Thor? I'm sure you have. Uh, yeah. I'm just old. All right, we're watching the 72 on screen. Hey, it sounds like Wes Kane is ready down on the podium with our top three from College Boy. Take it away, Wes. 
All right, I got my guy, Jesse Wessel. He got second. Congratulations. Who do you want to thank? Oh, my mom, my dad, my girlfriend, my brother, sister, the whole crew at SLBMX, Mad Jenna, Rod Bell, Motivated, Rackham Racing, FMF, KSR, Why Not Co, and everybody else. Thank you so much. All right, congratulations out there on your second place. Third place, Logan Lesher, come on over here. Congratulations, my man. Hold up your medal. Let him see it. College boy, third place. Who do you want to thank? Uh, I want to thank my parents, first of all, my annoying little brother, Robbie Raynard, and everybody at Raynard Training Complex. They've been helping me a ton lately. And 100% Fox, Chris, at, uh, Chris over in Colorado, Defy Graphics, uh, Surefoot, and everybody else. Man, thank you. That was sick. Congratulations out there. Job well done. All right, where's my champion? Come on up. Noah Smerdin. Come on up here, Mike Burkeen. All right, congratulations. Put it behind your body. Hold it up in the air. Your champion, Noah Smerdin. Congratulations. Who do you want to thank? Oh, my mom and dad for like, bringing me here from, the, from Australia, really. Like, they sacrificed so much for me, for me to be here, and it's only fair for me to bust my ass and get on the podium like this. So I appreciate that so much. Uh, Colleen and Brian, my gym trainer, Jacob, we put countless hours back in MCF for this and paid off. So so thankful for that as well. Uh, Active, they got me looking clean out there, so looking fresh as always. Uh, Scott Motorsports, uh, Justin and Primo, they helped me, helped me get my goggles ready. Um, FMF, F Factory Connection, Renthal, a service, uh, my mechanic Ethan, thank you everyone so much. Congratulations out there guys. Here's your bottle, celebrate. Take it away up there in the skybox. Hey, thank you for that West Kane. Congratulations Noah Smurden on that uh, first place finish there. As we turn our attention back to our mini E's. Hey, we saw it happen live. Ryan Cicerelli grabbing the lead away from Levi Meyer. Cameron Buckman in the number three spot. Jet Ralph fourth, Levi Letty back in fifth. And Huxley Nolan sixth, Riley Gall, Gall in seventh place. Eighth place is Tucker Chase, Cheyenne Hines in ninth, and Ryder Anderson rounding out the top 10 after two. Man, I got my eyes on it right now. Mikey Levi is firing back. Look at him right now. He knows if he wants any chance to win this overall, he definitely has to come with the second Moto 1. Meyer right. trying to gain it back. Yeah, and Ryan is ready. He's trying to go 1-1. One, one. Really showing a statement right here in this mini E-class. I mean, he's staying in the, in the good smooth lines right there. Love to see it. White flag out. Here we go. It's set up. Mono we mono. The 57 of Cicerelli. The 29 of Meyer. Meyer shows him the front wheel. But Cicerelli able to launch that step up there by the starting line. That was impressive right there by that uh, KTM mounted mini E machine. But look at Levi Meyer on the back of the bike stretching out. This guy, he's little. He's small. So for him to go in the back of the bike like that, it's really saying something. He wants it bad right now. He is hungry. Can he make it happen? Or can Ryan Cicerelli keep the pedal to the metal? I don't know what you say an electric, but keep that throttle twisted. That's it, yeah. That's all he could do there. Keep the electricity to the bike. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't know. Just, we got to find something. Something's going to work. Something's going to stick someday. Is it still called the gas when you twist it? Yeah. <laughs> Get on the electricity. <laughs> Leave there we go. Fire. He's doing well. He's working the track and looking for the opportunity. But Cicerelli, Cicerelli's not worried about Levi Meyer right now. Yeah. And we can't really say he's putting on a charge either because he's doing the opposite Ooh. of wasting that Ooh. battery out there on the track right now. Here they go, split lane, making a mistake, making a dab. He might be All running right. out a little bit of power right here. We'll watch him now as they make their way up to the Thor Parts Unlimited spectating area. That little spectator stretch down there. Look at him launching this rhythm section as they make their way into the Scott Goggles split lane. Are they going to take the same lane? Are they going to split? They do split. Is Levi Meyer's line faster or is Cicerelli line is. faster? Cicerelli makes a mistake. Here comes Levi Meyer. Rails around the outside and tries to launch the gizmo table on his E-machine. Levi Meyer, your new leader out in front, regains a lead around Cicerelli when it counts. White flag was out. It's gone. Now we're going to see the checkered flag for Levi Meyer if he can hang on. And there it is, checkered flag fly, stays clean. He's got to feel real good about that one. Congratulations to you, Levi Meyer, on his way to the podium. 
to talk with Wes Kane, get himself a gold medal, a bottle of champagne. Don't worry, it's sparkling grapefruit juice, mom and dad. <laughs> early champagne, he'll be okay. And finishing in the two spot, Ryan Ciceretti and Jet Wow round out the top three here for the Mini E. Hey, real quick, folks, as these races conclude, uh, if you are done racing, please return your transponder uh, to registration where you got it. So again, if you're wrapped up with racing, Take that transponder back up there. One less thing you got to worry about. One less thing they've got to worry about as well. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, the scores here. This moto overall picture. We're seeing Ryan Sisson ready with the win out there, taking that championship. Good job for him. He had to win the moto. He still has the championship. That's what matters. Jet Rao going to finish up second overall. Third overall is going to be Levi Meyer. So good job for Meyer there. Going in with the five, that's not what you want to do. But winning that second moto is good enough to put him on the podium in that third place position. I'll give you a top 10 rundown on the track right now for second moto. Levi Meyer taking the win. Ryan Sis ready in second. Jet Rao, your third place rider. Four spot Cameron Buckman. Fifth spot Huxley Nolan. Sixth spot Levi Letty. Jared Tincher, he's in the seventh spot. Eighth spot Riley Gall. Ninth spot Tucker Chase. Rider Anderson in the tenth spot. And here we go. Gate already dropping from moto number two. Showing you're not wasting time. Race number three showing you're not wasting any time out there right now on the track. Tell us what we got out here, Mikey. Hey, we got some big ones in this. This is one of those big, big classes. We had three different divisions. Easton Graves comes in with a one. Colt Martin comes in with a first place finish. Ryder Dorigo comes in with a first place. Also got Colt Whitaker out there. Uh, Tace Morgan, he had a third. Nolan Ford, Jackson Vick, Tim Lopes. All those guys were twos or threes. And I think every single name we just listed off right there is capable of coming out here and finishing out in front. Yeah, out in front right now, I'm watching a battle. It was Easton Graves who took the early lead out here, but Ford, man, putting the press on, pushing the envelope is the number 44, Nolan Ford. And we got a little battle starting to shape up already for that third place position, trying to get rid of those guys. Ooh, around the outside. Ooh. Around the outside. Long Stay way around. Goes. Jackson Vick is that rider that just moved into the third place position. Vick's got to get on the move. He comes into it with a second place finish. And trying to make another pass. Oh, uh, I believe that's right. the same rider. Yeah, trying to get back at him. So good ride by that rider right there. I'm trying to get a read on those numbers. Might be the 51 of Easton Kirby. I'm not too sure, but we'll make sure as they come by. The Yamaha is announcing tower. Here we go. It is the 31 of Easton Graves and the 44 of Ford. Trying to make, oh, Ford almost losing the rear end right there. Able to save it. But he knows what happened right there. He's got to make sure he keeps a level head, stays consistent, stays smooth. Mikey Waynes, what do you see as they pass the Yamaha announcement tower? Hey, the number 31, Easton Graves out there with a good lead or a decent lead right now. But Nolan Ford starting to reel him in as those two now have a little gap back to Vic. And Vic has not had a break. Made a great move to make the pass into the three spot, but he's under fire right now. One lap completed. Graves in first. Ford in the number two spot. Jackson Vick in third. Easton Kirby trying to fire back on Jackson Vick. Nolan Murphy rounding out that top five. Watching this battle start to shave up in the front of the pack right now. Graves is your leader, but the 44 machine and Nolan Ford, he is definitely not letting Ooh. the leash go. He is putting the pressure on. A little mistake there for one of our riders. Which I didn't see. I'm just assuming. By the way, the other announcers yes. <laughs> jumped Ford, a little bit. Ford had a, a little foot come, foot feet coming off the pegs. He rebounded quick. Kept her on two wheels. He's good. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. You know, you see. And he's not good oh, now. Just no. goes down right there. Announcer curse on cue. Sorry, buddy. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna throw it down to oh. West Kane on the podium. 44 Ford back on his bike. All right, Levi Meyer finishing up third down here on the podium in your championship run mini E. Who do you want to thank, Levi? My mom, dad, Motor Bros, GPF. Uh, KTM for helping me get th uh, through this moto. Uh, G um, 110 Racing, GPF, FMF, um, my brother, sister for supporting me, and um, B3 Motors, and everybody else. Thank you. Congratulations out there, Levi Meyer. Good job. Chet Wall, step up here. Good job. Who do you want to thank for second? Uh, my mom, my dad, uh, Sofa, Let's Ride, um, Cobra, uh, and that's all. Congratulations. Good job out there. Mike Burkeen, Ryan Ceretti with the championship, number one.
Ryan Serretti right there. Hold it up, Ryan Serretti. Congratulations, Ryan. Who do you want to thank for your championship? I want to thank my mom, my dad, my brother, Kyle Cheeseman, Rank 54, Future MX, Elite Training, um, my grandma, my grandpa, Bree, Baby Tate, and my, my grandma, my grandpa, and God for keeping me safe. Congratulations, guys. Put your hands together. Take it away up there in the skybox, guys. Ryan Serretti, your champ. Popping bottles. That's what we're here for. We're crowning champions on a Friday afternoon. Easton Graves trying to do his thing out in front. Jackson Vick in the two spot. Nolan Ford in third. Taysom Morgan in the number four position. Colt Martin rounding out the top five. Outside of that, you got Nolan Murphy in sixth place. Braxton, Braxton Meese in seventh. Sawyer Geek in the number eight spot. Ryder DeRigo in ninth. And Easton Kirby rounding out the top 10 after two here, 85 CC, nine to 11 limited. Oh no, down goes the 8-1-0 of Tace Morgan. Man, Morgan was in a four spot and it lost at least a couple of positions there's, right there. There's been a lot of drama out here on the track, Mike. You know, we were on the podium, we were watching, we were screaming up here in the tower. There's been a lot of action going on, but I'll tell you, who's not having a part of it. That's Easton Graves, our leader. He is starting to check out now on the rest of the pack. At least try to check out. He's got about a six second lead of our second place rider now. But Jackson Vick looking to make a press here and move some into that Scott split lane right there. He goes. Look at Graves, man. Doing so good. Yeah. That's so well this 85. Nolan Ford there in the second spot of the 44. And there's Vick. He's in the third place position. And Vick, he's the man that needs to make some moves out there. Yeah, Easton Gray's doing stellar out there, putting that Rides Unlimited and Bell back to machine to good work. Dunlop's hooking up well for Easton Graves through three. And I'm watching now, I'm looking at the scoring, I'm looking at the times. Colt Martin coming in with the one. He has now moved up to that fourth place position. So Martin trying to climb up in the battle as well. Yeah, and as we saw, boy, once Ford got around Vic, he is on another planet right now. And Vic's got to be careful. Colt Martin back there lurking was two seconds back, and I think that is inching closer now. Yeah, you're saying that right, man. I'm watching these lap times. This time it's for Nolan Ford with the 155, two Easton Graves, 157. So two seconds faster. We got enough laps to make something happen, but is Easton Graves going to pick up the pace, and can Nolan Ford continue the pace he's running at right now? Jackson Vick in the number three position still. As we watch Colt Martin, Martin was one of our first moto winners now, making a push right here as they make their way up and to the gator tail. 47 now, Cole Martin trying to really show you what he's made of out there on a, well, it's good to be a perfect racetrack out there. Like I said, you had a little rain, a little bit of moisture, but that stuff's getting tilled in now as we, we get the bikes out there. Yeah, we need Why it. Why not? We don't see any dust out there. And as we watch Cole Ooh, Martin now, he's throwing that. the hammer down. He's trying to reel in Jackson Vick. And this is an overall battle because right now these guys are tied at five points. So the second moto is what plays a big factor. That's right. A lot of stake for him. 47. He looks composed. Martin is he's good. Are we getting white flag? We'll have white flag out next time they're around, though. Wants to get as close to him as he can. Here late. 85 CC, 9 to 11. Graves. Right now, Graves out here showing them all 50 states. <laughs> That's not a thing. It is now. I said it. Made it a thing. Made, Made it a thing. thing. He's going he's gonna to patent that idea. Co co copyright, copyright. We said it on the movie. <laughs> and here we go. Your leader, Easton Gray, stretched it out over Nolan Ford. Might have been a little too little too late for him. But the battle we're watching right now is your third place rider, Jackson Vick and Cole Martin. Here comes Martin. Back in that fifth place position. I'm going to slip Braxton Meese. He's in fifth spot and rounds out your top five. So awesome ride there by all of our riders. But Sawyer Geek, he's the man on the move. He moves into six, puts Nolan Murphy back in that seventh spot. As we see Tace Morgan, he went down, so he's going to find his way a little bit outside that top five in the eighth place position. Our ninth place rider going to come through the finish line area right now. That is going to be Easton Kirby still. So Kirby put in a good ride in front of the 51, or on the 51, in front of the 95 of Kiki DePino. Watching that battle between Vic and Martin on the track. We watch Graves on Racer TV out in front trying to bring it home for a Moto2 first place finish. But Vic and Martin, Martin all over Vic right now. We'll see if he can catch up to him before we see this checkered flag fly. He 
Yeah, that white flag is out right now. These guys are out there on the racetrack fighting for the positions. They have only one more lap to do so, so they're going to be pushing. They're going to be shoving. They're going to be trying to make it happen out here today. And this 85cc 911 limited class. Again, out on the track right now is race number three, race number four. You guys need to be down there on the starting line. That's the Vet 35 plus class. Race number five, two DC limited. Even the staging here, 85cc 12 to 13 in the pre stage. That's 12 to 13 limited. As we're watching on screen now, as Easton Graves hit the Gizmo Tower one more time, looking to go with the 1 1 here and take this championship with a clean score. Her aces. Man, he, he has been sensational this entire moto. He was sensational the first moto. And checkered flag ready to fly. There it is in the air. Easton Graves on the KTM up the face of the jump. Bang! First place finish for Easton Graves. Pumped about it as he should be. There goes our second place driver. They're going to be forward. And right there at the line, Jackson, Vic, and Colt Martin. Man, that was a close one right there. But holding on to it. It will be Jackson and Cole Mark going to finish up in the fourth place position. And your overall picture looking a little something like this. Easton Graves taking the championship. Nolan Ford going to take second overall. And third overall will be Jackson Vick. And, of course, that is if we have no protests, anything going on down there in the impound area. Hmm. So make sure you check the post board after every single race you race out there. And make sure it is right because you only have a 30-minute protest window if something is not right. And coming through the line now as they go, it is Braxton Meese finishing fifth. Sixth spot is Sawyer Geek, so Geek able to move up a little bit. Nolan Murphy going to finish up seventh. Eighth spot, Tace Morgan. Ninth spot, Easton Kirby. And tenth place position rounding out your top ten. We got the number 95 machine of Keiki DePino. So awesome effort to DePino there to put it inside the top ten. What do we got coming up next, Mikey? Well, I'm glad you asked. We've got the Vet 35 plus coming up next. That's going to be race number four. Uh, who's out there? Well, there's a lot of riders out there, but who had success the first time around. How about it? Chad Wages with a second place finish. Michael Carter, a big name out there. Michael Stevenson. Gate is down. We're off and rolling. Jockeying for position in that VP Racing Fuels hole shot. Stevie Roman, a 731. Kawasaki coming into this one with a first place finish in the 777. Lucas Padrett, another heavy hitter out there. Coming in with an eight, and is that Stevie out in front? Yes, it is. It is Stevie out there in front right now, leading out your Honda rider. And then we got Chad Wages in the third spot. A lot of bit of shuffling right there through that fifth place position. There, there's about seven bikes on that first step at the same time. That's pretty wild. Love it. That's what we're here for. That might be Michael Stevenson. That's what I thought it was originally, but we'll get a double check here. And see if it is Stevenson. If, Stevenson. if it is Stevenson, he's making a run right now on Roman. Roman feeling the pressure by our Honda rider. Oh man, Stevenson just no, going Chatfield, for it. Chatfield, Chatfield, I knew. Oh, it, it is Stevenson. Chatfield. I, That's right. <laughs> I knew it was not Stevenson. I know what Stevenson looks like. Old pork chop out there, but it is Adam Chatfield making a push on Roman. But Roman grabbing a fistful on that Jones and Roman MX schools bike. He's making some moves. He's our leader. Or, Taken back over lead, I guess, as Chatfield had it there for a quick minute, but Chatfield's going to find himself in a second, just in front of Chad Wages, who is our third place rider. Oh, Wages, a little mistake right there, but still doing a great job as we see Roman. Chatfield, Wages, battling it out one, two, and three right now. So Chatfield had a shot. Roman says, no, thank you. I want it back. Go back to work, and Chatfield trying to reel him in again. This one's going to be fun. I, you know, you just already tell this one's going to be fun. And it sounds like West Kane's ready to have some fun down on the podium. Take it away, good buddy. All right, I got third place finisher here. Jackson Vick, come on over here. Congratulations on your medal. Hold it up. Big crowd down here. Jackson Vick found his way on the box. Who do you want to thank, Jackson? My mom, my dad, Jesus Christ for keeping me safe. JK Cycles, Adventure Moto, Huxon Brand, Answer Racing, 100%. Bell. Um. MX Tire, Jeff Cernick, um, Enzo Racing, H Moto Co, and everybody else. Thank you so much. Congratulations out there, Jackson Vick. Nolan Ford finishing up second with the silver. All right, yeah, big crowd. Who do you want to thank, Nolan Ford? My mom, my dad, KTM Orange Brigade, Maddie, Daniel, um, my grandma and grandparents at home, 100%. Fly Racing, oh, um, my sisters, MX Clinic, CP Racing Team, the Humphreys, um, Melon, Ethica, M Mika Metals, 
707 suspension, KTM, um, CP Racing team, and everybody else. Thank you. There you go, Nolan Ford. Good job, buddy. All right, where's my champion? Easton Graves, champion. Come on up. Mike Burkeen with the number one plate. 85, 911 Limited, your champion, Easton Graves. All right, Easton, congratulations. Thank you, Mike Burkeen. Who do you want to thank? My mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, all my friends and family, Georgie, Lynx Racing, Rocky Mountain, ATV, MCM, uh, Lynx, uh, Dunlop, Seven, Bell, Scott, uh, uh, Uncle Chris, Rocky Mountain, uh, Bees Muddle Lab, Pro Taper, T Rex, Chair Bees, Mika Metal, Tamer, uh, VP Racing, uh, MX Tire, Ethica, everyone else that helps me out. Thank you so much. All right, one more time. Hold the medal up. Hold the medal. There you go. Easton Graves, your champ. Take it away, Mikey Wayne. All righty, thanks a lot, Wes Kane, Rodney Tomlin, Matt Watson back in the tower here, and of course, Thor Powell even standing by. Uh, you know, we were going to make this uh, smart alecky comment of the, the uh, what was it, varsity co team coming in, junior varsity checking out, and all of a sudden we check in with the vet class too. So. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> kind of backfired on us, didn't it? Just yeah. a little bit. Steve, kind of anticlimactic. <laughs> Steve Roman taking a win in this vet 35 plus moto number one. He picks up where he left off. Adam Chatfield, that number 407 machine, who's been making some waves here in this vet class this week. He finished third in the first moto. He's running in the number two spot. Then we've got Chad Wages back in the number three spot as we open this one up. The number 45 took second, so uh, Chatfield and Wade just got things kind of switched around, at least at the moment. We'll see how that one works out. Uh, then it's Michael Carter in fourth, Michael Stevenson in fifth, Jeremy Parsons in sixth, Nathaniel Cronk in seventh, Giovanni Perota in eighth, uh, Juan Manuel Costa in ninth, and Jesse Gosky rounding out the uh, top ten here in moto number two. We'll sort those guys out a little differently as we get a little closer to the end of this moto but we're working on lap number three now and again Roman just picking up uh, like we said where he left off and this guy man he's come in with a a as a real threat in these uh, in these vet classes this this year yeah no no question the guy's a rider's rider he trains all year round trains young riders uh, of course him and his father-in-law Mike Jones all year long at the Jones Roman Motocross schools. They're near Export PA. These guys just pumping it out. Doing what they're supposed to do. They, they focus on the right things. Uh, they're concentrated on technique. They work on the mental game a lot. And uh, Roman, he, he's been a competitor since a kid. I've watched his whole, thing, uh, his, his whole career since he was on the little bitty bikes. And when we talk about a guy that's a racer's racer, it doesn't matter, indoor, outdoor, arena cross style stuff, super cross, uh, outdoor racing. Roman loves to race, and it shows, and he does it all year. He's always looking for some place to go, and when that's not going on, he's there at the school every day, uh, pounding it out with the kids. Absolutely, keeps them young and alive, and I tell you, it, it also has to be a great inspiration to have such a wonderful teacher as well, because not only is he skilled in his craft of racing motorcycles, and uh, you know, Somebody said, you seem to be faster than you were. And he said, I don't know about faster. He says, I'm just riding smarter. But, you know, not only is he riding smarter, but the heart that he rides with, you know, I mean, using his wits as well as riding with the heart that he has. I mean, that's the greatest example that I think any young person could ever see. Uh, I'll tell you right now, man, when I, when I look at him, his, his raw speed is just about the same as it was when he was 18, 19 years right. old. If you want to know the truth about right. it, I, the guy still flies. That, that's obvious when you take a look at his lap times. Uh, you compare that to some of our other classes. But I, I think what he says is he's evolved and his, his style has smoothed out. Mm -hmm. uh, he's perfected a lot of things, smoothed a lot of things out. So maybe it doesn't feel like he's gone as fast. The man, it sure looks like it. Oh, absolutely. And, and he is, like you said, he probably is as fast as he was then. And uh, keeping and maintaining that speed uh, well into your 30. 30s like this and at 35 years of age definitely a, a great feat and like I said just a great example white flag coming out this time around this is lap four in the history books as Roman takes the uh, nod there and a 154.6 lap time for him looking back a little further now it is Adam Chatfield checking in in the number two spot he's about 4.6 seconds back he turned a 155 to about four tenths or so second difference than 
Uh, Roman's time there. Chad Wages with a 156.993. He's about 10 seconds back now with Michael Carter, the 108. In fourth and fifth is Michael Stevenson. Uh, sixth is uh, Jeremy Parsons. Seth, uh, seventh, Nathaniel Cronk. Eighth is Giovanni Perota. Ninth is Juan uh, Manuel Costa and Jesse Gosky rounding out the top ten. Uh, I have to think, uh, just as quick uh, judgment here, I think what we're seeing on the track, if they finish like this, this is probably the way they'll finish overall, if I'm not mistaken, Megawatt. That's what it's looking right now. Uh, Roman Chatfield wages. So one, two, three. Heck, back to Carter and Stevenson. Parsons as well in the number six spot. Nate Cronk would be in seventh. So they pretty much sorted themselves out right there. Our running order would be our metal order. Yeah, pecking orders straight. Same from, you bet. from the first moto. So did you learn anything, young man, watching these older guys out here race? Yeah, I'll tell you this. Uh, the guy that's out front, he's got a really good style. He's loose <laughs> on the bike. He's throwing some whips. You don't see many people in this class. Uh, Say old guys. Uh, okay, <laughs> old okay. guys. You don't, see many, old guys. you don't see many old guys out here throwing whips. And he's really loose on the bike, and he looks like he's having a lot of fun. And at that age, that's what matters. You just got to go out here and have fun. Absolutely. So. Stroke of, uh, at that age, at the <laughs> just keep you know okay. what's funny? How old are you now, Thor? 15, uh, 16? 16, and I turn 17 actually next Friday. No kidding. Well, happy yeah. early birthday yeah, to you, man. Sure, Thank dude. you. Yep. And, and, and with that, at 17, 35 does seem a, a long way away, but you're going to be laughing at 35 maybe one time when you're out here and someone makes a similar comment yep. to you. Say, look how at the old Hawaiian that scrubs yeah. it, man. Uh, check him out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, did you just see that? For the checkered flag, he just threw a nasty whip. I mean, Roman he's just Roman don't fun. play. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly, for sure. Let's have Mike move around, like you said, or the training. And uh, a lot for these kids to learn, for sure. Well, they'll be headed down to see West Kane at Roman. Chatfield wages one, two, and three in that order. Coming up next is going to be our 250C limited class. This is uh, uh, one of those, uh, again, un. Uh, Unpredictable, I guess, is probably one of the best ways to uh, point that out. And, of course, uh, we're talking uh, a lot of players in this one, and we'll try to get you a few of them as the gate is dropping on this one right now. As we run down the order, uh, we got Drew Emblin out there, boy, the number 12. He finished fourth in his uh, uh, heat race or in moto number one. Robert Wise uh, finished up in the number 16 spot in uh, or actually on the number five spot. He's 16 years old. Sorry about that. Uh, then we have other riders to watch out for. Seven Henderson, the 34 machine. Uh, we've got uh, also Kyle Paley and Logos really killing it. Uh, early leads in his uh, division races yesterday. And as well, uh, looking for a strong ride here today. Tyler Lynch, also a winner in his. Michael Thomason, a strong runner. Connor Summer, uh, Blake Thomas, the 883. And as we're sorting them out, uh, trying to get them all sorted out anyway here on this first lap. Trying to pick up a number on the early leaders there. Going by, well, they're, nope, that's the last class. This is that class out there. I'm going to get a little bit. Uh, I got two classes on the track right now. Thanks for helping me out. Thor's got the young eyes up here. Thor, what, did you see the number on that front runner? That's cool. All right. Uh, there you go. You got it. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> you turned mine off. <laughs> oh, my. But we got a Husky out front right now. I did not catch the number on that one. Blame it on the old guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I see a pattern here, Thor. I see a pattern. Kyle Paleon Logos, I will tell you, is about that third, maybe fourth place position as I saw him coming around the corner there on board the number 90. So he's going to be, I think, one of the key players, if I'm not mistaken. If I saw that right on Racer TV there just a moment ago, they're making their way in front of the uh, spectator area now here in front of the Yamaha announcers tower. And it is out front, the 101. 101, that's Sid Putnam. Putnam coming into this one with a seventh place position finish. And talk about the, uh, in, I wouldn't say inconsistencies, but unpredictabilities of what this class is going to bring as far as the second moto. There is one right there. Putnam getting out to the early lead in this one, finishing seventh in his uh, first moto. Blake Thomas out of Cairo, Georgia, running second. Paley Logos up to the number three spot now. Michael Thompson fourth. William Barrett in fifth. Dawson Baker in sixth. Tyler Lynch in seventh. Seven Henderson, who finished second in his division races in eighth now. Uh, Braxton Cranenberg, Craigenberg in the number nine spot. And Dylan McDonald back in tenth. Robert Wise, who was a top finisher there as well. He's back in 11th. Carson Hall is 12th. And uh, while we get these sorted out, we're going to head down to the podium where Wes Kane is standing by with our top finishers there from the Vet 35-plus class. Chad Wages, congratulations. Third overall. Who do you want to thank? 
Uh, first off, just got to thank my wife and my kids at home for letting me come down here for two weeks and do what I love to do. Uh, second of all, you know, my uh, mechanic, Justin, without him, none of my bike work would get done because I don't know how to do any of it. Um, after that, I'd just like to thank Fox, Mom and Dad, uh, 60, Fast Man Racing, R&B Racing, Keystone Cycle Parts. Um, anyone else I forgot? Sorry. Thank you. All right, Chad Wager, congratulations. Third overall and 35 plus. Adam Chatfield, make your way up to the box. Congratulations. Great to see you back out here. Who would you like to thank for your silver medal? Uh, I'd like to thank Mickey and Megan for letting me stay with them all week and uh, Recluse, your Shamira. Um, MTF Collins give me some pointers as well, so thank you very much. Uh, everyone else, uh, appreciate being back here. It's been like 20 years, so I'm just reliving my childhood dream. <laughs> Congratulations out there, Adam Chatfield. We saw many of those years. Steve Roman, 35 plus champion Mike Burkeen, introduced the number one plate. Congratulations, Steve Roman. You hold that plate up high, show him what's up. Who do you want to thank, Steve? And I have so many people that are behind us. Uh, my father-in-law, all the Jones and Roman people, FXR, PR2, uh, Jeff at Dunlop, Hillby Motorsports, Team Green Kawasaki, um, Department of Power, Fast Track Graphics, KMS Heating and Cooling, Braking, Weisco, um, Scott Goggles, they're always keeping my vision clear. I couldn't do it without all the people behind us and um, Gatorback for always putting on such a good event. Congratulations, Steve Roman, here you go. Steve Roman, your champ. Bet 35, take it away up in the box. Wow, we got a barn burner blazing right now across the head of the Gator, heading onto the Gator's back. Megawatt Matt Watson, we're watching Kyle Paley and Logos trying to make the move now into the number one spot around Blake Thomas, who got around Sid Putnam right now. William Barrett back there and Tyler Lynch. Oh, leader goes down. Third. Oh, mercy. So we got a new leader. Paley and Logos gets the gimme into the number one spot. Well, I'm not so sure we call that a gimme. He was just applying the pressure. Uh, Thomas makes a little mistake. He's in great position, so he takes over. But, man, that moves up Sid Putnam, Will Barrett, Tyler Lynch, and Seven Henderson. Those guys were all sitting in the top five. Now they're now are now they're all sitting in the top four, Rodney. And this one's far from over. We got a couple guys on the move. Will Barrett, he's turning a 155. Ooh, a little mistake there by your leader off the track over the hill. And both first, second and third get by. So we've got new leader once again. And now your wow. leader drops back to a third place position. So that should put... Uh, Putnam and Barrett, I believe, up into the uh, number one and two spots. Yeah. yeah, Rodney, we were waiting on this one. 250C narrowed this down to the best of the best. Want to see exactly where these guys stack up. Ooh. In that current running order, well, we haven't updated it yet. They still show Thomas up front. But when we move this thing back around, all of a sudden, we've got three new players within the first lap. Here we go, dropping over into the Gator Pit one more time. We got our KTM rider. Out front, is that Barrett possibly out front? That's what it's looking like. So we'll see what happens here as we wrap up lap number two. And this is going, oh, maybe oh, a new leader again. Open. Side by side, the 101 nearly making that pass. Putnam trying to get back in front. But Barrett, at least at the moment of timing and scoring, has the lead. And coming out of that first turn, still holding on to it. But Kyle Paley and Logos right there beside him. we got a drag race into the pit now. Going to be a matter of who hooks up and gets a good line down here. Who's going to get the driver on as they work their way back up out of the pit? Barrett wants to hold on to it. Looks like Putnam's going to get a good drive as well, but not out of this one. Paleologo still trying to set him up. He's oh. in the catbird seat. I tell you, here comes uh, that second place ride. Sid Putnam trying to regain that lead back away from William Barrett now. Now, I, at one point, I thought he was dropping back to defend his position away from Paley and Logos, and then all of a sudden he wicked it back up. So there, it's a, still a three-way battle as they head on the backside of the racetrack now, getting set to drop onto the Gators' tail. This is where it gets interesting. Yeah, Putnam gets in there. He wants to use the short track, but Rodney, unpredictable in the ruts back there right now. It's a gamble. Which one do we take? Anything can happen. And look at this. Paley and Logos comes up to the inside. Does he use the short track make the pass? Yes, he gets him as he enters the rollers, but it sets him up to the outside. Does he move over? Great pass by Paleo Logo. Sid Putnam not happy. And it looks like our leader, Barrett, is under pressure now for the number one spot as we make the turn back down in front of the Parts Unlimited Thor Spectator area into the Scott Switchbacks. Here comes Paley and Logos on the inside of the Switchbacks, trying to make that pass headed toward the Gizmo Mods tabletop. Rodney, sick move right there. He just checked up enough. 
didn't want to follow got in there didn't get the momentum he needed but look at this as they buzz the tower back down into the pit closing the gap wants to get on the rear fender right now barrett he loses yeah, inside open again right here. We'll see how this plays out again. He almost lost the lead. Whoa. He loses the lead again. Oh, mistake. Momentum and that little mistake saving graces for the 155 of Barrett as Paley and Logos nearly making the pass on him right there. Sid Putnam still watching from back in that number three spot. As we check in with fourth, Blake Thomas making some gains back up in the fourth. Tyler Lynch a drop to uh, fifth. Seven, Henderson is up to six now. Carson Hall in seventh and eighth is Drew Embleton. Drew Dawson, Blake uh, Baker rather in ninth, rounding out the top ten. Braxton Krangenbring, but it's all eyes on this front ride up here as the battle still wages on for the first place position. Here comes Paleologos to the inside. Not enough to make the move right there. Barrett riding real defensive right now, so that's going to work uh, to his disadvantage. Bar uh, Barrett has to cover the race or basis. As we take a look at Pele Lagos, he has all the information he needs, Rodney. He can see where Barrett's gone, where Barrett's shortcomings are, knows where he's faster, but has a little bit of a gap before he can get up there and make the move. All right, starting to do the math now. Barrett coming into this moto with a three, so a three one scores him four. Paley and Logos with a one. Now he's sitting second, so a one two. He's got the win right here already, but you know, does he risk it for the biscuit? Kind of try to go one one here, try to make some statements, or is he going to ride smart? Looks like he's still putting some pressure on. As Barrett looks over, he feels that pressure, and you can see Barrett is going to try to defend that line, trying to figure out where the 90 is going. What about it, Thor? You hang in there, you go for the biscuit. I'm going for the biscuit all day. I mean, you might as well. And I think if he's going to make this pass, it's going to be down here before the finish line. If Barrett goes outside again, he's got that inside covered. Well, he's right in position where he wants to be, and uh, it almost worked for him last time around. Let's see what happens now as we drop down into the Gator Pit one final time. Last time around, Thor, I'm going to guess it was about 200 RPM that made the difference, and that's about it. Yep. Not in position to make it happen, realizing I'm sure that he's got it went one no matter what, but what a ride for William Barrett, the 155, who takes the win under pressure here at the Minios for the 250C Limited. Kyle Paley and Logos will finish up second. Blake Thomas will be third. Sid Putnam in fourth. And Tyler Lynch rounding out the top five. It will be uh, Paley, Paley and Logos with the overall. William Barrett with second. And it's that Thomas that's going to get our overall third. Yes. Thomas will be our overall third place position finisher there. Blake Thomas on the 883 coming into this one with a two. So a two and three scores him an overall score of five. Race six now off and rolling. This will be the 85, 12 to 13 limited class. Gage Dunham coming into this one with a win out of Golden, Colorado. Landon Walters, the number 10 from Lantana, Texas, a second place position finish. Briar Stasek took third, fourth going to Justin Schuff, the 55 from Mechanicsburg, Ohio in this one. Uh, also a third for Marcus Trujillo in his division race out there uh, out of Amarillo, Texas. Uh, other top finishers, Francis, uh, Francesco Capetti, he took a fifth. Brady Landon took a fifth in his division race. Uh, Chase Dasio coming into this one with a win on the 196. Sam O'Leary, a second of the 312 from Batavia, Ohio. Fourth place to Wyatt Grant. And uh, that sounds like Wes Kane might be ready to go once again with a nope, not just yet. That was pretty quick down there for a podium. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but I heard it. I heard it. Don't come on for just a second. But uh, Wyatt Grant also a fourth. Oh, that's those guys in the, in the truck. Well, there we go. <laughs> All right. So getting her sorted out. What do we got coming off the uh, Gators tail right now? Well, we got a gas gas out front. I did not catch the number once again. So that's on me. <laughs> uh, what are you getting paid for? <laughs> I ain't getting paid. Oh, okay. I'm well, racing. That, that explains a lot then. Well, you are getting paid then, man. Uh, that's that's your pay enough to be out here this week. That's for sure. But uh, there you go. I missed the numbers too, giving you a hard time. But uh, <laughs> I can tell you right now, coming down to the uh, wire here on this uh, lap of racing, this first lap, they're going to be right here under the tower. Number 100. 100, you said. That is Hudson Vigali. Vigali uh, out of New, New York took a sixth in moto number one. He's got to be riding a couple classes like most of these kids. I thought he was up there near the front in one of his motos. Yeah. 
We got a pass for second. Looks like Chase Morningham just passed for second. That was number second. 10. That was yeah, number Landon 10. Walters. That was going to say, I was oh. in, Yeah, that was Landon Walters out front. The 327 Wyatt Grant in second. Walters Check. had a second in his first moto. All right, now we'll sort it out while Wes Kane talks to our champions down on the podium. All right, my third place finisher, Blake Thomas, come on over here in the front. Congratulations, my man. Tell everybody, hold that up. Take the shot. Who do you want to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank my mom and dad, uh, family back home for helping out, the whole MTF family for helping me out the last few months. Um, I'd like to thank Jed Parsons Motorsports, Tamer, um, and everyone else who helped. Thank you very much. Congratulations out there, Blake Thomas, finishing third in our 250C Limited. Second place, Mr. Barrett, come on, hold that up there. Good job. Who do you want to thank? Thank Jesus Christ for keeping me safe. My mom, my dad, Tyler Thompson, the whole TMA crew. I'd like to thank Rise Decals for the sick graphics. They're out there working pretty good for me. Thank Meat Log Racing, doing my gym, and everybody else I forgot. Thank you for supporting me. Congratulations out there. Great job behind your bike. Pelly Yosis, your 250C champ. Hold it up. There you go. Congratulations, got the gold medal. Who do you want to thank? Uh, I got to thank my whole family in front of everybody, and then Triangle Cycles for helping me out all through the races and all through the crashes, keeping my bike together. Um, I got to thank Answer Racing. I'm looking at my fender. Make uh, Medals, 100%, Maguro, uh, Dirt Tricks. I got to thank Auburn High School for covering my absences this Monday and Tuesday, and just everybody else, thank you. Congratulations out there, Kyle Paleosis. And there's your champagne toast. Take it away up in the box, Mikey Wayne. All right, your champagne flying on the podium down there, the Yamaha podium, and of course, the dirt is flying on the racetrack, Landon Walters. Uh, Chase Moynihan, Gage Dunham now into the number three spot. He's about two and a half seconds back a second. He was pushing Trillo. Also, Wyatt Grant now in the number four spot. So Trillo's fourth. Sam O'Leary in sixth. Chase Dashio in seventh. Christian Humphrey is eighth. Briar Stekic is ninth. Quade Edwards rounds out your top ten now. I'll tell you this. Gage Dunham looks really good right now. He's catching them. He's making up ground. He's got really good lines. I don't know what happened off the start. But he's found really smooth lines these past two laps, and he's making it work. Yeah, uh, for sure. And he's coming off an injury uh, early last year, or late the, la uh, the year before. Uh, moved up a class. Uh, he's grown a good bit, got a lot more strength, got a little different program than he's followed early, Thor. And I tell you, we see the difference. You're commenting on it. Yeah, he's so, looking good. Yeah, he just made sure. a little, mi little mistake right there down the back straightaway, but he's looking good. You know, we talk a lot about the starts and getting a good start here. Right? And, and, you know, we talk about how this seems to be a really very, very fair start. And it is because everybody, seem, anyone seems to be able to get a whole shot here. What do you think the trick is here at Gatorback Cycle Park? Well, everyone, we all start here on greats. And I really like that because it's fair for everyone. It's not like dirt, who can pack it the best or that. It's all the same. You just got to sweep the dirt off. And the main thing here is reaction time. If you can get the best reaction time out of every 42 on that gate, you can pull the whole shot. And you just got to get your shifts right and everything. So it's just reaction time right now. But we got a nice three-way battle right now going on for the lead. Absolutely. As we turn our attention back up there. And, uh, again, Walters, Moynihan, Gage Dunham pushing the uh, – Pushing the pack together basically right now is what I would guess is happening. And uh, there they all go nearly in the air, all three at the same time. Walters and Moynihan in, Dunham, Marcus Trujillo now checking in in the number four spot, looking for Wyatt Grant and Sam O'Leary. See if there's any changes back there. Grant's still there, but uh, there's Chase Dash. And we got a pass to the lead. There it is. Chase Moynihan just went around on the outside. Oh, wait, he might be coming back. Oh, it's going to be close. Oh. And listen, they better get on it, Thor. Donovan's two seconds faster. Two that seconds last quicker. Last you better yeah. believe it. They better get on it because oh. the, five, the five train's coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's on the move. Mercy. Wow. Did you see that move inside right there? there? That was There's a pass through the lead. There it is. And there goes Dunham for second. Oh, yeah. He ain't wasting any no. time right now. And he gets that. He understands that you can't. Yeah. Right now, there's no way he could wait and sit in and follow for a little bit if he wanted to stay on Moynihan. 
He just passed for the lead, actually. <laughs> there he goes. He just went from third to first in two corners. Hey, that's well, how it's done right oh, there, man. Yeah, May gets him back there. Yeah. Moynihan's got a little bit better of a line down the back straightaway, but we'll see what happens right here in this corner. And Fowler gets him back. Bowser had a pass like that in Supercross, man. Third to first. Yeah. You know, just boom, made it happen, understood the track presence and position, and was able to capitalize. That's yeah. awareness, Thor. You, you get it. You're very aware of your surroundings. You have good track savvy. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Ah. Uh. So we would just been informed of something very interesting as we watch this race Rodney, unfold. We always like facts and history and tidbits and <laughs> trivia. Ooh. Yeah. Man, Moynihan's not giving up. Moynihan is not giving this position up on Dunham. Dunham may come blue and blowing through the pack, but he is matching everything that Dunham is throwing at him right now as they cross the finish line stripe for a white flag. One lap to go past that pro circuit finish line, and man, it's only intensifying more. The fire is burning brighter. I can tell you, Gage got on that rear fender right after the finish line. He was stretching that throttle. Look at him wheeling through those ruts as they drop down Gator Falls. Really almost does a man to smooth things out. Thor doesn't want to bounce the bike down in uh, there. You got to use that rear end right now when it's rough. It's just can't, can't wait the front too much. Well, let's see what happens here as they make their way to the big bottleneck here and see if they... Big drive by Moynihan. He's Gage the dropped inside. the front end. Yeah, Gage dropped the front end and lost the drive. Here he comes back around the outside. Moynihan, new leader. New leader. Here we go. But watch Gage's line right here. He takes us outside in this next corner, and he makes up a pretty good bit of gr ground. And Thor, he made a beeline for it. Man, as soon as he came over that bump, he went straight to the outside. Yep. He's been doing it every lap, and that's where he passed for the lead last lap. And believe it or not, a couple pounds makes a difference. Gage, not the heaviest guy either. Whoa, man. a little swap out there. That bike accelerates quick. Oh, yeah. But once again, Moynihan with a faster line through the sand sweeper. Yeah. Even with a little, a little, did you see that rear, rear, it kicked Absolutely around, man. He didn't slow down any. Yeah, the spider monkey, that's what we call him at training. <laughs> Chase Moynihan, he's got control over that 85. Nice. Rear end's kicking around. That's going to go with that update we got a little bit ago, Rodney. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of looked like uh, maybe he was uh, discoing in the dirt out there a little bit, like yeah. our king of disco maybe in the dirt. Maybe busting a move or yeah. something. <laughs> you recognize things like that, don't you, king? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just got word that. Uh, from DJ Judd. Yeah, from DJ Judd that we are in the uh, realm. Uh, in the We're realm the presence. of the presence of royalty. Yeah. As, uh, Absolutely. And I actually gave Judd a trophy that night, too, for oh, yeah. the best DJ of the year. Absolutely. He yeah. is. The only DJ they had all year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he, Judd got perfect attendance. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like Chase Morningham takes the win. Wow. What a what a what a what an amazing turn of events here. And what a great battle right down to the wire. I mean, this one didn't let up any. And it did not uh, did not uh, disappoint at all that right there was almost worth the price of admission chase moynihan how do you say that moynihan 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 okay uh gage dunham in second then landon walters in third marcus trujillo in fourth chase dashio in fifth wyatt grant in sixth christian humphrey in seventh brian stesic is eighth sam o'leary in the number nine spot and francesco capetti rounds out in the top ten overall at the on the podium we're going to see chase moynihan gage dunham landon walters one, two, three on the podium. All righty, they're going to go see uh, West Kane just like that. Man, you know what? Yeah, Gage Dunham. We got Moynihan in fourth. We did not have an updated, so uh, did not have an updated screen. So I apologize there. Definitely, I'm just like Ron Burgundy. I will read that <laughs> Okay, when you point at that thing and say, read it, nigga. Not a problem. That's what I'm going to do. So my apologies. Uh, Donham, Walters, and uh, Trujillo are going to make their way down to see our buddy West Cape. All righty. There you go. So, he, all right, let's head on. They're <laughs> already there. They, they knew what was. Oh, that was. Oh, I was going to say, they're already there. That was pretty doggone quick, as a matter of fact. Race seven. This is women 12 plus, I think, on the track right now, if I'm not mistaken. Correct? 
I'm just going to say it now. Kylie Stallings with the hole shot. I can. I saw that one. All right. So Stallings with the uh, hole shot. So we're going to check the rest of the field here to see who our players are out there. And Stallings obviously going to be one of those. Jordan Jarvis, uh, Lottie Van Druen also coming away with the win and fastest uh, qualifying time, I guess you could say. Kylie Stallings finished second in her uh, uh, moto out there. Also uh, finishing in a second place position in moto number one would be must be a third page. Nope. Uh, we'll just overlook it. But Hannah Hodges and Brooke Whipple finishing a couple of third place positions there. So those basically right there, there's uh, five, six girls that we could be watching oh, for sure. up front. But again, just like any class that we have out there, these second motos can yield uh, exciting things and riders that we don't expect to see up front may be getting up front. Yeah, we had a stack right over here before Gator Falls. Uh, Thor could tell us how bad that braking bump and that rut gets in there. Just a little bit off balance, that thing can send you out the front door. Sure enough, three or four girls tangled up, so it's going to be like interesting a, to see. Three Sheltimos in that one. Sucks for her. She's out early. Oh, man. So, wrapping up this first lap of racing. Already trying to settle into an order. I don't think an order, but I think they're just getting into their pace. It is still, I believe, Stallings uh, out front. Lottie Van Druren in the number two spot. Jordan Jarvis in third. Viviana Contreras in the number four spot. Mela Herrick is fifth. Brooke Whipple running in the number six spot. How about them starts Mela got For earlier this week, huh? Yeah. On Supercross. How she about that, high, man? Are you I kidding me? She did, Even she outdoors, man, got a couple great jumps. I think yeah. I've got it. I should have it shut down now. It might be a bad wire here. How, how's that? <laughs> All right. So Stallings, Vin Duran, Jarvis, Contrius, Mela Herrick, pop five as we see Stallings now under the pressure of Vladi Van Duren and right behind them is Jordan Jarvis. So a, a three way battle going on as we head onto the back section of this racetrack. And how many times have we seen this scenario unfold so far today in the second moto alone? Yeah, and that's what it's all about. That's what we expect out of these second motos, man. For sure. You know, you're, you're going to see people dig deep. And you're going to see master the lead. Look at that. She just had a better line through the sand sweeper and she took the inside away from Kylie. That, that's exactly what happened right there, man. That was all line choice right there. That was a good one leading in there. Had more momentum and able to seal the deal. Stallings not wanting to relinquish that so easily. So she's trying to keep pace. Trying different line though. That, uh, here she goes in the uh, Scott switch bags. And now in front of the spectators and right here in front of the announcer's tower now. Looks like Jarvis pulling up onto the rear fender of Stallings right now. She's going to get cagey. And if there's one thing that Jordan Jarvis is going to do, she's going to bring it to the end. She's going to sit back there, analyze what's happening, let this one come to her, and not known for making a lot of mistakes. Looks like she went outside right there before the finish. Lost a little bit of ground right there on Kylie, but she'll yeah. take that back up. Trying not to fall oh, oh, right now. Oh, Ky Kylie, mm. scary moment right there. She gets passed by Jordan. Little mistake there, and that's going to open the way. Two Yamahas now running one and two as we drop down into the uh, Gator Pit and head. That's back. what we just said about Jarvis a second ago. Wasn't following, wasn't mm -hmm. in that same line. Uh, was kind of waiting for something to happen, like she sent something. So let's see what she does with the opportunity right now. All right, heading into the bottleneck, Stallings trying to fire back on Jarvis right now, it looks like, as we now make our way back into the heart off the back of the Gator now. Jarvis protects to the inside. Stallings tries to keep the momentum up, but boy, that was a lot of real estate, Thor. Oh, that yeah. was a lot of ground, wasn't it, buddy? Yep. Well, she's trying to stretch it out now, trying to regain that uh, uh, that momentum to get back on that charge. And while the while she's fighting with Stallings right now, it looks like the 4-1 of Lonnie Van Druen is starting to pull away in this one. Uh, Van Druen turning a 159.029 last time around. Jarvis a two minute point six. So Van Druen, if she's got that clear racetrack ahead could be a major force to reckon with trying to reel in. 
Yeah, you know, a lot will come into play here as we as we move through the moto, Rodney. Uh, now they've kind of separated themselves just a bit, so vision isn't a problem. They should be able to pick whatever their lines they're comfortable with. But uh, unfortunately, Van Drun had gotten that position first. Yeah. Yep. So she's been able to pick her lines, been able to run her race for the last couple laps, and that's really going to make it tough on the number 301 of Jarvis and the number 21 of Kyle Solling. Little yeah. head shake there going down in the pit. See that, Thor? Oh, yeah. Sketchy moment right there. Stallings was riding the edge, Joe. Normally, you're going to maybe find a little smoother line out there. That's what that purpose was, Thor. Yeah, you got to try to find the smooth lines right now. Mainly when you're trying to catch, the smoother you can go, the faster you can go to. 10-4. I'll tell you, man, this women's class, really, the level of competition has always been elevated and very high, but... Uh, I think that Lottie Van Druen is bringing another step on the, the ladder. We're, we're about ready to step it up again now if she keeps bringing it like this uh, in, in the future races here in the USA. Yeah, and drop down to 157 on lap three. Yeah, with absolutely. Nobody pushing her. Now Jarvis, yeah. okay. Jarvis pushing, trying to catch her just under a 159 at a 158. Kylie down. Kylie goes down back there. She's back up, trying to get the machine fired back up, but... Uh, 21 machine going to lose more time there. The gap, uh, 11 seconds. Uh, Vivia, Viviana Contre, uh, Contreras could likely be seeing herself moving up a position. Maybe even Mayla Herrick, who's not far behind Contreras. So Stallings is going to have some ground to make up out here. As uh, we were saying about Van Drunen raising the bar and the level of competition here in women's American motocross. Yeah, Jarvis ran a good lap last time oh, around, 158.9. Uh, Stallings had that mistake. Let's see how that shakes things up as they work their way back through. Going to see some lap traffic now, guys, and that's going to add another element. And that might be just the element that Jarvis may need to bridge the gap and be able to go toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with the 401 machine. And while they get this sorted out, let's head down to the podium with Wes Kane. All right. Thank you very much. Dinner situated. Tell everybody your name and what, tell everybody your name. My name is Chase Moynihan. Who do you want to thank? My mom, dad, Jesus Christ, for keeping me safe, Scrub and Dirt, Club 57, WW, O'Neill, and everybody else. Thank you very much. Third overall, hold it up. Get the shot. Good job. Finishing up second, Chase Dashill. Come on up here, bud. Got the silver medal. Congratulations. Who do you want to thank? Lord Jesus Christ, keep me safe. My mom, my dad, my brother, my grandma, Complete Racing Solutions, Coach Rob, Flying Colors, um, Bell Helmets, uh, Factory Connection Suspension, Freeze Graphics, Fuel Clothing, O'Neill Racing, and everyone else. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Chase Dasho. Mike Burkeen, Gage Dunham, your champ. All right. Gage Dunham, hold up that medal and hold up that number one plate. You're the champ from Colorado. Gage, who do you want to thank? I want to thank Lord and God for keeping me safe. My parents are sacrificing so much. Charlie Designs, thank you, Luke and Max. I want to thank GoPro, Dunlop Tires, Dirt Bike Kids, 100% Goggles. Jen uh, from Colorado doing my graphics, uh, High Peaks FX Graphics. Also want to thank the whole Colorado Rule crew back home for doing so well. I want to thank Mitchell Gifford. Jorge Rubacava, and also Desiree Rubacava back home and my mom. Congratulations out there. There's your champagne toast. Take it away, guys. Gage Dunham, your champion. Back to you. All righty. Thanks a lot, Wes Kane. Women 12 plus. Race 7 on the track right now. Race 8 on the gate. 9 in staging and 10 in staging. Race number 11, you are on standby. You're probably saying, well, what race is number seven? Race number seven is women 12 plus on the gate right now. Masters 50 plus eight on the gate. 250 Pro Sport coming up following that. And then we've got 250B Limited. So 250 Pro Sport in staging, 250B Limited in staging. Masters 50 plus on the gate right now. Lottie Van Drunen taking the win. Jordan Jarvis checking in just 3.8 seconds back. We got ourselves a great women's 12-plus rivalry building amongst these three ladies now. Kylie Stallings checking in in the number three spot. 
after the little get, uh, tip over there. 17 seconds basically back in the number three spot, but wow, what, what, a, what a ride, what a battle. Viviana Contreras in the number four spot. Mayla Herrick in fifth, looking for Brooke Whipple in sixth. Seventh would be uh, China Greenwell, Shelby Rowland, and Myla Baltic. And how are we going to fare in the overall? I believe that we're going to have uh, Lottie Van Drunen taking the win, Jarvis in second, and Stallings third overall. You are absolutely correct. As your top three on the podium, going to see West Kane in just a bit as we are getting ready for the next gate to drop. Now, this is race number eight, about to leave the gate right now, the Masters 50 plus class. Well, the gate is down. Masters 50 plus class on the way in. Mike Brown going to be the one to beat in this one. That doesn't leave uh, much question, of course. John Gruy taking a second there in uh, Moto One out of Rockford, Michigan on the KTM. Third place position to our friend Gregory Paymart, Frenchy. By the way, thanks uh, for the hookup on the Moto Kicks, the MKS Moto Kicks. He and James taking care of folks down there, and uh, that was your top three. We also saw Barry Karsten in fourth place position, and it was James Max rounding out the top five. What do we see out there in the early part of this moto lap number one? Watch it on screen. I'm sure you guessed it. The number three machine of Mike Brown getting the whole shot out there. Looking to make quick work of this one. Frenchy there in the second spot. And just behind him, though, is John Gruy. Look for Gruy to make the push right here because these guys have been going at it. They've been going out all weekend. I believe Frenchy, he really wants to beat Gruy. So let's see what happens right here. If he can stay in front of Gruy or if Gruy can make the push as they make through the way through the rollers. Yeah, I think uh, probably uh, Carson is in the same boat. He hasn't got the best of starts and had to work his way up through. And Supercross wasn't as good to him as I'm sure what he would like. So hoping to redeem himself out here on the uh, outdoors, so to speak. And as they are head to head and basically going toe to toe out here, Karsten coming into this one, I think, didn't I say with a fourth place position finish, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, the 31 Suzuki RM Army backed rider. So with this finish would definitely better his overall. Yeah, I'm watching him right now. He's making a push. He wants to catch up to Gruy and Paymar because Paymar and Gruy are getting a little bit of battle yeah. right now. And that might even open the door up for him. Yeah, that's opening it up. That gap starting to open up between that third and fourth place positions there. Brown is through. Paymar is through. Gruy. Karsten now in fourth. I don't think that's the way they finished in the first moto. I think so too. I think you're right. So they fall in the pecking order. 311 of Gabe Godardo, seventh place finish from Moto One. He opens up in a fifth place position. And actually, Paymar, he got a third that first moto, so he's looking to better himself here in the oh. two position, try to get a second overall and keep Gruy behind him. But I'll tell you what, I'm watching Gruy right now, and it looks like Carson definitely has started reeling Gruy. And if there's anybody Carson wants to be, this is the number 70 of John Gruy. Absolutely. <laughs> Watch it now as they make their way through that Dunlop downhill. Those two have definitely been going at it. <laughs> toe to toe for the last several seasons yeah, probably, probably as long as I've been alive but I'm, I'm probably but uh, more more importantly probably the last decade or so and uh, head down to the podium once again to celebrate our women 12 plus and what an amazing uh, battle we had there with West King all right Kylie Stallings coming up here women 12 and up gonna finish up third who do you want to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank my mom and dad, Mike Turner, over here, Rainer, everyone from Fox, Monster, Monster Mike, uh, Dunlop, Rob Fox from Dunlop, Maximus, ETI, FMF, uh, everybody that's helped me out get here. It's been a it's been a struggle. Been on the bike for about a week from an injury, but you know, getting that endurance back up, and we're gonna come back stronger. So, congratulations on your third, Jordan Jardis, Double J, second overall, women 12 and up. Valiant effort out there. Congratulations on your second. Uh, thank you very much. It was a, it was an interesting race. We all three of us were super close, bumping and banging in the first turn. But uh, I thought Kylie was going to kill me there for a second when she made that mistake back in the corner. But it was a good race. Um, 
We were just all running so, so close to lap times, it was really hard to close any of the gaps, but it was a good race. Track was gnarly. It's cool to have her over here. Uh, you know, hopefully we can have more, or, you know, maybe we can go up there next time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have a lot of people helping me out this year, especially Yamaha, Triangle Cycles, Rock Rivers, Donnie Lewis from Yamaha. I've uh, been having some issues with, with my 450 and stuff like that. They've been putting a lot of work in to help me get that fixed, but they helped me get here. My mom, my dad, uh, Riding on the Edge, Maxis, Scott, Atlas, um, Recluse, FMF, everyone that's helped me out this year, thank you very much. It's been an odd year, but it's about to be a, an even better one next year. We're going to go for some, uh, some new things, and it's going to be a great year. Congratulations out there on your second. Mike Burkeen with the champ all the way in from the Netherlands, Lodi van Duren. Congratulations. Who would you like to thank? Uh, thanks to NSA Yamaha Racing, uh, Monster Energy, Fox, uh, my mom, my dad, uh, Yamaha Euro, my brothers, and everybody who helped me to get up here and to get to race in America. Congratulations. Hold that medal up one more time. Hold the medal up. There's your champ, women's 12 and up. Thank you, guys. Back to you to this pro sport race. <laughs> it seems like the pro sport race out there right now. This is the Masters 50 plus class. Mike Brown, definitely a pro sport rider out there leading it out, age 52 years old. So it's impressive just to watch this man work out here at the number three KTM. Just out there having some fun. We're looking for our second and third place riders. We see Gregory Paymar in second. He's a 50 year old in the second place position in Gruy. Just got an update from Megawatt. He is uh, 57 years old. That is pretty impressive right there. And here they come, they're battling as they make their way over the gizmo jump. It is Gruy. Chasing down Frenchie Gregory Paymar to that MKS ride. But Frenchie, man, he's doing great. He is fighting him off in that second place like a little bulldog out there, a little French bulldog <laughs> in that second place position. Gruy still in third. Here comes Carson, your fourth place rider. So I see what's going on there. Frenchie is one of the young guns in the class at 50 years old. He's ready to take and swap the floor with the rest of these boys. That's the goal, man. That's the goal. <laughs> I'll tell you about the 52 year old machine, Mike Brown. He is a machine. He is. He really is. And you know, I, I do want to point out, I, I've been watching uh, Greg Paymart run for quite some time. I, I first acquainted with him in uh, Pennsylvania's District 5, I think D5, back years ago in the early. 2000s, mid, you know, like 2005, 2006, probably around that time, it seems like maybe. And then watching him at the Nationals and stuff. But I got to say, this guy has gotten faster over the years, and he's become more uh, more competitive with these uh, uh, at these races each and every time. And this year, I'm pretty stoked for the guy. He's really had some stellar rides this year. And running in second place right now behind D. Mike Brown is uh, one uh, – pretty uh, uh, prestigious place to be riding right now, I think. Uh, he's got only about one second over John Gruy, Barry Karsten, another 1.4 back behind that. So basically, we're looking at what could be a three-way battle, theoretically, for the number two spot. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting, Rodney. As you say, Gregory Paymont, French doing a great job there, holding on number two position. And I think French this moto is riding harder than I've ever seen him ride out here on the racetrack. He is really working the lines out there and trying to make something happen here. Well, I, I noticed that even in Supercross, and, and I agree wholeheartedly with you on that uh, observation, Dean, as we're watching our leaders make their way around, nearing yet a, another lap complete here soon. Uh, three laps down on this, and Mike Brown does check in now. It does look like Gregory Primar maybe got off the leash for a little bit. Uh, you know who's not off the leash? That's John Gruy, because here <laughs> comes Barry Carson. Carson making some moves up into the mix out there, and it's RM Army Suzuki. So 30 seconds was the lead last time around. We're in some lap traffic. Gruy might be able to capitalize. Ooh, yeah, man, I tell you, you're right. He does look like a bulldog. He is bulldogging that bike down into that uh, gator pit right now. Blue flags are waving everywhere as the battle for second place threads the needle Whoa. between the lap traffic. <laughs> Paymar pulls the trigger. I do want to say the blue flag and the white flag. White flag coming out. One more to go for these guys. Absolutely. So here. So now here comes Gruy. Gruy is far, far from over, and here comes Barry Carson. See, don't count Barry out. He finally made his way through the lap traffic, and now he's starting to reel these guys in. Whoa, Looks like look at that Suzuki pulling up out of the pit wow, there. Wow, it hooked up. Yeah, it did. I believe Barry Carson, also one of those Dunlop riders out there, so make sure you check him out. Get a Dunlop hooked up on your tires so you can grip it and rip it out here on the track Man, today. Barry's making some major gains through here as well. Oh, Barry's all over the rear wheel of him now. Man, he's got some steam rolling. 
on race tv watching mike brown but out on the track right now we're watching a good battle there we go a little split screen action that's what we want to see oh, oh carson almost making the move right there so now drew has got to play defense that's allowing paymark mm. to get away here what a battle oh Oh yeah, starting to get a little rough back there. You yeah. see Mary Carson pull that front end up really over those bumps. And I'll tell you what, as soon as I thought Paymart was getting away, I was wrong. Look out through the bullets now. They're all three in the rollers at the same time. <laughs> That's what I said. Uh, we were going to have ourselves a three-way battle for the second place position as uh, uh, you know that uh, it, that Rui's just going to grip it and rip it with that pressure coming in from him behind on Karsten and Karsten we've seen what he's doing making some major gains out there and in doing so it, it's only putting that pressure on the 444 of Paymart now as he makes the hard left hand turn or the easy gliding head there too. Go, here we go. It's gonna go down to the wire. It's gonna get good. What's gonna happen? He's trying to thread the needle to the inside, trying to get around Paymart. Not gonna happen just yet. Mike Browns came through. He checks in, takes the win. But here's the battle watching on screen right now is Paymart and Drewy go up the hill. Yeah. Wow. Look at that, like he hey. won the grand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right there. Paymart gonna get second overall with that oh, right there. That was awesome, man. Gregory Paymart taking second there. What a battle with Drewy right down to the wire. Carson will finish up in the number three spot. What does that do for the That's overall? Exactly how the overall is gonna be. Mike Brown's gonna take the win. Gregory Paymart gonna take second. John Drewy gonna finish up on the podium in third overall. Wow. Wow, wow. Somebody slap a high five for Frenchie from us all up here in the tower, man. What a uh, what a stellar ride there. And saw that coming over on the uh, Supercross side of things. I'm telling you, folks. Car goes sideways as our next gate drop is down in its race number nine off and rolling now. The 250 Pro Sport. Wonder if they can top that one. <laughs> Boy, we got a good one shaping up right here, right now. It looks like possibly the number 27 of Yannick with the whole shot out there. So awesome ride for Yannick. Revan Gord, he's been doing great with the starts. He finds himself in second, but he's going to quickly get passed up by the number 44, Noah Smurden. Smurden going to move into number two position. Here they come up over the first step up and the second step up. Pick him up now. Yannick going to take control. Like you said, he got a great jump. Now he goes into that left-hander. Coming down the hill is going to be critical, Dean. Everybody normally going to the outside. Is he going to be able to carry the speed? Yes, he is. As he works his way out, that's exactly what he's going to do. A bunch of riders think the inside might be the answer. I don't see it that way. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, Drew Adams making some uh, uh, moves up through the pack again. Not the best of starts, but not the worst of starts this time as he's worked his way up behind Smurd and now as they drop onto the Gators tail. He's making some major gains very quickly here. Yeah, and it may make sense because Smurd and he was out there in the 1624 class. Class. Most of these guys up here in the top five right now, they don't ride that 1624 class since they haven't seen the track yet today. Yeah, good point. It looks totally different than the last time they rode the track. And to Rodney's credit, Drew Adams on the move right now, not back in that seventh and eighth place. Got a good mm -hmm. drop off the gate. Has a lot of room to work up here. He has a lot of lines to choose from. And here he goes right to the inside. He's going to go to the outside on this split lane. Can he make it work? Gives up just a little bit of room, but he's testing the waters. Yeah, he's definitely touching the waters right now. Like you said, this is probably one of the better starts that Drew Adams got in all week, and he's making it happen yeah. right here. So we watch Yannick, Smurden, Adams one by the tower. And then it looks like we got the number 174 machine, I believe. That is Trevor Kolomoff. I'm sorry, he's in the ah. position behind Revan Gordon right now, making some moves. But where is the 263 machine? Anybody got eyes on Avery Long? There he is, I believe, out in the sixth place position. Wow. No, seventh place position for that first lap. So Avery Long got a lot of moves to make out here. Yeah, and that's bad news because you give Yannick, Smeard, and Adam uh, that kind of head start. You give them that kind of room to work with. Already you see those guys start to separate themselves just a bit. But Adam and Smeard, they're going to get in a battle here. That's going to give Yannick a little breathing room. Well, the 251st board has uh, several laps and a little time to get things sorted out. But these guys, the pace they're running up front with Yannick, Smeard, and uh, Adams call up uh, Gordon those top five alone really uh, got a great pace going so long is going to have his work cut out for him if he can catch the tail into that group will he be able to pass up through it yeah there's a lot of stuff to think about and uh, really analyze out there right now can Revin Gordon up just like that we're going to hand it away to West Kane so he can hook us up on the podium interview thank you very much John Gruy finishing third in the Masters 55 50 plus who do you want to thank uh, Team Babbitts, um, Fox Gear, FMF, TKL Works, uh, TCD, Dunlop Tires, Tamer Hole Shot Devices, um, Twin Air, 
um, Moto Hose, and man, uh, everybody that helps me, I really appreciate it a lot. Thank you guys. John Gruy finished up third. Frenchie, Mr. Palmar, come on up here. You got the medal. Show them your medal. Who do you want to thank? You know, everybody at the MKS compound, you know, uh, Andy White's here, so I got to say, he speaks French. I've been talking for, with him for like seven years, and I just found out he speaks French too, so. Uh, thanks to FXR, you know, Crossroad Power Sport, uh, the FMF, Tamer Racing, also, did you see my start today? To the Cowie, Tim Green at Cowie, you know, uh, Boysen, Camp Original for my graphics, and uh, VP uh, Bertucci, um, performance and VP just jump, jump on board. Uh, this week they helped me out. I was struggling a lot with suspension and uh, they work overnight on the bike and it really paid off. Uh, you know, so uh, thanks to Fred, Vatucci and Stefan, they're awesome. And uh, where did I forget? I don't know. My girlfriend, of course, Shannon, Jim, at the MKS Cup. And remember, guys, we're running 30% off MKS product. Get your shoes, get your socks. I know your socks are wet. Come and get some socks. We'll blow them out. Make me an offer. I'll not, I will not say no. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Frenchy. Thanks for coming out. Take a breath of air. All right, Michael Brown. Mike Brown, right there, your champ. Congratulations out there, Mike Brown. Who do you want to thank? Uh, again, Mun Racing, FXR Mill, Andy, Brad, guys, Jay, and Big Dan from uh, Mun Racing, Dunlop Tires, and, you know, everybody's still behind the sport. You know, it's a great sport for everybody, and everybody knows that when they come here all week. It's a family sport. We're all one big family, and it's just nice to be here. And you, Wes, Wes, and, um, you know, all the guys putting this on, you know, Wayne Kern, and their family. It's been good. I've been around for a long time here and I uh, appreciate everything. Thank you, Michael Brown. Back to you guys. We got a pro sport race on the track. Yes, we do. We got a good pro sport race. Watching Drew Adams. He's trying to pounce on Noah Smurden. He's finally making the move, and as he's making that move, Smurden slipped up. So Smurden going to lose not one, but a couple positions out there on the track right now as Christian Yannick is under fire by the number 300. A little Debbie. That is Drew Adams making some moves out there. Trevor Call up in the fourth spot. Sorry, third spot. Fourth spot now is the 263 AB Long, and then behind him is the number 44 machine. Almost United. identical times for Yannick and Adams. Uh, last time around, 150.5 to a 150.2. Yannick just turns a 149.3. Adams a 150.0. Gap 2.8 this time around. Collop gets the green light. He's up one position. Avery Long now into fourth. He turns a 150 as well. So really tight in those top four. Noah Smith, as you said, gave up a couple spots back into the number five spot. Revan Gordon in six. Rodrigo Borges, seven spot. Dylan Rempel rides in eighth, while Colin Allen circulates in ninth. Jackson Pascal will round out our top ten. Well, interestingly, Avery Long able to make it to that top five into a fourth place position. You look at the big picture right now, he's about six seconds out of first place. Uh, Drew Adams took a win in uh, in uh, the first moto out here, so he wants to try to position himself out there to uh, try and challenge for that. But it's going to be tough as Adams is uh, right now trying to trace down that Yannick. Yannick, uh, the 27 machine, took a fourth place position finish in moto number one. And uh, we'll see what happens. Call up the 174 machine. Took a second. So there there you go. There's an idea of who's the players out here. Rodney, it's just tough to make up time. You know, Yannick 149.3, Adams 150.0, 150.6 for Collip. When you're running almost identical times, that it is so difficult, Rodney. That's exactly what I was thinking. You know, and long? Just, yeah. Long, I mean, you're looking at 150.0, 150.6, 150.2, that's, and that's second, third, and fourth place positions right now. Yannick 2.8 seconds ahead last time around. And as we look at it this time around, really nothing gained, maybe a little more lost. Let's see what it's checking in. A 149.5. Christian Yannick is really rolling rails. At 149.5, two almost identical lap times. 2.8 is still the difference. That's still the cap, Rodney. That's incredible. It is. Man. <laughs> Avery Long, 4.9 seconds back. And uh, look at that. 149.9 for him. They're, I mean, they're all matching each other's times basically within just a few tenths of each other. And those tenths add up obviously over time, but wow, very closely related on the talent right now. Dean, I call that the, the ability to answer. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's exact, each of those guys, 
realize that and they stepped it up just enough and one second might not seem a lot, a lot Dean it's you know as well as I do right yeah you better believe it especially for a 20 minute voting you know because it adds right. up probably be doing upwards of 10 11 laps that one second becomes 10 11 seconds and that's breathing room yeah that's what okay you call that's for sure yeah for sure and kind of out there, obviously not in the battle for the overall, but like we've seen Avery Long first moto, but this is a class he DNF that first moto, so he's just out there going for it. What's interesting, when we take a look at the current running order, Drew Adams actually in position, in contention for the championship yeah. for that first and second. Yannick, he's leading right now, but a fourth in that first moto that could be the difference right now. Adams doesn't have to do anything. Adams doesn't have to make a pass. He has to keep it on two wheels and bring that thing home. Is that his style? Not really. You see him matching time for time, lap for lap with Yannick. Well, I think we're about to get the halfway point for Yannick this time around as they drop down into the gator pit once again. Final turn on the right hand. Yes, the cross flags are coming out. So uh, both Yannick Adams and uh, now Avery Long dropping down into the gator oh. pit. Oh, we have one rider going down right there in front of Smyrna. Was that Trevor Collip having some issues down there? I think that was Collip. Holy cow, he cross rutted on that landing. Yeah, I, never, I haven't seen a cross like that in a long time. Yeah, I see his helmet. Was that him? I believe it was. Yes, he's back up and going again. You see Smyrna come across the line there. It was almost... Oh, I didn't mean to step in, okay. but, but it blew exactly. me away. It was almost slow motion. It was when we watched that thing play out, uh, it was like somebody hit the slow motion button. Yeah. So it tells you he's probably trying to save himself is what made it look so slow motion. So he probably did almost <laughs> save it, then all of a sudden... Before he right, did it, yeah. 150.158 for Yannick Adams, 150.378. Avery Long, 150.601. Three seconds now the gap between first and second, and five seconds now the gap between second and third. Yeah, so the big picture, Rodney, 2.8 to 3.0. So that's, yeah. that's no more... Yeah, that's no more than just holding the throttle on Dean in one yeah, corner. And, and Meg, while you touch on this, this is not Drew Adams' style, you know, to just take second place. But right. he knows he's in a position. He's a championship. He's training at the dog pound. Yep. And you yep. know those guys are all about maturity, and that's what he's showing right now. Uh, yeah, maturity. And I can tell you this. We would much rather see a guy go 1-2 uh, and hang the number one plate on the wall than go 1 DNF yeah. because exactly. he was trying to get 1-1. One, one. Right. Okay, and I understand that if, if it arises... If he makes a good move, he pulls up shot, on the rear fender. Yeah, you know what I mean? You get a shot, like you said, you take it. But the long game is where it's won here at the Mini Olympics. No 10-foot uh, putt's going to get it done for you. You have to look at the long <laughs> game. No doubt about it. Maybe even pick up a wedge there to pull it up to the green. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, plus try to pull up to the green again is Drew Adams and Christian Yank is leaving this without doing a great job out of front. He's been doing a great job this whole moto. Since the start of yeah, the er, er, early lead and it did exactly what he wanted to do. Uh, got out to control, got just enough of a gap where he doesn't hear that bike in his, uh, in his ear. He doesn't see a front tire and he can concentrate on his race and race forward. Again, Rodney, take a look at the lap times. One Absolutely insane. 150.1. Long drops to a 154. He's now 10 seconds basically behind. Noah Smurden might get a breath of fresh air here. This could get interesting for the 44 KTM rider from Cairo, Georgia. If he smells blood in the water, we'll see what happens. I agree. You know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I think he's seeing it. I, I think he's smelling it out right there as they head up over the, uh, the Gator now into the Gator's back. Those step-ups there now and into the bottleneck section. Man, that ground's closing up quick. And Smurden with a pretty good lead now. Come to lead over Revan Gordon, but Gordon, he's the man under attack by the rider that went down, the 174 Trevor Collip. So look for Collip to make one move at least before this one's over. Yeah, he's put some good laps in. He's found some speed, found some good lines. Guys, I tell you, it's not it's not super fast right now, but Noah Smurden, he's on the trail. Yeah, there's no <laughs> question about it. You, hey, you never count the number 44 out, but Never, ever, ever. I'm going to count people out. I'm going to say it right now. I just looked over, seen Racer TV, and I'll tell you what, the number 300, it looks like he's putting the hammer down with those halfway flags to come out. So I want to yeah. see what's going to happen as they come through. Yeah, we were up to 3.1 a second ago. Now back to 2.8, Rodney. It's just been a seesaw with that gap. I think it's going to be closer than that now. Yannick, I think, maybe senses a sense of, has a sense of urgency about to uh, shape up there as look. Yeah, much we're probably yeah. a second now, maybe even tighter once they get that drive out of this uh, 
uh, out of this bottom headed toward the pro circuit finish line. We'll see what happens at the conclusion of lap number seven. Now there's Yannick. Now that opened up as they dropped down. They were a little tighter, but it looks like Yannick got a great drive out of there. 150.9, 152.1, so a little over a second faster. 1.6 seconds was the difference at the finish line. And I don't know if you guys seen it, but going down into the pit, Avery Long and Smurden, look at him right now, Smurden. Like you said, he was sniffing it out. He wants to get around Avery Long. You know he does. He's got a good pace going. He's carrying that speed right now. And he's basically getting held up. You know, it's just basically uh, slowing his progress. Needs to make that move. Here they go. And also, Colin need to make a move out there. This is a battle for overall. This is podium battle we're talking about right now on the track. I'm going to end up with sore neck right now, trying to figure out which one of these battles to watch as Adams <laughs> is rolling up on Yannick right now as they head out back and over the top of the Gators back and through the uh, bottlenecks there. What happened? Did we lose one up the top here? Oh, that's Smurden, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Smurden went yep. down. Yep, so Smurden, I was going to say. So. I'm going to say he didn't go down. That's probably some bike issues there on that first step up. Yeah, he's just sitting there on his bike. So tough break for him, but Yannick and Adams still got it going on right now. That's a shame because he was under full power at the bottom of that hill, Rodney. Heartbreaker for sure. Yannick on the inside. Look how close Drew Adams is now. And that is a tough break because I was just over here at Mega while looking at the overall scores, and he was on a podium position there. Yep. So really going to throw him off. Yep, for sure. Here comes Yannick now. Here comes Adams over the tabletop and uh, right in front of the. Yamaha announcers tower now. Let's see what's it look like as we're dropping down. They were oh. about this distance dropping in a lap ago. We'll see what happens as they get the drive out of there. Does Yannick get the better drive? And he, he got a good drive down into there, that's for sure. And you know, again, it looks like Drew hung that front end up just a touch and a bump down there. Maybe got on a little heavy on the front brake. Well, but he, didn't make that clean turn as, as well, did he, Rodney? No, no, not at all. 151, 150.5, so about six tenths of a difference. So we're 1.1 1 .1 on the difference between these two at timing and scoring. But, you know, physically, we're seeing it close up even more than that as we head over and back up on top of the gator now. This, yeah. uh, again, right here, these, the, over this step up into this 180 right here, this is where it gets exciting. And look, again, Adams dives in hard. Let's see if he can drive out hard. They're driving out hard right now. And I'm watching Ryan Holiday. He's watching out the window over there. And I wonder what he's thinking right now. Does he want Drew to make this move and take this uh, win right here and go 1 1 on the day? Or is he okay with Christian Yannick, you know, sh sharing a little bit of love out there? Absolutely. That's uh, uh, Holiday is always about the team, always about the brand and relationships, making sure these guys understand that they represent the company together. They're here to do it. Uh, a job uh, and and the job is win but I have to tell you uh, he gives equal support to everybody and wants to make sure that uh, the green brand is covered absolutely they got it covered right now run of one and two also overall gonna run one and two Drew Adams Christian Yannick as you see Trevor call up he is the man on a move right now he moves up to a third overall in the tally last time through lap number eight Christian Yannick Drew Adams Avery Long Trevor Collip Revan Gordon Colin Allen Dylan Rimble Jesse Wessel Rodrigo Borges and an artist spot running on top of him that's going to be Wyatt Crete down into the gator pit one more time Christian Yannick seeming to be a, not nearly as under as much fire and pressure this time even though the distance not much difference I don't think uh, white flag is out this time around I think that uh, Adams is pretty much settled he he's satisfied with what's going on here 1.6 he drops to 152.6 that time around he knows no sense in pushing it we've got the win made and uh, we've got a big enough gap 21 seconds back to Avery Long for third place right now and I think the other statement is he is absolutely Drew has absolutely matched Janik's time Take a look at best laps. Go that next column over, Rodney. Read <laughs> that best lap. 149.3 for Yannick, 149.5 for Adam. Wow. Yeah. So if you want to talk about evenly matched, if you want to talk about an, uh, an equal pace, it doesn't get much more equal than that. And you said it yourself. No, no. No uh, advantage to anybody no. out there in the Kawasaki Team Green. Right. You guys race for the same package. Absolutely. The same lap time. Yes. So. That's yes. awesome to see there by the Team Green pits. And, and you know what? That's a that's a credit to Team Green. That Absolutely. equipment set up. They've got their riders prepared. And uh, again, 
Ryan Holiday has his fingers in all the aspects of that stuff, and that's what the people in Greenville need to be thankful for. As you watch Christian Yannick now lead out Drew Adams. They made their way through the rollers and make their way up to the store. Parts are limited and spectating area. Looks like Yannick actually has pulled away a little bit, you know, just putting on cruise control right now in front of Drew Adams. Adams is coming, though, in that number two position. But white flag lap, you know, take it. You got the championship right there in your back pocket. And I think Drew Adams is going to take it home now and give Christian Yannick this win. I say give. I shouldn't say give it all because Yannick has been working hard this whole moto. There's nothing given, but I'll tell you what. Give a round of applause. It is Christian Yannick getting the win. Taking second, and the championship is going to be the number 300 machine of Drew Adams. Yannick going to finish up second overall. We're still waiting to see what happens here with third overall as we're waiting for our third-place finisher to make his way up. And third, running at your top three, making his way up to the finish line as we speak. Actually, making his way back down in before the finish line because these guys were totally on the level out there. As they had 25 seconds last time through, it looks like that's going to extend this time through as A.B. Long comes through to take that third place position. And round out your top three here in motor number two of the 2 Pro Sport class. And behind A.B. Long, we're looking for our fourth place rider to make his way up. So Yannick, Adams, Long, and then uh, Colin finishing fourth. That's the way they were at the uh, end there. We'll be uh, take, heading over a top three overall uh, in just a moment. Uh, that is race number nine. Now we go to race number 10. 11 rolling to the gate. Race number 12, you're moving up. Number 13, you're moving up. And race number 14, you're now open for staging. Oh, man. Tell us about it. Tell us about it, Dean. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry. You were fixated on the Wow. Track, he just kind of froze he there. He was for fixated his, on yeah. it. Man, yeah. I see sure. Kate Dunn actually going down to the beginning of this one, but we'll get right. to that later. Out of the podium, we're going to see Drew Adams taking the championship in the 2 Pro Sport Clash. Christian Yannick finished up second and third overall. It is going to be Trevor Collins. So awesome ride for Collins after making that mistake out there. Still getting third overall on the podium. Absolutely great ride by Collum. Able to put himself in great shape. Avery Long, of course, uh, just not faring so well in moto number one. Come out with a third place in moto number two. Not enough to get him on the podium. All right, oil him up a little bit so he don't freeze up like that. Anyway. <laughs> I, he looked like he was in shock. I just, well, I see one of our top riders go down to the start. Right, right yeah, the exactly. Of Caden got to go to go to work now. Yes. Uh, all righty, Landon Gordon coming into this one with a win on the number 18 uh, Cali out of uh, Marietta, California. Caden Dudney. Uh, out of Athens, Texas, also a Monster Energy Kawasaki Pro Circuit rider running. Uh, he put, took a win in his class, yep. uh, or in his division, I guess I should say. Grayson Fair coming in with a second place position finish. Landon Gibson, the 723 Husky rider, also a second place position finish. Noah Stevens, the number 97, was the third place position finisher in his uh, Moto One race. And uh, right now, as we're wrapping up this first lap, we've got that number uh, 18, Landon Gordon. The Team Green Kawasaki Monster Energy Alpine Star Dunlop Tires back rider in the number one spot as he checks in. Green Whoa. flags away, but man, it's a drag race there in the second spot. Oh, yeah, Whoa. Stevens and Robbins literally hit the finish line what? side by side. You look at time to scoring 0.04 seconds behind Stevens is Clark Robbins, but I think things are going to change here shortly. As we've seen Robbins with a crafty maneuver, he's going to wheel in and get to the inside of Stevens. So Robbins now oh, oh, oh. Spot, taking the outside line and gaining a little bit more ground on him. Big move right there, Dean. Just lifted the front wheel over all those bumps. Yeah. Sat it down for Gator Falls. Man, got a great drive. Just enough. Take one out of Jet Lawrence. Supposed to do that all the time out there in the outdoor motocross. But Noah Stevens is not done. He's like, watch this. He dives to the inside. He's going to make a pass back on Clark Robbins. What a tall statement that was right there for Noah Stevens. Stevens put himself in the picture. Listen, Stevens did that with feet up right yeah. there. He was on the gas, used a little body position, came through their feet up, got that position back. Yeah, made it happen out there for sure as we're waiting to see it. The rest of our riders out there, I'll give you a top 10 rundown for number one, Landon Gordon, our leader. But before I do that, we're going to send it to West Cam on the podium. Trevor, call up down here. Congratulations. Third on the box. Excuse me. Third on the box. Trevor, call up. Too many pro sport. Who do you want to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank Tyloo Honda, Hoosier Tires, Renan 60, EKS. 
rival suspension. He had my bike working good all week. Um, I'd like to thank my mom and dad, SSR, and everyone who's been helping me out. Thank you. Congratulations out there. Great job. Put your hands together. Trevor Kolick will finish up third in our pro sport division. Christian Yannick. Great start out there, wire to wire, second overall. Who would you like to thank? Uh, my mom, my dad, Junior Group Safe, the whole Monster Energy team, Green Kawasaki Pro Circuit team. I want to thank Mario for helping me out, uh, Ryan Holiday, the whole Fox crew, Matt Mora, uh, the whole, uh, Mike Jackoff, Renthal, Maxima, my sisters, uh, uh, the wrist race guy. Never forgot, thank you. Congratulations out there, Christian Yannick. Whole shot, Moto win. Drew Adams, smooth and consistent. Taking your championship here. Hold that number one plate up. Gold medal, Drew Adams. Congratulations out there. Job well done. Who do you want to thank? Uh, my mom, dad, Jesus for keeping all the dirt bike riders safe. Uh, Monster Energy, Team Marine Pro Circuit, Kawasaki. Uh, Matt Moore from Fox, all them guys. Uh, my trainer, Michael Byrne, the Dog Pound. Uh, EVS hooking me up. Uh, Oakley, Maximo, Renthal, and uh, my mechanic, Derek, and uh, anyone else that supports me, a uh, huge thanks to. Congratulations out there. Champagne toast, there he is, Drew Adams, guys, take it away. Congratulations to you, Drew Adams. Hello and welcome, 250B Limited, Landon Gordon doing his thing out in front, two laps into it on the Cowie, Clark Robbins in the two spot. Noah Stevens in third place, the Diesel. Diesel Thomas in fourth. Uh, Adler Cottle in the number five position. Bobby Gravel, Gravel in sixth place. Riley Boosie in seventh. Eighth place, Logan Moreberg. Ninth is Reese Wheaton. Landon Gibson rounds out your top ten. But he's on the move. That's right. There he goes. The 18 of Landon Gordon. Down into the Gator Pit. Ooh, yeah, we like it. 62 and 97. That's Clark Robbins getting all the smoke right now from Noah Stevens. As Stevens tries to set him up. And they'll come in one or two and three. And what's the gap? Doesn't matter. Throw a blanket over them. They're right there. They're in the fight. Landon Gordon trying to check out to Laterville out in front. Robbins and Stevens. That's what we're watching. The battle for second. 250B limited. Right now it's Robbins in front of Stevens. Stevens had a couple of opportunities last lap around. If it were to end right now, it'd be Gordon, Robbins, and Stevens. How they stand on the track is how they would stand in the overall. Clark Robbins, a fourth place finish in Moto One. Stevens with a third. He'd go 3 3. And Robbins with a 4 2 would be enough for second. Mercy sakes alive, Landon Gordon on a mission right now. Not sure anybody's going to challenge him. It's still early. Plenty of race left, but it's Robbins in the two spots. Stevens, show some love to the guys behind him while we watch that battle unfold on Racer TV. Diesel Thomas in fourth. And Adler Cottle in the number five spot. Continuing to watch the battle between Robbins and Stevens. Robbins a little bit of a gap now. Trying to stretch it out a little bit. And Stevens seems to have checked up. Race number 10 on the track. 250B limited. Don't blink, you'll miss them. There goes the 18, Landon Gordon in the one spot. Clark Robbins still in second. Noah Stevens still a shadow. Stevens around the outside trying to get a good drive down into the Gator Pit. Gordon through for another lap completed. Welcome back, Megawatt Matt Watson. Well, never really left the farm, but you didn't, uh, took, you a didn't little trip, took a little trip inside the tower here. That's okay. That's okay. A tour to tower, if you will. Absolutely. Business to tend to up here, and uh, Gordon tended to business as usual. Robbins, he's trying to clock in. He needs to go to work as well. Steven said, hey, don't forget about me, Megawatt. The number 97 is still in the house. Yeah, Stevens has had some opportunities 
around clock Clark Robbins unable to make anything stick and it looks almost like he's kind of regroup back there okay let's let's catch my breath and see if I can make another run at him Adler Cottle on that Kawasaki back in fourth he's been in a little bit of a battle with uh, diesel Thomas here he is on racer TV right there 524 of diesel Thomas now inching his way toward him diesel should just the, the diesel should just mount boxing gloves where his grips Absolutely. are because the guy's in a fight man every time yep. he's on the track dude that guy gets after it he does they call him the 7-3 i don't think they call him that they don't yeah i've never really but, heard uh, that so yeah when you've got a nickname like these i'll even just throw it out there we the get the raw that one. no no even in the feature film no not even in the feature film <laughs> but gordon out there showing them the 50 states right now i can tell you that he's bringing the base i don't think that's a thing uh, it is now states. They said it on racer TV It is now they said it on racer TV. We're gonna use it up and wear it out by the end of the weekend folks Showing them the all 50 states Landon Gordon out in front <laughs> There's one person maybe three out there that understand the reference and the rest of everybody's going what on earth are they trying to make a thing? But they'll figure it out 62 Clark Robbins in the two spot Noah Stevens Boys in third, but for how much longer? Adler Cottle all over him. Diesel Thomas not far behind him. Little dab right there. Goes back to work. Here we go. Five laps in now. Landon Gordon. Little look over the shoulder right there. Might be thinking, where the heck are you guys? Let's go. Let's go. That's all right. Landon Gordon trying to get the job done with a 1-1. Looking good so far. Megawatt, he has got some real estate between him, Robbins, Stevens, Cottle, and Thomas. Yeah, man, we're looking at 7.1 for the gap, and that's, that's substantial right there. He could make a tip over. He could uh, blow a corner, that type of thing. And he's got plenty of room to work with. But what he can't do, Mike, is, is make a big mistake. He can't step off of that thing, stall it, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, right now, he has the pace. He's clearly the fastest guy. And when we look at a 1-1, there's no disputing that, Mikey. Yep. Okay, nobody yep. locks in to a 1-1. Uh, big reason we do three motos and Loretta's, just to settle any doubts. That's it okay? for sure. Okay, and when you look at a 1-1 right here, several guys had wins, okay? That solidifies it. That takes the doubt out of it. Fastest guy by two and a half seconds on most of these laps. Yeah, he's he's been sensational. He was sensational in Moto One. He's simple sensational math, Rodney. In Moto Two. Simple math. Even for new math, it's simple. One plus one equals win. <laughs> yeah, one plus there one equals win. One plus I one love equals it. win. And that would be W I N, not W Y N. That's <laughs> true. That is true. We're getting you're getting your mathematics, your spelling. We've got it all. We've done some geography with the fifty states. For sure. We have. There he is again, the eighteen. Landon Gordon on that Team Green Kawasaki. Putting the Dunlops to work on the ground. Dude, he's in the mood to think pink right now. Look at that. Super clean. Looking good. White flag is out. One to go here for the number 18 machine. Slowed up just a bit last time around. 158.3. Headed out on lap number six. Clark Robbins comes. He's still dropping the hammer. He's at a 157.8. But the gap now at 6.6. .6. Big task at hand on that final lap, Mikey. Yeah, what well, you want to see him make something happen. A tough break for Adler Caudle falls back into the sixth spot. He was in that heated battle between Gibson, Diesel, Thomas, Noah Stevens. Uh, now back in sixth. Reese Wheaton comes in in the number seven spot. Caden Dudney in eighth, ninth place checking in, dropping a couple of positions. Bobby Gravel, Riley Boosie in the number 10 spot. Wyatt Bass on the move up into si or excuse me, 11th. And we watch the number 18 who has been pretty well flawless from the gate drop to this point. Knock on wood, no announcer curse. I don't think he's worried about it. Getting that point in the day where the sun starts showing us how many line yep. choices our riders have. And Lena Gordon uh, right here chooses that outside line. I think at this point of the day, uh, Meg, that's probably the smoothest, right? Yeah, you're always looking on those fringes, Mikey. You're always going to the outside to find those lines and uh, with not wanting to make any mistakes, that's where I'm gonna search. It's working for Gordon. He's got a good enough gap. Doesn't need to worry about going the long way around. If it's smooth, take it. 
I said this earlier, smooth is fast. We all know. There's the cliche, right? You know what else is fast? Fun is fast. Oh, absolutely. If you're out there having fun, you're loose, not too loose, just the right amount. You're not too tense, not worried. Uh, it helps you flow out there on the track. you got to have fun. And i got to think that Lane and Gordon's having fun. Yeah, it's easy to tell by rider's body position. You can see by the flow, by the line choice, by the pace he carries. If a guy's rolling smooth like that, he's having a good time, and it's quite obvious. What is it about seeing the 18, the number 18? It's just, it just looks fast. It does. I've been biased on the number 18 since Peyton Manning and the Indianapolis <laughs> Colts, so there's a, there's a few guys out there. Well, the last few seasons, if you've kept your eye on motocross uh, yes. and you've lived on this planet, the number 18 is <laughs> a familiar number, too. It is, man. It's, uh, boy, one for the history books this year, that's for sure. Lane and Gordon trying to put his name down in the history books, going 1-1 one, one for 250B limited rider out of Marietta, California. For Logan that. Mortberg having some issues. He was up there a little bit. Yep. He slid back into that number 14 position. Mm. Mortberg, always a scrapper, dude. Always. Yep. Max Shane, Max likewise. Shane, another big, yep. big likewise, name. Gavin Betts. Gavin Betts is another one. What was the other one I just saw? Grayson Fair. Jaden Wolf. Oof. Some big, big names. What, what's that tell you, man? I mean, Talent. these are the heavy hitters, man. That's that's how important that, that start is, the strategy is. And, and you know what's crazy? When you look at it, as, as this one gets down to the nitty-gritty here and, and Gordon going to work, when you look at it, Mega, I mean, you're back in 17th, 18th, 16th, whatever. They're still running 201s. Well, leaders are in that ballpark as well. Lane and Gordon, as he checks up a little bit, is at a 201. But the pace, I mean, really, if they can get down to that two-minute mark, not far off, they're right there with those guys. And what's, that's just one lap time. What's the lesson we learned there? Track position is key. Yeah. If you're going to run the same pace as the guy behind you, you need to be ahead of him and yep. running the same pace. So track position, absolutely key when things are this close. That goes back to that start. If not on the start, you put in that sprint, Mikey, in the first couple laps. Okay, you, you give it 110 those first couple laps, settle back, see who's willing to run that pace with you. And that's what, uh, that was the recipe for success for Landon Gordon. Ryan Holiday with a watchful eye. Gotta be impressed with this man, although that's why he gets paid the big bucks. I'm sure he's picking out a couple of things. Hey, you did real well, kid, but here, let's talk about this, this, and this. A absolutely, about like <laughs> Dick Way and Vincent Way the other day when right. we stopped over under the tent. Man, I was pumped. Vincent looked great and all this, and uh, Nick's like, That'll be enough, Megawatt. <laughs> Racing like life. It's all about what have you done for me lately? Well, lately, Landon Gordon gets a win. 1-1 one, one in the 250B. Checkers is out. Clark Robbins hangs on for second place. And Landon Gibson rounds out your top three. They're on their way down to the podium. Pop some bottles of champagne. Talk to Wes Kane and say thank you, sponsors. We appreciate you. You know what I have not heard a lot of this weekend? Anybody else I forgot up on the box. I've not heard a lot. Fantastic. I'm not taking a jab at anybody. I understand if you're, I if you're quite young, it may be difficult. But if you can throw your leg, let's say, over a 65, it's time. If they're supporting your uh, program, uh, just like you practice your race, practice thinking your sponsors. Because I made a post about this. Um, you want to do something, honestly, that stands out to your sponsors, right? Next race taken off. Here we go. Had a rider go down on Gator Falls. He lets the flagger know, I'm okay. I just got to pick up the dang bike and go back to work. This is race number 11, Super Mini 1. But back to my point, uh, Mega, is at this point, we're just riding isn't enough because there's a B rider out there that's doing more for the sponsors than the A rider. Yes, results speak for your sponsors, but you got to do something that sets you apart. When you're doing these rider resumes and you say, well, I got fit, da 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 There was a sponsor, and I'll go ahead and, and throw out the name. It was Brock Glover. He was from Dunlop and a rider at Loretta's this year that's pretty well known, and I won't throw him under the bus, but yep. he said, and anybody else I forgot. Yep. And Mr. Glover said, oh, we must be under the category of anybody else I forgot. Noted. So when you, if you don't think your sponsors are watching and listening, I guarantee you they are. Listen, and the backside of that, Mikey, a sticker on your visor isn't your commitment. Right. Okay, that, that is that, the that's part an of the deal. Okay, that's exactly right. that's what that is. That, that is absolutely not part of the deal right there. That is not upholding your end of the deal. So now all those guys are nervous on the podium. They're like, okay, don't say anybody else. I forgot I got to I gotta name them all. Mom, have that pit board ready. Or better yet, memorize them. Here we go. 
Getting down to the nitty gritty here for race number 11. Almost got one lap completed. Leading it out in front. Gonna be the number 29. That is McCaden Fitch. And Fitch had a first place finish in his first moto. I was just getting ready to say Fitch, no stranger to the front. He was out there in moto number one, able to lock down a win. Now he's able to lock down a gap of just about two seconds, 1.4 seconds. Vincent Way on the number 27 machine in the number two ride. Vincent's had to make a couple uh, moves here on lap number one. Puts himself in good position. Here comes a whole host of riders, though, right behind them, including the number 930th, Seth Dennis Oliver Camp in the number four ride. Anaki Abazua in the number five position. Wyatt Duff rides in six. Riley in seven. Cannon Hargrove in the eighth spot. Lincoln Bartholomew in ninth. And Kane Molasina rounding out the top ten. Sounds like Wes Kane is ready down on the podium with our top three. Take it away, Wes. All right, Clark Robbins, come on up here, bud. Number 62. Great job out there. He's going to finish up third in this limited class. Come on over here. Show the boys, everybody, the medal. Great job out there. Congratulations. Who do you want to thank? Uh, I want to thank my mom, my dad, my grandma, my grandpa, Daniel Blair, the whole um, Gas Gas crew, and everyone else. I want to thank uh, Pro Taper, Fly, Alpine Star. Uh, Daniel Blair, Maddie, uh, Jeb, and uh, everyone else, thank you. Congratulations, good job out there. Landon Gibson, Landon Gibson, come on up. Congratulations out there, gonna finish second. Who would you like to thank? Jesus Christ for keeping me safe. My mom, my dad, Daniel Blair, Maddie, 100%, TLD, Alpine Star, Dunlop, FMF, Tyler, Power Band, and everyone else. Just thank you so much for helping me get here. All right, there you go. Show them the medal. You're a champ, 250B Limited. Come on up here, Landon Gordon. Styling and profiling, looking good out there. Hold that up. You are the champ. Who would you like to thank? I'd like to thank the Lord, keep me safe, my whole family, uh, Team Green Kawasaki, Pro Circuit, Monster, Alpine Star, 100%, Renthal, um, Ethica, Toyota Escadito, Jacob Hayes, everybody behind me, thank you. Congratulations out there, Landon Gordon. Take it away, guys, up in the box. Hey, thank you, Wes Kane. We appreciate you, buddy. Here we go, Super Mini. One, 12 to 15, McCaden Fitch out in front, the rider out of Colorado leading the way. We're two laps into it, the 930 around Vincent Way. Can he make it stick? He can. For the moment, Way goes back to work. Way's gonna be in third place now. Wyatt Duff in fourth, fifth place is Oliver Camp. No, we're good. We're trying to, yes, we are trying to find something. Here we go, we're back. We'll try to sort that out. Last race of the day is what we're trying to figure out here. We're on race number 11 right now. Our Super Mini won at 12 to 15. And last race of the day is going to be race number 17. That is the senior 45 plus. Again, last race of the day will be race number 17, the senior 45 plus. What does that mean for tomorrow? Tomorrow we will start with race number 18, 65 CC, 10 to 11 limited. Again, first race tomorrow morning, 65 CC, 10 to 11 limited, race number 18. Hey, Megawatt Matt Watson, what is the last race of the day? That would be race number 17. That's our plus 45 senior class. There we go. And race number 18 will be the first race of tomorrow. Now, we may have alleviated 30 people from coming up and asking 
when we're going to make that announcement. So spread the word out there, shoot a text to people, maybe post it on your Instagram story, your Snapchat, your social media I don't even know exists yet because I'm getting old and I'm losing touch. Instant chat, your Snapgram, instant chat. Snapgram, Let, whatever it is. Chat GPT, sort it out. They'll write their own story about it. McCaden Fitch is writing a story. Three, oh, he was. Leader gets hung up. Did he get past? Did Dennis get around him? He had about a two-second gap. I think he did. So Seth Dennis gets around him for the lead, the number 930. Out of Brooksville, Florida, trying to get it done in the home state. Vincent Way. I don't think Way got around him. He had uh, about a five-second gap on him, so Fitch has to go back to work from the two spot now. Ooh, and then Seth Dennis is trying to run away and hide. Yeah, Seth Dennis. Look at him working the bike with his feet, Mikey. Look how much motion and stuff are going in to his legs and his feet right now, really moving that bike around. Just saw a quick glimpse of the 27 of Vincent Way right there, so I do believe Way is in the number two spot unless Dennis, or excuse me, Fitch was off to the left maybe. But nonetheless, Seth Dennis in control. Dennis, one of those guys, always a threat, Mikey. Anywhere, anytime. Yeah, he's another one of those guys, Seth Dennis. I feel like we've been, <clears throat> excuse me, calling oh. that name for a number of years. Uh, right. And, and at this level as well, always fighting for podiums, fighting for wins. So is that uh, Vinny Way going after Fitch? Yeah, it is. The 27. Husqvarna right there. Him and his dad going to be on the show tonight. Ooh. The uh, Racer TV after show. Vinny O's after show. Let's see. Let's see what Way's got to talk about. We'll get to hear it from him. And possibly a couple of times here. He's in the podium position right now. He'll get to thank some sponsors. And Megawatt, maybe he gets to talk about this pass on the show tonight if he can make it happen. No pressure, Vincent Way. No, no pressure. Uh -uh. You're just on the after show, bud. Exactly. He going can't in hear there, me. Don't worry. Going in there <laughs> fishing right now. Look at him. He's searching, fishing. Keeps throwing it out there. Is he going to get a bite? Ooh. Tucks in behind him right now. White flag will be coming out next time we see our leader, Seth Dennis, check in. And now a little bit of separation. Maybe Fitch feeling a little bit of the pressure. He certainly feels oh. it now. Here comes Way. Benny manualed that thing right through there, put it on the rear wheel, smoothed out those bumps, closed the gap. He set up to the inside. Some lappers coming into play. Ooh, a little bit of lap traffic right in between them. Oh, man. Advantage goes to Fitch. Yeah. As Way's got to check up a bit, finally gets around the lapper. Way's well, got to reset. He's within striking distance. So taking a look Ooh. again. Here comes Dennis. This is going to be a three-way battle. As it, last it lap. I think it is. is. There's no question about it, Mikey. We're set up for a shootout right now. You just saw Dennis pop out of screen. There is Fitch. There is Way. Almost all three in the same camera shot. The white flags out. Does it mean surrender? No, it means let's go to war, baby. Have time to fight. Business about to pick up here at the Gatorback MX Cycle Park. Wow, do you see Fitch? He come into Gator Falls. Wow. <laughs> Dude. Up the Gator back they go now, one, two, and three, and a little bit of separation. Yeah. This is, hey, this isn't what we asked for. We asked you guys to be right, you know, wheel-to-wheel, -wheel, handlebar to handlebar now. But they stretch it out. It doesn't always play out the way we want. It, you're exactly what right, What happens Mikey. when it's not scripted, like, you know, the <laughs> NFL and NBA. Right. <laughs> you talk about that gap, though. We look back at lap times. Again, these guys are carrying such a similar pace. Mikey, but it's just yeah. that track position. It's just where you get uh, your start at, where you actually uh, put that sprint in at the first couple laps, where that brings you. So Seth Dennis trying to hang on and go 1-1 one, one here. That'd give him the overall, obviously. He can book his ticket to hang out with the insane West Kane down on the podium here in a moment. 
Just a reminder, as you guys uh, wrap up your races, if you're done racing, please get those transponders returned ASAP. Don't forget about that. You can check a box. One last thing to do before the end of the day. Here he comes. Seth Dennis, 9-3-0, buzz, buzz. On the move, welcome back to the booth, Dean Diaz. What do you see out there, Dean? Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I see out there Seth Dennis, man, commanding this lead right now. That Fitch made a little mistake out there, but Dennis is there to capitalize. Also, guys, 730, 732 night. World <laughs> National Pit Bike Race. The registration for that race closes at 530, so make sure you get on down there. I'll tell you who's going to be down there. It's going to be our winner. Give it up for the number 30 machine, Seth Dennis, for getting the job done out there. Big round of applause for that man taking the win out there in the Super Mini 112 to 15 class. McCaden Fitch going to finish up in second. Solid ride for him. Third spot going to be Vincent Way, and that's exactly how they will finish on the podium. Dennis on the podium. And that first spot, McCaden Fitch in second. Vincent Way taking a third overall on the podium. As we see the number 444 machine, Wyatt Duff come across the line. He's going to finish up fourth. Fifth place, running at your top five, Oliver Camp on the number 910 machine, the number 314 of Kane Bolasina. He's going to finish up in sixth. Seventh spot, Carson Wood. Eighth spot, Jace Wolf. So we'll put a good ride in the eighth, ninth spot, Lincoln Bartholomew and Christopher Harris. He's going to make his way just inside the top ten, landing himself in the tenth place position. But again, guys, I'm going to tell you again because it's important. 7.30 tonight, World National Pit Bike Race. It is only $25 to enter, a lot of fun to have, and a lot of uh, stuff going to be thrown out to the crowd, so make sure you're there. Sign up for that. It's going to close at 5.30. They're going to have Suron electric bike race and that's sir on obviously segway bikes all those things that are electric you could have it out there having stasic classes they're going to be going on a 50 class you got to bring your own bike for that but then it's 65 85 big bike moms and dads race you're going to ride their pit bikes you don't have to dog your pit bike that's what i like dog somebody else's pit bike those are the best ones to have <laughs> that is the best hey race number 12 on the track right now 51 cc seven to eight limited gates down our riders battling for that vp racing pupils whole shot Making power. Gates dropping, whole shot popping. Looks like the 34 Lance Guys first out in this one, but watch out, here comes Beckham Smith. Lance Guys coming into it with a first place finish. Jet Wow with a first place finish as well. This is one of those three divisions, and then the man that Dean mentioned, Beckham Smith in the two spot. He also has a first place finish. Of course, we got Mason Wheeler out there as well as Absher Hall, Parker Beckington. This one is stacked. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it is stacked, and I'm telling you, if there's anybody that Beckham Smith is worried about, it was a rider that's in front of him right now with Geis, man. Geis has been on the move all week, and he is on a roll right now as he leads this one out. And then we see Beckham Smith there. He is in the second place position again. I'm trying to get a read on these little numbers. They make their way through the cut track here. What do we got inside the One, top three? 133. That is Beckham Smith in the two. Oh, I just, just glanced away. I didn't catch a number. <laughs> it looks like There's 792 or 192 two. maybe. Huxley Nolan up in the fight. Huxley comes into it with a fourth place finish. There's the 34. The 133 is Smith. Don't get fuzzy, camera. Don't you do it to me, Ricky Bobby. <sighs> and it did. It did. Or maybe it's a number plate. Maybe th maybe we're now putting on blurry. No, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> calling them out like that. I he wouldn't be surprised. Have blurry number plates. <laughs> Just kidding. Our two Calm leaders. Down. Two leaders are breaking away with the rest of the pack right there. We see. Is that Tarno on the number 710 machine possibly? Ooh. That'd be a good guess, I think. 710, yeah. Mm, I don't have it. Yeah, yeah. Shannon Tarno. Yeah, you know what? I think you are right. We're going to know for sure right here. Guys checks in. First place. Beckham Smith in second. We know that much. In third, and a little bit of a gap back to third. Yeah, Parker Beckham was making some moves up there. He's going to slip down as well. Speaking of slipping, we're going to slip it on down to the podium with West King. All right. Vincent Wade, come on up here, bud. You finished up third. You got the bronze. Tell everybody who you want to thank. Well, my mom, my dad, my grandpa, Husker Barnum, Maddie, Daniel, Luke, Roy for doing the suspension, um, Alpine Stars, Answer, the Helmet, Scott Goggles, um, Triple, my brother D, uh, Ava. Um, and everybody else, thank you so much. Vincent Way got the bronze. Kenny and Fitch finishing up second. Come on over here. Hold up the medal. Show the good people on Racer TV. There you go. Who do you want to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank my mom, my dad, Rocky Mountain Cycle Plaza, MTF. They've helped me out tremendously. I can't thank them enough. Um, Oakley, Fly Racing, Dirt Bike Kids, FMF. Fitch racing, suspension, and just everybody. I can't thank you guys enough. Congratulations out there. Fitch taking up second. Super Mini 1, 12-15 champion. 
Hold up the gold, and there's the number one plate, Seth Dennis. Congratulations, Seth Dennis. Who would you like to thank? I'd love to thank my mom, my dad, my sister, Kyle Cheeseman, Corey, um, Dunlop, Fox, KTM Morris Brigade, Bill Seekers, Pro Taper, Scott, Power Band Twisted, um, 77 Fitness, and um, Ethica, and everybody else. Thank you. Congratulations out there, Seth Dennis, the champ. Take it away, guys, up in the skybox. Hey, thank you, Wes Kane. Good job down there, good buddy. Congratulations to our top three. We're trying to send another three to you, and we will, I promise. One of those may be Levi Geis. He's out in front, the number 34, out of Jordan, Minnesota, and working on a pretty good lead now, Dean. He's up seven seconds on Beckham Smith. Yeah, that's saying something when you get out there, seven seconds in front of Beckham Smith, because we know Smith, he's a hard charger, but Levi Geis has been making a name for himself this week for sure. Tate Brush looks like he's going to slide up in the top three. He's going to take that third place position away. It looks like Shannon Tarno with some issues out there. There's Abster Hall. He's going to be in the fourth spot. Fifth spot running at the top, Posby Parker Beckham. And then we got Huxley Nolan in sixth. Seventh spot, Matthew Simino. What happened to Tarno? He's going to fall back outside the top ten, I believe, as Rowdy Rav Jones. He's going to move into the eighth spot. Ninth spot, Jarrett Tincher. And Gunnar Lust will round out your top ten. So Levi Guy's trying to get it done. 51 CC, 7 to 8 limited. Tough break for Shannon Tarnow. Still has not checked in. Yeah, he's dropping outside the top 20. So I'm not sure he's had the bike problems. Maybe a hard get off over there in the backside of the track. But man, he's trying to get it figured out now. But I'll tell you, he's got it figured out. And that is our leader. Levi Geis. He's been sensational. There he is, a little ripper to the number 34, working around some lap traffic. Hey, folks, don't forget, last race of the day will be race number 17. That is your senior 45 plus. And what that means is tomorrow morning, we'll start with race 18, 65 CC, 10 to 11 limited. So spread the good word out there. Again, last race of the day, race number 17, the senior 45 plus, and first race tomorrow morning, 65 CC, 10 to 11 limited. Yeah, on screen right now, we're watching the number 34 machine of Levi Geis. He's been putting in work out here the whole moto. Yellow flag going to fly down there where he's at, though. That was actually one of our lap riders down there. So Geis make his way through and up the finish line area. There he goes right there on the number 34 machine doing a good job. It looks like Beckham Smith. I'm not sure if he got a uh, fresh breath of air or what, but he has now started to make a push out there. He's going to run Ooh, four seconds charge. faster. That's a big charge right there. I swear these guys aren't on e-bikes, but he's charging. <laughs> yeah, that that is uh, silly. Yeah. <laughs> One fifty-one seven sixty-two for Beckham Smith, and I would say that four seconds up, Levi Geis is safe, but I don't know. Maybe I don't know not. Either. Geis did run at 152 out there on his second lap, so Geis definitely has the speed, so maybe if he sees that Beckham Smith is starting to reel him in, he's going to start to pick it up. Speaking of picking it up, behind Beckham Smith after Hall, he is picking it up. He's 18 seconds behind Beckham Smith, but he moves into the third place position. Tate Brush finds himself in fourth. This spot, Parker Beckham, Huxley Nolan in the sixth spot. Seventh spot, Matthew Simino. Eighth spot is Darren Titchener. Jet Rao in the ninth spot, and then tenth place position, Gunnar Lusk. But look out for number 77, Carter Holmes. He's in 11th, 12th spot, Ryan Cicerelli, Braxton Guther. He's in the 13th spot. Levi Letty in 14th, it looks like. And in 15th, it's going to be Rowdy Rab Jones. And that's your top. No, John Ferreira, he's going to slide up in the 15th spot. So awesome ride for Ferreira there. He's actually going to be a couple seconds faster than everybody up there inside the top 15. So we'll see what happens. Got some time if he wants to shake and bake and move up. White flag will be coming out, I believe, next time we see what we expect to be the 34 Levi Geis checking in. I believe he's coming our way right here, moving methodically through the lap traffic. Patient up the inside, says, hey, how you doing? Pardon me, I got a guy that's trying to track me down. That is Beckham Smith. Yeah, man, I don't know if he's lapped or complained a factor of Beckham Smith that just turned up. Of course, we're going to see lap times here in just a little bit, but man, I'll tell you, Smith is coming. He is. I'm, I'm thinking Levi Geis might be in that 155 mark. I think Beckham Smith may have just turned another 151, 152. Let's see, white flag out. Geis checks in, a 153. Beckham Smith finds more speed with a 150, and he's wow. right there a second and a half back now. This is the lap battle right here, I'll tell you what. And Geis, he knows how to ride a wide bike, so don't be surprised to see him shut down the number three of Beckham Smith. You know what he is? He's a shark, and he smells blood in the water. It's Beckham Smith on that KTM Orange Brigade machine trying to make a move on that Cobra. That Cobra, though, moving hard there in the first place position right now. The 34 of Geis. Geis, man, been pushing it this moto. And how big of a gap has he got on the rest of the pack right now? 
I, it, it, boom, there it is. Just now can tell you as Parker Beckington checks in 32 seconds back. We watch that battle unfold. Here comes Beckham Smith, the 133 KTM creeping up. Hey, they're both rocking the number three on the jersey on the <laughs> rear wheel now. Guys tries to keep him at bay. Let's oh! And a big mistake right there, but able to keep it on two wheels and keep the lead as Geis. The pressure is unreal right now for Geis. Ooh, lap rider in the way in the split lane. This is going to be Harry right here. What's going to happen as they make the move through there? Whoa, guys with a good move there. Oh, Beckham Smith Beckham. nearly slides out. All that work he put in to get right there in the mix. Oh, another another little mistake right there. Yeah, man. By Smith. You know what I think? I think guys might have got off the hook right there. But Just you never know. Might be a little. He's still in his head, though. You saw the look over the shoulder. Guys resets, and Smith is not giving up. He is still yeah, all in the mail. Still hot. He was definitely not off the hook. I oh, think it fired Beckham mercy. Smith up. Here he comes around the tower. Beckham Smith has the inside of the move. King Guy Stab underneath him. He tries to get up inside him. He does get up inside him. Smith tries to cut under him. Look at the fans. They're going wild here on the pit line right now. If you're not racing and watching this race, you're missing out. Oh, we got lappers. We got lappers. It's going to benefit Guys right here. Oh, yes, in traffic. Wow. What a heartbreaker for Smith. And Levi Geis hangs on for the win. That was incredible arguably the one of the best motives of the week right there <laughs> i mean smith threw everything at him but the kitchen sink my hat so he's got my respect man couple little mistakes right there didn't give up yeah, got he, right back in it even with that mistake look around 152 levi guys is 151 guys doing just enough to make it happen and taking this championship look at the championship picture levi guys gonna be your overall champion out there beckham smith gonna be second Looks like Parker Beckett is going to make his way through and take third overall on the podium and see Wes Kane as he makes his way across the line right now. So, yes, Beckett will finish third and take third overall. So they'll finish just like that on the podium. Shows you how how consistent these 50cc 7.8 riders are. Tate Brush coming through to take the fourth place position. Huxley Nolan, he's going to be in your fifth spot. Round, or no, Jet Rao making some moves. My apologies. Running 136 lap time right there. That kid was on a move. He really wanted to get inside the top five, and he did do so. Huxley Nolan falling back to six. Looking for Matthew Simino. He should be our seventh place rider. He's going to come through. Oh, no, Jared Tencher making a move right there in the last lap. Look at that. Only a one-second gap separating him and Simino. Simino going to fall in shot eighth. My boy Carter Holmes going to finish up in the ninth place position. And in your 10th spot, running your top 10, the 211 machine of Gunner Lars. Getting the job done. What's out of the track right now? I, I'm still trying to catch my breath, Dean. That was just, <laughs> it was so good. That, that was fun to watch. No, off, off the gate and rolling. I got to see your sunlight right now. Riley Gall just got the whole shot. Let's go, Riley. Out there. But let's continue on now with the uh, first moto finishes. Get it. Some other heavy hitters out there as Riley goes to work out in front. Grabbing that VP Racing Fuels whole shot. It's complete carnage. After turn one, several riders coming together. We'll sort that out in a moment. Some of the heavy hitters, how about Cameron Buckman, the number seven out of Huntington, New York, on that mom and dad of PR2 racing back ride. We've also got uh, Jeffrey Sapoff, rider out of Sterling, Illinois, on that Cobra Moto machine. And a couple other big guys out there. Mickey Fluhart, the number 14, Deegan Mullen. All looking good. We need everybody off the fence, please. Once again, no sitting on the fence. But our girl out there, Riley Gall, doing a great job. She's got that whole shot. She might be slipping back in the pack a little bit. I'm watching a battle right now. Look at this four-way battle as they make it up the, the split lane. Michael Hall making a mistake right there. There's a seven machine. See him both feet down like he's a member of the Flintstones. Cameron Buckman, <laughs> your leader out there in front of Riley Gall. Then we got the 45 machine in third. That's your top three right now. On the number 45 machine, it looks like it is. Oh, I should have known that. Colton Tubbs. Tubbs doing a good job out of New York. One of the New York Yankee Riders out there doing a great job. As we watch him through that Scott Cargo split lane, it's still goal in the second spot behind Buckman. And then the 45 machine of Tubbs out there doing a good job. Here they come. I can hear them man, man, buzzing man, past man, us. Man, man. I thought it was some bees, but it's not. It's just the Cobra machines out there doing the work. Buckman starting to pull away now over Riley Gall, who still sits in second. Tubbs in third, but he has pressure to the inside. Oh, Michael Hall I thought he was going to make a pass right there, but he ends up making a big mistake and throwing both legs down. Ooh. Oh, whoa. Going, going way wide. 
Riley <laughs> Cole going to lose two positions, it looks like, right there. Tubbs going to move into the number two position. Here they come across the finish line. It's Buckman leading out. Tubbs now in the second place position. Third spot running a top three will be Jeffrey Satsoff. And then it's Riley Gall. So she lost a couple spots out there in the opening lap. Michael Hall going to check in with us in the fifth place position. Dia Mullen. Seventh place is Boone Lloyd. Eighth spot is Brady Taylor. Ninth spot, Jet Scadras. And in your 10th place position, running your top 10 is going to be the number 14 of Ryder Drake. That's your top 10 rundown, all courtesy of Dunlop. If you want to hook up, where are you going to go? I'd go to Dunlop. I'd go to Dunlop as well. They got deals going on down there today as well. Black Friday sales in full force. Yeah, I, I believe uh, Rob Fox on the show tonight as well. Sounds like Wes Kane is ready for us down on the podium. All right. Parker Beckley, congratulations. Hold that medal up. Show him you got the bronze. All right. Congratulations. Good job. Who do you want to thank? Mom, Dad, One Touch Painting, um, 60 Flight Crew, Scott, Mitten, TCD, um, Trail Seekers and everyone else, thanks so much. Congratulations out there, Parker and Beckington. Finish third. Beckett Smith, a lot of people helping you out. Who's helping you out? Who do you want to thank? My mom, my dad, my brother. Jesus Christ for keeping me safe. Orange Brigade, KTM, Dumb Up and Leak, J Moto, Beast Moto Lab, Lynx, T Rex, Pro Caper, Fox, Maddie and Daniel, the whole Orange Brigade crew. Dawson Garage, Bimal, Popo, and everybody else. Thank you. Congratulations out there. Beckham Smith. Levi Guest. Come on up here. He got the gold. And your champ, 51cc, 7.8 Limited. Hold that medal up and hold that number one plate up. Wow. Levi, you got to be pumped right now. Who would you like to thank for all this success? Um, my mom, my dad, got up above. FXR Premium Goggles, FXR, Black Diamond MX, Bad uh, Performance, Cobra, Fine Tooth Suspension, Plain View Power Sports, High Five Erectors, and thank you so much, everybody else. I forgot. Hold it up one more time. You guys get the shot. Levi Guess. Yeah. Take it away, guys. Yeah, Levi Guess doing a great job on track right now. Your leader, Cameron Buckman. Jeffrey Satoff in second, Colton Tubbs in the third spot, fourth spot, Michael Hall, Deegan Mullen in your fifth spot. Back to the sixth spot is Riley Gall. Boone Lloyd in seventh. Here comes Mickey Flumart. He's going to move up into the eighth place position. Our ninth place rider is Brady Taylor and Jet Scott just rounds out your top ten. That's the top ten on the track right now, Mikey. Moving right along, 51cc, four to six. I love it. Urbanowski back here in 14th on our ticker is the name is so long. I mean, it's off the screen. Red's off the screen. It's I off. Been, the, he's riding off the rails right now. And I've been doing it wrong all my life. It's L L L, not I I I to the third apparently. Oh really? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll leave that one up to registration as we watch the number seven sheet of Cameron Buckman lead the way. Man, what a what a. Ooh, oh, a solid the, number to run, too. You know, the number seven. We've seen James Stewart run it. Aaron Plessinger run it. Now we got Cameron Buckman out here on the number seven machine. Man. It's a tall order. But, man, he's making it happen. <laughs> it he is looked, a tall order. You see how quickly he looked ahead coming out of that corner? His yes, he thought did. process was and lappers. As he got <laughs> through the single file line right there, coursing his way around him, having no issues. No issues at all for the number seven machine. If you're looking at a race TV, it says 753. That's his normal number, you know. This pro number is number seven. I love that. <laughs> Watch now as they're making their way through. It should still be Jeffrey Satoff. who's made a way through the pack. He ran a two or one thir no, sorry, two thirteen. Now last time through, Jeffrey Satoff. So making some moves out there, just a two seconds faster than Colton Tubbs. Tubbs is in that third spot. But you better look out because here comes Tegan Mullen. Mullen in that fourth spot, trying to make a move. He wants the podium finish. But it's over. Going after it right now. We've been watching Cameron Buckman on RacerTV.com. Young man has a seven and a half second lead over second. Colton Tubbs. I just hope Colton Tubbs has a little puppy named Crockett. <laughs> Crockett and Tubbs. Let's Crockett. do it. If not, mom and dad, get him a puppy. <laughs> I'm causing problems in the pits now. I can guarantee you that. Oh, yeah. Mikey said I can get a puppy. Yeah, the doubts just said it. Only if he gets a top three. <laughs> fair is fair, right? That's right. And I say that, and now he's back and forth. And I was talking about Deegan Mullen. Deegan Mullen on the move. Deegan the move out there. He does make the move into that number, third place, sorry, that number three in the third place position. He's got a tough twist there. 
87 to Michael Hall. He's in a fourth spot. Riley Gall, look at her. She's up the fifth. So, man, I think Colton Tubbs must have made a big mistake out there. Going to run a 231 last time that time around. He's got some time. He can still make, uh, make up a couple of positions if he can rebound. He was running a good pace up front. White flag is not out yet. We're just now three laps into it as Buck re Buckman remains in control leading the way. Got a yellow flag out. As it goes by the wayside, rider must be back up and running. Man, all these four to six riders doing a great job out there on the track. Track getting a little beat up now as we're later in the day, but I'll tell you what. Cameron Buckman not having any problems out there in front of Jeffrey Seth. All Seth off doing a good job. And Deegan Mullen, he's not done yet. He's two seconds back, a second faster than Jeffrey Seth off. So he's making some moves. Michael Hall in the fourth place position. Fifth place position, rounding your top five. Riley Gall, Colton Tubbs, like we said, slid back to the sixth spot. Then Boone Lloyd in seventh. Eighth spot, Mike Nikki Fluhart. Brady Taylor and Ryder Drake, welcome to the top ten. Yeah, Rodney Tomlin pointing out Riley Fresh. Forgot the nickname they call her Fresh. Sitting out there in fifth. I think at uh, from what Rodney was saying, she's got her in a fourth place overall after the hot start she had grabbing that whole shot. Uh, uh, it's Riley Fresh. Ricka, 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 Ricka. Ricka, Ricka. Cats and boots and cats and boots. That's all <laughs> I got. That's all I know. One trick pony. Hey, that's all you need out here as the white flag, I believe, will come out now yep. for the number seven machine of Cameron Buckman. Buckman, man, I got to give it up to him. He's got out front early in this one and has not looked back, and he had no need to look back. He has full track in front of him. Full track of lappers, should I say. Yeah, he's, and yeah, it comes up on some freight trains that is lap traffic in this one, and still no problems course around. Hey, that's not the line I want. That's okay. That's the line I'll make work. White flag out. One to go for Cameron Buckman, rider out of Huntington, New York. Trying to get it done. Last time around, he had an 11-second lead. Now 13.2. Jeffrey Sathoff checks in in the two spot. Is it Deegan Mullen? Yes. 1.4 seconds behind him now, and he is about two seconds past that last lap, so we're going to keep our eyes on that battle on this white flag lap. So looking for the 93 of Sathoff, and the number three of Mullen should be just behind the number seven of Cameron Buckman, our leader. And here they come up the hill in just a second. Like I said, 13 second lead. There they are right there. Taking the left lane was the number three. He's just behind the number 93 as they make the way up the hill and up to the step ups. Oh, so Mullen falls back a little bit and tries to keep pace. <laughs> Lapper looked over, said, oh my goodness, where did you come from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, this one isn't over yet. I'm Mullen, I'm pulling for him right now. He's, he's starting to apply the pressure on Jeffrey Sathoff. Again, Sathoff on the number 93 machine, and on the number three machine is Deegan Mullen. Man, Cameron Buckman. Just ridiculous. Trying to bring it home. Here we go. Had a little battle right there for the two spot. Getting the separation in there now. So that's Buckman. That is Buckman. You see back on the machine. He's having fun right now. Yeah. For Cameron Buckman. He knows he has a big lead right now, and he is just cruising on home to a victory. Just having fun, staying mistake-free out there. Riding clean, man. Looking real good. Looking real good. Next time Cameron checks in. Ooh, little dab yeah, dab. A little <laughs> Rut's getting a little deep. Not his fault. Foot peg deep. There he is, looking good, doing it in style. Speaking of style, who helps that little man out right there? Cameron Buckman is sponsored by Mom and Dad, PR2, Racing FX, Racing Knit and Cycle, Scott Goggles, Houston X, and Rhino Power. But I'm sure he's going to be able to thank all those guys on the podium as he takes the second moto win and championship Ooh. of the 51cc 46 limited class. Yeah, buddy, fists in the air, well earned. Good job. On his way to talk to Wes Kane down there on the podium, as is Jeffrey Sathoff now, who has checked in in the number two spot, rider on the Cobra Moto out of Sterling, Illinois. And Deegan Mullen hangs on for third on his way to talk to Wes Kane, as well as we wait on the rest of the pack to check in here, race number 14. Don't forget, we're going to race number 17. That's going to be the senior 45 plus. 
Mickey Fluhart checked in in fourth, and Colton Tubbs rounds out the top five. What's that overall look like there, Dean? Yeah, I'm looking at the overall picture because that's what really matters right here. Cameron Buckman is going to be your champion. Second, Jeffrey Santoff, and Diga Mullen will finish up third. So that was actually a championship battle out there right now for that second, third place position. Love it. That is what Minios is all about right there. It is right there, and you see that last lap that Satoff, he answered Mullen's call. He picked up a couple seconds, actually a couple seconds faster than Mullen that time around. Again, Nikki Fluhart in the fourth spot, fifth spot was Colton Tubbs, Boone Lloyd in the sixth, seventh spot, Michael Hall, eighth spot, Ryder Drake, ninth spot, Brady Taylor. And finishing up in the 10th place position, he'll round out your top 10. It will be the number 101 machine of Carter Rittaker, Las Vegas, Nevada Ryder getting it done. All right, here we go. Junior 25 plus race number 14 locked and loaded down on the gate. All eyes on. I'm going to say number 24 Heath Harrison, the whole shot machine. Oh, light him up, light him up. Here we go. I'll tell you with the uh, fever and vengeance at which Steve Roman was racing at that bet 35 plus. This is going to be an interesting for him uh, one for him as well, I think is Oh, got a couple going down in the first turn right there. Is that Harrison out It front? is Harrison and Carson running one and two. Harrison coming into this one with a first place finish, and if I remember correctly, pretty impressive right to old battle yeah. out front. I ain't going to focus on this. We're going to focus on oh. the battle. Chatfield, he was in the third spot, lost position, then went up on the side wall there on jump number six. Woo, getting wild out there as Harrison tries to stay in front of the Suzuki rider Corey Carson, but I feel like Carson's gotten hungry and hungry every moto. He wants this win more than anything. Roman there in the number three position. Yeah. Carson needs it too, especially with the man in front of him being Heath Harrison. Heath Harrison with that first place finish. Carson had a third in his first moto, so Carson's got to get around Heath, and he is going to work early with some company. 731 of Stevie Roman. Stevie Roman is your rider who finished second in moto number one. You know, I, I think I can see some uh, great rivalries building in this uh, vet class as uh, the vet classes as we uh, move on now with Heath, ha Heath Harrison and Stevie Roman and now uh, Corey Carson out here. This is this is going to be an exciting new generation of senior or vet riders, I guess you could say, working their way through the ranks that we get a chance to to watch throw it down out here like this. Yeah, you, there's no denying that, Rodney. We've definitely seen some rivalry start to brew here, but I'll tell you what, Heath Harrison, he's like, hey, I don't got any rival guys out here. I didn't get a big <laughs> shot, but I'm going to try to pull away with this one. He's on the number 24 Phoenix Honda leading us out right now. Second spot is Corey Carson, but Carson under fire. Watch here to the inside. Stevie Roman going for a move on Carson. He shows a little paint, a little green paint right there to the yellow machine, but not going to make it happen. Let's see what happens. He goes to the outside right here before the finish line. Getting the green flag. It's Carson. It's Roman finished running second and third right now. Your fourth place Honda rider. That is the fourth place rider of Adam Chatfield. So Chatfield regrouping out there. Mitchell France will round out your top five for lap number one. Harrison, the 24, trying to check out to Laterville out in front. Hops down. Oh, loving the outside line. Carries some speed. Right up the gator back. Wow, Carson in the two spot. Roman in third. Chatfield back in fourth. And I think the battle's going to heat up again here for that number two position between Carson and Roman. I agree with you for sure as they make their way down the Dunlop drop right here. <laughs> Hey, take it away down on the podium, West Kane. All right, I got Deegan Mullen here. He got a bronze medal, third overall. Who do you want to thank, Deegan? Mom, Dad, One Town Racing, KB5, 327, and that's it. Congratulations out there. Good job. Hold your medal up one more time. Let him see it. There you go, bud. All right, Southoff, come on over here, right here. Hold up your medal. Show them. Yeah, seven to eight, 51 cc. Who would you like to thank? My mom and dad, Beast Moto Lab, WTT, FX Racing, 60, 100%, and that's it. Congratulations out there, guys. Now you're 51 cc, four to six limited champ. There he is, Cameron Buckman. Congratulations, Cameron. Who do you want to thank? My mom, my dad. Mention 
Edmonton boys. Um, Scott Goggles. FX Racing. And everyone else, thank you. All right, congratulations. Good job out there. Take it away up in the skybox, guys. They're going to celebrate down here for a minute. All right, coming around for number two is Heath Harrison, Steve Roman, Corey Carson, Mitchell France, Robert Pitch, Adam Chatfield, Matthew Hoggentogler, Nicholas Burgess, Cole McLean, and the tenth spot is Jeremy Parsons. Roddy, what do you think out there? You know, I, uh, I'm amazed, you know, great racing action all day, but I'm amazed at this racetrack today and how well not only has it held up, but the, the moisture count. And I know that the overcast skies has definitely helped out. But man, what a great racetrack we've got here this afternoon for these second motos have created some great battles. There's no doubt about that. And uh, watching uh, Harrison out here, it's uh, poetry in motion, so to speak. Uh, Steve Roman in second. And I have to wonder, you know, as we push through lap number three, uh, are we going to see that kind of push that we saw out of Roman earlier? I know that uh, uh, he had a, a lot of gas, so to speak, in that plus, <laughs> 35 plus class. Uh, does he have that much energy left after the push that he put out there earlier today? I know we were talking about recovery times and stuff like that either earlier this morning or yesterday. But, uh, you know, same thing goes for for guys like Steve Roman. I mean, there's a, a lot of push out there, uh, especially late in the day. I mean, we've all been at it since about seven o'clock this morning. And, and, and even if you don't get tired on the track, uh, you've been at the racetrack a long time during the day. I mean, we're pushing, what, 5 o'clock now, 4.30, yeah. I agree with you 100%, Rod. They had watched Pete Harrison come by. Now he's got to check in at 155. Mike Jones on a personal clock up here. He knows more than Steve Roman. Roman's going to drop to 157, so we're sort of just settling the pace right here, it looks like. And 159 for Corey Carson, our third-place rider. About a seven-second gap between Harrison and Roman, and a three-second gap, it looks like, between uh, Roman and Carson now. Mitchell France about nine seconds back in that fourth place position. But Robert Fitch, I see Fitch is over there scrubbing, riding hard, pushing hard. It looks like maybe a rider off the track right now. Well, if you're wondering about overalls at this point, Heath Harrison 1-1, one, one, Steve Roman 2-2, two, two, Corey Karsten 3-3. Three, three. Uh, we go 4-4, four, four, Mitchell France, Robert Fitch 5-5, five, 6-6 five, six, six for Adam Chatfield. That will be your top six overall. And they run consistent, at least so far, Moto 1 to Moto 2. Yeah, they're riding good and on screen we're watching. Looks like Mitchell France, that 347 ride. You see Fitch starting to come into the picture now, so he's starting to make some way out there in the gator tail section of the track. That's Corey Carson, man. Look at that thing. It's getting rough, isn't it, Mike? Yeah, getting a little choppy out there. Corey, though, he's not so, giving up. He's still making a push. He's wants to reel that Roman pushes over. He's hoping Roman's going to get tired out here on this rough racetrack. But, man, I'll tell you what, Roman, he's been pushing, training hard. Uh, Jones Roman in Mexico. schools. He's been pushing kids and himself along the way. You know, that that's one of the things that I, I, I talked about and noted about him, you know, about how he guts it out. He, he digs so deep, you know, he, he just he finds something. Uh, whenever you think it's gone, uh, he finds a little more, and uh, that's the kind of writer that Steve Roman is. That's the kind of example he sets for his uh, his uh, school, and uh, he's gonna he's gonna lay it all out here on on the line. I don't think uh, he he's it's gonna take a lot <laughs> to slow him down. I think Heath Harrison and now uh, checks in for another lap completed. Four in the books. Here comes Karsten. Steve Roman already through the 731. Everybody kind of got their legs stretched out right now and doing their own thing. As a matter of fact, I saw Karsten a moment ago. He looked over the shoulder, and I think I don't think it was like, who's there? I think it was, where the heck is everybody? Right. Like, <laughs> just out here chilling. Yeah, then we see Mitchell France. He's going to come in and check into that fourth place position on the 147 machine. And I'm telling you, Fitch is coming. Look at him. He was only one second back there. That's Robert Fitch on the 135 machine. Adam Chatfield, he's in the sixth place position. Kind of settled into that sixth place position, it looks like right now. All these guys probably settled in this junior 25 plus <laughs> class. Matthew Hoggett, Tyler, he's going to come into the seventh place position. Eighth spot is the number 143. That's Nicholas Burgess. He's out of Crandall, Georgia. Making his way up is Jeremy Wallstrom. He's the number 232 machine. And falling back just one is our number 954 machine of Hoggett Toggler. 
Like a Christmas tree. A Christmas tree. It is about that time. You know, we just passed Thanksgiving. It's time, it's time That's to right. get ready for Christmas. Christmas tree's out. My tree was up before I even left home. <laughs> hey, I, my wife is one of those people as well. <laughs> <laughs> Megawatt, wasn't me. We went to dinner the other night, and Megawatt was complaining about seeing Christmas lights on a house. Oh, we're not even past Thanksgiving yet. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just going to be quiet on this one, because <laughs> old wifey Wings may hear about it back home. <laughs> oh, he'd have called her on the spot. He would, yeah. He, he, it wouldn't be Faze. He's over there laughing to himself right now. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Mikey. I would have. <laughs> I believe he, we will see a white flag fly yeah. this time for the number 24 machine of Heath Harrison. He resides out of Silver Hill, Alabama. There it is, white flag flying for our leader. Heath Harrison, he's smiling the whole time too. You ever seen that dude when he's not like got a big grin on his face? No. He just always looks so happy. And he probably is happy with rides like I mean, you know? I would be, why not? Even when he got a little incident over there. On the super cross check. No, I missed time. That was wrong. That was wrong. Okay That's all right. <laughs> yeah, you'll have that. You're right. He did smile. Oh, smiled right through it. Speaking of smiling right through it, I told you guys to keep your eye on Robert Fitch. Fitch 135 machine. He's going to make a move in at fourth. Mitchell France now back to fifth. Can France redeem himself and get back up into that fourth place position? We're just going to have to wait and see what this last lap has in store. Heath Harrison, 10 seconds out front, Steve Roman. Steve Roman actually running a little faster lap time than Heath Harrison. It's not, so, over. <laughs> it's not over. You know what, maybe. Ten second gap. Anything can happen, this is Minios. But that's the man we're watching right there, working around some lap traffic, the 24 Phoenix Racing Honda ride of Heath Harrison. Making David Eller happy right now. Yes. I don't know that I've seen. I don't know that I'd want to see David Eller mad. I don't. I've not seen it. I've seen him mad. I mean, he's How irritated. It? Maybe. It? Huh? It's. He's terrified. Yeah. I, I. I. I can imagine if he was. Uh, you were the one he was mad at. It wouldn't be a, a, a very oh. fun place to be. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> he actually called. I don't know that Mega Watt shared the story, but I'll share it on his behalf. He he called Mega the other night and. Uh, wanted to wish him a, a happy Thanksgiving and just say hello. How you doing? Didn't need anything. Just yep. hey, thinking about that's you guys. the kind of so guy he is. Cool. He is man. He's as laid back as they come. That's definitely some respect out there for that man. And speaking of respect, you got to pay this guy some respect. The 24 of Heath Harrison going down the hill one last time and back up the finish line to wrap up this championship in the Junior 25 Plus class. Absolutely. There you go. Heath Harrison going to make his way down to the podium and smile ear to ear with Wes Kane. Show off the pearly whites. Steve Roman coming in, checking in with us in the number two position. Awesome job for Roman. And that'll put him second overall on the podium down there as well with Wes. There's Corey Carson checking in in third. Would that be yeah. how they finish on the track, how they finish in the OA? I'd assume. Yeah, top three anyway. A uh, little change up there in fourth and fifth overall. Spitch uh, comes in in the number four spot, and uh, France will finish up in fifth, and that's the way they will be for the overall as well. Chatfield will get sixth overall. Yeah, and with maturity comes consistency, as we said, overall podium. <laughs> hey, pop yeah. quiz, what's the last race of the day? Race number 17. And that is Senior 45 Plus. We're on race number 15 right now. You can hear them churning and burning. The gate is down. We battle for position. And that VP Racing Fuels whole shot. This is a good one right here, 85. This is good. 13 class. Bright orange gear, number 810 of Tace Morgan with the whole shot. Possibly Chase Dashley there in second. Here comes Gage Dunham. Dunham's going to charge down the pit. Watch him now as he takes the outside line, tries to make a move in the second. Is he going to make his stick? Yes, he does. That outside line, again, coming to life. It's been a great line, been a lot of passes there. One of the faster lines, like we were talking about earlier, we're not sure why everybody's going to this inside. This, it's getting beat up now, end of the day. It's all about finding the nice, smooth lines that you can carry momentum through. So as this continues to develop here in lap number one, it is Morgan, Dashiell, and Dunham. But what did they finish in the first moto? Brady Olson, or yes, Brady Olson had a first place finish. Braxton Meese a second. We have Sawyer Geek a third place finish. Justin Schuff had a third. Tristan Pruitt had a first. Gage Dunham had a second. 
And uh, that is, uh, I was about to start talking about Tristan Pruitt and wow. just how sensational that young man has been. Uh, you got to listen to this, guys. I just I'm got, all ears. I just got an update. Black November sale right now at SLR Rifle Works. Time to get your Christmas uh, get list knocked out. Get up to 20% off every, everything at SLR. Up to 20% off everything. Visit their website for details. No promo codes needed. Once again, Black November sale going on right now. Time to get your Christmas list knocked out. 20% off everything at SLR. Visit their website for details. No promo code needed. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. And you see uh, big supporters. You notice it didn't say Black Friday sale. It's Black November sale. Exactly. Ev every day is Black Friday at SLR Rifle Works. i got to keep my eyes peeled out here, guys, because I have not seen the number seven of Tristan Pruitt. He is buried outside the top five. It's six, seventh goes by, eighth goes by. He's in about the ninth place position right now in the opening lap. He's got a lot of work to do now. Yeah, I was going to ask about that, Tristan Pruitt. You know, we were going to talk about that. Then we had the Black November sale. We, you, yeah. Priorities. I'm, I'm about it. I'm here for it. <laughs> but, yeah, Tristan Pruitt. Let's watch him. Let's watch him work. He's in what, seventh? Eighth. Estimated eighth. How far back are you, Tristan? There he is. He is Less than a second. I'll give you a full rundown of the top ten right now. Chase Morgan coming through with the lead gauge gentleman. Second, Brady Olsen in the third spot. Sawyer Geek in fourth. Fifth spot, Chase Dashio. Sixth spot, it's Colt Martin. Hayden Dupas in seventh. Eighth, Pruitt. Grant ninth. Johnson in the tenth spot. And we're going to send it on down to the podium with Wes Kane. All right. Thank you very much, Mikey Wayne. I've got Corey Carson down here. Congratulations. Who would you like to thank? Uh, thank you. Um, I'd like to thank Suzuki RM Army. Um, there's Suzuki Contingency. I like to thank FMF, Action Motorsports, uh, Full Circle Insurance, JMD, um, FMF, Dunlop Tires, FXR, and everyone else that's helping me out, Arai Helmets, and everyone else that's helping me out. Thanks. Congratulations out there. Good job, Corey. All right, Steve Roman, finishing up second. Junior plus 25. Congratulations. Who do you want to thank, Steve? My name is Lexi. Uh, I couldn't do it with all the people who put the race event on. Um, and Kerr and all of them with uh, putting Gator back on for years. It's awesome to have an event like this. Uh, Hillview Motorsports, PR2, FXR, Scott, Jones and Roman Motocross School, Sunstar, Fast Track, MX Tire, Jeff Dunlop, Motor X, um, OGO, Cycra, uh, Fuel Clothing. I just couldn't do it with everybody's behind us. and. Um, Thank you guys all for coming out. Like I said, especially to all the Jones and Roman family that comes out with us. Congratulations out there, Steve Roman. Heath Harrison, come on up here. Congratulations, Mike Burkeen. Congratulations out there. You gotta feel ultra special when you got your family up here. We'll step over here a little bit. I know you're thankful for a lot of things, but who else do you want to thank? Yeah, just the whole Phoenix Racing Honda team for allowing me to do this. Um, we're down here for amateur support for Honda, so like I said before, if anybody's out here on a Honda needs help or support, come by and see us. Uh, Tim and the guys over at TCD, they hooked me up last night with a with a new setting of suspension, and um, man, I tell you what, it's working great. So go see those guys and, and get your suspension working right. She's looking at me going, who's this ugly man? All right, he, you take that. You got your hands with some valuable stuff there. Hey, guys, take it away. Heath Harrison, your champ. Hey, thanks, uh, West Ken. We have got an absolute heater, heated battle out in front between Tace Morgan and Gage Dunham. A little back and forth. Great moves by Dunham. By the way, Tristan Pruitt moves from eighth all the way up to fifth. He had the fastest lap time at 2.045. And you know why this is such a big move for Dunham? Why he's pushing the envelope so hard is because he got second in the first mode. He knows that he wins the second mode no matter what. Where Pruitt finishes, he will get the overall and the championship here. So keep your eyes on Dunham. Gage Dunham, the number five rider on the KTM out of Golden, Colorado. Trying to make something special happen. We're watching Pruitt on screen. Yeah, and here. just want to remind you folks, don't forget, this is a Race Tech race. Race Tech, the world's largest aftermarket motorcycle suspension modification company. All Race Tech products are 100% guaranteed. And here's my favorite part, folks. They're made in the USA. Race Tech is an industry leader in engine machining services, including CNC, porting valve jobs, custom Vortex, ECU mapping, and more. Many factory teams are using uh, Race Tech in the motorcycling industry. 
for their engine services. I gotta tell you, Mikey, if Race Tech picked any motor as a sponsor, it'd be this one right here. It's gonna be a good one. It's Taste Morgan and Dunham. They're fighting out for one and two, but look at there, same picture. We got Geek out there. Brady Olson with the first moto winner, I believe, out there. Tristan Pruitt, also a first moto winner. These guys all going to battle. Colt Martin, he's going to be there. Chase Dashiell, he's going to fade back a little bit, but still a great, respectful ride there as he rides in front of Jackson Dick. Across the line they go. Who do you see? Tace Morgan out in front. Gage Dunham continue to go to battle. Sawyer Geek, how about it? Picking up a position into three. We're watching Tristan Pruitt, the number seven. He is back in fifth place. Let's see, Pruitt turned another 205, three, and he's all over Brady Olson right yeah, now. Yeah, he's giving Brady Olson this. I believe he did give him the business. Yes, I think he did. Right now. Yep. He's gonna set his sights on the rider in front of the 18 of Swear Geek, but Olson now trying to come back up the inside of him on the second step up. Is he gonna make something happen? Or is Pruitt gonna shut the door? Pruitt's gonna actually go to the outside right here to try to make a move on the rider in front of him. So he's not able to make a move with the right in front of him, but he does stay in front of Olsen. But look at the pressure he's put on Geek now as they come around that sweeper after the Dun Dunlop drop. Yeah, Pruitt was trying to get there in on the inside line. And Olsen says no, or Geek says no, rather. There's Dunham Morgan, there's Geek, and here comes the number seven of Tristan Pruitt. These boys out in front, they just want to wait flag. <laughs> That's <laughs> it, they're like, over. please, please, come on, Pruitt. bring it out. Pruitt now making a charge, trying to get around the rider in front of him, a Sawyer it, Geek. But Geek, man, he has no slouch. Watch this guy to make some moves out there. I was going to say he was on the outside smooth line. I don't think there's a smooth line left on 20 miles of bad road anymore. Yeah. It's choppy. And look at Pruitt really working those outside lines, trying to carry some speed and keep that power on the ground. You know what he's finding? He's finding lines that people have not ridden yet. You know, they're a little bit smoother. He carries a little momentum with them, and it's definitely showing right here because he puts the pressure on Sawyer Geek. Ooh, does he there get it around is, Geek? There, there he is for the pass. So Pruitt now up into the number three spot. Sets his sights on Dunham and Morgan. They've got their own battle out front. It is Gage Dunham leading the way. It is Tace Morgan in the two spot. And here comes Tristan Pruitt White, around the outside. White flag out. And I don't know if Tace Morgan knows this or not, but he can stay in the number two position and still land himself in a championship. They're going to score in the overall, but a two beats a three as far as second moto goes. Do you think 9 to 13, you think he's thinking about that or is he thinking, I just want to win? I just want to win. I just want to win. Hopefully he doesn't know who's behind him right now. He's making a push. Oh, a mistake right there. He's going to lose some time for our leader and that's going to put fire in Tristan Pruitt's eyes. Watch it now as they make the way to the pit. This is going to be a dandy. Blood in the water for Tristan Pruitt. He resets. He's in the three spot trying to catch up with Tace Morgan and Gage Dunham. If you're Gage Dunham right now, run away and hide. Have at it behind me. Do what you want. I'm gonna try and grab a win. Here they go, inching up closer toward him. And my mistake, I've done him. He is the man in this point right there. He is gonna go 2-1 here to go for this overall. And Pruitt now, he's going 1-3, so Pruitt's got a couple moves to make up. Pruitt, again, railing the outside line. Carrying speed, does it make a difference? Oh, real choppy right there. Little dab has to check up. But you got to hand it to Pruitt again. He'll try this out. Oh, little mistake right there. Maybe not the best line. Oh, it takes Pruitt Morgan. hanging in. Morgan just wants this win because I just checked it out. He was fourth at first moto. So he has a lot of groundwork to make up and some luck to happen out here. If he wants any chance of this overall, Dunham is the man on point and the man looking to take this overall as he stays in front of Pruitt. Ooh, in the inside by Morgan. Pruitt Dunham again. says no. Pruitt again, taking the outside line. Here comes Dunham. It's Morgan. It's Pruitt. I think our boy Dunham might have it wrapped up now. It's a lot of real estate left. Let's see how this one plays out. Gage Dunham doing a fantastic job. Oh, look at the speed by Pruitt. Is he going to get around Morgan around the outside right here? He has moment. He has the speed. I think he's got him. He's got him I right now. Got him. Can he make a pass to leader? This is the championship on the line right here. We see the folks that are making their way to the fifth line. They're going to see if Gage Dunham can hold off Tristan Pruitt. Pruitt making a last ditch effort. He's going to rail the outside. Will he have the momentum, Mikey? Oh, Tristan Pruitt bringing it in on the outside. Not going to be enough, nope. though. Gage Dunham. Dunham bang, goes again. flag flies. Hand off the bars. to the side. Not in his head. He's loving it right now. Respect right there for Gage Dunham getting the job done. Tristan Pruitt with a bad start. He made waves in a no-wig zone coming through the pack right there. So Dunham taking the overall. Tristan Pruitt taking second overall. And Chase Morgan taking third overall. That's exactly how they finish on the track, and they're going to finish with the overall. But what a great race that was right there, Mikey. 
Can you breathe, Rodney? Less than a second. That, I was, you're right. I was kind of holding my breath through that whole thing. Uh, 0.854 is what it was separating those two at the at the checker flag. That was a nail biter, no doubt. Hey, speaking of nail biter, I'm going to give you the top ten before we get to that next photo. Gabe John, Chris Akua, Chase Morgan, Sawyer Geek, Colt Martin, Braxton Meese, Chase Dashiell, Jackson Vick, Brady Olson, and Cooper Johnson getting around to your top ten. And what do you got coming out of the track, Mikey? Oh, Landon Gordon on that Monster Energy Team Green, Kawasaki. He comes into the first place finish. Caden Dudney had a third place finish. Jordan Renfro, he comes in with a second place, as does Landon Hartz. Landon Gibson. This is a one, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, where we saw Landon and Lanson. Landon and Landon. Right. Gibson and uh, Gordon. Now, an Oscar, a good start out there. One of the team green riders in the inside. That's the 18 of Gordon. Landon Gordon with the whole shot here as they drop into the pit. Well, it's going to be a tough road to hoe for everyone else now that Gordon's out front early on here. Yeah. Man, look at the, the gap right now. First step up, the last place right is still in the pit. So if you don't get out and get a whole shot, man, it's not going to be easy. It's critical, man. It's so critical for sure. Because, I mean, these guys lose at probably 20 seconds on the first lap. Well, if you remember, I mean, a lot of these guys, I mean, we saw Drew Adams do it several times, and, and not only Drew, but several of these guys have to just work their way through the pack and call fight right down to the very end. Yes, definitely fight down to the very end. Speaking of the very end, the very end on the starting line, what do we got down there on the line? Getting Senior, 45 plus, last moto of the day on the line. Going on the line, should I say? Yep. Take the picks as we Moving speak. out there. Gage Dunham, Tristan Pruitt, and Chase Morgan getting it sorted out, getting ready to go talk with uh, Wes Kane, I believe, here in just a moment as they see them making their way onto the Yamaha podium right now. But our leaders making their way down the Parts Unlimited Thor spectator area to the Scott Switchbacks now in front of the Gizmo Mods Tower to the Yamaha Announcers Tower. The battle is on, still the 18 out front. What's going on back there behind him? How's it sorting out now? We see Landon Gorman all over. Jordan Renfro. Renfro, man, he's been on it late wow. in the day, man. I was talking to him earlier, trying to make it look like Malinowski getting stuffed up by Luke Bowser. Keep your eyes on this battle. As Bowser moves in the third spot, and Gordon feeling the pressure by Renfro. Renfro really feeling good this one, and it shows. Wow, he sure is uh, that on that on-track schools back ride. And, of course, uh, I know that uh, those guys got to be pretty stoked with the way everything's going. He's had some stellar performances so far this week, and to fire out of the gate like that and, and not only get a great start, but also keep the pace and put the pressure on Landon Gordon at the end of that first lap. Luke Fowler back there in the number three spot. Caden Dudney in fourth. Ryder Malinowski in fifth. Adler Connell is sixth. Flynn Watts in seventh. Cole Forbes in eighth. Ryder Thompson ninth. And Gavin Betts rounds out your top ten to Wes Kane on the podium. All right, Chase Morgan, congratulations out there. Third overall, who do you want to thank? I'd like to thank my mom, dad, brother, and my sister. Let's ride Renthal Fox, Thumb Mob, II, Dead Construction, Power Band, uh, 180 Decal, Kirk helps me out every, on everything, T Rex, and everyone that helps me out. Thank you so much. Oh, and Moda Sandbox. Congratulations out there, Chase Morgan, finishing up third. Trisha Pruitt. Second overall with the silver. Who would you like to thank for helping you out? I'd like to thank God for keeping me safe. Uh, my parents for all they do for me. Uh, my grandparents, all my family back home, all my friends that support me. Motorsport Hillsboro, Monster Army, Lynx Racing, 110 Racing Gear, Bell Helmets, uh, Apex Motorsports, Mika Metal Bars, x Goggles, uh, Nihilo Concepts, my trainers at MTF, Colleen, Brian, and Jacob, Motomop, Dunlop, XC Gear, for the bar stabilizers, T-Rex throttles, and uh, upper triple clamps, and lab seat covers, graphics, DT1 filters, camera whole shot devices, FMF, everybody else. Thank you. Congratulations out there. Great job out there. Mike Burkeen, Gage Linville waiting over here for you. Gage Dunham waiting over here for you. Gage Linville. Gage Dunham. 
Gage Dunham, congratulations out there. Who do you want to thank? I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for keeping me safe. My mom and my dad for sacrificing so much just for me to chase my dream. Charlie Design, thank you, Luke and Max, back in California, and hooking up with the gear. I also want to thank Dunlop Tires. Thank you, Rob. I also want to thank Elite Motorsports, VPK, Jen, back in Colorado, doing my graphics, High Peaks FX graphics. I also want to thank, uh, <laughs> also want to thank uh, Asterix for uh, my knee braces, and I also want to thank everyone back home. Uh, in Colorado, uh, Mitchell Gifford, uh, Jorge Rubacava, and also Desiree Rubacava. And I want to thank you, Wes, for always shouting me out out there. And uh, the Unlimited Sports MX are doing a great job out here. And all my new friends. Hey, when you go, hey, when you go fast, Gage Dunham, you get new friends. All right, here you go. Celebrate giving them business. Take it away, guys. Gage Dunham, your champion. He said, no, my new friends. That's yeah. one of my favorites right there. <laughs> Gage Dunham doing a great job with you down there on the podium. Sound like a little professional. He's going to take our jobs here shortly. I know he will. Jordan <laughs> Renfro having some, uh, well, he, he drops back to the fourth place position. But he's still right there in the mix of all. Luke Fowles are moving up to second. Dudney in the number three spot at the last check when they came by the uh, tower there just a few moments ago. So as they're nearing the completion of another lap, they're making their way through the Scott uh, switchback. Now it is uh, under fire once again. Another lap for the 18 of Gordon. And I believe it's still Fowler, and Fowler is right there. He may be about ready to strike right here as he's trying to get to the inside, dropping down to the gator pit. Ooh, a little dab there, nearly losing that front end as he dabbed to that front wheel cop, but he was able to stay up and on the rear wheel of Gordon. Fowler is hungry right now. Where's Carl? What kind of bandana are we wearing today, Carl? <laughs> there he is, <laughs> orange bandana today, so it's on. It's on, baby. Fowles are going to work. Poor, it kind of sucks. They had to check up a little bit. Medic's working with an injured rider. So right before, it was just out of the screenshot or camera shot as they went into the gator pit. But they reset here. Down Gator Falls we go. Fowles are in pursuit. Speaking of a camera shot, did you see who was just coming into that screen right there? It's the number 40, Kawasaki at Cape Dundee. He wants to show you guys. He is a force to be reckoned with out here at Gatorback Cycle Park here late in the day. Dundee trying to get in the game. And he is in the game. Watch him now as he yeah. drops down to the inside of Fowler. Fowler carrying that momentum into the inside right there. Look at him go as he charges down the hill on Gordon. Woo, I say Fowler's at a Kawasaki sandwich right now. <laughs> he is. A little dab right there by Fowler as he resets, goes back to work. Gordon out in front. These guys loving the outside. Dudney wants the inside. Inside look good right there. What is going to pay off, though? 20 miles of bad road. Here we go. Yeah, you get down to mile marker like 15 to 17, it gets pretty choppy. <laughs> Landon Gordon, I think the whole thing's choppy. <laughs> somebody tell somebody that's a no-wake zone. Here comes Fowler. Fowler on the outside. Will he set up and go back to the inside? And this is anybody's win right here. These guys got to be careful. I see three medic flags flying right here. He wheels on the ground. Got to show extreme caution until you pass the down rider. You can't pass anybody there. Ooh. Yeah, they will have to check up here again this Whoa, lap. Oh, Fowler going down for the it. Sandwich. To the inside is Fowler. Can Gordon reel it on the outside? Watch out for these medic flags, Landon. Take your time. Control. Breathe. Dudney. Don't make a move here. Don't make a move. It stays clean right there as they all pass the down right of the race is on. Oh, there you go, Gordon. Fowler now trying to Oh, down there for Gordon. Is Dudney going to reel on the outside of both of them? He does make a move in a second behind Fowler now. Man, it was Fowler's small little misstep right there that ends up benefiting Dudney as <laughs> Dudney was around the outside because uh, Gordon was right on the rear wheel. Hey, remember, like Wes always says, we're not playing checker, we're playing chess. You got to make some smooth moves out there. I would say he's making a smooth move right now. Watch around the outside is Kate Dudney trying to get to the inside of Fowler as they go up the hill. Fowler shuts him down. Boy, Dudney picking up a pass on Gordon, and now he goes right to work on Fowler. Dudney going to the inside as Fowler's going to shut down. Fowler hey. looks and sees he knows he just shut that door and he does close the door, but that's going to allow Gibbs, or sorry, Gordon to rail around the outside right here. Gordon come back into the screen. Dudney going to the inside of Fowler as they make their way down the Dunlop drop. Oh, Dudney wants that inside pass. Fowler's done a pretty good job so far shutting the door on him, and here comes Gordon again. Gordon says, okay, I gathered my breath. I went back in this. Fowler staying on the outside. This worked out pretty well for Dudney last time on the inside. Let's see if it pays off here and he's able to make up a little ground. Man, this is such a great race. I'm looking at the overall picture. I'm going to save that information for you guys out there. Oh, oh Fowler. mistake oh, by Fowler. Unfortunately, or say, fortunately, that didn't cost him too much. He's able to carry momentum out of that into the rollers. As that slipped up, turned into a straightaway. 
How are we four laps into this? I just like glanced down. I thought maybe this is lap two or three. Yeah, I thought this moto just started. <laughs> <laughs> We're into it. The, going, gets fun, the fun gets going. Yeah, they've been at it like this this entire moto, man. I mean, it, it hasn't relinquished any. Uh, wow, Bowser's still under pressure now from uh, Gordon. Just to, get, just to uh, give you a heads up, if you're wondering where Landon Hart, second place finisher in Schoolboy 2 and his division out there earlier, he's back in 12th right now, still trying to work his way up. Meanwhile, back down into the Gator Pit. This is going to be good as we get that drive out of the Gator Pit. And now to the finish line, here comes the 18 machine of Gordon trying to mount that challenge once again for the lead. Oh, no, that's the 40, isn't it? That's Dudney Correct. on the number 40 yeah, on the Kawasaki. Sorry about there. that. Dudney doing a good job. He's working the track right now, Rodney. He's inside, outside. He's throwing everything but the kitchen sink at Fowser right now. And Fowser has answered every single time. But how much longer can he hold him off? I don't know, man. I tell you, right here is going to be a big answer to that question, I think, as we head to the back of the Gators back and that hard 180 here in the bottleneck and head for that Dunlop drop off. Dudney, I mean, it's literally like, okay, you're going left, I'm going oh, right. Gibson, you're going right, Gibson I'm going left. That was, oh. They're talking about a pileup, so Gibson, tough break for him to get caught in the pileup. And the, how important this pass is right now, I want to give you a little update now of the overall picture. Landon Gordon with a 1-3 right now, give him four points. Kate Dudney's at a 3-2 right now, with five points. But if he goes 3-1, that'll be four points. And the second will be the deciding factor. So this is a championship battle right here. Bowser needs it. Oh, Dudney needs or it. Well, <laughs> they all need it, let's be honest. They all need it for sure. But uh, Bowser, um, he's Ooh. coming into this one with a 9. So a 9-1 would land him at fourth overall. So he needs it, Play but spoiler. it's a little more important there for Dudney. Depends. Jordan Renfro looking at guy. <laughs> he said that, but a 2-4 for Renfro is going to look at third overall. That's pretty yeah, that's pretty solid, impressive. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we've got to show him some love. The battle's been incredible for the top three, but yeah, Renfro's doing what he needs to do back in the four spot right now. I'm sure he'd like to be in this battle. Hey, when, at the end of the day, whenever the overall's posted, his name's going to be in third. Yeah, exactly, and that's what they really all pay attention to. They weren't here at the race, but hey, exactly, stay there. Exactly. We're watching them now as they make their way through the Yamaha announcer's tower. Fowler feeling the pressure by Dudney for sure. How is Fowler going to answer this pressure? White flag coming out, so one more to go. How bad does Dudley want this championship? We're about to see now as he is riding the rear wheel, Luke Fowler. If he makes this pass on Fowler, he can win himself a championship. But Landon Gordon right there in that third spot just watch these guys. And I mean, this is your teammate right here, and you're, you really don't want him to make a pass in a lead because you could lose your championship. Oh, he's going to take this outside right here, but Fowler also going to the outside. Smart ride there by Fowler. I'm really surprised Dudney didn't lay something that inside right there and try to change it up. Here they go over the step ups. Dudney has been going to the inside, and Fowler knows that, so he is trying to shut him down. But Fowler, he's going to go through the middle right there. Dudney threading the needle to the inside. That inside goes to the outside, which again becomes the inside as they go down the Dunlop drop. Bowser getting a little bit of breathing room, at least at the moment. This is uh, back here is where it starts to tighten up again. And, oh, a little foot dab there. Bowser, though, didn't seem to slow down any by that. That's for sure. Here they come through 20 miles, a bad road. It looks like Dudney. I'm not sure what's happened, but he's just settling He's doubling back there. Did you see that? He's doubling oh. through some of those. Almost an off-track excursion right there. That's turned into a roller section back there, basically, I think, in some sections of the track. Fowler just doubled through the uh, sweeper turn right there. Here they come. It is still Luke Fowler leading the way. Man, what a great ride. Carl ought to be happy about this one. He's been able to stay out front this whole moto. As Gibson, I see him just push the mic there back to the bus. Hopefully Gibson is okay. That was one to get the adrenaline going. Yeah, that was a good one. That, that, was, that was a good old-fashioned heavyweight boxing match right there. And Fowler said, I ain't scared. Here he comes. One more turn now, 462. Hey, he answered the challenge. There's no doubt about that. He surely wanted Moto 1 to go a little better for him. But, yeah, that was a sigh of relief. Yeah, it was. Heck, yeah. I'm still the guy. I can still get it done. I got something to take away from this one. Congratulations to you, Fowler. How's that overall shaping up now as Dudney's checked in in two and Landon Gordon for third? Yeah, I'll give you an update on the overall coming through. It's going to be Landon Gordon taking the overall and the championship. Caden Dudney going to finish up in second. So a little Team Green action down there. 
And I believe Jordan Renfro, he will lock in the third pace position and respect the taking that third spot overall out here in the schoolboy 2 12 to 17 class. Luke Fowler will finish up in fourth overall with that valiant effort in that uh, in this final moto. What a ride, no doubt, and uh, gate down on that final race right now. As uh, Gordon, Dudney, and Renfro, your top three, heading to the uh, Yamaha podium and our final race. Plus 45 out there on the track right now. We see Mike Brown get that whole shot out there. Frenchie, he's in the second spot, and we see John Grew just behind him. We've seen this battle, I swear, about five motos ago. Grew trying to make it happen quick, coming up the inside, making a mistake, dabbing his foot, going up the uphill. That's not something you want to do as you're right in front of Barry Carson. Carson trying to make some moves there in that fourth spot. Make it moves quick. Look at there. Gruy and Paymart, they are battling hard early in this one. These guys better be careful they don't tire themselves out because here comes Barry Carson just behind them. Rodney, you've been watching these guys longer than I have. What do you Ooh. see out there? Oh. Uh, well, what I see is I see a lot of competition. I see a lot of camaraderie, but I also see a lot of... Uh, uh animosities <laughs> i mean as much as they love each other off the track i guess on the track they probably uh despise each other you know whenever you start looking at the big picture but that's the spirit of competition and uh, but what i see is you know i see a, a a select few amount of guys here that really have a passion for this sport and, and an undying love and, and willing to go that extra mile uh more than most and of course they they not only train and get ready for these events, but they also make the long journeys and travels. And look at that, John Gruy putting that pressure on right now for Paymart once again. They pick up right where they left off a little bit ago, actually. Yeah, you know, Rodney, I could tell Gruy's been doing a lot of studying out here. He's got such good lines, finding all the smooth ones out there as Frenchie just dogging it out, man, hitting all the rough ones, making the mistakes, and Gruy. Eating some roost right now by the number 442 of Gregory Paymart. I say, you know, one thing that I can tell you about Gregory Paymart, he really trusts for momentum and he trusts the setup on his bike because he, like you said, he does bulldog this oh. thing and he pushes it hard. Here we going to set himself up for the inside, but a little too much momentum, I think, for Frenchie right now as he gets a good drive out of that first turn as they head back for Gator falls now and you know i i don't think i've ever seen Gruy push it quite so hard like this he is definitely getting out of his comfort zone you see him high wheeling over the finish line and honestly barry carson is right there I mean, yeah speaking about mike brown obviously got the lead here he's 10 seconds out but the battle for second third and fourth place that's what we got our eyes on that's what we're paying attention to this thing might go down harder than our pit bike race later on today all righty west came what's happening on the podium Jordan Renfro, congratulations. Welcome back up on the box. It's been a minute. Who do you want to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank uh, God for keeping me safe in that ride. I uh, definitely had to push through a little bit of arm pump halfway through the second lap. So we uh, we started all right and just charged through the bumps. And But hopefully we can get my endurance up for these next couple motos. But I'd like to thank On Track, Don and Andrew Lee over there. They've always been loving and supporting with me. And uh, Josh from GPF. I've been riding there and just trying to get it up here on the box for him. We've been putting in a lot of hard work, so it's uh, finally starting to pay off. But uh, Canvas, Scott, uh, Monster Army, just, you know, everybody else has been supporting me. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Jordan, Jordan Renfro. Good job out there. Kate Dudney, second place. Got the silver. Hold it up. Show the world. Congratulations. Would you like to thank for all helping you out? My mom, my dad, uh, Ryan Holiday, Kevin Windham, Farm 14, Kyle Swanson, um, Monster Energy, Tim Green, Kawasaki, Fox, Renthal, Dunlop, for Circuit, Maxima, um, Rob Fox, Team Dunlop Elite, um, everybody that supports me and got me here, thank you so much. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough. Congratulations out there, Landon Board. Coming up next, Kate Dudney. Landon Gordon, come on up here, Mike Burkeen. Good job. Your champ. Give it up, guys. Landon Gordon. Congratulations up there. You got two today. You got to feel pretty good. Who do you want to thank? I'd like to thank the Lord, keep me safe, my whole family, uh, my mom watching back home, and uh, 
Uh, my grandparents wa watching back home. Um, everybody, uh, Team Green Kawasaki, Pro Circuit, Alpine Star, 100%, Monster, uh, Dunlop, uh, Throttle Syndicate, Ethica, Toyota Escadito, um, Jacob Hayes, everybody behind me. Thank you. Congratulations one more time. Landon Gordon. All right, take it away, guys. Landon, Last moto on the track. Landon Gordon doing a great job out there taking that one. And Mike Brown, he is the man taking this one right here. He's opened it up to 20 seconds over Gregory Paymart. We've seen John Gruy, like I said, push a little hard. He made a mistake, made a bobble. He's going to fall outside the top three as Barry Carson takes that third place position away. John Gruy in fourth, Gabriel Gordano in the fifth spot, sixth spot is Keith Boyette, Joe Buskirk in seventh, eighth spot, Gabriel Fernandez, ninth spot, James Max, and ten spot running at top ten, it's Christopher Opliger. There was a noted frustration in John Gruy's voice earlier today in, I believe it would have been the plus 25 class, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, with that being said, I can only imagine the aggravation that we will probably hear in his voice when he makes his way to the podium this time. As of right now, John Gruy looking at a 2-4. That scores him overall six and actually third place overall, so six points. Uh, Barry Carson looking at a 4-3 right now, so that's seven for him. So in theory right now, uh, John Gruy, unless he loses another position out there, will take the uh, take the bronze and we'll be talking with Wes Kane coming up here in a few moments. Two laps now, three laps down from Mike Brown. He checked in last time about uh, 19 seconds ahead. This time around nearly, well, just over 27 seconds. Barry Carson in now for the number three position. One and a half seconds back behind Palmer. Paymark, Paymark may be about to feel some pressure from the old bear dog. John Gruy checking in now 13 seconds, we'll call it 14 seconds behind Carson and Gabe Gordardo back in the number five spot. SLR, SLR live drone there being brought to you by, uh, or the live drone brought to you by SLR Rifle Works. Again, you heard me talking about them a few moments ago. You don't need a code 20% off. It's Black Friday every single day in the month of November. So through November 30th, take 20% off everything in stock there at SLR. You know what we're going to call that? We're going to call it a total blackout. A total blackout November. Blackout SLR. November. There you go. <laughs> And here we go around four again, lap number three. As Rodney said, Mike Brown, your leader, Gregory Paymart in second, Barry Carson in third, John Gruy in fourth, Keith Coyette into the fifth spot, Michael Gordano in back of the sixth spot, Joe Buskirk, he's in seventh, eighth spot is Christopher Opliger, and ninth spot is Mark Powers. And up to a 10th place position now, we see Galen Dixon. So Galen Dixon making some last ditch efforts out there on the track right now as he is a few seconds faster than the riders in front of him, so maybe Dixon could land himself in eighth place position before this one's over. Speaking of being over, getting the white flag, one more to go for the number three of Mike Brown. When I say one more to go, I mean, it's 5-11 right now. We have about 20 minutes for that pit bike race sign-up. This is the World National Pit Bike Race. And listen, guys, Stasic class. There's a Stasic class and a uh, basically an e-bike class right there with the Surons, you know, the Segway bikes. We're gonna have a class just for you. We need more girls. We need more girls down there for that mom's class, the dad's class. We got the big bikes, the 85s, the 65s. We got a class for everybody for the pit bike race. The World National Pit Bike Race coming up tonight. 25 bucks. Sign up will be closed in about 30 minutes. Once again, for those pit bike classes, 65, 85, big bike moms and dads, you'll be riding their pit bikes. You get to dog those out. You'll have to dog yours out. If you're riding the 50 class, you ride your own bike. And if you're riding the Stasic or the electric bike class, you'll be riding your own bike as well at that World National Pit Bike Race. So get signed up for it. Paymart just turned the fastest, his fastest lap of the moto at a 207.999, feeling the heat for Barry Karsten. Karsten at a 208.203. The gap still at 1.6 seconds, so not much of a change there, but Paymart. Rising to the occasion with the pressure and the white flag. 
Just saw an update there. I think it's like 21 to 7 or something like that. Uh, Miami yeah. Dolphins over the New York Jets. Just, they just took out a ref there. He, they, they beat him up, I think. Ooh, well, that's <laughs> what we like to see being in Florida. We're Dolphins fans out here. Yeah, that's <laughs> why I, I figured yeah, you guys might enjoy that. I know Jacksonville's just uh, over there. But yeah, we also Jacksonville's got, having a good year this year, too. Yeah. So but the Dolphins out. beating up on the Jets today, literally. <laughs> It happens like that, you know, those rivalry games. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of rivalry game, pick it up. What do we got out there for Gregory Paymar and John Grew and Barry Carson? That's a rivalry. We're talking that, about. That's a rivalry. We're watching Mike Brown right now as he makes his way into the uh, Gator Pit one final time for the day. 30 seconds behind him is uh, Greg Paymar and Barry Carson. I have that setting in my truck right there. That's called cruise control. <laughs> well, it looks like uh, Mike Brown has found your cruise control. Yes, he does. He's going to take that championship out there and see Wes Kane down on the podium. B Barry's uh -oh. coming after Frenchie. Uh -oh. He's coming after him. They're in lap traffic, diving down into the uh, gator pit, heading for the final turn now. What's going to happen? It's a drag race up the hill. Oh! Paymart is pumped right now, as he should be. Yeah, absolutely. Paymart taking the second place position, which feels like a win, I'm sure, behind Mike Brown at this point, and over Barry Carson at the same time, and John Gruy back and forth. Now, here's what we'll see on the podium. Mike Brown goes 1-1. Paymart will go 3-2 for second overall. John Gruy goes 2-4. He will score third place overall. That is our final moto of the day, race number 17. And uh, coming up uh, tomorrow morning, uh, race 18 will be the 65cc 10 to 11 limited. That'll be their second moto. And uh, one other thing, too, is that uh, we will get underway with sighting laps at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. And, of course, we'll send our first calls out about 6.45. Uh, we'll have our podium presentations coming up here in a few moments. Uh, as uh, you heard Dean talking, we've got nighttime activities that's going to be taking place. It's going to be a lot of fun with that. And uh, uh, again, folks, uh, if you're at home watching this and you're thinking, I'd like to have a little piece of what's going on, check out Moto Tees. You might be able to find out, uh, find uh, some souvenirs online at mototees.com and get yourself, uh, order yourself a uh, souvenir. That's scored by the 27. To six Miami over New York right now. Pit bike race, yay! Mike Brown, Gregory Paymark, John Gruy heading to the podium. Wes Kane on the wrangle down there. And thanks to all you folks have tuned in with us here on racertv.com today. Uh, special thanks to Dunlop Motorcycle Tires for presenting our streaming coverage here at Gatorback Cycle Park and the 52nd Annual Thor Minios presented by Pro Circuit. And like we always say, a special thanks to uh, Thor and Parts Unlimited. Uh, of course, Thor's got Santa Claus down there. They uh, started about 5 o'clock, so they're taking photos with Santa at Thor Semi, so be sure and stop on by for that. Uh, plus, uh, we got uh, other great things going on. Good food being served down in the uh, vendor's court. Uh, Pro Circuits uh, got all the swag there. They're trying to unload all that. And, uh, well, Black Friday special pricing, I think, we're going on there, just like everywhere else around the pits today. Uh, Dunlop Tires, they had their special pricing. BP Racing Fuel, want to say thanks to those folks. Want to say thanks to Scott. And also thanks to uh, FMF, the Flying Machine Factory of Southern California, for being a part of this uh, great affair and all of our manufacturers, including Yamaha, Suzuki, Honda, Cobra, Kawasaki, KTM, Gas Gas, and Husqvarna. And uh, thanks to uh, Win Kern and Limited Sports MX for putting on another fabulous uh, week of racing. We've got one more day of racing. We'll have uh, things kicking off tomorrow morning, bright and early. Uh, we'll probably start around 7.20 or so with Racer TV coverage tomorrow morning. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get uh, race 18 on, if not uh, there shortly after. Wes Kane readying the uh, podium, and we head down. I got John Gruy. Congratulations out there. John, good citizenship you are. Who do we like to thank for helping you out? Uh, I need to thank team, uh, team Babbitt, uh, Dunlop Tires, FMF, Decal Works, um, uh, TCD Suspension, 
um, tamer hole shot devices and uh, moto hose and man anybody I forgot twin air uh, man everybody helps me I appreciate it so much Fox gear they're huge thank you all right John Gurry congratulations get some rest you got a big day tomorrow once you're in bed 30 minutes all right Frenchie who would you like to thank for all your support helping you out on the podium you know FX air of course and uh, crosswalk power sports uh, twin air boys and uh, Scott of course you know I don't know I see I have shitty eyes but I can still see with Scott goggles but uh you know everybody that helps uh you know out there it was uh Bronny and Karsten and uh Gruy, but I think the number one enemy is a track it is so gnarly out there it's getting dark the ruts are never ending you go from one rut to the other sometimes I wrote like three ruts in one turn I tried them all in one shot but uh yeah it was a uh, super fun and uh MKS Moto Kicks GPMX from Motor School and uh where's I forget Shannon my girlfriend Jimmy you guys, what a great time. Congratulations, good job out there. Good spokesman. Mike Brown. There you go, there's your bottle of that, and here is your number one plate. You are the champ. Mike Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations, crowd goes wild. Who's like to thank? No, uh, Robbie Renner from Enjoy Graphics. I didn't thank them all week. I appreciate everything they do. And uh, like I said, Mun and FXR guys, done my tires. Pine Star, Factory Ride Goggles, Milt, Reimer, Andy, Brad, all them guys. But uh, just another good week. Two more motos to go, and uh, look forward to that 30 plus tomorrow. There you go. Get some rest, Mike Brown. Mike Brown says he's got to be in bed in the next 30 minutes. Mike Brown, take it away, Rodney. Take us home. All righty. Thanks a lot, Wes Kane. And uh, I'm looking forward to that 30 plus too, Mike Brown. That's going to be great. I'm looking forward to all of our second motos. We'll get them all underway. Tomorrow morning, make sure you tune in for race day coverage, uh, race day number seven, uh, courtesy of our friends at Dunlop Motorcycle Tires and, of course, uh, all of our friends here at Unlimited Sports MX. And thanks to all of the uh, Racer TV crew and everyone here. Great job to the flaggers and all the staff. And uh, on behalf of all of us here from the tower today, uh, of course, uh, talking about guys like Mikey Wayne, Dean Diaz, Megawatt, Matt Watson, Wes Kane, and myself. I'm Rodney Tomlin. Have a great evening, everyone. Hey, just want to remind everyone, if you are done racing, turn in your transponders. And if you're using them tomorrow, please charge them. Once again, turn in your transponders, but if you still have another day of use, make sure that you charge them so they are good to go for tomorrow's racing. Once again, if you're done with your transponders,